my name is atul sharma and uh, let's start our journey so before i jump on let me introduce myself i am ex uh, tech engineer and i have total 11 years of experience like worked with ericent tcs apple and juniper networks okay so i have trained almost thousands of it students online and these are my certifications i have uh, cisco certified specialist i have cisco certified specialist enterprise core okay the complete ccnp i am also ccnp in service provider i have a juniper network certified specialist and juniper networks certified associate so these are my certifications and a few other certifications you can check on my linkedin account osi model generally in an interview if you are going to for network engineer interview the most of the interviews or the managers who are taking interviews or the engineers who are taking interviews they are, they are going to ask they are going to ask like tell me explain osi model they just need to check your knowledge so make sure be ready for this question every time so you can't say sir osi is open system because i have taken lot of interviews right and Uh, i am giving you the exact answer what exactly the interview is give uh, gives to us so if i'll ask you explain osi model so most of the guys are o- osi stand for open system interconnection it has seven layers and they start giving the layer names sir one is application and suddenly they say sir one is network layer but this is not the hierarchy right so sometimes they say okay sir one is application network one is data link uh, sir there is one layer more there, that is transport yes 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 so from there only you actually fail your interview because the layers always been in the hierarchical model application so that is presentation and session transport network data and physical so you should always use alysis so you should always remember the hierarchy or the flow how we are going to say right and don't say just the layer names in an interview when somebody says explain please understand and please listen to the questions carefully in an interview because when somebody is saying explain explain means you have to elaborate it more if somebody is asking okay what is osi model right so that is simple thing you can explain say sir osi model is open system interconnection it has seven layer and this is uh, just a model to understand about networking okay. so suppose i am giving an interview if somebody ask me okay tell me what is osi model or what explain osi model okay so first i will i'll say sir uh, osi model is a reference model reference means this is not used in this industries so this model is a reference model okay it has seven layers the first layer is application or uh, you can say that layer 7 because your data flows from top to bottom not bottom to top so it's better to explain from the top uh, in an application layer whenever we open any application like when we use browsers right all the web browsers right browsers all your chat applications all these applications which help one human to uh, like one human to another human so that they can interact you use application layer like all http https dns dhcp telnet all these are applications so that you can access the websites you can uh, get the dns information you can uh, get the ip address from dhcp you can actually uh, remotely access the devices with telnet so all these are the applications which works on application layer right so this is application and my data flows to now my data goes to which layer presentation layer sir uh, or whatever the guy who is taking interview uh, 
in this presentation layer actually it checks the format of data so it, this layer is responsible to check the format of data right so my data have many different formats like when you download a image so the image can be gif image can be png image can be jpeg so if you download any movies or videos the video can be mp4 can be avi or maybe some uh, another format mpeg something whatever so audio may have different format like mp3 right wave so why these formats are made because every different system understand different different format and this presentation layer decides what is the format of data because when your computer access any information from google server so google is not so just see this youtube page so you can see here a youtube video so you can see some chat is going on here right so there are all these are coming as a source code as a code so this computer understand this code and present that permission in your format in human format right because all all data which is coming from google all, all the data are coming in the format of 01010101 right all are coming in the form of signals yes or no yeah, might be you have broadband connection might be you have internet connection so all the data which is coming all the data which is coming to you are coming with the signals right and the signals actually converting and showing you on your screen with the help of presentation okay so this is it's enough so then proceed with the another layer so my now data moves to which layer application where the application works presentation the format of data then the day we have session layer so my data now moves to session layer because the data first go to application then data goes to presentation and then data goes to session this is how it works so session layer is responsible for creating and maintaining session create and maintain session what is session so i hope everyone you have net banking internet banking right and if you don't do anything for 5 to 10 minutes automatically the website got log out yes or no right so it means in the website there is a time frame so session layer actually defines the time frame between the client and the server the best example you can give is like internet banking uh, like if we log in into secure websites they automatically get log out after 5 to 10 minutes if we don't use anything right so session layer actually decides the time frame create and maintain the session now the best part we really in the real world we don't use these three layers we call these all three layers are known as all three layers of osi model are known as application layer in tcp ip model so if anybody is asking you explain tcp ip model so you will explain all three things when you are explaining tcp ip because all three combination actually works in a real time this application layer of tcp ip uh, we have two models right osi model is reference model when we learn the things we use osi model but in real world which protocol is working tcp ip so if somebody is asking in an interview what is the difference between osi model and tcp ip there is no difference just these three layers are actually segregated differently we ex we explain them one by one here but all work is done by application so application layer is actually uh, maintaining these uh, protocols like http https it is also responsible for format of data and it is also maintaining the time frame okay so three layers are done just presentation layers encrypts data also yes 
so there is one another role by presentation layer so that's why i'm saying just watch osi model video so session layer gives data to transport layer now all three layers done so now my data comes to one layer that is known as transport layer so the transport layer is a layer which is responsible for end to end delivery of data end to end delivery of data and this layer has two protocols tcp and udp so this this is a question which is asked by many interviewers see you may have when you are going for interview you might have one person who is going to say explain osi model theek hai to ek ek interview mein aisa ho sakta hai aapse pura osi model puche and so in one interview might be anyone will ask you whole osi model and in might be another interview somebody will ask you okay tell me what is application layer okay explain transport layer okay explain tcp udp difference so it totally depends on interview so there is no such interview question from the network fundamentals you have to learn all the thing you need to learn osi model layer by layer everything in osi model so what is the difference between tcp udp now this is another question or might be you have to explain in this so tcp whenever you send data whenever you send data you will get acknowledgments in tcp but when you send data in udp you don't actually receive acknowledgement what is acknowledgement just a receipt receipt of confirming that you have received the data so tcp is connection oriented oriented means this protocol believes in making connections and this connectionless means it is not believing in making connections so it's a reliable and this is not reliable why because we are not getting any acknowledgments right so we do three way handshake in this what is three way handshake that is another question so three way handshake i'll explain in udp you don't do any three way handshake right so this is all about tcp udp so there are many pointers like uh, this as uh, tcp has many things so now once you give overview of osi model so you might have questions so tell me i'll uh, tell you what are the questions so tell me what are the difference between tcp udp that is another question tcp udp the first question i have given you is explain osi model the second question is a tcp udp third question somebody might ask you is three way handshake what is three way handshake and one another question which uh, uh, is also good so explain windowing what is windowing okay might be many of you don't know what is windowing okay so these are the things we are learning here tcp header in lane transport layer tcp header so what is tcp header so this tcp has a lot of information source port destination port sequence number acknowledgement do rsv there is a flag also so first of all this tcp works on which protocol i told you it works on transport layer okay and transport layer adds store port numbers so transport layer adds port number remember it so when we talk about network layer so network layer adds what ip address okay and what data link adds data link adds mac address right so this is known as the packet or that in message of data link layer is known as frame the packet of network also is actually known as packet and transport in tcp we call this segment segment right so when the data flows from application layer to transport layer because in from application presentation session we are getting what data right we divide this data into smaller smaller parts that is known as segment so 
segment add information whenever anything added into each layer is adding something right when you see osi model every layer is adding something so this is known as encapsulation this is a technical word encapsulation what is encapsulation when every layer adds information like transport layer is adding port number network layer is adding ip address data link layer is adding mac address all layers are adding something that is known as encapsulation right when you strip out the information because when the data goes to destination it will strip out the information and when you take out the data so that is opposite that is known as decapsulation when you it's like gifting a gifting or wrapping a gift box right suppose this is a small thing you gift wrap and you will have more again a layer of gift wrap you will have more layer of gift wrap so when you open this box open this box this is decapsulation and when you pack a box when you pack a box this is encapsulation so wrapping of data is like encapsulation like have you seen onion right so onion has a lot of layers right so just understand when onion is actually growing it's like encapsulation when humans get that onion and the they open it open all the slice right so that is decapsulation okay got it so whenever we add in information that is encapsulation whenever we remove the information or whenever we strip out the information that is in decapsulation now in transport layer when this segment adds a port number it adds a lot many information so now let's talk about that so whenever transport layer adds a information right when we get a data suppose we get a data here this is a junk this is a chunk of data right this is a small data might be you have more 1000 packets of okay suppose you you are listening to a music right to listen one music might be you are sending 3500 segments i'm just sharing one information okay so to listen one music might be your computer and uh, might be itunes or gana.com whatever the music player you are using so to listen one song i'm just giving one figure so might be your system is taking 3500 segments and each segment will have that information that is source port source port is a port number port number which is generated by computer so you have three types of port numbers so first is well known so second one is registered ports registered ports and third one is dynamic ports so the well known ports range is 121023 these are important ones 10242491511 and this is 49152 so source port is this dynamic ports dynamic ports generated by a computer whenever you go to any website whenever you listen music anything you do from your computer your computer generates a port number and apply here suppose source port generated by computer what would be my dynamic port this is destination port so what is destination port every service has a port suppose you are uh, going to website https has a port number of 443 so if you are going to website then the port number will be 443 if you are sending a email there is a protocol smtp port number is 25 so you will use a 25 here so destination port decide what type of service you are going to use your source port generated by computer destination port defines what type of service you need okay so this is sequence number because you are actually playing a music and how your computer is understanding my first packet is this my second is this third is this so 
so whenever you send data to anyone let me give you one more example so whenever i send a data to this side right suppose i'm sending uh, a data hello how are you so suppose this data is not going in one packet to send this information i am having five segments so i'll put all the content in these segments right and i'll have a sequence number for each packet because if we are sending five packets to this side so the sender is sending all the packets and the destination side will reassemble all the packets suppose one packet goes down it will ask for retransmission so sequence number actually used to assemble and reassemble of data sequence number is used so that we can assemble suppose i am just one giving you one more example so you are staying in one home right now maybe you are staying in toronto right now okay toronto in canada right so now you are moving to some different place maybe you are moving to any other place right uh, maybe winnipeg or maybe you are staying in delhi you are moving to mumbai you can take any example so what you will do you will pack your bags you will ask for the transport they will come and they will pack all your material in boxes and whenever you go to destination you will open the boxes and reassemble your home item right the same thing whenever you send data so the sequence number is going to add the port number this is uh, this is kitchen things this is bedroom material this is uh, like my uh, dining hall material all the boxes will have a name this this goods is from kitchen this is like that right if you have shifted to somewhere you might have experienced this right so sequence number is like just to give a number so that we can reassemble the data because when we send five packets just imagine if we are sending 3000 packets and the destination side is going to reassemble the data so that you will be able to listen the song in a proper order suppose i i hope you are getting right so when you open a website it always open like in this way it can't open like vertically have you seen a website like opening in this way like this first this half windows appears then this no most of the times you have seen a websites open like this because it is coming the data is coming in sequence right so sequence number helps us so that we can actually assembles and reassembles the data so now there is acknowledgement number for each every sequence number because you send five packets you will get five acknowledgements right so i sent five five packets so you in this direction you will get five acknowledgements because if you don't get acknowledgement it means for five packets you will send five acknowledgement so if you don't receive any sequence number you will not send acknowledgement acknowledgement is a receipt of sequence number and what else is left so now this do is just a length okay so this do something if you see here so flags so do and rsv so these uh, do bit is a length bit so what is the header size or like that or rsv is a resource reservation which is not used commonly so the main thing i want to show you is flags so let's understand flags okay so whole thing actually what i am teaching you you have to explain in this way if somebody i ask you what is transport header what is tcp header at least three four things you should say sir in transport header on tcp header you have source port you have destination port you have sequence number you have acknowledgement so all the things you have to say but if while you are explaining might be directly the interviewer is going to ask you okay leave it tell me flags so tell me what are flags so there are urgent flag there is rsc flag there is ack flag there is a sync flag there is a fin flag what are these 
So when you want to send your data on priority, there is a flag called urgent flag. Whenever you want to terminate or you want to reset the connection, that is the reset RST flag. So when you acknowledge the data, you use acknowledgement flag. Whenever you actually send acknowledgement, you will make it this one. Whenever the pack, whenever you actually send the data with urgent, you, you will mark this one. So whatever the flag you will use, so it will be treated like this. So there is a sync flag whenever you send a sync message. So you use sync flag one. And there is a fine bit, fin bit, final bit. Whenever you terminate connection, both the computer send a final message to everyone, fin bit. So when you send, when you close a connection, you mark fin bit one. So fin bit, I want to close a connection. And this side fin bit is also one. So this is how they terminate connection. So this is overview checksum. Checksum is used so that your data il, data is actually not altered. Because when you send a data from one place to another, right? Might be there is a high chance the data is altered. Because internet is not secure. Whenever you send data, so you send a data with some value. Hey, we see hash one, two, three, something. So whenever the receiver sends, receive the data, it checks the checksum value is same or not. Because if data is altered, the checksum value will not be same. Okay, what is checksum? So whenever the sender, when sender sends a data, it sends a data with a checksum value and the receiver should have the same checksum value. Then only the packet will be, the segment will be received. If the checksum value has some uh, changes or have some difference the packet or segment will be discarded so checksum is for integrity what is integrity integrity means the data is actually good it is not altered it is a like authentic data okay like we everyone whenever you go to uh, any different country everyone checks your passport right so it's like your identity and uh, that nobody on your name is traveling, right? So it's like same. Whenever we send the data, we send with a code. It's like, it's not encryption. Basically, it's like a secret, not secret code. I'm giving one more example. So might be when sender send a data. So when the cable, cable got lost or packet got lost. So whenever we send data, we send in the form of zero one signals, right? And when that cable got disconnected for one second, might be the checksum value change. Because if checksum value change, so then we will come to know might be there is a problem, might be my link is down, might be uh, so something like that. So whenever checksum has a problem, the packet or the segment will be discarded. So this is also known as hash value, kind of yes, hash value. It is hashing, yes. So guys, let's understand last topic of the day. Three way handshake. And there is a field called FCS in data link layer. That is frame check sequence. That is also similar, but we check the frame. And in check sum in transport, see every layer, most of every layer has a check sum, FCS, these error detection things. So what is three way handshake? So, and how you are going to explain. So, it's very simple. When client machine wants to make a connection with server, it send a message before sending a data. When you use TCP applications like HTTP, SMTP, all these are application uh, transport layer uh, protocols kind of. So, they work under TCP, right? They are application layer protocols, but they use which protocol? TCP. Client and server. So client send a message called sync. So sync means I want to make a connection with you. And server sends a reply. I also want to make a connection with you. Sync means I want to make a connection with you. And server is going to say acknowledgement. Suppose you are going to google.com. So you will say Google, I want to make a connection with you. You send a message to Google. And Google will reply, okay, I also want to make a connection with you. and the server is also sending acknowledgement in the same packet. So server, 
is sending a data or a segment uh, with the sync flag one and acknowledgement flag one also. Remember the flags, right? So when we send data from this side, we will only mark sync as one. So one means on, zero means off. So when the data is coming back from client, it is also going to acknowledgement. It's like very simple. You send data, you do sync. When you acknowledge the data, you send acknowledgement. But three-way handshake means you are saying hello to server. Okay. And you actually acknowledging that thing. Very simple. When you send sync, you actually get acknowledgement also. So if you send sync, you should get acknowledgement. So now understand when you send data uh, sync in this direction, when you do, when you send a sync in this direction, you get acknowledgement. When you send a sync again, you will get acknowledgement, right? So sync, so you will get acknowledgement. So sync, you will get acknowledgement. Yes or no? Simple. Now these two packets are combined together, right? And these are known as sync act. Okay, very simple. So, and when we get, this is a computer and this is a server. So, when we do three-way handshake after this, we this is known as connection establish. So, after connection establish, you send data. You send data, data, data. But when you want to terminate this connection, you will send a final bit fin. So, you will get acknowledgement. And you will send a fin from this side and you will get acknowledgement this side. So when we terminate the connection, we use a fin bits. So these are known as four way handshake. You might not heard might many of you have not heard this three way handshake is used to make connection and fin fine fin bit means final bit and you get acknowledgement. So again, you send final bit from this side in this side, you get acknowledgement from this side. Okay, so this is four way handshake. When you terminate connection, this is known as four way handshake. So if you see ARP header, what ARP header is? Sender hardware address, right? Hardware address is known as MAC address or IP address? MAC address. MAC address. So layer, yeah. So one more information I'll share with you. Whenever you are going to see the packet or in Wireshark, just do one testing. So when you open a packet, you will see Ethernet, but inside this, you will see the sender IP address and the target IP address. Can you see that in the ARP yes. request? Yes, sir. Right. But if you check again, that ARP header, it will also contain the so sender IP. Can you see that? Sender IP, target IP. Yeah. Yes. So you can check this also sender hardware address, sender protocol address. So these protocol address is like your IP address, right? So tell me which layer is big, layer two or layer three? Layer two, sir. Always layer two. Yes. So if any anything is layer two, it means it is going to send the above layer information because data flows from top to bottom. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So your segments are going inside what? Packet? Yes, sir. Your packets are going inside what? Frame? Frame. And layer frame, 2 sends data. what? Frame? Yes. Oh. Layer 2. Then ARP data. sends frames, right? Yes, sir. ARP yes, is sir. a layer 2 and sends frame. So when you open that frame, you will see IP addresses also, but it is layer 2. The answer would be layer 2. It's not layer 3. People get confused, or maybe in an interview, they might get confuse you. Okay, so ARP is a protocol to get the MAC address from IP address. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Because if your IP is 1.1, 1.1.2, the packet ARP frame is going to 1.2 and it will it will get the MAC address of this device and send the ARP reply to you. Yes? Yes. Sir. But yes, we are sending this frame is layer 2. It's not layer 3. But when we open this layer 2 frame, it will have the layer three information. But if somebody has layer three information, it does not mean it is a layer three. Because layer three information is added inside my layer two. Okay, I'll ask you one more example. You will understand it better. So this is a router. Router works on which layer? Yeah, router and router 
makes the ERP table or not? Yes, sir. Yes? yes. Because whenever this this is FA00 and this is FA01, when the data goes from here to here, different port to different port, your router uses MAC address. Right? Because yes, when your router is sending traffic from this interface to when the traffic is going inside, in general, there is a small switch which is not visible, but it's there in between the router, right? Because the router is shifting traffic from FA00 to FA01. When you see a router, traffic is coming in FA00, traffic <laughs> going in FA01. So what exactly router is doing inside? Router is actually shifting the traffic. Is It's doing switching also. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So router does not work on layer 3. It is a layer 3 device, but it works on layer 2 and layer 1 also. Tell me the router gets the signal, yes or no? Yes, sir. Right. So router is layer 3, but it is it understands layer 2 and layer 1 also. So this is a layer 3 device, supports layer 2, layer 1 also. And let's take one example. If you are having a layer 2 switch, so tell me it only receives MAC address or it receives the signals also? The signal also. Yeah, yeah both. Signal so also. it is layer 1 also. Oh. So it is up to layer 1 and layer 2. That one is sub-layer, data uh, link layer, LLC and MAC. That is now different thing. Data okay. link layer has two layers. One is LLC, one is <laughs> MAC, right? So LLC is used so that the data link layer have a connection with the network layer. LLC is a logical link control. The connectivity between network and data link layer is maintained by LLC. And the MAC address information layer is added by this MAC. Yes, sir. ARP. Okay, so ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. Right. Address Resolution Protocol. And whenever your computer, suppose this is a computer, okay, computer, let's understand what is ARP and I'll answer it how to answer in an interview, okay. Suppose two machines are connected, maybe they are connected with a cable, might be they are connected with a switch, right. So, I am just to understand both the devices are in same network. So, maybe the computer IP is 1.1 .1 and the another computer is 1.1.2, right. Yeah, so they are in same network. So what will happen, like if I want to send a packet to computer B, so what I'm going to check, I'm going to check my ARP table. So every computer has a table that is known as ARP table, right? And whenever you send uh, a data, you check, before sending a data, you check your ARP table, right? In ARP table, I'm going to check what is the MAC address of computer B, okay? So the first point, I'm going to check my ARP table. The second point, I'm, if you have MAC address, then you will forward the data, forward traffic or forward packet or frame, right? You will not do anything. You will directly send forward frame. The packet will go directly. But if you don't have MAC address of computer B in ARP table, if you don't have, you are going to send what ARP request? ARP request. Right, an ARP request is a broadcast packet with the destination address of FF like this. Okay, this FFF means you are sending broadcast. If you have maybe 20 more computers, they all are going to receive that packet because it's a broadcast packet. But it is asking who is 1.1.1.2. So every packet is asking who is 1.1.2 and they are going to reject that ARP packet. But this device is going to reply because this is 1.1.2, right? So B is going to, so the A computer sends ARP request and B computer will send a ARP reply. And ARP reply contains the MAC address of B computer, MAC address of B. Okay, so this is how your computer actually store. So ARP request, you get ARP reply. And from ARP reply, you will add that MAC address into ARP table. So MAC address, you will be putting 
that entry into ARP table. Okay, so this is R. Now I'll show you practically. Okay. So these all are the labs which we exactly like cover in CCNP and all. Get into CCNP, then I'll show you. Okay, but as of now we are doing the basic lab ARP. Okay, so this is a lab portal which we actually give to our students if they enroll for CCNA, CCNP, any course in networking. So this is a lab access which we have installed a, a virtual big servers, right? So that you can do practicals. So if you want to know which software we have installed, that is a software Eve NG. Okay, but we have done a lot of customization in that. But if you want to use in your computer, this is the software which we are using Eve NG, right? So it has two variants. One is uh, like uh, the professional one and one is a corporate one and one is free one. That is known as community edition. So you guys can check that Eve uh, thing. Okay, so now let me take the two devices so i'm going to take windows but actually you need a very good ram actually uh, at least you should have 8 gb plus or maybe if you are going to learn more advanced courses you need 16 gb and if you are going to learn sd wan type of firewall courses you need 64 gb laptop also but it is going to cost you a lot so this is the reason we have invested a lot and build our servers okay so I'm going to take two machines now. Okay. So I'll show you how ARP works. So it's very basic practical. So I hope many of you will find it very easy. But we need to learn, right? So I'm just going to open these two machines. Okay. So the windows started. And this is first machine. And this is my second machine. Okay, so I'll go in first machine now. Okay, I'll. So there is a password test one, two, three. Okay, so in this device, how to assign IP? I'll go to a ncpa.cpl. This is a shortcut, right? And I'll go to this device and give IP. So I'll put one IP. So maybe let's give a one dot one dot one dot one. And this is a subnet mask. Right, so I'm not using any gateway because we are not going anywhere. And to another computer, let's go to another computer. So this is second computer test one, two, three. So another computer I am giving one dot one dot one dot two. Okay, so let's see if uh, I'm able to ping my first computer from here. So ping one dot one dot one dot one. Okay. Yeah, so you can see now we are able to ping, right? So from first computer, I'm able to ping my second computer. And let's check what is ARP, ARP hyphen A. Okay, so this is a uh, device which is showing me 1.1.2 is having a MAC address of 50.002, something like that. And type is dynamic. Dynamic means the computer generated that automatically. How to delete ARP table, ARP hyphen D, and your ARP table is again clean. So, what happens when I'm going to send a traffic, right, to ping, or if I'm going to send a ping traffic or any ICMP traffic? So, what will happen? You will receive a reply, but ARP sends before, like, ping. So I'll show you ARP. So again, the device has learned the MAC address. So it means whenever we are trying to send any packet to another computer, the computer needs MAC address so that the device can share the information. So what is happening? I'll tell you the whole story. See, you sent ping. So ping works on one protocol that is ICMP. So ping works on which protocol? ICMP. And trace route also works on ICMP. Right. Whenever I initiate a ping request here, ping 1.1.1.2, .1 .1 so 
So what will happen? The computer will generate one packet that is ICMP packet. Yes or no? Right. And whenever, when we send ICMP, we need MAC address of computer B. But if we don't have MAC address, I'll create one another packet that is ARP request. Yes. So it means whenever we try to send any traffic, and if we don't have MAC address, how many packets we will have? One is ICMP packet, one is ARP packet. Right. So tell me which packet will go first, ICMP or ARP? So that is my interview question to you. Now understand this is like scenario based question. What I'll do if I'm going to take an interview, I'm going to ask this question. Okay, you know, like what is ARP? I'm going to ask ARP. If you have a if you reply me or if you give good reply of ARP, I, my second question is that, okay, you know what is ARP. If I try to ping from this computer to another computer, what will happen? Computer will generate one ping packet and one ARP packet. So which packet will go first? So the ARP packet will go first and takes the MAC address. We got the ARP reply and once we get the MAC address, then the ICMP packet will go. ओके तो लेट मी गिव द सेम थिंग इन हिंदी आल्सो ओके सो सबसे पहले क्या होगा कंप्यूटर आपका लाइक यू विल होल्ड आईसीएमपी पैकेट तो पहले आप एआरपी रिक्वेस्ट भेजोगे एआरपी रिक्वेस्ट से इसका मैक एड्रेस लेकर आओगे एंड वंस यू गॉट द मैक एड्रेस जैसे ही मैक एड्रेस मिलता है तब आप अपना पिंक का पैकेट भेजोगे गॉट इट यस तो एआरपी पैकेट ऑलवेज सेंड फर्स्ट एंड देन अदर ट्रैफिक विल फ्लो yeah so might see i have seen lot of guys even they have done ccnp they might lack in basics so why i am training see i can take ccnp interview question firewall interview questions but so now you got the point so we send arp first okay now the scenario we are going to change the scenario we are going to change this time i am going to put a router okay so this time i am removing this one computer from here okay so i don't know how to delete man okay yeah that is the option so i'm going to put one router so let me add a router here l3 yeah so one router is enough so now this router uh, let me take one switch also this is a switch okay but the image is of router i need to change the image So these icons are actually customized by our brand networking. So you may see some logos whenever we turn on. Okay, somebody is asking, sir, why we send ARP first? See, I want ARP. We send ARP to get the MAC address. We send ARP to this computer B so that I'll get the MAC address of this device. You need MAC address so that you will share the information. Because your packet is coming in this direction. Yes. Just remember your TCP, IP or OSI model. You need transport layer details. You need network layer. You need data. Then only your computer is going to send 0 and 1 signals to another device. If you don't have MAC address, you can't share data. So I need MAC address. I need network ip address i need other information also then only i can send traffic so what is osi what is tcp ip these are known as protocol what is protocol protocol is a rules of internet right rules protocol means a set of rules like whenever we drive right so we drive on the right side right and sometime on left side it depends from where we are going and where from we we are actually going or coming from the destination so the same way like we have traffic rules we have uh, different type of rules uh, in schools colleges the same way we have internet rules these are protocols OS osi model tcp ip protocol so in transport in tcp ip protocol we have a rule we need ip address to go somewhere we need a mac address to go and then the device will actually convert those into zero one form so these are rules we can't skip that you have one type of usb port you have one type of 3 mm 
पॉइंट फाइव एम एम जेक टू लिसन म्यूजिक सो ऑल दीज आर स्टैंडर्ड सो दिस इज अ स्टैंडर्ड वी नीड मैक एड्रेस ऑफ द डिवाइस सो दैट वी कैन सेंड ट्रैफिक दैट इज रूट सो नाउ हाउ द पैकेट विल फ्लो नाउ टेल मी इफ आई वॉन्ट टू गो टू सम पर्टिकुलर डेस्टिनेशन ओके लेट सपोज वी हैव ए लूप बैक एयर वॉट इज लूप बैक इट्स इंटरफेस वर्चुअल इंटरफेस You can imagine we have a computer here. So I'll create a loop back. I hope you know how to create loop back. If you don't know, then might be you need more practice in CCNA. So loop back is just a virtual interface. So I'm just pretending this loop back is in different network. Maybe this is one dot one dot one, and my loop back is in two dot one dot one. So whenever you send traffic to your different network, what will happen? You can't send ARP in your network, right? so you will send arp request to which device you will send arp reply arp request to router because whenever you go in different network you need what router so router is a device to communicate between different networks so i think let me make more uh, good scenario i'll take Okay, so I'm just putting one server in different network, and maybe if you are not in touch in CCNA, so you might get a basic command line experience. So why I'm adding a router here so that I can communicate with a different network, right? So my uh, so my computer is in one dot one dot one network, and uh, the server is in different network. so we need everyone in the whole world is using router so that we can connect with different network yes or no if you agree say yes right so router is a device so that we can communicate in different network so why every home every company has a router because internet is a network of network internet is internet is a network of network so internet has many different networks so your home connection your office connection is also a different network you keep a router so that you can talk to different world right so this is the use of router so now the basic so now tell me if i want to send traffic to this device so do i this computer will check its arp table my second interview question for today so the computer will check arp table or arp only checks when we send packet in our lan network so if computer wants to send traffic to server right so computer will check arp table or not okay if your answer is yes sir it will check arp table for which ip address it is going to check arp table because i this network is different right i can't check or i can't keep mac we don't keep mac addresses of different network because your router does not forward broadcast remember always router does not forward broadcast an arp packet is which packet broadcast packet so if you send arp request here the router will not send arp request here because that router does not forward broadcast so your question or if your answer would be this so that is wrong okay now you got the point so now tell me if arp table is check which ip address i am going to check and for which ip address i am going to check the mac address so whenever you go into different network tell me what thing i what what ip address or i need help of what i need help of router right i need help of gateway yes gateway is the exit point of the lan what is gateway exit point of lan ye bahar jane ka rasta hai right so if you want to communicate outside the network you need gateway and if i don't have gateway mac address then i am going to send arp to my router but it will reply back from here only it will not go back or forward outside right so yes computer checks arp table but it checks what it checks router mac address whenever you go in different network computer will check the router mac address if you don't have router mac address the same process you will send arp request to what 
to router and router will reply back with ARP reply. Yes or no? Yes. So once we get the MAC address, we send the packet to a router. Router checks routing table. It sends the information to the server and server will respond back with the information and router will forward that same information back to the PC. That is packet flow. Got the point? How ARP works in a LAN network and how ARP works in different network. So in, AR, in LAN network, we generally send ARP request directly and we get ARP reply. This is how it works. But when you actually have traffic in different network, you will send ARP only to router and router will reply you back ARP reply. Okay, so if you are in LAN network, mein hai, right, if you are in same network, the computer will send ARP request, so the computer will, the another computer will send the MAC address in ARP reply packet and once we get the ARP entry, you will send traffic, so this is how it works, but when we talk about different network, the computer will check the ARP table, but it will check the MAC address. Okay, for router, not for the server, because server is in different network, you can't check different IP address, MAC, different network MAC address in your ARP table. We only store our same network ARP entries, we don't store a different network ARP table. Clear? Router which table maintain? Router maintains routing table. Router has a table which is routing table but yes router has also ARP table router also maintain one table that is ARP table because like computer and stores the MAC address of router router also stores the MAC address of computer so let's configure this and understand how is the packet flow okay so I have already in this computer this computer I have not given the gateway so first of all I need to assign the gateway, right? Because if you don't assign gateway, your computer will not communicate. ARP works on layer 2. So I'm going to put my gateway. Suppose I, my gateway would be 1.1.1.100. So you can give any, any IP to your gateway, but it should be in the same network. I'm going to have 1.1.1.100 on this side. Okay, I'll put this MAC address. So, uh, I'm going in Windows Server now. So, this is Windows Server. Control Alt Delete. So, this is Windows Server like Windows computer only. So, Generally, students uh, learn MCSA or these type of courses. We put Windows servers in our software. So, but the process is same. It's a Windows server. We can create Active Directory, a lot of things. Right. So, ncpa.cpl, the same information. See, nowadays, companies are hiring not for the individuals. Those have CCN knowledge, MCSA knowledge. They actually want... That every single guy should handle all IT department. It's like, yeah, MCS is a very good course. If uh, you are a fresher and uh, you have very less experience, so you should go because uh, it will open many doors for you. And if you are a, from a very small town, right? Suppose you are from uh, a tier two city not a very big city, you should also learn multiple things, not just one specialization. Okay, so I have given the IP in this server also. Now my another objective is I need to configure this router. So very simple commands. I hope you guys all remember, right? What are the commands to configure a Cisco router? Yeah, so everyone knows. So I am I'm going to say no. So what is this? This is a configuration dialog. If you want to automatic set up your router, no, I don't want to set up my router automatically. I'll say no, I'll do it manually. 
राइट तो कॉन्फ्लिक टी राउटर तो आई एम गोइंग टू इंटरफेस ई जीरो जीरो विच इज ऑन लेफ्ट साइड तो आई एम गोइंग टू गिव आई पी एड्रेस वन डॉट वन डॉट वन डॉट हंड्रेड टू फाइव फाइव आई एम नॉट यूजिंग सबनेटिंग हेयर आई एम यूजिंग द बाई डिफॉल्ट सबनेट मास्क नो शट डाउन इंटरफेस ई जीरो वन आई पी एड्रेस टू डॉट वन डॉट वन डॉट हंड्रेड टू फाइव फाइव डॉट जीरो डॉट जीरो डॉट जीरो नो शट डाउन ओके दैट सेट नाउ यूर राउटर नोज बोथ द नेटवर्क शो आई पी राउट and you can see one network and two network on e01 so let's see if computer is able to ping my server or not so what i'll do i'll go to command prompt i'll type the ip address of my server so tell me if computer and windows server is able to ping each other so now let's go and see if computer has arp entry so tell me arp will have entry of 2.1.1 If I am going to enter ARP hyphen A, so will this computer will be having the MAC address of two dot one dot one two one 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 का MAC address होगा यहाँ पे ARP we store only for our one network. This is LAN network. We don't store this for another network. Okay. So tell me router. So now router will have the MAC address of both Windows computer and Windows server. Router will have MAC address. Yes, so router will have where it it also maintains one table that is ARP. So you can see I have MAC address of one dot one dot one because this is in my network, and I'll have the MAC address of two dot one dot one. This is in my network also. Okay, so this is how you identify, and it's a very good troubleshooting skill also. suppose your computer you are not able to ping or something what uh, it's happening so you can just initiate a ping and check which is the what is your mac address so you can check in the arp table that 1.1.1 is able to ping and this is the mac address of 1.1.1 right so now you understand what happens so whenever i send a packet to another network so i'll keep mac address of router in my table the same way router is also making one arp table it will store my computer mac address also and this computer will also store right and same vice versa the router whenever router sends a packet to here so it will also keep the mac address of server and server will keep the mac address of router so both pc mac address will be stored what is the difference between arp and what is gracious arp so there is a arp called gracious or you can call it gratitious arp or some guys pronounce like that gracious or gratitious arp right so you can call that anything so gracious arp is basically to find the duplicate address if this computer is 1.1.1 and if you have another computer or maybe the server router is also 1.1.1 if you have duplicate ip address gracious arp is used to find the duplicate ip address in your network okay so what i'll do i'll show you might be my router is going to prompt me what i'll do on e000 i'll put ip address the same i have for windows okay so let's see if i'll be getting one message of duplicate something so guys can you see that one message i try to initiate a packet ip duplicate address so duplicate address 1.1.1 e00 sourced by so that is identified with the help of gracious arc okay so now let's understand what is trace root can you repeat that command again sir which command here which command you want to see i just change the ip address oh there is no command to check the duplicate address you will get a log message you will get a log message in your router there is no command you will get a log message and to make sure your log messages are enabled so you need to uh, give this command terminal monitor so this is a command to get the log messages if you are not getting the log messages
my third question i am going to say what is trace root what is trace root so basically trace root is a command to check from where my router is forwarding his packet right what is the flow how i am going to 2.1.1 so i'll say 2.1.1 trace rt so this is a command to check the root or check the path right so i'll say trace rt 2.1.1 and it is going to show me the hops what are hops it is going to actually show me the routers you can say that right first i'll explain you what is trace root how trace root works in most of the companies when somebody ask you what is trace root people actually how they answer it the trace root is a command to check the next hop or to check the path that's it they don't explain it very well so how it actually works and it trace root works icmp or udp also so basically trace root works or use a udp also and icmp also so let's understand so this is a computer this is my source and suppose we have a router called router 1 we have a router called router 2 right and maybe we have a router let's see from the image so let's see this image only okay so this is source this is your computer this is destination maybe server so what will happen your computer is going to send first in the first packet you will send a ttl what is ttl so ttl stand for time to live what is ttl ttl stand to time to live right so for every destination we have ttl value okay so whenever this packet uh, passes through the router it actually decrement your ttl by 1 okay suppose your computer wants to go to google.com okay and between your computer and google.com you have three routers okay between your computer and google.com you have three router whenever you say ping google.com what will happen so you will get a reply but if you mark in ping there is a option so you can put down the ttl value suppose you have given a ttl value of 2 only 2 ttl value 2 what will happen you send a packet from 2 it will decrement minus 1 so it will be having 2 minus 1 when computer sends a packet ttl value by default it's like uh, depends on the machine sometimes we have 64 128 depends on the machine so now suppose your by default ttl value is 64 but you have given a ttl value of 2 so when you mark your ttl value 2 so it, the router will minus it by 1 and now this router sees ttl value 1 and again this router will minus 1 so now the third router will receive a ttl value 0 and whenever you receive a ttl value 0 you will discard the packet so it means if you mark ttl value 2 you can't reach google.com the packet will drop yes okay okay so there is a field called ttl value m right in the macbook i have a m so i'm going to say ping google.com so what will happen the computer is showing me ttl value 117 but if i'll use ping hyphen m and phi or 2 google.com what will happen the packet will drop can you see that time to live time to live is exceeded right so we are not able to ping because there is a message time to live exceeded and we actually getting the packet drop so let's see if we are going to say ping hyphen m12 this time i i am able to ping google.com because between your computer and google.com so it is like less than 12 routers so if i am going to use m6 so let's see if uh, we are able to ping yes again we are not able to ping in 6 let's try 7 or 8 yes i am not able to ping in 8 let's try 9 or 10 yes again 9 is not pingable so let's try 10 yes so it means between you and google we have almost 10 routers 
in windows might be this m is that hyphen t or maybe uh, u or something you can just type ping and enter you will see all the options in windows so now what i am trying to explain you that router decrements detail value so how icmp or how trace route work so the my first computer so my first whatever the first source right computer or server so the computer will send this is my r1 this is r2 right and this is my destination so what will happen so by default ttl value is anything right you can set anything by default maybe the it's 128 but how it works so you will send a udp packet so it, you check on router 1 i want to go to 2.1.1.1 so router say i don't have destination uh, i have destination one hop away okay so whenever you send a packet with a ttl value first packet will send with a ttl value of 1 right so the router 1 says please exceed your icmp please exceed your ttl value so you will get a message back which is uh, i works on icmp icmp time exceeded so time exceeded means please increase your ttl value now this time computer will send a ttl value to so that this packet will go to this device because ttl is exceeded here so now router 2 can't send here because router 2 uh, destination is one hop away so again that router 2 send a packet back with icmp time exceeded and this time computer will send a ttl value of 3 right and this time you are able to reach your destination and then your server sends a reply back destination reachable or destination unreachable if your ttl value is not reached right so you will get a destination error message if everything is okay you will get a icmp proper reply so let's take one more example yeah so you can check this image also so now my first router we sent ttl value 1 and uh, ttl 2 3 4 so we need ttl value more please show the command of arp hyphen m something for ttl so that was actually i have done ping not arp ping m something Yeah, the command you were saying is ping hyphen m google dot com. That was the command. I have not done r hyphen m. I have done ping hyphen m. Okay, now let's imagine if you guys are taking my interview and you will be asking me. So please explain trace route. Okay, so I am going to answer in the same way. so trace route works so the first computer how trace route works your your answer should be so so how it is going to work i'll take a scenario so the first i'm going to send a ttl value 1 with a udp message so the router will send a back message time exceeded now if i am getting time exceeded my computer gets a notification please increase ttl value this time i am going to put ttl value 2 again i am going to get a reply back from router time exceeded so till the time you don't reach your destination you keep getting the time exceeded messages right so once you get the proper message reachable it means you don't have to send ttl value now theek hai to kaise chalta hai hindi mein bhi bata deta hu so the first computer jo hai aapka wo ttl value 1 laga ke bhejega तो जैसे ही उसको पता चलेगा कि यार डेस्टिनेशन तो बहुत दूर है तो वो क्या करेगा एक टाइम एक्सीडेड का मैसेज भेजेगा राइट right? फिर दोबारा टीटीएल वैल्यू टू का मैसेज लगा देगा बिकॉज जब भी आप टाइम एक्सीडेड का मैसेज मिलता है यू आर गोइंग व्हेन यू रिसीव टाइम एक्सीडेड मैसेज देन यू इंक्रीज टीटेल वैल्यू तो टिल द टाइम वी डोंट गेट रीचेबल और नॉट रीचेबल वी कीप इंक्रीजिंग द टीटीएल वैल्यू दिस इज हाउ ट्रेस रूट वर्क इंटरव्यू में आपसे ये एक्सपेक्ट किया जा रहा है आप ऐसे रिप्लाई करो तो वेन समबडी आस्क हाउ ट्रेस रूट वर्क तो दे आर नॉट आस्किंग यू टेल मी वट इज ट्रेस रूट तो दे आर एक्चुअली आस्किंग हाउ ट्रेस रूट वर्क तो दिस 
there is a difference between how trace root works and how what is trace root if you have a doubt sir who decide the ttl value so like ttl value is decided by dns servers when we put entry in dns server for some servers you will find uh, ttl value is uh, different for suppose if i'm if i'm pinging google.com right so let's see so you might see ttl value of 116 right so if i'm go, going to ping facebook.com so i might be this time i have ttl value 55 right if i'm ping nwkings.com right i am getting a ttl value 104 right so all the servers have different different ttl value right so ttl value is actually defined in the dns entries so every website whenever we ping something we have dns entry so in dns entries we actually put ttl values and some servers also so if somebody is asking you in interview what is a trace rt and trace root both are same trace root when you run the command in windows there is a command trace root trace rt so when you do trace root in linux or both are actually doing trace root just the command is different trace rt is used in windows trace root is in linux dhcp so what is dhcp so everyone knows dhcp is a protocol to get what dhcp is a protocol to get the ip addresses automatically yes or no yes so in general everyone ask you okay explain dhcp messages so the question might raise from dhcp explain dhcp messages and they are not asking you to just give the names so because everyone gives the name Uh, the how to remember the name messages dora remember discover offer request and acknowledgement okay so now whenever your client machine sends a packet to dhcp server so dhcp server could be server or could be router right because we can make dhcp server in windows server in linux server or also on routers also so dhcp server could be anything so my computer client machine tell me dhcp uses how many ports dhcp uses 67 and 68 so client works on 68 and server works on 67 remember it and it uses which protocol udp user datagram protocol so my first pc is going to send a packet discover to discover the server it's very simple to discover the server we are going to send discover packet and this will be my broadcast packet this will be my broadcast packet and whenever server gets the discover server checks the dhcp pool what is dhcp pool so pool means group it has a pool of ip addresses this uh, server has a ip address from 192.168.1.10 to 192.168.1.100 so it has almost 90 ip address available so the server will check the pool and give the free ip in the offer message so it will send a offer that i have a free ip 192.168.1.10 for you you are interested for this or not offer means just the server is sharing the information i have a free ip 192.168.1.10 server will not send the configuration in offer message it will only display the ip address not the configuration now your computer needs to send request message request means yes i want proper details give me all details give details now in the acknowledgement packet you will send you will get the configuration so basically you will get all the configuration in acknowledgement packet not in the offer message so whenever your client sends messages these are broadcast messages in most of the cases whenever server responds it they are unicast so your server to client messages are unicast your 
client to server messages are broadcast in dhcp rip ka question hai okay so one question raised by one guy right so he is asking so he has configured rip on two routers router 1 router 2 right and what is happening okay so he is asking he is running rip version 1 but uh, rip version 1 does not support subnetting but still he is getting the slash 26 this is the question so tell me uh, rip version actually you you have configured rip version 1 here but rip version 2 here right yahi kiya no, no, sir on, on on both the routers are configured nahi sir dono router pe maine rip version configure kiya hai so have you given a command note or summary has diya hai maine so it means you have activated rip version 2 सर अगर मैं वो नहीं दूंगा तो फिर भी सेम दिखा रहा है ऐसा नहीं हो सकता है आप चेक करो दोबारा तो दिखा रहा है मैंने आप इस पे ईवीएनजी पे किया मैंने सिस्को पे किया पैकेट ट्रेजर पे और उस पे भी सेम दिखा रहा है आ, एक आई जस्ट डू वन थिंग जस्ट यूज दिस कमांड शो आईपी प्रोटोकॉल्स एंड सी व्हिच प्रोटोकॉल वर्जन इट इज शोइंग यू वर्जन 1 और वर्जन 2 सो वर्जन 1 मैं आपको दिखाता हूं Yeah, so send version one or see version one, right? So you can see that it will uh-huh. not support because version one, uh, because rip version one also send update message, right? And version two also send update right, message. Right. But in version right. one packet there is no subnet mask. But in version two you uh, so actually we'll... put subnet mask. Yeah, rip version one pe slash twenty six kyun dikha raha hai? Us slash twenty four dikhana chahiye tha. Might be आपने पहले कॉन्फिगर किया उसको डिलीट किया होगा जस्ट गिव वन कमांड क्लियर आई पी राउट स्टार एंड चेक इफ आफ्टर समाइम वट रूट यू आर गेटिंग टू गिव दिस कमांड क्लियर आई पी रूट स्टार दिस इज टू रीसेट द राउटिंग टेबल डोंट गिव दिस कमांड इन प्रोडक्शन नेटवर्क यूर नेटवर्क विल बी डाउन ओके मैंने दे दिया अभी अभी आईपी राउट चेक करो हाँ अब चेक करो अब देखना क्या आएगा तो ओपन दिस राउटर फर्स्ट राउटर ये ये राउटर वन पे है शो आई पी गिव शो आई पी प्रोटोकॉल हेयर ऑल्सो शो आई पी प्रोटोकॉल दोनों पे सेम है वर्जन वन ही चल रहा है कैन यू गिव शो या या शो आई पी राउट भी दिया हुआ ना तो ये इसका कौन सी ग्रेजुएशन है माइट बी इट्स अ बग ऑन न्यू सिस्को पैकेट रेसिट नहीं सर मैंने इस पे भी चेक किया है ईवीएनजी पे भी नहीं चेक किया हां और रियल लोटर पे भी मैंने चेक किया जाके फिर भी सेम दिखा रहा हूं उसको ओके सो यू आर यूजिंग टोपोलॉजी दिखाना मुझे एक बार शो मी योर टोपोलॉजी ये इधर 192.168.1.0 का नहीं इधर 64 है सर तो आईपी ये स्लैश वन डिस्क दिखा रहा है ये 128 का नेटवर्क दिखा रहा है हम्म और मैंने ये हाँ, तो ये ये फिजिकल रोटर पे भी चेक किया डिक्टो सेम दिखा रहा आई हैव टू चेक व्हाट इज द इशू और मैंने वायर शार्क भी चेक किया उस पर सिर्फ वो आईपी एड्रेस सेंड कर रहा है सबमिट तो सेंड नहीं कर रहा है बट होल माय लाइक लाइफ वी हैव डन दिस लाइक इन दिस वे ओनली वी नेवर रिसीव्ड दीज रूट्स शो आईपी प्रोटोकॉल्स डू अगेन एंड सी एक्चुअली The showing version one, but with not a summary. Can you give one command debug IP debug. rip enter? Okay. Yes, so now what? B, uh, क्या करो? Like yeah. So can you see? I just want to see if it is sending a broadcast or multicast. Because version one sends broadcast, right? Yes, broadcast. Yeah, it is sending broadcast. broadcast. You can see two five five two five five. Metric one rip build entries. Yeah. No, actually, it does not support uh, subnetting because the packet uh, does not contain the subnet mask. You can see uh, here we are not sense. receiving subnet mask of the networks which we are sending from one router to another. Right, right, right. The problem might be. So, I mean, 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 और फिजिकल रोटर भी चेक किया डू वन थिंग यूज डिफरेंट सबनेट 
डिफरेंट मतलब यूज डिफरेंट डिफरेंट सबनेट बट स्लैश 26 देन यू विल कम टू नो आई एम सेइंग यूज 192.168.1.0/26 एंड इन बिटवीन दोस अपर टू राउटर्स यूज इट 2.0 टू डॉट जीरो या और मे बी एनी थिंग बट डिफरेंट सबनेट इवन दे आर डिफरेंट बट आई एम जस्ट सेइंग यूज डिफरेंट प्रीफिक्सेस there is a question called how trunk works so what is trunk by the way so i hope you all remember in ccna so there are two switches and if you have vlan 2 computer here right so you have to if you have vlan 2 here also and if you have vlan 3 here and you have different vlan here vlan 3 so by default this port so tell me uh, will this computer a will be able to communicate with c no because by default this port belongs to which vlan by default this port belongs to vlan 1 if you don't put your ports in any vlan they are by default in vlan 1 that is called default vlan right so if i'll change this i'll put this port into vlan 2 what will happen tell me guys this is a question i just so tell me vlan 2 will able to communicate with vlan 2 now if i'll put this interface in vlan 2 yes so you guys can check this in packet tracer or whatever the software you guys use yes they will be able to communicate if we will put this interface in vlan 2 and if we put this interface in vlan 3 what will happen only vlan 3 computers will be able to communicate but what exactly is the solution so that my both vlans will communicate to my another pcs like vlan 2 should ping to vlan 2 vlan 3 should able to communicate with vlan 3 what i'll do i'll i i'll add this port into both vlan 2 and vlan 3 and what is the best way to put all Uh, the vlans or uh, you want to allow multiple vlans then there is a port called trunk port so what is trunk port to carry multiple vlan information what is a trunk port to carry multiple vlan information right so that is the thing to carry multiple vlan information you are going to use which port trunk port ki pc b will able to communicate with pc d if i'll put this interface in vlan 3 okay so that is the thing so this is the reason we always mark our ports trunk in between switches right so that we can send multiple vlan information right so just for one more example so you have big cities like delhi agra mumbai so all these cities are connected together with in india we call these roads gt roads so grand trunk roads so trunk where all the small passages come together gt roads right so like all traffic from villages from big, uh, small cities uh, actually go from one city to one, another city with like if you are traveling so grand trunk roads are like that right so it's like that trunk you can just take that example so all your vlan 2 vlan 3 vlan whatever the vlans you have all your traffic will pass from this trunk there is in trunk port so there is a term called vlan pruning so what is vlan pruning so vlan pruning is of two types one is manual pruning what is manual pruning pruning means if i want that only vlan 2 will send traffic from this trunk port not vlan 3. right so you will go in this interface interface fa01 something and you will give a command switch port switch port trunk allowed allowed vlan 2 so what will happen only vlan 2 will be allowed on this trunk port if i'll give this command vlan switch port trunk allowed vlan 2 if you want only vlan 2 and 3 you will give comma and add 3 also so that is called manual pruning 
that is called manual pruning or you can say that uh, wheel and filtration you can say that but it's the technical word is manual pruning so if somebody is asking uh, any one of you what is wheel and pruning or pruning word don't get confused pruning is to restrict the traffic on the trunk port okay so manual pruning that you have to do it and what is automatic pruning or the uh, the pruning uh, automatic pruning is uh, so pruning means if any switch suppose this is a switch 3 and switch 3 has only vlan 2 but not vlan 3 so if vlan 3 is going to send traffic to this device what will happen it will be wastage of bandwidth right because this switch 3 only has vlan 2 ports this switch does not have vlan 3 so this this is a automatic pruning by default uh, like you can give a command of pruning on something on interface so what will happen switch 1 will never send a packet to switch 3 for vlan 3 because switch 3 does not have vlan 3 information you will only send vlan 2 packets here even it is a broadcast packet you will not send any broadcast packet to switch 3 also because that switch does not belong to vlan 3 that is called vlan pruning okay so manual pruning you have to give the command on interface and automatic pruning automatic pruning means you will just give a one command but automatically the switch will understand which traffic you are going to accept and which traffic you are not going to accept uh, reject okay clear so if you don't understand this don't worry uh, i would say just go and check vlan pruning concept you will understand okay but yes we have seen uh, this type of question may be asked it's very simple thing what is vlan pruning but might be just because of this technical word you might get skip this right so please make sure you understand pruning pruning means to restrict the vlan traffic okay okay so that was the question okay so now some guys actually ask these type of scenarios also like two switches are there they will put okay this is vlan 2 okay and this is uh, like vlan 2 right so this is vlan uh, like uh, they will ask okay do one thing i will not put this port into trunk port so because they will ask okay tell me if computer a will communicate to computer b so you will say yes uh, they will be able to ping each other but the person will say but i don't want to make this port trunk so what should be your answer tell me if you don't want to make this port trunk what you will do you will put this port into which vlan vlan 2 very simple actually you are taking the questions every question of mine in wrong direction because the vlan pruning or vtp pruning is different thing now i am talking about the basic concept okay you will put this interface in vlan 2 because vlan 2 will forward the traffic via vlan 2 because if this interface is not in VLAN 2, if this is interface is in VLAN 1, so VLAN 2 cannot, VLAN 2 traffic will not be forwarded to VLAN 1. So you can't send VLAN 2 to VLAN 1, VLAN 1 to VLAN 2. Uh, one question is that CRC error. Okay, one question you might get asked like uh, in on in my interface, there are CRC errors. So what are CRC errors by the way? So just you can go and check the properties of interface, show interface something. And in the last, when you check the properties, you will see some input error, CRC errors. Can you see that? Right. So it means whenever we send traffic to anyone, so we have some issues. So what are the problems you might have when you see CRC? 90% in 90% case is that you have cable issues right might be the ca cable is damaged might be there is some transmission problem might be the connector is not properly something so whenever we send traffic from one device to another so in most of the 90 percent cases the issues are layer one layer one means that could be like ports are not working properly cable problem connector problem and might be you are putting or swapping the ports between switches 
right and might be last the point was simple speed is uh, settings are like simplex or duplex right so that is the issue so you will be answering in this way so whenever you find any interface input queue errors in most of the problem so that problem is due to cable issues due to the ports uh, shut down or not short shut down right swapping the ports so that could be the reason so what is crc so whenever we send traffic right so crc cyclic redundancy check so whenever we send data so data goes into like 0101 01 format and uh, so whenever we send traffic might be due to loss of signal these zero ones will not be the same at the destination site right so that could be the reason you have a lot many input queue error for that crc so in 90% cases the problem is cable issue so these type of errors so if you want to understand crc i think the best way to understand crc is to go and check some network fundamentals or uh, you need to check the data communication okay. so uh, whenever we actually how devices detect the errors they actually divide the data right so with the division and uh, so so whenever we get any reminder right so it it might have some issue whenever Uh, when the left most bit of that remainder is zero, we must use zero zero instead of original division. So that is completely algorithms of the devices. We don't have to go deep dive into that uh, because we are not doing PhD, right? We are not writing theses on uh, any protocol. So you don't have to go that much deep. Just we need to understand CRC errors are. Uh, oh, most of the times they are generated when we have any cable issues. when the connectors are not properly right uh, so these are the issues so means if somebody ask you about crc error so uh, so your answer should be that the cable might have issues or the simplex duplex settings or uh, the last reason would be might be the device or something like somebody swapping up the cables maybe putting the cable into different port then putting in the diff same port like that the rest of you guys you guys can check about crc yeah sfp that comes in layer 1 right siddharth i have already mentioned the issue would be layer 1 so your fiber connectors sfp ports copper ports so reasons could be many so another type of question in an interview no crc errors is not the reason behind network outages crc is just uh, a warning to you that Uh, maybe the cable has a fault and it is giving you like warning kind of so means it's simple thing that data is getting interrupted whenever the sender is sending data to at the destination side might be the packets are not flowing according to what they uh, like the same way they used to so might be the cable has some issues or something so you can read this line crc cyclic redundancy check indicates when the data is corrupted so calculating from all data crc validates packet of information sent by devices and verify it against the data extracted ensuring it accuracy so we are going to make sure the data is correct at the destination site right so now another type of question you might get asked like application is not working properly or something suppose you are at client side maybe the destination side so you may be having you are doing some video conferencing or maybe you are having a, a live chat software or any any service right so if application is not working suppose i am i have installed one crm customer relationship management software right to manage my contacts so suppose your crm is working on some port number so there is a high chance that the routers or switches might have blocked that port so whenever we make acl and if application you are not, you are a user and this is a server where you have installed the crm or maybe you are uh, working on tele like uh, tele is software to uh, maintain the accounts and all 
to any application but user is not able to access the application like whenever you try to ping this router or anything it is like uh, everything is working you will be able to ping this crm also so you are actually able to ping this but the application is not working so tell me what are the high chance ek user hai wo application ko ping kar pa raha hai but application nahi chala pa raha okay so the user are, user is able to ping but they are not able to access the crm so tell me what could be the reason so the first uh, problem you might have the port is blocked because most of the applications works on different different port numbers and if your router or uh, switches if you have configured acls so you need to check if my port is not getting blocked so application in most of the scenarios when we put our firewalls or something so in most of the scenarios like software developers or the guys who test software testing guys they keep on asking for to network engineers can you please check the application because my uh, port is blocked or something like that so you need to make sure if anybody is working on application the port should be working enough so that uh, users are able to ping the or communicate with the crm or tel right so i would recommend you to please uh, learn acl in this case because acl is uh, in acl generally people don't ask too many questions but yes you might get asked about acl uh, like how you will block okay so might be few users like if somebody is going to ask you scenario based questions say, so if i want to configure so i want this user should able to ping this server but this these two users should not able to ping this server so what you will do you will create a acl so tell me how many types of acl you have so you might have knowledge of standard acl and you have uh, uh, extended acl right so in standard acl we can only block the source but in extended ip we can block source with the particular destination so source and destination is only applied when you you use extended acl but in standard acl only we can block the source means you can block according to the source ip suppose the computer ip is 1.1.1 1.1.1.2 1.1.1.3 1.1.1.4 1.1.1.5 right so you want to block you need to give the ip of 1.1.1.2 and 1.1.1.3 so if we are going to block these ips the router is not able to go in different networks also then you might have to block here also so it's just a strategy when you are going to learn or do a configuration of acl then you will understand what exactly is the experience of learning acl so i highly recommend you to learn acls and in acl there are two type of methods you can apply one is number mode one is named mode the only difference in number mode you can't edit the acl if you want to make do if you want to do any changes you can't do changes in number but in the named acls you can do the edit okay so the question was like a application is not working fine so there are high chance the port is not working sir if data got changed in between the path and the receiver will receive the data or does it drop the entire packet see uh, dear whenever we send data so we send our data with some values like checksum i remember right yesterday i explained you right so if checksum if data is changed or altered or any bits are changed you will get crc errors and the checksum value will not be the same so it means the device will reject the packet and you will retransmit it so what is native vlan so somebody asked me what is native vlan so native vlan is like untag packets so i'll explain you okay don't worry so this is a uh, cisco switch okay and you might have very small switches like d link tp link but these devices are like this right 
so suppose you put that all devices into vlan 2 okay and uh, but the these these devices whenever they send traffic right so by default this this device is in vlan 2 so whenever we get any traffic that will be marked vlan 2 right but if we don't mark this vlan 2 okay or maybe we have a device which is not actually applying any vlan or something like right so whenever we do any configuration i'll tell you the whole scenario in native vlan so i'll give a one design okay so this is a switch this is a switch there is a device which is not used nowadays hub so to understand native vlan this is the best apology so now all the switches or computers are here computer a computer b computer c computer d right so the hub device the this computer is like e device whenever the device sends data so hub will not mark any vlan right so this switch whenever the switch is going to get any packet which is untagged because your switches does not hub devices does not tag the information tag means uh, we are not putting that uh, device into any vlan so whenever we send data so that will be untagged traffic or untagged device right untagged traffic means that traffic is does not belong to any vlan so whenever the switch receives that untagged traffic the traffic which is not any vlan okay untagged vlan means untagged traffic means the uh, that traffic does not belong to any vlan so whenever you uh, you get any untagged traffic that will go into untagged vlan that is vlan 1 so vlan 1 is called native vlan so native vlan means whenever we have untagged traffic that all traffic will come to native vlan and by default vlan 1 is my native vlan okay got it so vlan 1 by default this is vlan for uh, this is native vlan so whenever untagged traffic goes it means they can only communicate with vlan 1 because untagged traffic is going in native vlan and native vlan is vlan 1 so if untagged traffic goes into native vlan the so native vlan is so untagged traffic will be able to communicate with the vlan 1 if i'll change the native vlan to 2 what will happen the untagged traffic the devices who are not those who are not actually from any vlan they will be able to communicate with the vlan 2 only in short in short whatever is my native vlan okay if by default it's vlan 1 suppose you made native vlan 100 so what will happen the untagged traffic the traffic which comes from very small devices like uh, unmanageable switches or so that traffic can able to communicate with the native vlan so your untagged traffic communicate with the native vlan and you can make any native vlan like vlan 1 vlan 2 vlan 5 vlan 10 that's your yes by default all ports are in native vlan So now let's uh, discuss about OSPF. So OSPF is an open standard protocol and it's the most uh, important protocol in CCNA because in most of the 80% companies are using OSPF. Why? Because we don't have any alternate. Because RIP only supports how many devices? Only 16 routers RIP supports. But there is a problem with the AGRP. AGRP works only on Cisco devices, right? Only Cisco. So Cisco is very costly, right? Uh, not even like, uh, suppose I am running a small company. I can't afford Cisco because it's costly. I'll go with the TP-Link, D-Link, or maybe I'll go with the HP devices or maybe Microtech devices or maybe the affordable ones. And all those affordable ones can support OSPF right a uh, is also cost yeah eagrp is open standard but still only cisco devices support eagrp if you 
buy juniper devices they don't support if you buy hp devices if you buy dell devices if you buy nokia devices if you buy uh, a alcatel devices there are a lot of vendors right not even a single vendor supports eigrp so this is a course which we actually uh, uh, normally deliver so that is like network fundamental right so then we go with the day two day three router basics practical assignments practical two assignments like this how we go right we assignments or something just whatever we do that is like assignment right so day 14 dhcp vlan so whenever any exam offer comes we update for that also so vlan assignment vlan with the trunk inter vlan why cloud svi rip practical eigrp ospf evng ospf ospf so there is a topic called switch stacking also which we have covered right collision domain broadcast domain acl standard acl extended acl nat ether channel hsrp right and in between that uh, there are a lot of other topics as well right ccna wireless bgp many of uh, training vendors does not cover bgp in ccna so we have a real labs also where we train students there is a automation four classes for only automation right so that is like how to uh, understand what is uh, automation so there are some extra videos like transport subnetting class c subnetting so when we keep updating the content if somebody does not have anything they can request if you are already our student if you don't have something uh, you guys can uh, just uh, put that thing uh, on the ticket i need this type of uh, video if that is related to your ccna content right so ipv6 section router password recovery extended acl ntp bgp ios is upgrade switch password recovery quality of service not even a single topic we have missed might be if we guys miss we upload some video so that the student can understand now tell me is this highly intensive syllabus or not because many of the topics you might not have covered yes acl bgp so there are a lot of see this is in depth 200301 but in 200301 cisco has removed a lot of syllabus but yes Still, people need to learn 200 125. So it's a mix. Whatever we teach, it's like mix of 200 301 and 200 125. Right. So standard and extended ACL, Sunil. Uh, like you can uh, you can check ACL video somewhere, uh, maybe in YouTube or somewhere. So uh, the only difference, like uh, you can standard ACL blocks according by checking source ip address but extended acl check by with source and i destination ip address so we were discussing about ospf right so in ospf so i told you ospf is a open standard protocol so generally people is going to ask you ospf hello parameter what are hello parameters so whenever cisco router or any router sends hello packet like if this is ospf ospf so whenever we start ospf on these two router what will happen the router will send hello to each other and in hello there are few parameters which they are going to check the first parameter ospf area if this router is saying i am in area one so this router hello packet should be in area one also then only they will become neighbor so the first hello parameters if somebody is asking you tell me hello parameters the first parameter is area should match the second is authentication what is authentication suppose you have set a password so you can give any password like cisco 123 so you will also send cisco 123 if the password is matching both the ends it means they will communicate or they will become neighbor so by default authentication is off you have to turn on the authentication why we need authentication uh so that uh the packets are actually checking the integrity that the uh, router is actually sending ospf packet not any attacker because the middleman can send ospf packets and the uh, routers may 
have issues okay so area authentication third is hello and dead interval timer hello and dead interval timer hello and dead interval so what is a hello and dead interval so whenever you send hello right there is a timer in ospf what is the timer guys tell me what is the time of hello time in ospf yes 10 seconds and what is the dead timer 40 seconds so if you change the timer on this router to 10 and this router is 9 right 10 is by default so they will not become neighbor so your area should match your authentication should match your hello and dead interval should match so there is a term called stub which comes in CCNP. So just understand there is a stub area something. So that should also match. So I am missing one point. Yeah, so that is MTU. MTU is maximum transmission unit. By default, it's 1500. So if you change the MTU of 1500 to 1490, suppose. What is MTU? What is the maximum packet size the router will send to another router? So by default, it's 1500. If you change this to 1490, then the neighborship, you will not form neighborship properly, agency. So MTU, so these are the five parameters. If somebody is asking you, tell me about hello parameters. So because one router is in OSPA version 2, one is version 3. Version 3 uh, and, uh, supports version 4, version 6 also. Version 2 supports only version 4. So IP version 4 I am talking. In OSPF, there is a version, OSPF version 2 only supports IP version 4. And OSPF version 3 which is like, uh, which supports version IP version 4 and IPv6 also. So I don't think they will create problem. They will, they should communicate. But only you need to run IPv4 both the sides. Obviously version 4 will not able to become a neighbor with IP version 6. So myth, we will not calculate M2, it's like interface property. So it's an interface property, maximum uh, uh, your one interface on the WAN ports can able to send a packet of maximum 1500. Yes, on ISP sides, right? So there is a limit uh, bigger than 1500 bytes packet you can't send over the internet. That is right. You might have heard frames you might have heard jumbo frames remember have you heard about jumbo frames or frames right so frames means that the maximum size is like 1500 approx you can't send uh, on van interfaces like if you are sending traffic to isp you can send one packet maximum of 1500 bytes that is your mtu but in your lan network in your data center network you are not going to isp you are actually forwarding traffic inside your lan or data center network you can send up to 9000 bytes of data per packet also per frame yeah jumbo frames yeah there is a term called runt runt this this is when your frame is less than 64 it's a very small frame right so that is a runt frame basically minimum 64 octets so one is giant frame one is runt frame so please go and check about these uh, giant and runt frames right so a giant frame is a frame whose size exceeds the maximum transmission unit any more more than 1500 bytes are known as giant frames and runt is a frame that is smaller than the minimum frame size that is 64 bytes so if your frame is less than 64 bytes that is runt and what are jumbo frames which are more than approx uh, 9000 jumbo frame size that is more than 9000 approx yeah so jumbo frames can be used in local area networks that support at least 1 gb and can be large as 9000 bytes sir what is the difference between router id and process id what is the use of them okay akash see router id is to identify the router in cisco we have Cisco router ID, right? So that we will come to know who is my router. OSPF, 
तो ओ एस पी एफ सिलेक्ट द राउटर आई डी सो दैट इट विल मेंटेन ए टेबल दैट इज कॉल्ड लिंक स्टे डेटा बेस बिकॉज ओ एस पी एफ इज अ प्रोटोकॉल कॉल्ड लिंक स्टेट वॉट इज लिंक स्टेट इट इज इट मेंटेन्स द लिंक एंड स्टेट ऑफ द लिंक राइट तो नाउ ऑल द राउटर्स हैव एड यूनिक आई डी लाइक राउटर हैज आई पी वन डॉट वन डॉट वन एंड सपोज this router has a same router id so tell me if they are able to send or they will be able to become a neighbor no they can't become neighbor because if your router id is same you can't become neighbor that means this is a loop so if your router id is different definitely they will become neighbor and they will manage all the information in the link state database like 1.1.2 is sending five links so will be updating all these five links in the link state database you call this table as a database table in ospf so database only is called as lsdb link state database right so router id is to understand who is sending the traffic and it makes a link state database so that you have proper information that is router id so every router has a identity that is called ospf router id what is process id now so whenever we give command router ospf 1 2 10 whatever so this number is called process id so process id means so you are running a process on it so one router in one router you can run multiple ospf also so it means this is a different ospf this is a different os uh, for example you open a google chrome right you open one more tab you open more tab so you keep updating you keep opening different different tabs so like for a computer this is a different process this is a different process right so the process means you are running different different processes so if you want to understand so in any computer you can go in your task manager right in your task manager so you can see there is a pid so you can see pid what is this process id every activity anything what we run in computer laptop routers which is they have all process ids but when you turn or when you uh, actually create ospf it is asking you manually what should be your process id so it means you are creating a process you can just run a command on cisco router show processes cpu to check all the processes in this core router to check all the things which are running in router okay so now another question ishmit process id is creating a process and autonomous system number in eigrp is different in bgp it's different so you can call this autonomous that it should be same in all the routers because whenever cisco uh eigrp sends hello packet like whenever eigrp packet goes it goes with the as number so whenever so like uh, in ospf hello parameters in eigrp hello parameters uh, the eigrp neighbor will check the as number if you put cisco eigrp as 10 and if you put 11 as number here they will not become neighbor so eigrp as number is like identification of a router under single administration area so in short if you have four routers if you have eight routers in your company all the company routers will have exact as number right i am talking about eigrp but in bgp as number you need to buy it from internet assign number authority right so this is a organization which actually sells public ip addresses which sells Uh, public ip addresses and as numbers right if you want to run bgp then you need to buy as number but eigrp as numbers are like private as they are not related to internet okay but when cisco made eigrp they thought it will be going to use in internet but maximum router eigrp support is 255 we can't use eigrp in internet so now ospf states so tell me how many ospf states we have we have already delivered to our students so they are like in it so it starts with down in it two way x start 
एक्सचेंज लोडिंग एंड फुल राइट तो दीज आर द स्टेट तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इन इंटरव्यूज माइट बी ओनली सिंपल क्वेश्चन विल अराइज ओके टेल मी अबाउट ओ एस पी एफ स्टेट तो यू नीड टू गिव ऑल द डिटेल सेकेंड थिंग तो somebody will say, okay, actually my two routers are stuck in X start state. So this is a stage where actually DBD packet goes. There is a packet called DBD, right? So if you have a problem in MTU, if you change MTU, they will become neighbor, right? We said MTU will create issue. They become neighbor, but they will not become adjacent. So whenever you have MTU issue, so 90% of cases. whenever somebody is asking you that my router is in x start or ex exchange state so you have a problem with mtu mtu okay so if somebody is saying uh, that uh, my routers are in two way state it means they are in uh, like D, they have a relation like dr and dr others so if your few routers are dr other and few routers like one router is dr other so the relation between uh, dr and dr other is a two way or what no it's full right so between dr other and dr other between dr other and dr other you have two way communication what is two way packet it means you will only send hello you will not send any packet okay so what is the difference between 224005 and 224006 because from ospf and there is one good question which will be asked tell me about your favorite protocol i have listened this hundreds of times which is your favorite routing protocol so what you will say rip then trust me you are not going to select you will not be getting selected right so you have to say ospf or eigrp but say ospf because everyone expect uh, to give eagrp is also favorite yeah i do understand because there uh, that is not too much complex to understand p bit n bit s yes, that is actually tam ramesh that is up to ccnp level if somebody is asking you p bit n bit it's like going in ccnp way So there is I bit also, M bit also, M S bit also. In OSP there are a lot of bits. Uh, what is the difference between classless and classful? Very simple. Classless means the networks which are not actually classless means like slash twenty five is classless, slash twenty seven is classless, slash twenty eight is classless. So classless means that is not by default. You have done subnetting that is classless. and class full protocols which does not support subnetting if uh, 24 then it is 24 class 16 is class 16 class 8 is class 8 even if you have a network on lan side you have configured 192.168.1.0 class 25 if you are running rip version 1 what will happen rip version 1 actually thinks that it's not 25 it's 24 basics trunking okay so what is a trunk port and how my question is this suppose two switches are connected right yeah so two switches are connected so vlan 2 and this device is vlan 3 right so how this vlan 2 whenever we send packet whenever we send packet from this device right so so switch send either a traffic of vlan 2 or either vlan 3 traffic if this vlan 2 will send information then the switch is going to tag the packet what is tagging so trunking is also known as trunking like trunk ports whenever we make our port trunks so why we make port trunks so that it can carry multiple vlan information why we make trunk so that vlan 2 vlan 3 all the traffic can go from one switch to another switch 
that is the reason we make trunk ports trunk ports are used to carry multiple vlan information correct right agree so now my question is that if we make trunk something is happening right something is going on so what's the exact process whenever we send vlan to traffic from this side which is going to tag this packet as this is a vlan 2 frame whenever we send vlan 3 information it which is going to tag this is a vlan 3 frame so what is this so inside ethernet frame so normal ethernet frame has a like source mac address destination mac address right so when so now actually this is ethernet frame now switch is actually tagging this frame and this frame is known as 802.1q frame so in trunk in trunking we have two protocols one is isl and one is 802.1q both are used to tag the packet so tag the packet means switch tags the frame so if i am talking packet or frame so just consider this frame only okay if i am talking packet in in this scenario still the, the consider that is frame okay so trunking means tagging okay trunking means tagging so that the switch will inform another switches i am sending vlan 2 packet so if switch gets vlan 2 traffic it will only pass to vlan 2 not vlan 3. okay so switches are using tagging and tagging basically means uh, these two protocol actually adds the information that this is uh, vlan 10 packet with this is vlan 20 this is vlan 30 so whatever the vlan is you are going to additionally add the details in 802.1q frame okay so 802.1q only takes four bytes to add vlan information and isl is a cisco proprietary which takes almost 30 bytes of information so both are working uh, like both are doing giving us the same solution they are tagging so now 802.1q is not eating up a lot of bandwidth because it takes only 4 bytes and isl takes 30 bytes so 802.1q is open standard right and isl works only on cisco device will you you are going to use obviously 802.1q because it is not taking a lot of data lot of the 802.1q is taking only 4 bytes and isl is taking almost more than 7x of 802.1q both are giving the same solution whenever we send frame by default whenever computer sends frame these are untag frames untag packets or untag frames so when switch forward that information to another switch it is going to tag that so that another switches will come to know in my company network this packet or frame belongs to vlan 10 20 30 so that is 802.1q frame okay and this uh, actually i'll show you something okay so it's a good software to use packet tracer for basic understanding to check the packets and all what's going inside so i recommend you highly go and check if you are a beginner use packet tracer for initial few days and then move to gns3 other uh, softwares or maybe other devices so tagging this trunking and all in interview many questions may get asked right so you need to understand about tagging untagging what is uh, these things So what I'll do, I'll take a switch here. Okay, I'll take one other switch here, and I'm going to put two two PCs like VLAN two, VLAN two, and this is uh, servers belongs to VLAN three, suppose. So we have devices; they belong to VLAN ten, and servers belong to VLAN twenty. Okay, so very simple. So this is how we create topology, right? and i'm going to turn on the devices so now you can see uh i have two devices laptop and server okay so what we are going to do we are going to add these device into vlan 10 and the same devices i'm going to add in vlan 10 here i'm adding the server in vlan 20 and here also in vlan 20 so what is the best way to configure go to switches right 
and i'll say what is the command configure terminal vlan vlan 10 name pc okay very simple vlan 20 name server so i created two vlans and what is the command to check show vlan brief and it will show you like we created vlans right so what is the second step after creating vlans i'm going to create fa01 this port is my trunk port switch port mode trunk right this is the command switch port mode trunk right and rest fa03 belongs to which vlan fa02 belongs to vlan 10 fa03 belongs to vlan 20 so let's go to fa02 so i'll say this switch belong by default all ports belong to vlan 1 can you see that all my ports belong to vlan 1 now i am getting uh, fa02 and adding this into vlan 10 and fa03 which is connected to server i am going to add into this group vlan means group okay so fa02 i am going inside and i am saying switch port by default they access vlan 1 now i am giving switch port access vlan 10 so what does it mean i am adding this port i am giving access to of this port to vlan 10 and interface fa03 I am adding this into switch port access VLAN 20. Very simple. And I have already made the port FA01 switch port mode trunk. Right. So let's go and check show VLAN brief. So you can see FA02 added to VLAN 10, FA03 added to VLAN 20, but you can't see VLAN or FA01 port here. So how to check on switches show interface status? So you can see that. FA02 belongs to VLAN 10, FA03 belongs to 20. But this is a packet tracer, it has some issues. So it is not showing you trunk here, but uh, in general scenario, FA01 will show you trunk. So what is the another command to check trunk port? Show interfaces trunk. So it will show you FA01 is a trunk port. By default, all the VLANs are allowed 121005, right? So what is the range of VLANs 121094 and in standard VLANs we can configure between 121005 and there is extended VLANs which can go up to 100624094. This is not commonly used, this is commonly used right standard VLANs. So you can see that FA01 trunk port is on and encapsulation is 802.1q which I told you it's 4 bytes. So whenever we send any information from this device, we have added this port into VLAN 10. So whenever any information comes from this port, it is going to add a tag, which is going to add the tag of VLAN 10. So now what else? So whenever this packet goes to another side, whenever we send this information to switch, switch will read the information, okay, VLAN 10, let me pass to VLAN 10 devices. The packet will be only going to VLAN 10 devices, not to another VLAN. So VLAN actually reduce the broadcast or you can say that divide the broadcast domain. So whenever if you have five VLANs, it means you have five broadcast domain. So what is broadcast domain? So it means if we are going to send a frame or packet, it will go to whole area. It means it has only one broadcast area, one broadcast domain. So now whenever the broadcast will go, it will only go to VLAN 10 or it will go to VLAN 20. So we have VLAN 10 broadcast area and we have VLAN 20 broadcast area. Okay. So I'll explain in Hindi as well. So by default, kya hota hai ki VLAN 1 se 4094 hoti hai, right? So jo bhi switches ke saath aapke devices connected hote hai, right? So by default, ये devices VLAN 1 में होते हैं, but whenever we add these devices into VLAN 10, VLAN 20, तो devices को नहीं पता, devices they don't know like they are added into VLAN. So it means if you add a port device into VLAN 10 or 20, तो switch will receive a packet which is untagged. So if you add this port into VLAN 10, 20, तो by default switch devices does not know that they are in VLAN. So whenever any traffic comes on FA01 port, it means switch will come to know, okay, this is VLAN 10 traffic. Whenever traffic comes to this port, it switch will come to know, okay, this is VLAN 20 traffic. 
and I have to pass that traffic to VLAN 10 and 20. So something is going on, switch is tagging something. So we need to understand how it is tagging. So to do this, I'm going to show you practical. So I'm adding a device so you can put the device into any network. So I'll say 192.168.1.1. Okay, so in general practice in companies, every VLAN has a different subnet. So you can take same subnet, different subnet also. I have added the devices into. Okay, so let's go to simulation mode. The simulation mode is there to check the how the packets are flowing in packet tracer. Right, so I am going inside packet tracer. I'll say I want to go. Okay, I'll activate simulation mode and I'll go to 192.168.1.2. So that is another PC of VLAN 10. I'm pinging from first PC of VLAN 10 to another PC. So again, the ARP is going to send, right? Because I explained to you this. So if we don't have MAC address of 1.2, what I'll do, I'll send ARP broadcast, right? So this packet ARP broadcast go to switch and switch will come to know, okay, this is Ethernet frame. Can you see that Ethernet frame? So this is inbound PDU details, means whenever the packet is coming inside your switch it's inbound but this is outbound so can you see that when the packet is coming inside this is ethernet but when it is going outside this is outbound when the switch will send packet outside it is outbound and it will show you 802.1q here in when the packet is coming it is showing you ethernet but when it's going outside it is showing you 802.1q it means switch is doing something switch is tagging so how switch is tagging there is a field called TCI so it's I'm just showing you in a very in-depth thing so in header in aids in normal Ethernet frame you have like Ethernet source MAC address destination MAC address this is a frame check sequence to identify if there is a frame error or something right and what is this ether type so this is a ether type i'll explain you later on but just understand source mac address destination mac address when the switch is going to tag this is vlan 10 traffic it is going to tag into this field tci so this tci means topology change identifier so i told you this uh, device is in vlan 10 tell me what is the hexadecimal value of vlan 10 what is the hexadecimal of 10 it's a right yeah so can you see that tci here so that is topology change identifier from here the switch will come to know okay the traffic is coming that is vlan 10 traffic got it so now in inbound i'll show you whenever the packet comes you will show see ether type now it is 806 right so now uh, first of all you understand from tci topology change identifier switches will come to know okay the packets belong to uh, which VLAN right so now when we send ARP it was showing you ether type 806 but whenever you go and check any other packet let me show you again let me do the ping test again right so this time okay I have one or two okay I have not created VLAN here I think right that's the reason traffic is not going. So I'll create VLAN 10, name PC, VLAN 20, name server, interface F02 was switch port access VLAN 10, and interface F03, switch port access VLAN 20, interface F01, switch port mode run. So I think that is the whole scenario. Right. So let's see if I am able to ping. Yes, I am able to ping. So it's very simple, right? So now, if I'm going to show you ping packet again, so now again you will see on the switch now, open the packet by clicking, double click on it. So in bound details, it is showing you Ethernet when the packet is going outside the switch, it is showing you 802.1. So the what is the catch? I'll show you. The catch is when you were sending the packet earlier, so it was like, in the inbound details, 
the first ether type was 806 but now it is showing you 0800 that is also interview question what is ether type so what is ether type ether type is a field in frame ether type is a field in frame whenever we send frames so how we come to know which layer 3 information i am going to carry because inside frame what you have inside frames you have packet and packet could be icmp packet packet could be any ospf or any any packet okay so you can see so this is a ether type which identifies ethernet frames are carrying which layer 3 information so if you have 800 it means you are sending ipv4 packet so whenever we send arp packet the ether type is 806 okay so earlier when i was showing you arp packet it was 806 but now this time it is 800 that is ip version 4 ether type right so ether type could be asked in interviews if somebody is asked you so tell me what is ether type so ether type is basically information which layer 3 information i am going to carry so ether type is a two octet field in ethernet frame it is used to indicate which protocol is encapsulated in the payload of the frame means which protocol is going inside my frame so if you send arp arp is 806 so whenever we send ipv4 it's 800 and there are a lot of other protocols like ipv6 it will show you 0x86dd so whenever you send any other protocol it will be it will show you something different right so that is the whole story of ether type Yeah, so ether type tells which protocol is used in sending the packet. Right, right. Yeah, ARP is a layer 2. Right. Yeah, ARP is always layer 2. But uh, I would say it's like a contradictory question. Uh, we can't state that it uh, only works on layer 3 or layer 2 or it's layer 2.5. Right. So it is like a mechanism so that we will get the MAC address of another device. But whenever somebody asks, you have to say layer 2 because in ARP layer 2, it will carry other information. So now what is HSRP? HSRP. So people will not ask you directly explain HSRP. They will give you real time scenario. They will give this solution like this. Okay, you have one ISP. You have another ISP here. Okay. So maybe you are using ISP 1, you are using ISP 2 this side. So you have company router, these are like gateway 1, gateway 2. So all your LAN network is connected with switches. Right. All your offices switches are connected like this. So I have a computer. If you go from this gateway, because you have ISP 1 connectivity. So you have 192, 1.1 suppose. And on gateway 2, you have 192, 1.2. So whenever computer gets the IP, either I'll get 192, 1.3. But as a gateway, either I have to get 1.1 or 1.2. If you take 1.1 as gateway, you will forward all your traffic from this side. If you take 1.2 gateway, you will pass all your traffic to this side. Okay, so how it will be asked, I remember one interview in British Telecom. So he asked me very simple question, even uh, like I, I want to send like uh, what would be my gateway? If I have 1.1, 1.2, right? If one gateway, if this link will go down, what you will do? Or maybe this link goes down, what you will do? So they will not ask you directly explain HSRP. They will create a scenario with few router switches and all. And they will ask you, okay, tell me, I want 1.1. If this goes down, I want all traffic shift to 1.2 automatically. They will not give you even a hint that he is asking HSRP. Okay, interviewers 
are going to create a scenario for you and might be you will be asked in a different different scenarios whenever you got a hint that uh, the interviewer is asking about the gateway load balancing gateway load balancing whenever somebody is saying okay i want to go from this side whenever this traffic goes down in a lan network we have only one protocol which gives a gateway a load balancing that is this hsrp so there is another protocol vrrp for open standard and glbp so all these protocols comes from gateway load balancing so gateway load balancing means if your router goes down i'll shift my traffic automatically to another internet or another router so that is hsrp right so make sure you understand so how we create hsrp so by combination of 1.1 and 1.2 so the router is actually make one virtual router and it has a ip suppose 192.168 1.3 so this is a virtual ip so one router will become active one router will become standby so this 1.3 is my virtual ip so i'm going to put not 1.1 as my gateway not 1.2 i'll put 1.3 okay 1.3 let me change because our computer already has 1.3 i'll put uh, 1.5 uh, computer address okay i'll change computer address to 1.3 so in short what i am saying so one router will become active and one router will become standby so that is a normal scenario now the tricky part is that if anyone is asking you i have two routers two like already hsrp is going on but my two routers are actually both are in active state what is what could be the problem if your both routers are in active state what will happen like two devices are connected with the device and both are showing active and one should be standby but both are showing active so what is the problem to so answer to this question is that both routers are not exchanging hello interface hello packets so hsrp sends hello after every 3 seconds and hold down timer is 10 seconds so if hello packet is not in sync if they are not able if the packets are not traveling from one router to another router then both will pretend both will say i am active and another router will say active so if both to say active like 90% issue is that either hello is not exchanged properly or maybe they are blocked with some acl or something so hello should be able to communicate with each other then only the device will be in sync one device will become active and one will become standby so the first question was like what technology you are going to use if you have only one gateway because if your one gateway goes down you have to shift your traffic to another gateway so for this reason you are going to use hsrp protocol so whenever this computer sends traffic from this side and whenever the link goes down you will automatically shift your traffic to this path so one router will become active one router will become standby so how to resolve both are active so you have to resolve by checking hello packet should travel from one device to another device so maybe acl is blocking you have to remove the acl or maybe the communication or the switch is not working properly so what could be the reasons we need to identify might be it's a physical issue the cables are not connected properly or maybe any firewall or acl is blocked because no one can stop hellos between these devices if you are going to block hellos between these devices they are going to pretend both are active router so they should be in sync then only your company network should be good enough okay so second type Sumit is asking, sir, can we make one router active manually? Yes, you have to increase the priority. So you by default priority of devices and HSRP is hundred. So you can mark this priority one zero five and here hundred. So by default, all the devices will use this router as active router. Even when we generally use multi layer switches in company networks, where you can configure. that all vlan 10 traffic goes from this side as active router and for vlan 20 uh, my another router will be active means this router will be active for vlan 20 but for vlan 10 it will be standby here 
this will be active for vlan 10 it's active but for vlan 20 it will be standby so this is also possible sai kumar that is very simple uh, like if anybody is asking you like i have one company router like uh, traffic is going to atel another traffic is going to tata or maybe another isp so your question my like how you will achieve like whenever this link goes down automatically the traffic will shift to this side so it's very simple right so you will create a default route with us ad value of 1 here and here you will put ad value of 2 so whenever your link goes down automatically all your traffic shift to vlan this ad value ad value 2 first to hop fhrp is a category so fhrp is not any protocol that's first hop redundancy protocol it's a category it's a category right under this category we have hsrp we have vrrp and we have glbp okay so in hsrp uh, like this Uh, is a Cisco. This is Cisco proprietary, and GLBP is also from Cisco, and VRRP is open standard. So this works on two two four dot zero dot zero dot two, and this works on two two four dot zero dot zero dot eighteen. These are multicast addresses, and this works also on two and I think one one two. So you need to check this, right? So HSRP works on UDP one nine eight five port number. So VRRP works on IP protocol, I think one one two approx. So please uh, make sure these things you can check on website, right? Yeah. So both works on multicast information. Yeah. Right. So Madhava two two four zero 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 two is like uh, an a multicast address so that routers can share information to router. So either you are using HSRP or so. Yeah, GLBP is two two four zero zero one zero two, correct. So that information, like we have PPTs and also, but nobody asks these type of things. Like, tell me what is multicast address. Tell me. So it's generally everyone is asking scenario based question. Okay. Yeah. So one scenario. It's a uh, not up to like CCN level I know, but it's. Uh, please explain load balance, Tarun. load balancing is it like uh, in lan network right so there is a protocol called hsrp which we are discussing right now so in hsrp what will happen so you will give ip here 192.168.1.1 and you have will give ip here 192.168.1.2 right so what will happen your computer will go right computer will get a ip suppose 1.3 or maybe 1.5 So either you have to give gateway one dot one or one dot two. If you give gateway one dot one, your computer traffic will go in this way. If you give one dot two gateway, the traffic will go in this way. So now, uh, what will happen when we run HSRP? So one router will become active, one will become standby. So now my another question is that. Okay, so let if you guys know, tell me. So. If a active goes down, how this device standby will come to know that standby wants to become active? Because this is the whole scenario. Whenever active router goes down, the standby will become active. Yes or no? Yes. So how this device will come to know? By actually, because you send hello packets. So if you don't receive the hello packets, what is the timer in HSRP? Three seconds for hello. And ten seconds for hold down. If you don't get any packet in ten seconds, you will become active automatically. And whenever this active goes down, it send the information that I am going down or like uh, I am down now. Like you have to become active now. So whenever the device goes down, it sends a message that is known as like HSRP coop message. That th these things are very in depth. So uh, this coop message actually inform the another device. I hope this is the correct one I am talking. So this device sends coop message to the device. Okay, I am going down, and then suddenly standby router becomes active. If we don't receive packets from this side after ten second, automatically the device will become standby to active. Okay, 
so now it's okay so that is very simple thing so now the question is different so the question is if this link goes down this become active now another question is that how switch will come to know because switch maintain a mac address table switch has a mac table where you will send all your virtual ip traffic because whenever we configure hsrp you create a virtual router right so that is the whole scenario so active active problem means you have hsrp hello messages issue so whenever one router how router will come to know that i am going down or something so hsrp sends scoop message or the hold down timer get expired right so the third question was like uh, device becomes active but how switch will come to know that the device has to change the mac address from this port to this port because whenever you send traffic the switch is forwarding all your traffic to this side but this switch becomes active so active information will be updated in mac address table how because switch whenever any device becomes active it sends a message that is gr gracious arp so in gracious arp the router will send up his own mac address and switch will update the mac address from there computers will forward the packet in the correct direction not in the wrong direction so whenever any active router uh, uh, like any router becomes active it sends gracious arp so that uh, what is gracious arp arp without reply what is gracious arp arp reply without request so arp reply without request is known as gracious arp and this also used in finding the duplicate address i have shown you earlier right so it has two like uh, gracious r does two things the so one is to check the duplicate ips and third is arp reply without any request because you generally give arp replies when you send actually request but this is uh, the switch is not asking you but whenever you become active you will update your mac address to switch a hey, switch my mac address is this and whenever you want to reach to to virtual ip the so 1.5 is suppose virtual ip so if whosoever is the active router is going to actually reply arp so i'll explain again okay so see again so this is active router and this is switch right so this is standby so what is happening to so whenever we make hsrp so both the routers are actually creating a router that is known as virtual router and virtual router has a ip suppose 192.168.1.5 this router is 192.168.1.1 and this is 192.168 maybe 1.2 virtual ip is 1.5 so the computer is getting a ip 192.168.1.10 and uh, the gateway is either 1.1 or either 1.2 so whenever we send traffic we send arp to get the mac address so who is my gateway i'll not say 1.1 or 1.2 i'll say my gateway is 192.168.1.5 so 1.5 is my gateway so always your virtual router ip is your gateway so whosoever is the active router is going to get arp request so whenever we are going to go on internet or somewhere you will send arp messages to your device so 1.5 is getting arp request so who is going to entertain all arp request who is active so computer sends a lot of arp request so all requests of arp will be taken care by active router right so whenever this active goes down the standby will become active so whenever an active is going to send a gracious arp to this device to update the mac address and we will change the mac address uh, from this link to this link so once we change the mac address uh, the switch will forward all your arp request to these devices and these devices will send arp replies see that is hsrp topic if three isp one down which becomes active 
So if you have three switches, one device at a time becomes active, another two will become in standby. The router with the highest IP address will become active. Or the another way is to set the priority. Okay, so, so that is there is a difference between load balancing and load sharing. So load balancing means you are actually dividing the traffic in equal parts and you are sending traffic to multiple parts. And load sharing, you are sharing 50% traffic or maybe you are VLAN traffic to one side and another VLAN 20 to another side. So that is load sharing. Okay. So load sharing. So it means you are sending VLAN traffic to ATL, uh, maybe VLAN 20 traffic to Tata, right? So that is load sharing. Load balancing means you are equally dividing the traffic. Suppose VLAN 10 traffic is going from both the links, from this side also, from this side also. That is load balancing. Balancing. And here is sharing. So HSRP, VRRP provides load share when we configure uh, VLANs and do uh, HSRP, VRRP in multi-layer switch, right? And but actually load balance protocol is GLBP. It works on UDP, right? And uh, this is the difference. Why area zero is backbone? So why area zero is backbone? So why area zero is backbone? So when we create, like when we add a router in any area, area one, area two, Right. So area one packets cannot be go if you don't have area zero. Why? Because this is a OSPF design. When you create any interface in area zero, and if this router has even a single link in area zero and additionally another areas, in simple words, when router participates in area zero plus any other area like one, two, any area that router becomes area border router, area border router, right? So when we have ABR, then only we can transfer packets from one area to another. If you don't have ABR, you can't send traffic from one area to another. So that is the reason area zero is known as backbone because it actually creates ABRs. If you don't have ABRs in your OSPF network, you cannot send OSPF packets from one area to another area that should be my answer Pratik is asking sir how to prevent the loop in layer 3 so basically Pratik already layer 3 means IP address so if you check IP header layer 3 means IP header right IP header so in your IP header there is a field called TTL value so TTL value is actually helping you to prevent the loops in layer 3 already so might be if somebody is asking you, it is just asking you if you know about the TTL or not. Because some guys, they don't directly ask questions in interview. They ask uh, like in another way. Because Pratik is saying how we prevent the loop in layer 3. So there are few loops which is called like one is a layer 3 normal loop. Layer 3, what is loop? So when the packet is going, so packet will keep rotating in whole internet or maybe you are sending traffic, right? But the packet is not getting dropped. It is just getting looping around all over the internet or maybe. So TTL value, whenever we go to anywhere like google.com, facebook.com, right? We mark a TTL value of like suppose a 70. So it means if we are going on Google, if Google servers are down, suppose, right? Thus, packets keep searching on the internet. Where is Google? Where is Google? Where is Google? So every router decrements this value by one. So it means your packet will go maximum to 70 routers and it will discard. Because if you don't have TTL value in IP header, then what will happen? You will have internet loops all over the world. That is the reason we have TTL value in IP header. But remember, we don't have TTL value in Ethernet frame. This is commonly we have seen we have layer two loops. And to prevent layer two loops, we have a protocol called spanning tree protocol, which actually disables 
one port whenever we have loop right so layer 2 has a lot of loop problem because then only uh, like uh, uh, one scientist created this spanning tree protocol in layer 3 we don't have loops normally because we have ttl value okay but in layer 2 we have loops because we don't have ttl value in it okay got it somebody is asking sir what is the difference between abr and dbr so there is abr but not dbr so area border router and asbr that is another router when we create when we run ospf with any another protocol like eigrp or something so with that router becomes asbr autonomous system boundary router and when your router have multiple areas like area 1 area 2 like this and area 0 so that router becomes area border router the spanning tree protocol in normal spanning tree protocol there is only one question asked in interview okay so the we have three switches suppose right so the mac address of this device is double a this is double b the this is double c so tell me which port will be blocked so now you have to ask okay sir tell me what is the port so uh, the person will say okay these are fast ethernet suppose these all links are fast ethernet for fast fast ethernet the cost of spanning tree is 19 right so in simple words these are like uh, all the cost of links are 19 if you have giga link you have a cost of 4 you have fast ethernet you have a cost of 19 if you have 10 gbps you have a cost of 2 so these are defined by i triple e these are spanning tree costs so how actually device block the port first one of the device will become root bridge so the lowest mac address will become root bridge so now this is root bridge right all the ports of root bridge are known as designated port right these are always in forwarding state these are known designated port so now just see bb bb device has a direct link to root bridge which is, has a cost of 19 this is direct link and if bb link will go from this path it will add 19 plus 19 this is a 38 cost link and this is 19 right so the lower one will become my root port let's see now c device now switch c also want to go to device a root bridge so that our direct link is 19 and indirect link from here it's 38 so again this port the lower one become root port very simple right so now b and c like both the devices has this link which is actually uh, going as an indirect link right so now b and c will check the again they will check or compare the mac address and b wins and c will actually block this port okay okay let's take one more example in this scenario i'll take four switches so these type of questions you will get in spanning tree okay suppose uh, somebody has given you this is double a double b double c double d okay so the device will become the double a device will become root bridge because of lowest mac address right and how they elect uh, the root bridges bpdu after every two seconds switches will send a packet or frame uh, this is a frame bpdu frame after every two seconds the device sends a bpdu message so that they will compare the mac address and priority by default priority is the same so generally the lowest mac address will become root bridge and this device becomes dp and dp all root bridge all root bridge ports are designated ports so double c device has a cost 19 here and 19 here so these devices will say this is root port so d d device this device has a cost 19 plus 19 38 and this device has a cost 19 19 38 both the links actually costing 38 to double d so it means double d has not a link with 19 cost so it means the port will be blocked of double D. But which side? Double B or double C? So from this side, this is BB MAC address. It is lower than CC. 
So it means this will be I am going to consider root port and this port will be block. And opposite to block port, you always have DP and opposite to RP, you always have DP port, designated port. So this, if you feel like it's fast track, obviously I have taken spanning tree for two to three, three hours, right? So if you don't understand this spanning tree, the what I'm teaching you right now, it means you need to learn STP also. So what is root guard? Root guard. Okay. So root guard basically it's a port. Uh, I'll show you what is root guard. So generally it's a protection. Suppose this device is double A and you have few devices. Uh, like suppose this device has a MAC address double B. You have this device is your good device like uh, a layer uh, high performance device okay so this device is a high performance devices or all the devices are connected like this and here all your computers are connected right like this okay so what is root guard root guard is if this device has a double a so it will send a superior bpdu that I have a lower MAC address, I want to become root bridge. So if you don't want other devices to become root, you will mark these three ports as a root guard. So I will give a command root guard here. So it means whenever I am going to get any superior BPDU, I will simply discard this. I will not accept the superior BPDU. Else what will happen? The lower device will become root bridge. So that is root guard promiscuous port is actually used in private vlans which is part of tcnp promiscuous port promiscuous port is used community ports promiscuous ports isolated all these things are related to private vlan brain to be root bridge of unknown yeah how to stop inter vlan in layer 3 switch ramesh is asking so there is a term in multi layer switch so that vlan 10 can communicate to vlan 20 how you will create a switch virtual interface you will create a switch virtual interface so if you want to block vlan 10 traffic so that it will not go to another vlan so you will simply create acl and block the traffic very simple you will create okay without acl okay without acl so you will stop routing, right? So by default, a multi-layer switches provides routing, right? So you can simply disable routing. If you disable routing, they will not communicate with each other. Okay, so Michael is asking what traffic path controls that can be used with VGP, how you can control routing when there are multiple paths to the same destination. What traffic path controls that can be used with VGP? How can you control routing when there are multiple paths? Okay, so Michael, that's a part of VGP. We need to understand VGP attributes. If we want to manipulate, you have multiple paths. Maybe you are going to google.com. So you have this path, this path. This is maybe ATL. This is maybe AT&T. You have multiple ISP to reach one destination, right? So how you will control the updates so you can place a lot of things so in bgp we have a lot of attributes like weight local preference right so we have uh, as path prepending we have med so we have a lot of attributes so that you can manipulate your incoming and outgoing traffic so we need to learn these things to answer that question so vlan hopping uh, basically it's an attack Okay, somebody is asking, sir, what is VLAN hopping? So VLAN is a, hopping is a type of attack, right? So like attacker is able to send traffic from one VLAN to another, right? It's called like double tag things. So in short, uh, I'll show you some image so that you will understand. So VLAN hopping, so it's like double tag thing. Yeah, so you can see this picture. Right. So what is VLAN hopping? So it's a type of attack. If you go into cybersecurity, so you will come to know more about this. So like attacker is in VLAN 1, but he's a tagging, he's a double tagging this 
packet. Can you see that? So by default, it's in VLAN 1, but it will say I'm in VLAN 20 also. So that is VLAN hopping. So the device will actually switch one will send traffic to VLAN 20 at that information. You can attack in another VLANs also. By default, you can't attack, right? But with VLAN hopping techniques, you can attack in different VLANs. So that is VLAN double attack or VLAN hopping. That is called VLAN hopping. Can how to prevent this? So that is VLAN hop attack. So you can see it's uh, double tagging the packet. It's, he's in VLAN 1 and he's tagging that information that I'm in VLAN 100 also. So how to prevent that? So how to prevent that you can change your native VLAN by default all the traffic uh, like uh, untagged traffic is coming in VLAN 1. You can change that native to another VLAN and there are multiple other ways, right? But as of now, this is native VLAN, which you can use. Sir, please, how to stop inter VLAN without ACL or disable routing? How to stop inter VLAN without ACL? Okay. There is a thing which is known as MAC calls, which comes in CCNP also. MAC address access list, MAC ACL. So you can put MAC address access list also. In CCNA, you have uh, knowledge of ACL, but uh, there is a technique called MAC access control list also. So you can block that all. Automation is not asked nowadays. As of now, till the time you are not applying for very high profile jobs, automation will not be asked. So guys, the most of you guys are asking the those questions which comes actually in CCNP level. Uh, so I hope you understand this program actually created so that I'll train CCNA candidates, right? So it means you have to learn CCNP if you are getting these questions in an interview. Like if you are getting BGP questions, if you are getting MPLS question, these all technologies, like if you are uh, like somebody is asking you BGP question, right? So BGP, if anybody is asking you VRF questions, MPLS questions, if anybody is asking you uh, related to like uh, IPsec, IPsec, DMVPN, okay, asking about HSRP, VRRP, GLBP in detail, right? If anybody is asking you OSPF LSAs, OSPF stub areas, like stub areas, LSAs, a lot of other, uh, like if somebody is asking you prefix list, distribute list, if someone is asking you BGP attributes, right? Asking you about MPLS uh, layer 3 VPN, what is RD value? RD. If you have heard these type of questions, RD value, RT value. If someone is asking you about IPsec phase 1, phase 2, I asking you about uh, IKE, what is IKE? Okay. Asking you about DMVPN phase one, phase two, phase three. So all these asking about private VLANs. Okay. Asking about Mac calls, PAC calls, port ACLs. Right. Asking you about switch stacking. Asking you about a lot of things. Asking about VTP version three. Asking about multiple spanning tree protocol. So that things I am writing here, all these things comes in CCNP. So if you are getting these type of questions and in CCNA, we actually cover overviews of the things. But if you are going for good interviews, they might get because everyone, even a fresher is learning CCNA, CCNP nowadays. And if you are a working professional, companies already have a standard now. They don't ask only CCNA questions. If you are moving into network engineer profiles, definitely they will ask you CCNA, CCNP. Additionally, if you have package uh, more than four to five lakhs, they will also ask you firewall. They will ask you, okay, on which firewalls you have worked. Okay, tell me like what is a stateful inspection, stateless uh, in inspection, right? Uh, like how you will create tunnels, how you will create failovers in uh, uh, firewalls. So you might be asked about the F5 load balancer, I rules. So there, so what should be the proper track? 
so i'll recommend you now it's all about career guidance right last few moments so i'll categorize the experience here if you have zero to one year experience right so if you don't have job also you can just try to enter into network profile so by doing ccna or maybe you can learn mcs or these type of things right okay if you have less experience go for multiple small courses so that you will get entry if you don't get entry then uh, try to learn multiple skills like ccna mcsa linux these type of programs so that you will get entry level job right now you guys can share your ctc experience i'll try to so ujwal has very low ctc but i'll uh, even approx 2 lakhs he is a network admin one year experience uh, but five years in call center uh, 2.5 years of gap so he is asking sir i have only 2 lakh ctc i have almost 5 to 6 years of experience uh, because i have i worked in call centers but now from last one year i am working as a network admin so but don't worry you will be definitely going ahead further your career so yes if you are asking sir what to do ccnp or firewall i would recommend you to go for ccnp first then go to firewall so i have one year experience ccna routing and switching in ccna security technical analyst okay palvi so palvi if you are experiencing uh, if uh, if you give interviews and people are asking you the same questions which i have written on the last screen so you should start with ccnp and go directly into firewalls guys don't go for ccnp security why i am telling you just telling you honestly okay see so if you have done ccna people will actually mold you to do ccnp security so what will happen in ccnp security like most of the guys will do two exams one is core one is svpn in here in both the exams you will learn about security fundamentals you will learn about vpns you will understand about uh, different different vpns but at the end of the day at the end of the day you will be learning one firewall only in both in this whole ccnp security that is only asa firewall and generally if you learn ccnp security the fee is approximately in india is around 50000 to 70000 training program for this which is approximately 1000 training program for ccnp security right you can check anywhere that is the normal standard but here you are learning only asa firewall which is not used by many companies because companies are using palo alto firewall and cisco is very uh, like uh, cisco is not top company in security like palo alto checkpoint these are top leaders these are top leaders like fortigate also so we have made a combo so that we can replace this ccnp security if you come to our website you will not find ccnp security we don't feel this is value for money because we make the courses which is according to industry standard even we have ccnp security trainers we have cci security and have you seen that we are teaching cci no because there is no need to learn cci if you have ccnp level good knowledge you can crack cci by yourself also we are completely different from training centers understand that perspective whatever they are doing we are not we are making courses according to industry standard so we made a combo that is palo alto checkpoint f5 where you will get this course in almost to almost like 35k inr or approx of 500 to 600 dollars right plus uh, approximately taxes and all right so in whole scenario you will be learning palo alto like you will be checkpoint you will be learning f5 all these are top leading brands so that you will boost your career whenever you will write your resume you will be adding new technologies like palo alto checkpoint f5 and if you search these terms directly nokri.com you will get up a lot of opportunities in this palo alto checkpoint f5 but these are advanced courses right so you should not go directly after ccna to this one so i highly recommend you to learn 
these things which i have shown you bgp mpls ipsec dv dmvpn private vlan concept there are a lot of things so don't go for ccnp security because you will not able to crack a lot many interviews so better what is the best recommendation so the best recommendation is go for ccnp enterprise so here you will learn a lot of topics and then go for this Palo Alto checkpoint F5 thing. And trust me, by doing this only, CCNA, CCNP, and firewall combo, you may have up to 12 to 15 lakhs package if you learn CCNA, CCNP, and this firewall combo Palo Alto checkpoint F5. But you should have some experience also. If you learn this properly, you can go up to 10 lakhs to 15 lakhs CTC in India. And also 80 to 1 lakh dollar, 80k to 100k yearly in USA, Canada also. Right. So what after that? If you already have that knowledge, so now how to become a network ninja? So my the first step according to our knowledge, CCNA, CCNP Enterprise, the firewall like Palo Alto checkpoint F5. And now move yourself into cloud technologies. Now the booster packs, after this, you have option either learn AWS or Azure. You can learn any cloud platform. Why? Because many jobs are actually opening for cloud network engineers nowadays. Right. And there is no need to learn automation. Right. If you have a requirement in your company if you work for a good company you can learn automation like uh, python for network engineers so that will be plus point so these are the things you will do after these are like our normal standard recommendation so after this you can go for these three alternatives either you can go into sd wan side right you can learn aws azure or you can learn automation so that is like add ons so these are add-ons, right? So it's like these are your normal standard thing. You have to learn to become a good network ninja, network engineer, whatever you would say. So up to 10 to 15 lakh CTC with having three to four years experience, you will be able to manage that CTC from these courses. But if you want more than 10 lakhs, if you want more than 15 lakhs, you need to go on SD WAN, then on AWS Azure or like automation Python. So, this is our recommendation. Okay, this is enough to go up to 20 to 25, 30 lakhs also. Rest, we have not discovered what should be the things, but next technologies, if you are asking me up further this, then again, more highly automation. So, CCNA candidates are getting confused, sir. I want to learn automation. See, automation is very far away from you right now. First, go by stage by stage. Right. Learn. You can't. And then try CCIE. After doing these things, according to industry standard, then learn CCIE. There is no use of directly CCNA, CCNP, CCIE will not give you a lot of exposure. Because you will be only getting a knowledge of Cisco devices. So I don't recommend this. So CCNA, CCNB, Palo Alto, Checkpoint, F5, SD-WAN. And additionally, when we learn CCNP, we will give you enough material so that you can crack your Juniper. Uh, like I'll guide you something how to crack Juniper certification. At least Juniper basic one or two certifications or knowledge you can have also. So try to indulge a lot of technologies and lot of vendors in your profile. So when you have multiple vendors, multiple technologies, and then only you will be able to grow definitely further. Okay, so that is whole scenario. And if you want to move yourself into cybersecurity and all, that is completely up to you. I'll not say anything because my whole experience was into network engineer so the if you want proper guidance uh, on uh, like maybe cyber security 
we have cyber security batches you can ask cyber security guys if you want to move yourself into servers cloud and you will you want to move yourself into devops so there are a lot of things see first create a roadmap for you so what is roadmap so roadmap means if i'm here right now what i'll be doing after one year if you have only ccn knowledge i recommend you within one year this is your timeline to so try to learn ccnp plus firewall thing which i have shared you so in one year you will be having that much knowledge even in six months you can able to complete this and after one year you suppose you get 3 lakhs right now and make a goal in one year i want at least 6 to 7 lakh ctc if you are on suppose 60k you will try for 80k dollars right so this is the strategy and after this uh, suppose you get a, a job in network security if you get a job as a network engineer only not security then learn sd wan right if you get into isp maybe you got a job in isp network learn mpls in core learn rsvp learn service provider technology like service provider technologies if you get into network security then learn more security things right so more security things maybe the expert level of firewalls maybe pc nse that is palo alto certification that is tcse that is checkpoint certification right that is like expert level certifications in network security and you will try to learn cloud security also so there are multiple technologies like zscaler right there are like uh, many cloud platforms which provide cloud firewall security so you will completely move yourself into this if you get a job as a network engineer isp so you have to choose according to i hope you got the right things what having ccnl okay ishmit sir i have two years of experience in development profile as a program analyst till jan but i am not good in coding that's why now i want to change my field to network profile i have my keen interest in networking since my graduation okay okay usmani saying sir i have done ccna linux aws azure so so see again you have more you already have good things in your hands right try to integrate mcsa here if you don't have job because you learned ccna and linux but azure only only azure will not work try to add mcsa here and definitely you will try to apply a system engineer jobs for network security engineer sd wan not only in normal network engineer sd wan security job also there so once you learn sd wan sd wan has another module that is sd wan security so if you are already in network security you can learn sd wan plus security module but yes what is the best thing about certification nowadays you can directly go into ccnp certification you don't have to pass ccna so if you are learning ccnp directly give an core exam or an rc exam and if you are on tight budget no need to do certification nobody is like 80% companies just see okay you have good knowledge you can mention i am giving you this thing if you write on your resume also that you are ccnp certified and you have good knowledge nobody is going to ask you about the show me your certificates i am just giving you trick okay but if somebody is asking you to submit the certificates just pass the certificates in 10 to 15 days it's very easy to crack right so but yes for to make your good profile you can write ccnp certification it's ethical it's not good but if you are on tight budget you can write like ccnp certification so if somebody will poke you okay submit your certificate so give exams and submit it right but nobody actually asked to submit your certificate in my whole 11 years of experience nobody has asked me to submit the proofs of i am certified or not so you can write in your resume but you should not write a lot many okay just one or two things you can show in your resume so mcsc is retired but i am telling you to learn i am not saying you to give the exam 
Okay, so you'll be getting an email for some discounts and the combo offers, right? Whatever we have, right? So now what I'm telling you now, so so I am sharing one resume template with you, okay? So that is the same template I am using from last maybe six seven years, right? So I am sharing that same resume template. The design means so you have to fill it according to your knowledge. So that is the same template which we use, right? Even my template was similar. So so you just need to click yes and you can add it and modify your resume. So that is, this is your resume template and it should be, you can modify this one, okay? So that type of resume, if you go in market, you might have to spend a few bucks to get that type of resume. But you have to clearly add a professional photograph here and rest, you can put your education, you can add your certificates here, right? If you don't have certification, still you can add few here and you can just write comment here. You can just write one line here, aspiring. Okay, aspiring means you want to get certified into this. Aspiring to get. So no one reads actually short form. So you can also clear that. Oh, I have already mentioned that aspire, aspiring to get these certification. Right, you can just reduce the font size. Nobody will actually just have a look here. And you are ethically correct also that you are trying to get certified in these. Right. So aspiring to get. So this is my strategy. And rest, whatever the skills you have, you can pick here, routing, switching, MPLS. If you if you are not good at BGP MPLS, you can reduce the line of this. Right. If you have good knowledge, you can increase the that technology. So you can put down the technologies here and you can just increase and reduce the bar according to your knowledge. Okay. It means you are giving a clear picture and whenever uh, your profile will be knockery.com, your profile will be attracted because you on the first page itself, we will be able to understand you have two years experience, you have CCNA, CCNP knowledge and you have that type of skill set. By looking at the first page only, recruiters selects your profile. If your resumes are like whole old traditional design, nobody is going to call you. Trust me. This is the first point recruiter select your resumes when your profile is actually good. So the second thing you will put down your summaries, you will add uh, the companies where, uh, where you have worked. You can put the logos of that also. And yes, uh, no need to write your uh, percentage, right? If you have more than one year experience, two years experience, and if you got 50% marks in plus two, 10th class or 60%, no need to write the percentages, right? Because in network engineer, there is no need to mention the percentage if you have good experience. So I have seen many guys have 10 years, 7 years experience and they have very good knowledge, but still they write, okay, in my 10th class, I have 61%. So why you give, why you give that type of thing, which actually demotivates recruiters to hire you. So don't write those things, right? Might be you are 90% in networking, but when we were kids, might be that time we were not able to focus in our learning because that was very young age, right? So we were into, so no need to write the exams, uh, percentages, no need to write the hobbies also. I have seen people have written hockey, cricket, a lot of anything. So if they are not related to your profession, no need to write that you are a guitar specialist or something like that. I feel like it's not relevant, right? If somebody asking an interview, that is completely different thing but no need to put in your professional profile. So uh, you need to modify this and you can download the PDF and submit in Nokri.com. Okay. So I'll share that link with you, everyone. So here you go. So that is like the template from my side to you. Okay. I hope you all guys got high value in the sessions, what you have attended here, right? We have scheduled interview for these guys. So this is first is Joydeep. Okay. So hi Joydeep. How are you? Uh, uh, sir, I'm fine. Okay. So tell me about yourself. Myself, Joydeep Haldar. I'm coming from Kolkata, West Bengal. 
and uh, I have done my diploma engineering in electronics and telecommunication engineer engineering uh, in 2013 and then uh, hardware networking courses uh, from InfoLab institution and now I'm doing job uh, in precision informatic private limited okay. so tell me about uh, your qualification what you have done diploma right yes sir okay and after diploma you have done any graduation no sir I didn't do that uh, I have done hardware networking course then I have done uh, MCSA and uh, now sir I'm doing job under precision under uh, a precision informatic private limited now uh, I have already completed uh, four years of experience in industry in IT industry okay do you have any plan to pursue graduation like correspondence or something yes sir I have a plan but not now I'll do after CCNP CCNA and Linux administration so shall we proceed with the interview yes sir okay I mean technical okay so what do you know about uh, like uh, ARP protocol the ARP protocol generally resolves a uh, MAC address with the help of IP address okay so I'm just giving you one scenario okay suppose okay. two computers are connected okay, okay. and if I'll connect okay tell me which cable will be used for uh, same devices crossover or straight crossover okay good so 192.168.1.1 and this computer has a IP of 1.2 okay? okay so let me assign the IP so why I'm not giving default gateway here tell me so there is no router so we cannot give the default gateway address okay I can give but there is no use right yes, yes and I don't have IP of that particular router yes okay so now let's go to simulation mode okay this is simulation mode if you familiar with packet tracer yes so sir. I'm going to ping from first PC to another PC okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to ping from PC 1 to PC so I'm going to type ping 192.168.1.2 so once I click enter so you can see two packets are there right two packets are there right you can see right right, sir. Screen. right sir. okay so tell me why two packets are generated when I ping 192.168.1.2 so it is actually trying to get that uh, routing table this get that uh, MAC address of that uh, another PC uh, but there is no okay. ARP table that's why two uh, two packets are there okay one is ARP and another packet is another packet actually you can see two packets here right one and two blue and green packet yes yes so, uh, so actually, one is a ARP packet and one is which packet what protocol I am sending you are uh, sending ICMP protocol Yes, so one is ICMP packet and one is ARP, na? Yeah, okay. One is ICMP, one is ARP, right? Okay. Because you are pinging from one computer to another computer, computer will generate ICMP, but ICMP, before sending ICMP, it checks the ARP table and we don't have entry in ARP table. That's why we are also sending ARP. Okay. Right? Okay, sir. So now tell me ICMP will go first or ARP packet will go first? Sir, we are sending ping messages now. So uh, it will uh, first uh, uh, first uh, broadcast that uh, ICMP message and it will wait for that reply, that acknowledgement. First, what will happen? These two pr packets are first packet is like open this packet and check this packet is what is written over here? data uh, ICMP ICMP yes ICMP so ping works on ICMP and yes. let's open another packet green packet and this packet is which packet ARP okay ARP okay 
तो ए आर पी वी आर जनरेटिंग टू गेट द मैक एड्रेस एंड आई सी एम पी वी आर सेंडिंग फॉर पिंग नाउ टेल मी माई क्वेश्चन इज विच पैकेट अकॉर्डिंग टू यूर एनालिसिस सो टेल मी विच पैकेट विल गो फर्स्ट फर्स्ट ए आर पी ब्रॉडकास्ट विल गो एंड एड्रेस दैट मैक एड्रेस ऑफ अनदर कंप्यूटर and then yes okay let's play this up. and see what will happen so which packet went first green green so this is the arp arp comes back which is arp request is for sending arp reply is to get the mac address now computer got the mac address of different device right yeah. okay sir now which packet will be sent now arp again or icmp now icmp now Yes. So we are sending now ICMP, and now ICMP is coming back, and now you can see we got the first ping packet. Okay. okay so sir. what is the process? So first ARP goes. Okay, that is known as ARP request. ARP reply comes back. Then after that you send a ICMP packet. Okay. Sir. Clear? Yeah, clear, sir. Now what will happen? Second ICMP will go. and third because windows is sending how many packets four packets four packet default. in linux uh, we sent five packets maybe it, it depends on which flavor we are sending in macbook uh, we continue send packets continue packets we need to stop those packets right it depends on which platform which operating system you are using by default windows send four packets and four replies we need right, right so sir. this is about arp so arp full form is address resolution protocol so if i change the address here 192.162.2 will this computer ping 192.162.2 no sir why because uh, the network is different okay so why computer is not able to ping different network why we yes. need a router i am asking yeah router is used to connect different network right but yes. my question is why computer a is not able to ping 192.162.2 means what computer will see this is the computer right when we type 2.2 there should be some back end process then computer knows okay i am not able to ping this device so what is that thing why computer is not able to understand 2.2 they computer check the sir. network id they yes, check sir. the computer network id will check the desk network yes. id right yes, so sir. network id would be for this is 192.168.1.0 network id 1.0 network id will be and 192.168.2.0 is for different right right sir this is the reason this computer is not able to communicate with the another computer clear now clear sir okay so i'm taking one router here okay 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 sir 192.168.1.1 will be my router ip okay, okay. and here my ip would be 192.168.1.2 so let me give the ip address here so if i'll create a dhcb pool okay i'm not asking you about the commands i'm just typing suppose i created a dhcp pool with default okay. router 192 okay so tell me if this computer needs a dhcp ip which packet this computer will send to the router you know dhcp right what is dhcp dhcp is a dynamic host configuration protocol and which uh, which is used to provide uh, ip address dynamically uh, to the host systems Okay, and how many types of messages or packets in DHCP? Messages, packets. Yeah, packets. Packets yeah. or messages? Just tell me anything. You heard mm -hmm. about Dora? Yes, sir. Yes, D O R A. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. What is that? Dora process means uh, the first that uh, host computer uh, the sends a. Uh, discover message to that uh, network okay then then uh, so first let me write here what you are saying so first p 
पीसी सेंड डिस्कवर मैसेज राइट यस पीसी सेंड अ डिस्कवर मैसेज टू द नेटवर्क टू फाइंड अ राउटर टू फाइंड अ डीएसपी सर्वर टू द नेटवर्क टू फाइंड द डीएसपी सर्वर इन द नेट ओके नाउ सेकंड पॉइंट ओके सपोज डिस्कवर ओके लेट मी क्रिएट द सिमुलेशन आल्सो आई एम गोइंग टू सेंड अ डीएससीपी ऑफर ओके सो जस्ट होल्ड ऑन सो दिस इज डिस्कवर मैसेज सो दिस इज डिस्कवर लेट्स सी दिस इज डिस्कवर और नॉट इट इट शुड बी रिटर्न दिस इज डिस्कवर मैसेज या सो इट इज रिटर्न ओवर हियर द डीएससीपी क्लाइंट कंस्ट्रक्टेड डिस्कवर पैकेट राइट ओके नाउ दिस इज डिस्कवर पैकेट and now this discover packet is going to the router clear okay. yes sir now router will send which type of message router then send a uh, offer a uh, pool uh, pool of uh, ip address okay router sends pool of ips or what one ip or multiple ips no no offers a pool uh, generally Router sends a uh, a pool, complete pool yes. of two fifty five addresses. Yes, yes. Okay, router sends a pool. Okay, then offers a pool. Then, uh, then PC requested a uh, uh, IP address uh, to that DCP server. Okay, you are saying router is sending. pull all ips to the computer and computer will choose one ip right you, that this is what you are saying yes yes think again yeah router send pull ip pull Sir. pool or single ip from the pool yes yeah, single ip from okay now this is correct router sends a single ip from the dhcp pool okay router sends a single ip from dhcp with which message offer right okay so router sends a offer message to give single ip from the dhcp pool now tell me what will happen next then yeah, uh, yeah. the of the uh, host system will ask uh, will uh, request uh, that uh, ip address uh, for uh, from that pool which type of message is that that is uh, probably arp dot arp why arp is coming in dhcp well, we don't have ip and without ip we can't generate arp right discover is to find the dhcp server offer is to provide ip from the pool now now pc will send request. one message one request message yes pc sends request message that dhcp server to the dhcp server to provide provide right. the offered ip offered ip okay suppose this router has offered 192.168.1.2 because 192.168.1.2 1 is free in the pool right So what yes, will happen? This router is giving the PC one ninety two one sixty eight one dot two, okay, and PC saying I am okay with this IP. Please assign this IP to me, right? So request okay. message is to give the same IP which you have offered in the offer message. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now PC sends request message to give the same IP which you have offered me. Now router is sending the configuration with which message? configuration with that ip address subnet mask everything now router is going to send right router sends ack message with the configuration means ip configuration mm -hmm. ip configuration means it will send subnet mask it will send if we have assigned gateway. default router so everything yeah gateway everything it will assign so what will happen the computer gets the dhcp ip so this is the configuration we got the information this is all ip configuration this is how dhcp works okay okay sir so in this question you are still confused about the dhcp messages so please try to learn in more deep discover offer request and acknowledgement okay sir okay 
ओके सर सर यू फर्स्ट आस्क मी ना दैट टीएसपी सर्वर व्हाट टाइप ऑफ पैकेट्स सो जस्ट गॉट कंफ्यूज देन व्हिच पैकेट सो दिस मैसेज ओके ओके नॉट एन इशू बट स्टिल इट्स गुड ओके 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 आई वांट टू कॉन्फिगर दिस राउटर इज इन माय लास्ट सर्वर रूम ओके This okay. router is in my server room. Okay, sir. Server room is on maybe ground floor. Okay, okay sir. This server room is on ground floor, and you are sitting on twelfth floor. Suppose this computer is on twelfth floor. So you want to, you are a network engineer in a company. So you want okay. to configure your router from the laptop from here. Okay. So which sir. which protocol you will configure on router so that you can access the router from the twelfth floor. telnet telnet will be used uh, to access remotely access the router okay how to conf- and uh, telnet uses which lines telnet uses which lines yes tel works on port uh, you can say that when we configure a telnet what what kind of lines we are, we use vt line vty 0 2 4 if i vty line Yes. What is the full form of VTY? Virtual Means, uh, terminal. Not full form. Yeah, yeah. Virtual terminal lines. Okay. okay. So we configure line VTY zero to suppose I am giving four. What is what does it mean zero to four? And that means we are giving access to five users. Okay, good. And suppose I want to assign different different user names. So what command I will give here? You have to give uh, login local, then password. Login local, then password. You have to say which password in a uh, enable password, password inside that telnet. Enable password. Okay. Enable, enable password. Suppose I have given Cisco now. Now you have you can uh, you can assign username and password. Okay, tell me how to assign. Just like a uh, username, uh, username mm-hmm. space, anyone name. Okay, password. Password. Anyone, right? Anyone. Yes. Okay, tell me how computer will access then. Then come go uh, next. Go to computer. Okay, suppose this is a packet tracer computer, but I want to access from. Means uh, in a real world, in a IT industry, in IT companies, when we access real router, which application we use? Which software we use to telnet the device? Putty we can use. Yes. So in real time, when we configure or when we have to configure our company routers, we use Putty software. And in Putty software, you need to provide give the IP address with the username and password. Okay. Yes, sir. So we have to type here IP address of the router. Suppose one ninety two one sixty eight one dot one. Okay, port number of telnet is. Ah, uh, twenty three. Yes, good. Okay, you need to choose the connection telnet and create new credentials. Username was anyone. anyone, and password was anyone. Anyone, and you can save the file also, and you just need to create. Suppose this is for my router one, and create the okay. session. So now just you need to double click on this, and you will get the CLI access, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So in packet tracer, how we con, how we do telnet? Just we need to go to the command prompt and type telnet one ninety two one sixty eight one dot one, right? Okay. Okay. So these are connected. Uh... Use uh, normal solar putty. So, uh, how we? No, no. Solar putty, putty, just a different flavor. Okay. So you can use either solar or either putty. Any any putty software. This is just advanced version. You can open the windows in tabs. This is the only difference. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So tell me about difference about TCP and UDP. Very fast. Okay. okay. Just take one minute and explain. Okay, TCP is a connection-oriented uh, 
transport and uh, UDP is a uh, connection less transport uh, TCP is reliable UDP is unreliable TCP uses uh, 20 byte header and uh, UDP uses uh, 8, 8 bytes right so in UDP what you have this is UDP header you have source port number destination port number length and just just check some right clear and TCP is 20 byte but that is good thing you have explained because when we take interviews uh, most of the people just they say tcp is connection oriented udp say connection less tcp uh, sends acknowledgement but in udp doesn't send acknowledgement but you have given a different point okay means that is a good point actually you have mentioned the header values so this is good okay the tcp is 20 bytes and udp is 8 bytes but try to learn the headers also because once you give the information the tcp is 20 bytes and udp is 8 bytes then interviewer may ask you header details also so joydeep overall it's a good interview you have mentioned some basic points in tel uh, tcp udp difference you have mentioned a good point also uh, but in the terms of uh, arp protocol you need to revise your concepts and if we talk about this what we call uh, DHCP, you need to revise DHCP. Yes. Okay. So learn again Dora process. Check in the simulation mode in the packet tracer how packets are going. What is means how router works and how my computer is sending a discover offer request acknowledgement. This all information you need to understand again. Okay. Sure. Because in this interview, I have given a lot of time to you, but in real interviews, you don't get too much time okay and uh, suppose if you have given just think before you answer sometimes you are in hurry just give the answer then you realize that this is incorrect and then you revise again OSI yeah. model revision okay okay then after that you need to revise the packet flow learn about arp protocol packet okay. flow means you need to understand how my packet is flowing you don't know the process how my traffic is going how my traffic is coming Okay, okay, exactly right. what happens. You send a ARP, router okay. send a ARP reply. Means your computer will store the router MAC address because all outside traffic, all different network traffic will be sent to the router and router checks the routing table and routing table forwards your reply. packets. You can say that. Means router checks the routing table and router sends the packets to the another router means you need to learn a lot of things you are not even yes, uh, you can say not a, even an average student i will give you only three marks maximum this is maximum okay so yes, i yes, want sir. next time at least eight okay okay sir okay hi liakat yes hi liakat how are you yeah i'm fine too liakat yeah. so tell yeah. me about yourself where are you working right now and presently uh, what are your career goals for next five years and uh, tell me about your education also so oh, please fine. start my name is liakat ali i am from merit india i did mc from iimt engineering college i have been working as a it engineer at nuclear power plant abu dhabi i have totally eight years of experience in it it's all about to me my goal is to get a job in a reputed company like yours where i can utilize my skill and improve my career path that's all oh, okay next uh, as of now you're working as an it engineer right yeah yeah I, what I are your job responsibilities in abu dhabi my job responsibility in my company as a troubleshooting of the network and uh, configuration of the switch vlan creating and uh, if any users have the problem then remotely access the pc and troubleshooting and if he need then we need to go there and uh, support the users and telecommunication also okay so in day to day activities what kind of problems you are facing from the means in day on daily basis what are the repeated tasks you are doing again and again suppose uh, in my last company i, I used to have uh, suppose uh, issues from the customer or issues from the uh, computers that they are not able to access internet or means what kind of 
daily issues you are facing in your company as of now daily we are facing like uh, some some user complain us uh, in we cannot access the internet then we check step by step what is the problem first we check the cable if cable is okay then we check the network connectivity we check the our switch and uh, if he need another vlan because we have here three vlan samsung hyundai and uh, subcontractor so we need to change vlan suppose he are uh, using hyundai vlan and then he need samsung vlan so we need to change hyundai to samsung vlan okay so what uh, which switches you guys are using in your company we are using cisco brocad and uh, dlink we are using so which cisco, cisco switches cisco yeah. cisco brocad mostly we are using brocad and then cisco and dlink also what kind of routers you are having in your company we have but that router i am not touching that router because that router no no um, but you should know network. about your company network right so yes 2811 voice router 2811 okay uh, 2811 router, router connected company. directly connected uh, south korea okay okay means this router you have in the packet tracer also we have 2811 so which ios uh, version you guys are using ios version so liaka tell me that if we talk about two company networks right suppose mm-hmm. uh, i am working with one company okay and uh, mm-hmm. my another company or maybe i am connected to one isp okay, okay. so okay. if i want to send all my traffic to the internet what type of routing i i, I should choose suppose this is my company router this is your 2811 router which is connected to south korea right yes this is your company scenario mm-hmm. okay and you may have 2960 multiple devices 2960 yeah. and maybe brocad company devices and yeah. you have three vlans which are uh, samsung vlan one is uh, mm-hmm. i don't know what was hyundai Those, hyundai hyundai okay and one another is suppose xyz Subcon- okay. uh, XYZ. subcontinental whatever so mm-hmm. you may you may have people from samsung vlan you may have yeah, people yeah. from hyundai, hyundai. and yeah, you yeah, may right. have from a continental or whatever XXL, okay yeah, yeah. so all vlans all vlans are in different network or same network different network sir okay and you have one router or how many routers you have in your company we have one router and all router that router connected to our firewall and firewall to backbone because we are using brocad backbone the south korea is your backbone yes backbone okay and okay. that backbone Leave we have firewall firewall is just for security yes. okay and so, that okay so three vlans traffic means for all three vlans your gateway is this router or you have any multi layer switch yeah multi layer switch we have oh, okay okay leave it then because maybe you Have not covered the multi-layer things from us. Okay, so we will talk later on for multi-layer. So all three VLANs are going from this router. Suppose we you have three networks. All okay. traffic is going to the backbone. Okay, like yes, South yes. Korea router, and maybe all multiple different locations also connected to South Korea router, right? Yes. Sir. Right. You maybe have yes. branch in different countries also, right? Yes. Singapore also we have. Okay, Singapore also. So all my traffic, if I want to forward all my traffic to backbone, what you have done in your router? If you don't know, what would do you choose? Means you will use static routes in this scenario, or you will create a default route to the backbone. Default route, sir. Okay, so I will create a default route in Abu Dhabi router, this company router, okay. and all okay. my traffic is going to backbone. yeah this is what is happening means all your traffic is going to the backbone router with default route right yes yes so now backbone how backbone is connected to your network you have configured a default from backbone to company router you can forward all your traffic with default route to the backbone right yes yes how backbone is suppose if you do one side routing what will happen 
your traffic goes to backbone but backbone will not return back to your uh, network so how your backbone router will forward the traffic to your lan network that's what i am saying you will configure static route here in on backbone or you will configure default route default route we configure okay if you forward a default route on backbone router what will happen all your singapore all other countries traffic will come to your company network yes yes right this is yeah. you this is what you want in your company you said you have multiple locations and they are also connected to south korea router right yes yes so suppose this south korea is is your central office or maybe just imagine this is your headquarters okay okay so you have this is your branch so you have created a default route to the headquarters and now yes. these branches also have a default route pointing this side yeah yeah right, right. default this right. side default this default side that side yeah and all branches will have default route this side yes yes or no yes yes so if you create a default route on headquarters to your company what will happen your all traffic is coming to your company network yes this will create a routing loop what it will create routing loop yes okay yes. so we always use default routing only in one direction not on the both direction hi nihar so tell me about yourself hi sir myself uh, nihar ranjan das from odisha i have compl- uh, completed my graduation in uh, fm university baleshwar odisha then i am working uh, in uh, marketing field ruchi company marketing executive uh, one year then after study for competitive exam then i, I come for, i am interested in it so that uh, studying it and uh, doing course in that thing also so tell me about your education in terms of uh, degrees and all Yes, sir, degree BSc, sir. BSc. Yes, sir. BSc in which field? Science, IT. Science, sir. PCM in science. Which stream? Ah, uh, PCM pass. Tha, okay, sir. science. Okay, Nihar, where are you working right now? Are you working somewhere right now, or you are not working? No, no, sir. Before I am working. Now I am studying, sir. Hyderabad Jet King. Okay, okay. So they are not covering CCNA? No, networking But has this... going on. Okay. No, I am asking. They, uh, they have one year, two years course, right? Six months, sir. Six, Six months. So, are you not getting benefits from that? Or? No, because of sir, in their maximum time, I explain in Telugu, uh, so that I am trouble, so that I am joining uh, network team. Because the, in that class, sir, all students are uh, in the local, in Telugu students. Uh, only okay I- okay got it okay nihar so so tell me in those few days like in what you have learned from us so what topics you know better I means like what topics you have done which you can explain well network essential uh, osi topology answer uh, plan one okay just give overview of osi model osi model is yes nihar yes sir osi model is open system interconnection developed by iso mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. seven layer um, structure to understand uh, network the reference model that it is this is mm-hmm. not in real uh, in real time this is used uh, tcp mm-hmm. model uh, osi mm-hmm. model understand the uh, network That's it, sir. Go on, go on. And uh, uh, seven layer is application layer, presentation layer, session mm-hmm. layer, transport layer, and uh, network layer, data link layer, and uh, mm-hmm. physical layer. In application layer, in application layer, all the application and the software and web browser are working. Uh, then. Mm-hmm. then is a presentation layer presentation layer means a data in which format in application layer data in the form of data in presentation layer 
mm-hmm. in the form of data uh, presentation means uh, data in the in which format suppose uh, we are uh, browsing um, audio video that format are mp4 mp3 in this uh, decide this uh, decide uh, presentation layer uh, session layer means uh, time frame session time to create frame. sessions create and manage session mhm higher pot number mhm okay go on with another layer go to tra- go to transport layer now what transport layer does transport layer means sir uh, it uh, deliver data in in to in deliver data uh, in transport layer mm-hmm. protocol working tcp protocol and udp protocol uh, tcp protocol sir it's a reliable udp protocol is not reliable tc protocol ask acknowledge acknowledgement and um, udp protocol no acknowledgement and uh, tcp is slower than uh, udp uh, udp is fast and um, mm-hmm. tcp uh, transmit data retransmit and uh, udp not uh, retransmit and uh, this network this is the heart of the OSI model and network layer. In network layer, data in the form of in net. Sir, sir, transport layer data in the form of segment in a uh, trans uh, network layer data in the form of packets. IP is adding in di- network layer IP IP adding then it has uh, packets. Then sir, uh, in network layer uh, uh, device use uh, that is router data link layer data link layer. the form of um, frame mm mm-hmm. then sir um, okay uh, what is frame and in uh, i packet when um, uh, that uh, in that um, come from transport layer packet then sir uh, mac address is added then it's uh, yes then it's goes up uh, frame then sir physical oh. physical layer data in the form of bit that is a zero in one form so you can see guys uh, this is ip packet header version 4 okay and you can see version number of ip protocol so this is the first portion you can see this is a version 4 this is the first field we call this version okay version means if this is a version 4 we will be putting 4 here and if it is a 6 it will be 6 over here so the version tells whenever you send any traffic suppose this is your laptop okay or computer so you send traffic over the internet and it is going to google.com and the google ip is uh, like maybe 70.1.1.1 so whenever you send your packet from your computer like 192.168.1.2 so whenever we put ip version 4 in the detail whenever you send a request i want to access google.com so whenever we send packet that ip details are added so whenever ip address is added into the packet this is what we call packet okay remember the basics guys uh, when we say packet packet means when we have ip address on it when we have ip source ip and destination ip we call this packet when we talk about frame it has as the source mac address and the destination mac address okay and when we say about segment segment so that is having source port number and the destination port number okay you i think you already have that information so whenever we send information suppose there is a router and we say router is a layer 3 device right layer 3 means network layer and network layer only understand you are below layers like packet frame it will not understand the ports so if any router is getting that information it can only check the source ip destination ip and then it can check the routing table where to send the packet so whenever we send information to router router checks ip packet and all the ip header detail is inside the packet okay so now you can see this is a version version means if it is a version 4 or version 6 so now if we talk about header length if we talk about header length what is header length 
so header length means so you can see the rows one row first row second row third row fourth row right can you see that right so these are the rows so generally it start from 0 and it can go up to 31 so 0 to 31 total how many bits 32 bits okay so ip header is of 32 bits no why because we have many multiple rows here 1 2 3 4 5 like that generally we call it five rows and this is why 32 into 5 is how many bits guys so 32 into 5 is 160 bits correct right so 160 divided by 8 okay if you check what you get 20 bytes so this is why we call ip header is of 20 bytes okay so your header length decides that packet is having how many rows if it is showing four so the packet size will be four okay four into 32 that is approx you can calculate 64 128 and 128 if we divide by 8 uh, that comes almost uh, 8 uh, 16 approx right i think yeah right approx so that frame that packet is of 16 bytes not of 20 bytes so your header length decides how much rows or how much uh, head, what is the header length generally it is a 5 but sometimes it can be 4 as well but most of the times it is 5 so this is why every time we say that ip header is of 20 bytes so next important thing is tos what is tos TOS stand for type of service. Type of service means that is completely quality of service. Quality of service means uh, like if you check the type of service. Uh, suppose you are sitting in a meeting room and you want to send a meeting packets first. Not uh, just take an example, guys. Like there are two type of traffic in your office. One is very important meeting is going on. Okay, very important meeting going on. and there are few your team members are downloading or watching youtube so tell me which traffic is important for you meeting or downloading videos from youtube yes meeting is important right so what we are going to suppose meeting we have this in vlan okay suppose our meeting room is in vlan 10 and the guys who are downloading the data they might be in vlan 20 so we can give high priority to vlan 10 because meeting room is in vlan 10 that is a different group or you can also uh, if you don't want to put the traffic according to vlans you can put your traffic according to video and audio suppose you want to give priority to audio calls and you want to give priority to video calls and then you will give priority to downloading okay so that you can set also so this is what we call type of service quality of service okay and if you check type of service Okay, so in type of service, if you check, okay, there are many bits. So it's a very uh, like uh, it's predefined also. So if you check the enterprise media net quality of service design, okay, and if you check uh, their quality standard, what should be the quality? So you can see. So there is a IP precedence value. okay and there are some af bits so that you will actually learn in quality of service topic okay so there are some classifications you can see that for interactive video there is a bit af41 streaming video cs4 so in short in short if you change the bits 001 010 0110 so if you change the bits in type of service so you have eight bits here right eight bits means you have eight zero and ones here so consider this like if you have 8 zero ones you can play with the zero ones and you can prioritize your packet according to the standard suppose you want to send a critical traffic then the zero ones will be 10100 okay and because these are not 8 so uh, add double zero in front of that okay so that is called ip precedence 
okay and uh, there is a uh, some assured forwarding rate forwarding php assured forwarding ahp and there is another dsp so that is basically part of a uh, quality of service topic so in short this type of service will help companies to give or to implement quality of service okay and this is very important it's not uh, like we should uh, like as a company if you are a big company you want to prioritize your traffic then you have to play with the tus that is a type of service okay and when you put quality of service now now understand we have given priority to meeting and we have set a bit okay suppose uh, we have given af41 to this okay suppose uh, the high priority number ओके okay, अगर हमने हायर प्रायोरिटी नंबर दे दिया है इफ वी हैव असाइंड हायर प्रायोरिटी नंबर तो व्हेन यू आर गोइंग टू सेंड ट्रैफिक एंड द राउटर इज गोइंग टू सेट दिस टीयूएस 010101 लाइक दिस एंड व्हेनेवर इट इज गोइंग टू इंटरनेट एंड ऑल सो देन द कनेक्शंस विल कम टू नो दैट इज अ हायर प्रायोरिटी पैकेट ओके सो यू कैन प्रायोरिटाइज योर पैकेट सो इट इज इफ इट इज अ डाउनलोडिंग ट्रैफिक पैकेट देन यू कैन नॉट सेट दैट बिट but if it is a audio format or video traffic then you can actually set higher type of service okay so that is for quality of service in short if someone will ask you okay explain ip header okay how you are going to define that i'm going to cover once you complete the ip header okay but first understand version which tells the the packet is a ip version 4 or ip version 6 okay then it tells the header length generally it is 5 Uh, so header length tells how many number of rows and options we don't take okay so but it's like 5 so 5 into 32 it's 160 bits and if we divide by 8 because to get the bytes so that is around 20 bytes so type of service is for quality of service your answer should be a type of service is actually for implementing quality of service to prioritize the traffic you can just mention in the interview prioritize the network traffic okay so this is a packet length okay so you must be thinking we already discussed the header length but what is this total length is in bytes because you are going to this packet is going to carry the data also okay so this data this is going to carry the data also so the maximum segment size is 65535 okay to the power of 16 bits so generally it is in bytes okay 65535 bits so you can see that is the maximum okay so 65000 so remember this is to the power of 16 so this is 16 bytes okay so this is 16 bytes the total length value so now you can see the version header length type of service and total length in bytes so again i repeat total length basically tells the total size of ip header total size of ip header ip datagram which includes the data also data plus header information that tells total length and maximum size can be 65535 because if you uh, do to the power of 16 okay so total length includes the data and header length so what is identification can you see that identification identification so whenever we send data from one device to another device whenever we send data to one device to another device so uh, there is an identification number there is an identification number which is like a unique number so which actually because we the computer is not going to send only one packet the computer or uh, like suppose your pc or might be google or youtube will have a lot of exchange of packets so you will not only send one packet you might be sending 3000 packets 5000 packets so identification tells like it is a unique number which differentiate one packet with another it is like a different number so that you will be getting uh, the devices will come to know this is a different packet identification is like a unique number okay like if you have studied router id so router id is uh, like all routers have different different router ids to to have the unique id like identification is like a unique id yeah sequence number comes in ospf that is completely different identification in ip header is a different thing so ip header like 
when you send a lot of many packets, the, every IP packet is having a different, different IP header. Okay, remember, remember when we do fragmentation, jab hum fragmentation karte hai, when we divide our packet into smaller chunks, so then that time, how that computer will come to know that yes, the device is doing fragmentation because you have divided the packet then those fragmentation have same unique means all that fragmentation packets will have same number suppose a123333 three, three, three is like number so all the packets will have same digit because you have divided the packet so agar aap packet ko divide kar rahe ho to jo number hota hai identification ka wo same hota hai okay but when we don't do fragmentation when we don't do fragment fragment means divide the packet Okay, into uh, packets, fragmentation. Okay. So that is fragmentation. Also, when we do fragmentation, fragmentation are max the same ID value. So that receiving host means receiving side will assume these packets are fragmented. So now, like I'll tell you what TAC engineer does. So as uh, when I was TAC engineer, right? So when we, what we see, that from sender A to sender B between two routers, if packet is coming, okay, and if it has fragmentation, we check the packet unique IDs, okay. So it helps also in troubleshooting, but normal network engineers will never do troubleshooting based on identification. Only TAC engineers will actually do deep, deep dive, which we call uh, uh, TCP dump analysis or IP header analysis. So that what we use in TAC profiles, when you actually into routing team or switching team, then you actually troubleshoot with the identification number also. Okay. So when we troubleshoot the packets, we analyze that the packets are receiving at the receiving end or not. It is uh, like in the fra how fragmentation will work. Okay. I'll come to that point. So now like, uh, let's see if you have prepared for the interview or not. Okay, so if somebody is going to ask an interview, what you have to say IP header, the first is version, you which tells version four, version six, then it tells the header length, like uh, most of the times it is five, it means five into 32, 160 and 160, 20 byte type of service is for quality of service to prioritize the traffic total length tells what is the IP head, what is the IP datagram size. Means it tells the uh, IP header, this all, this all is IP header. Okay, means your 20 bytes, 20 byte is your header. Hai na? So 20 byte ka header ho gaya. So 20 byte is header and you are going to send the data also. Suppose you are listening music or whatever data or you downloading anything. So that is your download, that is your data. Okay, uh, so it can be of 1000 byte, whatever, suppose that packet is of 1000 bytes. So the total, total length in bytes is this. So means header plus data, header plus data. Okay, that is total length in bytes. Identification, it's a unique number by all the packets. It's a unique number by all the packets, but make sure you share that knowledge also. When we fragment the packet, then the packet identification number will be same. So now if we talk about flags, flags so if we talk about flags, so there are three digits. You can see this is a three bits. Okay. So we have three bits. Yeah. So in the, yeah, let me remove this. So when we talk about flags, so flags is basically for fragmentation. I told you about fragmentation that you want to do fragmentation or not. Okay. So bit is zero. So there are three bits. Zero means received. If the bit is zero, so that has means received, reserved, sorry, not res received, sorry. Okay. It's reserved. Reserved. Okay. So bit one, if bit is one, it means no fragmentation. Means half fragmentation nahi karoge. So if you have two, so that means you are going to do fragmentation fragmentation is needed. Fragmentation is needed. Okay. 
so how we we can't type two here because it's a it's all in bits so how to how you are going to type two remember 8421 okay so what will be the digit for the here 010 if the 010 means two it means fragmentation if the bits are 010 here it means fragmentation is required if the bit is 001 that tells the one okay one means no fragmentation so that means fragmentation is not required okay so bit one is used when no fragmentation is required okay what is fragmentation okay so guys again i am telling you fragmentation suppose you listening a music okay tell me suppose you are listening a music any any uh, any song you are listening okay so if we listen any music mostly the one uh, because uh, we have downloaded mp3 files we know like it is generally between 5 to 6 mb right generally the one song is of 5 to 6 mb correct and there is a mtu what is mtu mtu means maximum transmission unit mtu is maximum transmission unit that is of 1500 byte okay to 1500 byte ka maximum mtu hota what is mtu so over the internet over the internet when your routers like your isps are forwarding traffic they do they send packet within the size of 1500 byte you can't send more than 1500 because that is mtu over the internet you can't send 9000 in one packet that is called jumbo frames which is used in data centers and all okay so we can't send more than 1500 so you can consider if we divide this 5000 like 5 mb is like uh, 5000 kb and uh, 5000 kb and we put more zeros uh, like to get into like uh, 1 kb is having 1000 bytes so that is like 5 mb approx and if we divide 1500 okay let me take a calculator okay so guys 5 mb is 5 mb is 5000 kb okay so 5000 kb and uh, to get into bytes we have to multiply by 1000 again right so that is a one song in bytes average and if we divide by 1500 but we can't divide by 1500 why because remember 1500 is the maximum size so inside mtu inside your mtu there are multiple other things so what is mtu mtu is a maximum size mtu is a maximum size so in mtu so when you send a data okay so always you add what header ip header and what is the size of ip header 20 bytes and if we send this is ip header and we are listening music from http and http works on which protocol http protocol kis pe kaam karta hai tcp tcp header is also of 20 byte we will discuss about 20 tcp okay so tcp is also 20 byte so 20 20 40 so generally my mtu uh, is a 1500 but this is the data what we can forward this is called mss maximum segment size the whole thing is called mtu ip header tcp header and mss is a multi maximum segment size okay so maximum segment size is your data okay tcp header when we send data from tcp like http whatever protocol you use and ip is required so generally we use 1460 so let's consider to download this song we need the packet in 1460 size right so hamara jo data hoga so we are going to get the data in 1460 so for one song for one song computer will process almost 3400 packets for one 5 mb just for 5 mb okay so now i was telling you the bits so tell me what are the bits flags means zero means reserved when the value is a zero that means the file is reserved one is one was no frag mentation and two means fragmentation if your data is more than 1500 so tell me what we have to do fragmentation 
right and then this in this in that case my flag will be 0 1 0 that means 2 yes guys clear okay this is actually companies are expecting from you to learn <laughs> and tell me and if we deliver ccna ccnp we have limited number of hours to deliver right so see from everyone perspective nobody like many guys know these things but they can't train because it's all about the limitation of hours we have for the courses but yes this time i'll make sure at least for 10 hours we are going to learn that that information you can consider this is a part of an rc or you can consider this is a complementary with an rc so let's talk about fragment offset so now you can see fragment flag so whole this second row is all about packet identification flag means the fragmentation will happen or not and that is fragment offset what is offset even the slide missed that i think this image will help you i have to explain why image okay side by side we are okay so guys you can see the computer is sharing data and uh, the maximum mtu of between these devices but on internet it's mtu is 1500 this is just for practical that mtu is a 4000 or something so you can see the original packet so when we send the original packet part of ipv4 header 20 byte already everything is written here okay so you can see the uh, there is a fragment offset that i am going to send the data so you can see 3976 but i am going to split that data into two segments okay so if i divide my data in two parts that parts you are not sending right now you will be sending one after one right so aap ek saath nahi bhej rahe ho sare to thoda ruk ruk ke bhej rahe ho so you are going to hold the fragments you are going to send the first fragment first then you are going to send the second third fourth like that right so you want to send four packets instead of one because the payload is very big big so you are going to divide the you did fragmentation and then the parts will be sent and that parts will be stored into the fragment offset offset is like resting space like it is like waiting queue area queue area that where fragment will be waiting that uh, like uh, after this i am going to forward like this first it will go then second third like that so fragment offset it's a 13 bit field so you can check again so we were discussing about so it is a 13 bit field so you can see 13 bits okay if you uh, to the power of 13 if you calculate that comes around 8192 bytes 8000 byte are almost 8192 approx so it is like a fragment offset you can uh, hold on the packets for some time okay so it's like a receiver uh, we can restruct the entire ip packet back to the original because when the receiver okay where the fragment offset will come suppose you sent first packet second third fourth like this even the receiver end receiver ko bhi, even at the receiver end the receiver will get all the packets then only it will come to know okay what is the data yes or no agar receiver ko pura data milega tabhi to pehchanega na data kya so fragment offset is also helpful at the receiver end receiver received 2480 then 1496 24814 so it will store all four packet in the fragment offset and then it is going to create the original packet from it okay so ye chote chote parts karke bhej rahe okay so we are sending small parts and that small parts will be stored into the fragment offset and once the data at receiver end receiver end will also store all the small packets in the fragment offset and from fragment offset it will make the original packet so what is time to live so when your packet send data so the computer adds a ttl value like 64 so what is this it's like a expiry date of packet header it's like expiry limitation uh, expiry uh, date or you can say expiry limit 
that if we are putting 64 if your router does not get that packet in 64 routers that packet will be dropped the whole internet is of like thousands of thousands of millions of routers the internet is all about a lot many routers are over the internet right so whenever you send packet to the router router is going to decrement by one you send 64 first router will make 63 62 61 suppose the routers are not able to identify that there is a website called google.com instead of google the router is the computer is sending google.com packet but this is not on the internet or maybe any any ip address which is on not uh, which is not on the internet so now routers are keep checking where is that packet or like that. Okay. So TTL value is going to benefit you. When the TTL value becomes zero, the packet is dropped. It is used to avoid layer three loops, not L2 loops. For layer two loops, you have spanning tree protocol. Okay. Interview question. What we use for L3 loops? What we use for L2? L for layer two loops, we use spanning tree protocol. For layer three routing loops, mostly we use time to loop. Okay, this is why spanning tree protocol develops because in IP header we have TTL value, but in Ethernet header we don't have TTL value. This is why we uh, like uh, scientists have developed the spanning tree protocol. Okay, because in IP header. We all have TTL value. This is why we don't have, you might have not heard too many routing loops. That is because of our human errors. But most of the times you don't get. But in switching, layer two loops are very common in earlier days. Now we have spanning tree protocol. Yes, guys, clear all fields, version, header, type of service, total length, identification, flag, fragment offset till now. All clear. Now let's come to the protocol number. This is very important. So protocol number defines protocol number define IP is taking inside IP what exactly you are sending. If you are sending ICMP, ICMP protocol number is one. So the protocol number will be one here. If you are sending TCP, the TCP protocol number is 6. UDP has a protocol number 17. OSPF has a protocol number 88. I am, uh, yeah. EIGRP is 89. Okay, now you come to know why this protocol field is required. Because if you send ICMP packet, still you use IP. If you send TCP, still you use IP. If you send UDP, still you use IP. And if you send EIGRP traffic from one router to another, still use IP address because you send a hello packet on multicast address 224000010. This is a multicast address. Still, this is a IP. So you send hello packets on multicast address. OSPF also send a multicast address on 224000005 and 6. It has two multicast address. So still use IP. So it means Whatever data you can uh, IP packet is carrying, that information will be added into the protocol field. Okay, so interview question might be in tag profile. So what is the difference between protocol number and ether type? So protocol number we have in IP header, which tells what IP packet we are carrying. Ether type we have in Ethernet header, which tells we are carrying the ARP packet or we are carrying uh, some another type of ether layer two protocol. Generally, we use for ARP, generally uh, uh, like ARP and some other layer two protocols. Okay. So, Ether type is in Ethernet header when I am going to cover the Ethernet header, but as of now, I am covering IP header. Okay. But yes, now you know what is protocol number. BGP works on TCP. BGP does not have protocol number. BGP works under TCP. Okay. So, like HTTP, HTTPS. Okay, TC, uh, FTP, BGP works here. Port number 179. FTP 21, 443, 80. Okay, so these are called port numbers, not protocol numbers. 
when anything works under directly ip that is called protocol number and when anything works under these these protocol numbers that is called port numbers mpls ka koi protocol number nahi mpls is a technology which adds labels okay it's not a protocol bgp is a protocol mpls is not a protocol mpls is a terminology or it's a label mechanism it's a mechanism okay tell me nat you have studied nat in ccna so nat is a uh, like jo nat topic aapne padha is that nat is a protocol or mechanism it's a translation from public to private okay so i repeat again whenever anything works under ip whenever anything is under protocol we call them protocol number okay but whenever any protocol works under protocol numbers like tcp is a protocol which works under ip but if anything works under tcp that comes with port numbers because when we see the tcp header there is a port number field and that where we come to know that it's a http packet or a t, uh, any https packet so header checksum so this field used for integrity of ip header what is integrity means that the information is not modified okay like whenever you send data from one side to another so we send checksum detail like if you send any data we are going to put one checksum value like uh, 01010101010 something like that okay so when the receiver end receive the information okay so if receiver send checksum value is not same even with a single digit if the, here in the last you have one but here in the last you have zero suppose the checksum is not same it means the device is going to reject that packet checksum means yeah it's like error detection yes you can see that check for error in header only so it is for error in header only not in the data okay so this is for header checksum this is why we call this header checksum this is for not data so whenever we send data on fiber link might be one link is dropped or something so you get issues uh, that the other end receive uh, like you get a problem or uh, there is a checksum errors on the interface why you get those problems whenever we send might be a fiber cut or maybe some problem in fiber cable or maybe your adapters maybe on sfp what we put for fiber cables a small form pluggable adapters to convert fiber into ethernet okay so in short whenever you have physical cable problems most of the times you get errors because you are not getting the exact zero ones what you are sending so in that case checksum value can be changed okay and when checksum value is changed that device is going to reject that packet that is header check sum okay now you already know the source ip the computer ip address destination address where you are going to put the destination ip address and throughout the packet travel source ip and destination ip address will never change interview question if i am sending my traffic from computer a to google.com okay so we have three routers here okay whenever this second router receive the packet so what will be okay let's suppose uh, the interviews uh, has given you some information okay there are some few ips they have written you written for you to confuse okay suppose like this okay might be they will ask you okay might be if i am going to take interview <laughs> so suppose uh, consider this is an equation if i want to send a packet on google.com and if i check the packet on this router okay tell me what will be my source ip what will be my destination ip if i if i check the packet over here with wireshark or something what will be my source ip what will be my destination ip obviously source ip and destination ip will never change if you check the packet anywhere in between the link aap kahin bhi check kar lo source ip and destination ip will remain same throughout the journey it's like you are traveling from from one place to another by a cab okay so you already decided you want to go from delhi to mumbai 
फ्रॉम न्यूयॉर्क टू एनी प्लेस ओके तो सेंजोस तो यू वॉन्ट टू गो फ्रॉम वन सोर्स टू डेस्टिनेशन सो यू विल स्टॉप योर कार एंड यू विल हैव योर कॉफी यू विल हैव योर ब्रेकफास्ट बट एट द एंड सोर्स एंड डेस्टिनेशन विल बी इन योर माइंड यू हैव टू ट्रेवल टू योर डेस्टिनेशन तो राउटर्स आर लाइक योर स्टॉपेज यू स्टॉप हेयर यू चेक यू शफल द मैक एड्रेस एंड ऑल तो वी कैन कीप चेंजिंग द मैक एड्रेस बट थ्रू आउट योर जर्नी यू विल नेवर चेंज सोर्स आई पी डेस्टिनेशन आई पी एड्रेस ओके बट ओनली इन द केस ऑफ नैट ओनली इन द केस ऑफ नैट वेन यू सेंड पैकेट फ्रॉम प्राइवेट आई पी टू पब्लिक ओनली यूर कंपनी राउटर ओके दिस राउटर इज गोइंग टू ट्रांसलेट दैट इज translate the ip private ip to public where there you your ips will be changed but it's not changed its translation you can say that okay but throughout the journey the ips will never change private ip will never go to internet it will change to public ip then only you can access internet so what is ip options okay so you must be thinking options are very limited right but options are many okay so as the name uh, suggest if you have extra options like your packet wants to send extra information then these options will come into picture but you don't have to learn all the options and it's very uh, difficult to all learn all the ones and i never faced any one to ask these ones okay so you it's totally up to your choice that you want to learn or not so if the option field you can see options if the option field is zero it means end of option we we don't use option we put zero okay so that is no operation this is used to align subsequent option if we want to have so lose a source and record route that is for different options strict source and record uh, route record route stream identifier internet timestamp route alert prob mtu reply mtu so these can be added so just you need to check this one trace route so when we trace route so this when we send trace route ip header will have 82 type okay whenever we trace route something and if we check the tra uh, ip header in the options you will see 82 number because you are doing trace route okay so options are like if you want extra features if you need extra functionality like you want to add time stamp record route okay so these are actually uh, needed that time so packet containing uh, uh, mtu and all so then you use this even trust me even i don't have uh, full clarity on this it's totally up to your choice because you don't want to be scientist right we are not writing research papers over here but you need that much in depth knowledge at least So if somebody is asking, and there are n number of interviews where we have seen that interviewer is asking directly, okay, explain IP header. And if you explain this IP header, what I have explained to you, you will be getting a job. Might be you fail your OSPF question or BGP question, but if you impress the because people even they have ten years, fifteen years experience, they lack in fundamentals. And this is why still I teach fundamentals. i can train on sd wan aws yes definitely but i always i will be teaching fundamentals because here we make careers okay so teaching advanced things can be easy but teaching fundamentals is little difficult okay so now the question is sir why ttl value is different most of the time okay when we say yeah i'll come to know if somebody is going to ask me in interview explain ip header atul so i am going to put okay so remember okay so remember whatever you remember just type it version like let's try to build our header version okay so it it will be little but not in scare okay yes we can take here okay yeah so you can see here and uh, we can write down whatever we know version so we can put version 4 here version 6 then come to header length okay header length hai so uh, header length is of generally is of 5 uh, type of service uh, for quality 
ओके आई विल इवन शेयर द थिंग्स वर्जन इज फॉर वर्जन फोर और वर्जन सिक्स फाइव रिमेंबर दैट यूनिक नंबर वन सिक्सटी बिट एंड दैट इज ट्वेंटी बाइट ओके एंड देन वी हैव हेयर आई फॉरगेट हेयर वट इज दैट सो हेयर वी हैव आइडेंटिफिकेशन ओके आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ यूनिक आई डीज एंड देन आई थिंक वी हैव फ्लैग्स and then we have a uh, fragment offset i think fragment offset okay so we have source ip destination ip okay and we have options okay so uh, this is a total header length i think total header length now i recall this ek idhar kuch rehta hai so i think uh, i forget i have to see the header flags fragment offset okay ttl value guys so ttl value is here okay ttl is here protocol is here okay and header checksum this is i even forget but still if you remember 70% of header still you will be able to crack but i recommend you to just write because at my times when i used to give a lot many interviews i completely know everything about every detail because i have made this diagram up to 5 to 7 times i remember uh, when somebody asked me okay we are going to ask you ip header ethernet and i have learned in a way that even that interviewer was impressed this is how i cracked the juniper networks interview and i am giving you the real example so they have asked me ip header they have not asked me ethernet header they have not asked me tcp header they have asked me ip header okay so let me take your questions guys so i hope that is informative for you and uh, this is consider this is like uh, either introduction either an rc whatever you want to understand but this is how we deliver the content i hope you really liked it yes hi sir uh, vivek here yeah vivek uh just want to know what is the difference between that fragmentation uh, fragment uh, and that uh, this one uh, c r c ha c r c because what i understand is that in c r c that uh, error checking part is incorrect yeah and basically c r c is a cyclic redundancy ha, check ha cyclic redundancy check whether yeah, the so all bytes are correct or not correct yeah yeah so it's and, like there are many check like parity bit analysis yeah yeah so you have, might have studied in data communication yeah uh, so this is for error is... detection and correction also okay mostly okay. but header checksum is just for detect not for correction okay okay and uh, means uh, means i got confused between that that uh, fra in fragmentation you told that there is a means uh, buffering uh, means uh, it to hold the data till it get the full frame correct kind of kind... it's not elaborative way but yes as of now for just that understanding fragment offset where all the fragments will be kind of divided right by system okay. you are whatever assemblers because all these uh, like if you studied assembling this encoding decoding have you studied that encoding uh, yeah i when have we, when yeah. our computers divide the information into zero one yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. called encoding right yes yes and yes. who does encoding assemblers yes okay that assemblers will put your that information in the fragment offset and that fragment offset is like a buffer where you will be putting all your small small fragments and once uh, one by one you are going to send the fragments right correct okay and all the fragments will have same identification yes correct? yes yes and when the receiver and receives all the same identification it will be putting all the in the fragment offset and once the fragment offset is complete it is going to convert that fragment offset into the one original frame okay no no i mean i must my question was means uh, till the time you told it it has to hold the data correct unless and until means uh, whatever the means uh, we can say one frame is not get yet completed till the time that fragment uh, fragment uh, protocol has to manage means hold the data till that time correct mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so so means it is one type of checking thing correct unless and until he receives the full data and same part is done by the that uh, this one uh, crc uh, that checksum part mm -hmm. checksum so, is 
checksum basically so my just a minute sir please yeah, yeah, my yeah. my my question means my doubt is there means how the flow will come means if it not find that uh, means full packet so it will it will hold so i did means identification who will take care whether who will send the acknowledgement the first frame he did not receive the entire uh, frame so you actually know that whenever we send data hmm. right so whenever we send data most on the cases only in tcp yes you get acknowledgements, acknowledgements yes. but if you are sending udp if your packet is lost then it's lost yes yes it is lost even fragments are lost then it's lost okay, yeah, we, okay. Don't, okay, yeah, so, yeah we don't yeah we don't have to worry problem. about the yeah okay thank you so much hi sir uh, do is... one thing do one thing if you want to know fragment so just search on google fragment offset in ip header and there are many images you can see Length fifteen hundred and it is divided. Offset is zero, so it means the first and length is fifteen hundred. It means fifteen hundred bytes will be sent first, and another length is fifteen hundred, but the offset starting from fourteen eighty. It means we are going to send data from one four eight zero bytes to two nine six zero bytes now. Okay, so just keep checking the images. You will get more clarity. Okay, okay, okay. Understand. Yeah. Thank you. So you can check this also. Original IP header or IP fragmentation. This is. and there is a bits like df don't fragment there is a mf more fragment if more fragments are coming so you will put more fragment is equal to 1 okay thank you yeah yes hi sir uh, sir i i understood everything but i just have one doubt uh, regarding this uh, internet header length uh, can you please explain that again sir that value how it is coming 20 bytes like 5 Ah, uh, thirty to one twenty. We have got right. Okay. Or I am having my water. IP header. Okay. So you guys can see if you check these values, right? So tell me how many number of rows you can see. Just don't add options and padding. Just count the rows. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And one, one, it you can see zero is over here, and thirty one is over here. Thirty two. Yeah. Okay. Just in short, tell me what is the size of IP address? What is the size of IP address? Thirty two. Thirty two. So you can see the whole complete row is captured by source IP. Yes or no? Yes. So it means the row is of how much size? Thirty two. So if you multiply thirty two into five rows, one sixty. One sixty. Yes, sir. One sixty divided by eight because you are mentioning uh, this is in bits. To get into bytes, you divide by eight, and this is how you get twenty bytes IP header. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So in the Ethernet frame. Uh, the header. So this will be the Ethernet header. We are having two different type of layer two headers at the Ethernet level. So the first one will be the Ethernet, and second one will be the I triple E eight zero two dot three. So dependent upon the protocol, which protocol we are using, the header will be changed. If we are using a proper layer two protocol, so. Uh, layer two protocol. Let's say if you are using STP, if you are using CDP, okay. So these two, uh, these uh, types of protocol will be using the IEEE 802.3 header. But if we are using any protocol which is above layer two, so that protocol will be having the Ethernet header. Okay. So if you are talk about the EIGRP, so EIGRP is basically the layer three protocol. Okay. If you are using ICMP. So th those protocol will be having the Ethernet header, but the information will be same. Only the header format will be changed. So there will be the source address, source MAC address, destination MAC address. Okay. So let's talk about what will be the difference in these two headers. Now let's first talk about the Ethernet header. So in the Ethernet header, the preamble field will be there. The first field will be the preamble. This preamble field is basically doing the synchronization with the layer one. So there will be 
zero one zero one zero one total of fifty is eight of zero one. Okay, so it will be like this. There will be zero one zero one zero one zero one, and if at the end there is one one, it means that the uh, this is the start of frame. From now onwards, the frame is started. So this is basically to sync with the sync the electrical signals with the layer one or sync the frame with the layer one. Okay. So once the zero one zero one is completed and we start with one, then it means that the frame is started. So this will be the start of frame. Okay. So this is being combined in the preamble field in Ethernet header, but in IEEE header there are two separate fields. So there will be a preamble field where will will be all zero one zero one zero one zero one. Okay, and there will be a start of frame field will be separate where we will be having one one. But in Ethernet header in the preamble field only the both will be merged. The next block is of destination address which will be the destination MAC address. And then there will be the source address, which will be source MAC address. Now, in Ethernet header, we are having a type field. Type field is basically telling us what is the upper layer protocol we are using. So, if we are using, let's say, IP protocol. So, at layer three, if I am using the IP protocol, okay. So, in the type field, it will tell us the layer three header is of IP header. Okay. Now at layer three, we can use uh, uh, different types of protocol, but mostly every device is using IP header only. So there are some uh, other protocol which is known as Apple Talk. Okay, IPX. So these were these are some legacy protocol which are being used at the layer three, but most of the devices in today's case will only be using the IP header at layer three. So this type protocol is telling that what is the upper layer protocol running, okay? And after that there will be a payload. So payload means that up to layer three, whatever the information is added, that will be there, okay? And this will be the frame trailer. So this is the header. This is the payload, and this will be the trailer. So at the end, there is a FCS frame checksum sequence. So this is basically what it is doing. It is do running the algorithm on whole the whole frame, and it is calculating a value. Okay, and when receiving device will receive the frame, and it will again run the algorithm and calculate the value. If the values are same, it means the data is not corrupted. But if values are different, it means the data is corrupted. And in Show interface command. So on a router, in a show interface command, if you see the CRC errors, so it is basically means because of the frame corruption. So it means that the wire is corrupted or the signals are not received uh, as it's supposed to be received. Okay. So this is this work is done by the frame checksum sequence. So this is basically a checksum also. Okay. So on the interface level, the CRC error will be increasing if the checksum mismatch. So what is the purpose of this preamble again? Uh, why does it have to have a uh, fifty-four zero uh, one zero ones? So this is basically to synchronize with layer one. So layer one is what layer one is basically the electrical signals. So at layer one, the electrical signals will be converting into bits. So there is some speed of the electrical signals. So let's say this is a device, and this device is having a wire. Over the wire, the signals are transmitting like this. So let's say the peak will be a one, and the downside will be the zero. So there will be some speed with from which these signals are traveling. Okay. So to in order to synchronize with these signals, so this field is there. Okay. So how much uh, means? With how much speed these signals are coming, this zero one zero one zero one tell us. Okay, and at the end, if there is one one, it will it will tell us what is the uh, now the uh, frame has begun. 
Okay, so let's talk about the IEEE 802.3. Now in IEEE 802.3, we are not having a type field. So type field is not there. There is a separate field which is which is known as LLC. So LLC field will tell us what is the upper layer protocol we are using. Okay, so in IEEE 802.3 header, you will not see the type field. You will be, you will be seeing a LLC field. Rest all will be same, and this one separate. The start of frame will be separate. Okay. So the best interior gateway protocol in the world is here, right? So if you have a uh, learn RIP, RIP, EIGRP, OSPF, ISIS, so this is the most popular protocol. And if you want to know some history about OSPF, okay, so let me share that also with you. Okay, so you can see here, guys, uh, in 1987, OSPF Working Group formed. Okay, so you can see OSPF version 1, like uh, it's uh, under the RFC. What is RFC? It's a research paper, okay, under 1131. Uh, so it started in 1989. And after that, in OSPF version 2 in 1991, okay, so it is still under the uh, not deployment state. But in 1997, normally, like you can say that OSP version 2 specifically updated. And this is the research paper, which is called request for comment 2178. Okay, the guys who are going to join this OSPF BGP MPLS batch. So we will discuss the batch details. So, but I would prefer you to learn some OSPF. Okay, I'll share the course details also. So let, let's learn the OSPF first some at least basics okay so whenever we talk about uh, ospf okay so what do you know about ospf okay so ospf is a link state protocol right and if you talk about there are some other protocols which are called distance vector protocols okay so what is the difference between those sessions those protocols so let me tell you the basics so when it comes to OSPF, okay, so let's learn some basics of OSPF. Okay, so what is OSPF? It stands for Open Short Test Path First. Okay, and uh, this protocol is also known as Link State Protocol. Link State Protocol. Okay, so when we it comes to Cisco, the AD value in Cisco devices, it is 110. Okay, and uh, in OSPF, we can have unlimited routers. Okay, so there is no limit. Okay, but in OSPF, there is a concept of areas. Concept of areas. Okay, and uh, OSPF, when we talk about ospf okay so ospf like maintain a table which is called link state database okay ospf has lsdb what is lsdb which is called link state database table okay link state database table okay so link state means router is going to manage all the link states in the database table so in OSPF, how many tables we have? First table is called the neighbor, neighbor table. The second is known as your database table. Okay, and the third is known as your routing table. Okay, so I'm just giving you overview, guys. Okay, so OSPF is open shortest path first. Link state protocol, AD value 110. You can have unlimited routers. Okay, koi limit nia up unlimited routers laga sakto. OSPF has a concept of areas. Okay, we will talk about what is why we have concept of areas in OSPF. And OSPF maintain a table which is called the link state database table. Okay, so this is and this is similar thing. So sometimes we call this database table 
and normally we can call this also lsdb okay so so let me talk about one thing which is called link state packets okay yeah it uses two multicast addresses also okay so the two multicast address it uses 224005 and 224006 and what is the difference we will learn also so abhi ke liye main overview de raha hu sirf okay i'm just giving an overview right now for this we will go deep dive into ospf also so now you need to understand like ospf like when we connect our two routers like router 1 and suppose we have to another router router 2 so when we activate ospf jaise hum router par ospf activate karte hain once we activate ospf on it so r1 router will send one message which is called hello okay so in ospf there is a message called hello and the time for hello is 10 seconds and there is a dead timer also which is known as a 40 second so when we say hello to this router router 2 so router is also going to say hello okay so when we say hello to each other we become neighbor okay so if so we are going to make the neighborship we are going to form the neighborship so jaise ek dono router ek dusre ko hello bolenge waisi hamara router neighborship bana lega so once they send hello they become the neighbors to each other so once they send hello so the next step is they are going to send one message which is called the dbd okay dbd so what is dbd so dbd stand for database descriptor or some people call this also database description so what is dbd okay it is like overview okay to ye kya hota hai overview hota hai suppose r1 has many networks okay r1 has maybe 10000 network R1 has maybe 15.0.0.0. R1 has 20.0. So it, R1 has three networks where R2 has 25.0.0.0, 30.0.0.0, and 35.0.0. So you can see in R1 table, R1 database table, it has 10, 15, 20, and on R2 we have 25, 30, 35, right? so what is dbd so in dbd we will share the summary of the database okay what is summary this dbd is a summary of database summary so what is summary summary means we will not send full database we will not send the full database table we will only send the summary and router one summary once r2 get it so jaise r2 ko milti hai okay once the r2 gets a dbd packet it will compare the summary with the database table and it will see we do not have 10 15 20 so what is in the summary so in the summary it is telling you or uh, this router 2 that we have 10 network okay we have 20 network we have 30 network and this summary message will be compared in router 2 database table okay so dbd packet will be going to check with r2 r2 will compare the summary in the database and you can see these routes are not in the database table so guys can you see that r1 networks 10 20 30 they are not in the r2 database so if r2 do not have these networks in their database they are going to send one another packet which is called lsr okay what is lsr which stand for link state request okay i'll share the full forms okay what is hello it is a normal packet to discover the neighbors okay so i will explain these things so just see how what is going on so lsr stand for link state request and it is going to ask me please send me 10 network please send 20 network information and please send 30 network information because i do not have in my database table okay let's repeat so first we will send hello so when we became the neighbor so jaise hum neighbor bante hain once we become the neighbors we are going to send the dbd packet with the 10 network 20 network 30 network because we are going to send the summary of database table and r2 is going to compare the database and r2 found 
ओके आर टू हैज फाउंड दैट इट डू नॉट हैव टेन ट्वेंटी एंड थर्टी तो आर टू को पता लग गया कि भाई दस बीस तीस मेरे पास नहीं है तो वी आर गोइंग टू सेंड द लिंक स्टेट रिक्वेस्ट वट एवर नेटवर्क यू डू नॉट हैव इन द डेटा बेस टेबल यू आर गोइंग टू रिक्वेस्ट देम फ्रॉम द राउटर ओके सो आई टोल्ड यू तो टेन फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू सेंड टेन फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी एंड वी विल कंपेयर एंड वी डू नॉट हैव टेन फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी हेयर तो वी विल सेंड लिंक स्टेट रिक्वेस्ट फॉर टेन फिफ्टीन एंड ट्वेंटी ओके गॉट इट सो वेन द एल एस आर कम्स जैसी राउटर वन को एल एस आर मिलता है वंस आई राउटर वन गेट्स द एल एस आर वी आर गोइंग टू सेंड वन मैसेज विच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एल एस यू ओके सो विच स्टैंड फॉर लिंक स्टेट अपडेट ओके सो लिंक स्टेट अपडेट एंड वी आर गोइंग टू शेयर ऑल द इंफॉर्मेशन इन दिस मैसेज दट ओके तो हेयर इज द कंप्लीट इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट टेन नेटवर्क फिफ्टीन नेटवर्क एंड ट्वेंटी नेटवर्क तो वंस वी गेट लिंक स्टेट अपडेट वी आर गोइंग टू एड दीज नेटवर्क इन टू माई टेबल तो वी आर गोइंग टू एड दीज नेटवर्क टेन फिफ्टीन एंड ट्वेंटी वी आर गोइंग टू अपडेट इन द डेटा बेस टेबल ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू अपडेट आर डेटा बेस टेबल and then we will send the acknowledgement from this side link state acknowledgement okay so let's repeat guys so what we are discussing here so so as i told you there are five type of messages or packets in ospf hello dbd lsr lsu lsac so whenever anything comes to ls ls means link state okay so hello is to discover the neighbors ओके okay, तो हेलो क्या करता है डिस्कवर द नेबर इट इज यूज टू गेट द नेबर डिटेल तो डीबीडी इज लाइक ए समरी मैसेज द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ डीबीडी इज अ डेटा बेस डिस्क्रिप्शन ओके सम समवेयर इन द बुक्स यू विल सी डेटा बेस डिस्क्रिप्टर आल्सो तो डेटा बेस डिस्क्रिप्शन इट कंटेन्स द समरी ऑफ डेटा बेस टेबल okay this message so dbd is not sending the full database we are sending the summary of database okay what is summary so suppose guys like in your school days or maybe even till now if you read any book okay if you read any book so maybe one chapter has 50 pages but after 50 pages like there is a summary of a chapter okay like we have uh, learned these things in the these chapter so summary is just a overview of what you have learned so far so summary is like this like it is not a full detail of the database it is like overview of the database table so we are sending the summary information to r2 and when r2 get that information so r2 is going to compare that with the database and r2 found that we do not have 10 15 20 we are going to request that from router 1 so this lsr will go to r1 and then we will send the link state update 10 15 20 and when we got the update we will update in the database table to jaise hi mujhe update milta hai main apne database table mein add kar deta hu okay once i add these table so we will send the link state acknowledgement which is the confirmation okay so hello dbd lsr lsu ls ac so lsr stand for link state request okay lsu stand for link state update okay and lsac stand for link state acknowledgement okay remember the three types of tables we have in the ospf one is neighbor okay second is database okay and the third is routing okay so in the neighbor table what we have in neighbor table list of all the directly connected list of all directly connected directly connected neighbors okay so we will have the list of all the neighbors okay so r1 will have the r2 information r2 will have the r1 information okay and in the database table so list of all the links list of all the database or you can say list of all the link information links information 
ओके एंड इन द राउटिंग टेबल ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर गेज राउटिंग टेबल ऑलवेज कंसिस्ट ऑफ द बेस्ट पाथ ओके सो गेज यू कैन आस्क मी एनी क्वेश्चन इफ यू हैव सो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस या हंस वॉट्स यूर डाउट माई क्वेश्चन now when these two routers r1 and r2 uh mm-hmm. they are directly connected they send mm-hmm. hello messages um mm-hmm. my my question is do they send these hello messages simultaneously or which router sends first and what so, condition does does a router no, the send condition is so even if you do not activate r2 on ospf so whenever you activate ospf on router 1 okay r1 starts sending hello but this router is not accepting hello because the router you activate ospf first that will start sending hello okay okay so whenever i okay. activate ospf on this side this router also receive the hello and now it will send the hello also so okay. the who so, which router sends hello first the router which you activate the ospf first first okay and then the same with uh, the database descriptor which router sends no, no, the no, summary no. no 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 we are going to see dbd okay so dbd will actually be sent so there is some election going on we will discuss later on okay so okay. there is a master slave election here in dbd okay then um then yeah. uh, when you talk about uh, for database uh you talk about list of all the links the li- the links are like prefixes is that correct yeah so if r1 has maybe a lot of networks So R1 mm-hmm. is going to share the prefixes, okay, to R2, but we will not send complete information. We will not send the full information. We will just send the overview, and R2 is going to check the database table. And when mm-hmm. we do not have those path, so we are only going to request for the path which we do not have. Okay. Okay. And the another router R1 is going to send all the updates in this message, which is called LSU. Okay. Thank you. uh yes murthy uh i have understand till that uh, lsu so after that mm-hmm. lsu okay mm-hmm. the when r2 receives all the routes then it will be stored in the database table right yeah correct so after that what is the lsa acknowledge acknowledge is just uh, that we confirm that i got the lsu packet okay means r2 is sharing the information with the neighbor yeah r2 is saying we lsu like whenever we send a link state update we are going we are going to give the confirmation we received the lsu uh yes ankur malhotra any doubt uh, sir what is the criteria to become a neighbor yeah that criteria we are going to check in hello parameters that is again a half an hour discussion uh yes mohit yadav uh nasir so uh, first and why why ospf is called a link state protocol because it manages all the links means uh, uh, ospf when you activate ospf like it is going to activate the ospf on the links so wherever you activate ospf suppose this router has four links okay so whenever you activate ospf all the links so this router is going to maintain a table which is called database table and we will have all four links in the database table okay we are going to manage all the state what is the state of this link okay uh, yes anand uh, just want to know in the mm-hmm. link state acknowledge so if the router r1 did not receive link state acknowledgement from r2 will it resend mm-hmm. the lsu or it will not resend uh yes definitely it will resend the lsu okay because see even if even if, if this router because the they keep sharing the dbd packets till the time they are not fully converged okay so so there is a state we are going to discuss states also very soon so there are some states like init two way x start okay exchange loading and full so this full state means they have same identical database so this full state means they have same database now this router and this router has the same database table and when till the time they are not full they keep sharing the dbd packets they keep trying to become the full neighborship 
आकाश एनी डाउट आकाश वर्मा हेलो ये आकाश हेलो और डेट टाइम कैसे वर्क करते हैं हेलो और हेलो डेट टाइम डेट टेन और फोर्टी सेकेंड में अच्छा अच्छा ठीक है बताते हैं ओके सो लेट्स गो फर्दर तो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न दीज थिंग्स इन डिटेल नाउ सो गाइज लाइक वी आर गोइंग टू ऑब्वियसली लर्न एटलीस्ट फिफ्टी इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन ऑफ ओ एस पी एफ ऑल्सो इन दिस बैच ओके मिनिमम फिफ्टी मे बी इट विल गो अप टू हंड्रेड ऑल्सो ओके सो वट एवर द बेस्ट क्वेश्चन इन द इंडस्ट्री इट इज आस्ट सो फर्स्ट वी विल कवर ओ एस पी एफ एंड देन वी आर गोइंग टू चेक ऑल द क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द ओ एस पी एफ परस्पेक्टिव ओके एंड देन द सेम लाइक वी विल लर्न द बी जी पी एंड वी विल ऑल्सो going to cover the 50 to 100 interview question which is maybe scenario based maybe theory based so we are going to cover all the interview questions which may asked because i have uh, 11 years of experience so whatever uh, like you can also share okay so if you are giving interviews and if i am going to share those things also okay so there is no pdf i have made so there is so we are going to make together okay so whatever you guys can also come with the questions if you have given some interviews and i am going to also share those things okay pushpendra app eigrp is not openly asked so whatever eigrp i have covered so just learn those things just if you are learning eigrp prepare efd ad concept okay so just uh, uh, try to learn uh, the stub part so mostly people ask efd ad okay stub all these things okay so guys we can use uh, like uh, our labs also okay so let me show you okay so this is the lab access you are going to get okay so under the routing part like uh, there are many ospf labs okay so you can see ospf ospf summarization ospf stub ospf virtual link okay so there are few other basic labs also and there are many ospf labs okay but i am going to so you can practice these labs there is a pdf uh, lab guide you will be going to get okay for this ospf and all so but i am sharing you some activity uh, which is official activity okay this is not my activity lab this is on packet tracer so that you get familiar uh, with some concepts okay so don't Uh, see why we are learning this is ccnp why we are on packet tracer so do not just think in this way so just try to think that we are going to complete this activity okay so you can see there are three four routers like r1 r2 r3 and uh, so this is a scenario okay so we are going to configure the ospf version 2 and then we are going to verify the ospf version 2 okay so this is very cool lab so you can see r1 r2 r3 okay so we have three routers and this router r2 is in area 0 okay we will also discuss why we have ospf areas ki ospf mein area kyun hote hain okay this is very important part why we have areas in ospf okay so those theory things we are going to cover okay but just it's a basic lab even you have learned this so far in ccna also okay just a quick revision that how we are going to configure okay so let's start so configure ospf version 2 on r1 okay so this is r1 and we are going to use the ospf process id 1 and the router id we are going to use 1.1.1.1 okay so configure each network in ospf version 2 assigning areas according to the addressing table okay so we are going to configure ospf so these are the networks we have so you can see r1 has 10 network 10 1 2 1 network so these three networks we have okay so r2 has three networks r3 also have three networks so we are going to configure now okay so you can see we are going to understand lsas type 2 type 3 type 4 so these are the things we are going to learn so just hold on let me check this is assessment lab yeah this is assessment lab
Okay, so let's configure how you will configure OSPF. So why we are configuring OSPF first? So why we configure OSPF so that this network, maybe we are able to communicate from one network to another network. Okay, so this is why we are going to configure and the same lab you are going to get, you will also going to configure this. Okay, so this is the scenario. Okay, so we will go to configure OSP version 2 on R1. So we will go to R1. Okay, under R1, we will run enable configure terminal. Okay, under the router OSPF and which process ID? So this is the process ID one we have to take. So what is process ID? Okay, so whenever I run this OSPF one, so it means the OSPF protocol is started. Okay, so let me show you. If you check your if you are using uh, Windows or any machine, like if you check your task manager, so these all softwares like Google Chrome, Packet Tracer, all are running in my laptop. So jitni bhi application chal rahi, all these applications are process, right? So they all are process for my laptop. So even this packet tracer is a process and you can see there is a PID, what, which is known as process ID. Okay. So process ID is nothing, just every task in my laptop, every task in my computer, every task in my router. So they have a process ID. So process ID in OSP, if it is, it is just that router is running some random process. So when I type router OSPF one, so OSPF is started on my router. So you can run this command show process CPU. Okay. Show processes. So you can see under show processes router is showing you that it is running a lot of backend operations like ARP. Okay. Like uh, some IGMP, TCP IP, HTTP, dot one X. So these all are already configured. Right. So you can see these are the things under the show process and even so DHCP, some syslog. So all these are applications already working under my OSPF. So if anybody asks you explain OSPF process ID, so it is just a process ID. It is like I'm running a different task in OSPF. So if I type router OSPF one, router OSPF two, router OSPF three, so router is going to create three different OSPF instances. So if I check show IP protocol, so it is showing you OSPF one is there, OSPF two is there, OSPF three. So even on one router, you can run multiple OSPF. So AK router pe multiple process bhi chala sakte ho. Okay. But here I do not need. So I will remove these OSPF process. So I will only manage with my OSPF one. Okay. So under router OSPF now I'm going to use process ID one and the router ID will be 1.1.1. .1 .1. Okay. So router one router ID will be router ID 1.1.1. .1 .1. Okay. So why we are giving this router ID? I will explain this thing also. So router two and router three. So we will go to router two. We will do the same thing. Okay. But you can see we should also configure the configure each network in the OSP version two. So Joby router ke network hai, whatever networks we have in the routing table. Okay. Show IP route. So you can see show IP route connected. So we have three networks and we need to add them into OSPF. So router OSPF one router ID and then we will say network. So what networks we have 10 1 1 0. So you can check your directly connected network and we are going to advertise. So we are going to put the network command and then tell me what we use in OSPF. If, if you have learned this in CCNA wildcard mask. So if your subnet mask is three time two five five zero, so the wildcard will become zero 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 two five five and this 10 network we have in which area we are going to add this so you can see here in r1 so the 10 network under ospf1 this is a table which is given here so i will say area one 
so there is another network now 10120 so we will say network 10120000255 and this network so 10120 sorry so 20 so this network i am going to add into which area area 1 area 1 right additionally like we will go to uh, like third network which is like 192.168.10.2 which is my this network okay so config t router ospf1 okay so i just going i am going to 192.168 okay so 10.0 okay so you can see 10.0 but slash 30 so slash 30 means the subnet mask is 3 times 255 252 like this so if you calculate the wildcard mask how you will calculate okay so kaise calculate karoge so you will calculate just minus this from all 255 and you will get a 0003 okay so this is the wildcard mask for slash 30 and we will add this network into which area so the 192 network is in area 0 so we will add area 0 so the same way you are going to configure for r2 and r3 so we'll go to r2 how show ip route connected okay so these are my networks i am going under router ospf1 router id is 2.2.2.2 very simple right and then i am going to update network command 10210 okay so the wild card mask will be this is slash /24 so the wild card will be 00255 and area will be so let's check 10210 i think this is a backbone router so r2 all my interfaces in r2 will be in area 0 so if r2 all interfaces are in area 0 this router will become backbone router okay so just add your network commands okay so you will use 0003 area 0 and then we will have the network id 10.4 so can you see that here we have done subnetting so four ips is given this side and four ips are this side so one network id broadcast ip and router has given 110.1 this side 10.2 this side like this so we have another network which is 10.4 so this network and this network is different guys theek hai dono different hai so 10.4 so we have activated ospf now the third router enable config t okay so router ospf1 router id will be 3333 okay and then we are going to check show ip route connected so these are the networks we have 192.168.1.0 000255 and the area will be So 192.168.1 network will be under area two. Okay, so we will say area two. So we have two network which will is going to be in which network? So this two wala network is our. So this is our area two. Mein. This is also in area two. So the third network which is 192.168.10.6. Okay, so it's written the network is 10.4. So we are going to ten dot six is the IP we need to give here network, and then we will use zero 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 three area zero. I think this is in area zero. Yes. Okay. So we have activated OSPF on all the networks. Okay, and then it is asking me from router one ping each of the following remote devices in area zero. So means we need to ping one dot two, two dot two. so we will ping these ips so from r1 we will ping 192.168.1.2 which is on this side so we are going to ping 192.168.1.2 and we are able to ping we will ping also 2.2 so 
so that is also reachable so means we are able to ping from this network to this network and to this one network so matlab hamara pura communication ho raha hai so everything is working we can ping this 10 to 12 which is on this side 10 to 12 so we can ping that also ping 10 to 12 and we are able to reach that also so means this lab is completely successful and we are going to run these commands now okay we are going to analyze these packets okay if any anyone has a question so let me know it is very basic ospf and uh, if you have not if you are not able to understand it means you have not properly learned this in ccna so anyone has a doubt please uh, you can ask me kisi ka koi doubt hai anyone you can raise the hand uh, yes jitesh Uh, sir actually i don't know what is 192 on router 2 192 once is a 10.4 is it a, mm -hmm. what is the network id and all network id is standard 4 dear okay network id okay if you do subnetting okay so the first network will be 192.168.10.0 10.1 10.2 and 10.3 so this is my one network right Okay, so the second network start from one ninety two one sixty eight one dot four, so one ninety two one sixty eight one dot five, one ninety two one sixty eight one dot six, and one ninety two one sixty eight one dot seven. So this IP and this IP you can't use. So the usable IPs are five oh, and six. Okay, 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 I got it. Ten dot one. So okay. I think probably we got one here, two here, and five and six we got this side. Yeah. Okay, you can see ten dot six. We have given to router three. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, yes, Amit Tiwari. Sir, what is the area which we are using? Okay, so what is area? Yeah, I am going to explain this thing. Area. Area is basically okay. So let me tell you why we have areas because this is very important question. Why we have areas? Today is my first class. Okay, okay, don't worry. C C N A में तो पता होगा ना area क्या होते हैं? हाँ सुनाते हैं. Okay, सुन है? <laughs> okay, no issues. ठीक <laughs> है, ठीक है. सुनाते हैं आपको area <laughs> क्या होते हैं? Okay, so when we run any company, we have suppose Delhi branch, Mumbai, Dubai, okay, Singapore, okay, all the branch offices are connected, okay, so all they are connected together. so now this these are very uh, less routers but understand if you have a very big network with 1000 routers so what will happen whenever when any whenever my lan network or any link goes down the router is going to send the messages to all its neighbor okay so these messages are called lsa okay link state advertisement these are so, uh, like these are small update packets you can say okay they all lsa falls under lsu so lsu has many lsa okay so you can consider these are all link state update and when we have a very big network in if one link goes down all that information is going to 1000 routers tell me is this a good thing or not yes amit agar ek jagah network down hai suppose in delhi your network is down but you are updating all the way to singapore dubai everywhere you are saying that my network is down is this a good thing okay agar bhaiya aapke delhi mein network down ho gaya hai to puri branch offices mein ja ke messages daloge kya okay okay so that is the problem that is called lsa flooding so this is the reason so this is the problem first of all lsa flooding so what is lsa flooding so whenever any branch or any router link goes down we are going to send a lot of messages to all the routers and these routers will send messages to all their neighbors all their neighbor we will have a lot of messages and that is a problem because when we have too many messages my router cpu will be high yes or no so when we get a lot lot many packets my router cpu will high my router ram will be high yes or no 
everyone say yes in the chat if you all agree somebody is saying no why obviously if we get a lot of flooding okay if we get a lot of messages my router cpu ram will be high right and whenever my router cpu will be high the speed of processing the packets the speed will decrease your performance will decrease your network speed will decrease there will be n number of issues but when i am going to divide this network into different different areas so i will say so delhi mumbai chennai kolkata they will be part of one area okay so maybe these two are in different areas so so we are going to add different different areas so these four routers will be in different area so these will be in different area so what will happen so if the packet is going if the flooding will happen it will be going to flood in my area only so we will not send the flooding messages we will not send ospf messages outside my area are you getting now so this is how we can reduce the lsa flooding but we cannot eliminate because because of this lsa flooding ospf is working okay lsa flooding ki wajah se ye ospf kaam kar raha hai you can't stop lsa lsa is like update messages of so tell me without lsu without update routers gonna exchange information with each other agar humne lsa hi rok diye if we will stop lsu the router will share information with each other no so we can reduce it but we cannot eliminate it so we can reduce by making groups okay so just understand if we will have maybe 1000 students okay so under one class or maybe under one seminar so maybe if all have questions they might not able to ask okay or maybe some problem but if we divide this batch into 10 groups okay we will have 100 students every batch so then it is easy for us to maintain so the similar way when the groups when we have areas are like groups we will send information to only with my area so we will share information we will send lsa update we will send lsa lsa is like lsu messages link state update hi hote hain we will discuss lsa so these messages will be under my area only they will not go further clear everyone like when we have ospf so remember ospf has a same database the another point why we have areas like when we connect to ospf like when we connect to ospf guys so every router will have the same database i will show you this is the scenario we have done okay so you can see here so in this router 1 router 2 router 3 if i am going to run one command which is a show ip ospf database please focus here show ip ospf database okay we have to check the area zero only so this is router 1 okay here router 1 hai okay let me open the router 2 also okay let me run this command show ip ospf database this is router 2 and we will use uh, the router 3 also so all these are so router so if you compare all three routers okay so just check all the routers this is the main concept guys you might not learn this in ccna also okay so you can see this is a router 1 so this is router 1 and router 1 is saying we have four links okay so there are different different type of lsas one is called router lsa this is a network lsa this is a summary lsa we are going to learn these things but just check it out so we have four links here we have four links here we have four links here so we have one link here one link here one link here even check this number which is called sequence number the sequence number is same 
you can check all everything is same even this checksum value i will explain this sequence number and checksum also we will also learn this link count age advertisement router link id everything we will learn okay just right now you are in beginning of the class i just wanted to show you that all ospf routers if they are in same area they have same database they have same database yes or no everyone agree now after looking at this sabhi yes karenge is baat ko right so now if the database is same now tell me guys if i am going to put 1000 routers in one area and what will happen if i am going to put 1000 routers in one area the database table will increase the database size will be very big yes or no if my database table is big obviously the router is going to take a lot of time to check what is going on okay so when my database table is in which memory ram okay so whenever we have too much memory router ospf is going to take a lot of ram because whenever my path goes down okay suppose these are three routers whenever my link goes down okay maybe uh, we have a link here also so when this link goes down the router is going to run this algorithm again because ospf works on one algorithm which is called spf algorithm okay so spf algorithm whenever anything changes in my ospf so whenever any link goes up whenever any link goes down router is going to run this algorithm which is called spf algorithm and spf algorithm means they are going to check the database tables they are going to check all the information with each other again and again and when we have 1000 routers and when the database table is big router is going to take a lot of memory when it runs the spf algorithm okay we are going to check what is spf and all okay to kya hoga agar hazar router humne laga diye to hamara database table is very big right so if we have 1000 routers the database table is very big and it is going to take a lot of ram because all the ospf whenever you run ospf ospf runs spf algorithm okay so which algorithm SPF it is also known as Dijkstra algorithm. Okay, this is also known as Dijkstra algorithm. Okay, this is the scientist who made SPF. Okay, so so some people call this OSPF is made by Dijkstra. No, SPF algorithm made by Dijkstra. This is the scientist name and OSPF made by John T. Moy. Okay, so this is the guy who made OSPF, but on the basis of spf okay so now if i talk about if we have very big table and ospf is going to take a lot of calculations ospf has to do a lot of calculation and when we have to do a lot of calculation the cpu ram everything will be on higher again there is a problem right when we have a big database again that is a problem so when we divide the ospf into areas the database table will also be smaller agar hamara database table chhota hoga to hamara router better kaam karega right so the when the database table is smaller the router is not going to have high ram and high cpu so the areas if anybody ask you in interview why we have ospf areas okay you can't say okay we have areas like that okay so there is a technical answer the first is to reduce lsa flooding okay chahe aap कितने भी बड़े इंजीनियर हैं यही आंसर है टू रिड्यूस एल एस ए फ्लडिंग एंड द अनदर इज टू रिड्यूस द डेटाबेस टेबल साइज टू रिड्यूस द एल एस डी बी साइज ओके विजय प्लीज चेक यूर क्वेश्चन अगेन आई थिंक यू आर आस्किंग रॉन्ग क्वेश्चन ओके सो इफ यू आस्क मी लाइक सर अतुल लाइक हाउ मेनी राउटर्स वी शुड हैव इन वन एरिया so there is no there is no such a hard rule that up that you should have 50 100 or 200 routers but as cisco has recommended cisco is recommending that you should have around 50 to 60 routers per area max 
तो ये रिकमेंडेशन है दिस इज रिकमेंडेशन दिस इज नॉट हार्ड एंड फास्ट रूल यू कैन हैव हंड्रेड ऑल्सो बट द प्रॉब्लम विद हंड्रेड राउटर्स द मोर राउटर्स यू हैव इन एरिया द मोर डेटा बेस साइज विल यू हैव या स्नेहल इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द कंपनी इफ दे हैव नेटवर्क डिजाइनर्स नो राजेश एरिया डजेंट मीन सिटी टू सिटी ओके सो वाई वी हैव एरिया टू रिड्यूस एल एस ए फ्लडिंग टू रिड्यूस लिंक स्टेट डेटा बेस साइज ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू रन दीज कमांड सो शो आई पी ओ एस पी एफ डेटा बेस एंड आई डोंट नो लाइक इफ दिस कमांड रन शो आई पी ओ एस पी एफ इंटरफेस या इट इज शोइंग मी ओके सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज ओके सो वेन एवर आई रन दिस कमांड ऑन राउटर वन ओके विच कमांड शो आई पी ओ एस पी एफ इंटरफेस तो यू कैन सी वेन एवर आई आई एम गोइंग टू एक्टिवेट ओ एस पी एफ तो वट वी हैव गिवन वी हैव गिवन नेटवर्क कमांड्स तो हमने क्या किया है We have given the network commands, and automatically router is activated the OSPF on that particular interface. So whatever network commands you have given, so if you check show running config, so you can see we have given three network commands, and if you check these three networks are on which which interfaces. So if you check show IP route connected, so they are on my GIG zero zero, GIG zero slash one, and serial zero slash zero. so we have given these commands in the network command right so we have, we have given our networks into ospf and when you run this show ip ospf interface you will see the first interface g serial 000 which is matching gi00 which is again matching right and also the third one gi00/1 so we are actually whenever we give network command guys it means we are we have activated ospf on the interface it means whenever i give network command ospf is going to activate on all three interface and whenever i activate we will start sending hello in those interfaces to so jaise hi aap ospf command chala dete ho whenever you run this ospf the router start sending hello messages on all the interfaces तो हमारा हेलो पैकेट जाने लग गया है वी आर सेंडिंग हेलो पैकेट ऑन दीज ऑल थ्री इंटरफेसेस एंड दिस इज हाउ यू आर बिकमिंग नेबर विद ऑल दीज इंटरफेसेस ओके सो टेल मी गाइस इफ आई हैव राउटर वन ओके सो इफ आई एम गोइंग टू रैंडमली पुट द नेटवर्क लाइक मे बी वन नाइनटी ओके अंडर एरिया वन सो टेल मी इफ आई एम गोइंग टू रैंडमली पुट नेटवर्क कमांड विच आर नॉट इन माई नेटवर्क तो टेल मी दीज नेटवर्क विल गो टू अनदर राउटर क्या ये नेटवर्क हमारे दूसरे राउटर पे जाएंगे ओके आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट नेबरशिप आई एम जस्ट सेइंग दीज नेटवर्क्स आर नॉट प्रेजेंट इन माय राउटर बट इफ स्टिल इफ आई एम गोइंग टू ऐड दीज कमांड्स अंडर नेटवर्क कमांड तो विल द राउटर टू विल रिसीव दीज रूट ये टेल मी एवरेज वन इज सेंग ये मोस्ट ऑफ देम मैं दोबारा पूछ रहा हूँ ये नेटवर्क हमारे नेटवर्क में है ही नहीं है वी डू नॉट हैव दीज नेटवर्क इन टू राउटर तो इफ आई एम गोइंग टू टैप टाइप नेटवर्क कमांड so the router is going to send these updates to router 2 yes or no okay so those who are saying yes i just wanted to ask so if you check show ip route connected so do we have these three networks in my routing table do we have these networks under my router interfaces yes krishna anna parthi tell me do we have these networks under my router interfaces no so when we do not have when we do not have they will not go because this network command तो वेन एवर वी टॉक अबाउट ये भी इंटरव्यू में पूछा जा सकता है दिस इज काइंड ऑफ इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन दैट व्हाट नेटवर्क कमांड डू इन ओएसपीएफ व्हाट इज द यूज ऑफ नेटवर्क कमांड सो मे बी सम ऑफ यू विल से नेटवर्क कमांड मींस दैट आई विल सेंड माय नेटवर्क टू अनदर राउटर दिस इज 90 परसेंट स्टूडेंट से दिस थिंग सो नाउ आई एम टेलिंग यू आई एम मेकिंग यू रॉन्ग हेयर तो नाउ आई एम गिविंग यू नेटवर्क कमांड हेयर हेयर आई एम गिविंग नेटवर्क कमांड तो विल द will the, these routes will go to router 2 if your answer is network command send routes to one router to another so will these routes will go to router 2 no right so let me show you okay let me check on r2 and if i am going to check show ip route ospf so we do not have uh, these networks which i created 66 67 we do not have so long story short right so you can see 
वी आर नॉट सेंडिंग द नेटवर्क इट मीन्स द नेटवर्क कमांड इज नॉट टू शेयर द इन्फॉर्मेशन विद वन राउटर टू अनदर तो नेटवर्क कमांड का मतलब ये होता ही नहीं है जो अभी तक हमने पढ़ा था और मे बी यू गैस हैव लर्न दिस इन सी सी दैट नेटवर्क कमांड मीन्स सेंडिंग माई इन्फॉर्मेशन टू अनदर नेटवर्क तो बेसिकली दिस नेटवर्क कमांड मीन्स फाइंड दीज नेटवर्क इन माई राउटिंग टेबल एंड एक्टिवेट ओ एस पी एफ ऑन द करेक्ट इंटरफेस दिस इज द एक्चुअल मीनिंग ऑफ नेटवर्क कमांड मीन्स फाइंड दीज नेटवर्क इन टू माई राउटिंग टेबल ओके एंड इफ वी हैव दीज नेटवर्क एक्टिवेट ओ एस पी एफ ऑन द इंटरफेस एंड वेन वी एक्टिवेट ओ एस पी एफ ऑन दीज इंटरफेस स्टार्ट सेंडिंग हेलो मैसेजेस ऑन दोज इंटरफेस ओके सो दैट वॉज द बेसिक नॉलेज यू शुड हैव बिकॉज वेन एवर यू गिव गुड इंटरव्यूज लाइक इन टैक प्रोफाइल्स और मे बी वेन यू आर अप्लाइंग फॉर वेरी गुड कंपनीज दे आर गोइंग टू आस्क वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन दैट वॉट इज द यूज ऑफ नेटवर्क कमांड ओके सो वट इज द डेटा बेस टेबल ओके सो सो मे बी यूर आंसर इज नॉट एक्चुअली विद फुल अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस इज वाई वी फेल एंड इवन यू फील दैट I have answered properly. This is what my trainer has taught me, but still I am not able to make it. That is the problem because they need proper clarity. Okay, just understand. Before this session, if somebody used to ask you why we have OSP areas, so आधे लोगों ने गलती बोलना था. Okay, mostly those who do not have the proper knowledge, they must be saying these words. We have areas. Uh, we have areas so that. we will manage the ospf properly but how we will manage the ospf properly okay maybe someone will say okay so we have areas because we have unlimited routers in ospf okay can you see this these are not proper answer it definitely you are going to fail the interview okay if you are saying something in interview it doesn't mean you are correct okay so the technical answer to this is stop lsa flooding the another is reduce the lsdb size reduce link state database table what is the use of network command okay so what is the use of network command yes so this is i am pointing this question as a hash one interview question for ospf this is a hash two interview question on ospf why we have network command what is the use of network command so the answer should be network command find those networks into my routing table and the corresponding interfaces like we are going to OS, activate ospf on the corresponding interfaces whatever network command i am going to give so that network command will be matched into the routing table and we are going to find the corresponding interfaces and on those corresponding interfaces we are going to activate the ospf yes hans any doubt okay thank you um i have a question based on mm -hmm. the routers and their interfaces mm -hmm. uh to mm -hmm. talking about where to place uh how do we call it with the route if it should be placed on on a particular area for example when we look at router 1 we look mm -hmm. at the interface that connects to routers when we look at mm -hmm. area 1 we look at the mm -hmm. interface that connects to area 0 so mm -hmm. i want to make sure that this this router on r1 mm -hmm. is actually in is it in r is it in area 1 or area 0 okay okay got router, your question i'll explain in, i will explain in, because sometimes you have some like this border routers and stuff like so i want to know the areas where yeah yeah don't worry i will located. explain i will okay. explain okay mm. uh yes krishna yeah sir and uh, network command means Uh, in order to implement the this those network ids in the interfaces right so network command means if we yes, if we have these networks into my routing table if these are directly connected to me i am going to find these uh, whenever we give network command we will find these with routing table right router is going to do automatically and it is going to activate the ospf from the correct interfaces मतलब नेटवर्क कमांड का मतलब है एग्जैक्टली इनडायरेक्टली इट इज सेइंग यू टू एक्टिवेट द ओएसपीएफ ऑन करेक्ट इंटरफेसेस दिस इज द मीनिंग ऑफ नेटवर्क कमांड इफ दे आर ओनली इफ दे आर ओनली डायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड अदरवाइज देयर इज नो यूज दैट ऑफ नेटवर्क कमांड राइट 
yeah these networks will do not have right and i have shown you practically if we give this network command they are not going to route to right yes sir yeah okay good uh, yes uma shankar sir what is the use of link id this uh, database table uh, you are using link id na har ek isme aap link id ek router id router id oh sorry router id to iska use yeah yeah ha main batata hu okay so what is the use of router id because whenever we send okay so it is to read, like uh, to do not have like ospf loops you can say like if i type show ip ospf neighbor so you can see i'm getting updates from router 2 router 9 router 5 like this okay so whenever we send like in ospf if my two routers have same router id they are not be going to become neighbor if i am going to have same router id on 1111 on r2 also if i my router id is 111 so they are not going to become neighbor they will not become neighbor because they feel like this packet what i have sent you the packet is coming from my ospf information also because we will send a lot of information because you have five types of packet hello dbd okay so whenever you send any packet you make sure you are sending to your neighbors you are not sending to yourself because if you put 1.1.1 the message will go with the sender id 1.1 and if you are sending to the same ip it means you are sending the message to yourself okay so router id is basically in ospf it is like a loop prevention mechanism okay so what is the use of router id in ospf so let me show you so there is a cisco document this is called duplicate router id with ospf okay so troubleshooting duplicate router id okay so you can see here troubleshooting duplicate router id so when we have same router id on two routers okay because we send information and you can see in the database table we will have the same router id okay so whenever we have same router id they are going to pretend it is like like it's a loop right now in my network and this is why it is not going to accept the messages okay so it's like a router id is like a loop prevention mechanism ospf router id is like loop prevention kind of how ospf avoids loop if you check how ospf avoids loop so ospf uses the information advertised in lsa and the rikshta algorithm to calculate the topology okay and then uses the topology information to prevent loops so in short it is using router id also avoid the loops okay because everything we are going to update in the database table so what is the difference between router id and process id process id i have already explained that whenever you activate ospf jab bhi aap ospf ko activate karte hain whenever you activate ospf so it is going to become a process like in my laptop we have a lot of process the same way you will have ospf process okay so this is not going to show you let me show you in my lab here because some commands do not run on packet tracer okay so let me turn on the router here okay so th- okay so you can see here this is my one router which is like delhi router okay i'm going to run the ospf command here guys please check router ospf1 and when i enter this you can run show processes cpu and i'm going to type include ospf so show me the process which is on the with the name of ospf so you can see ospf right so if i type is there any process of hello okay so you can see show processes cpu include ospf or just type the complete ospf so you can see whenever i run this command show process cpu include ospf the router cpu is showing me ospf there is a process the process id is like 192 okay but here you have given ospf1 it is like a instance you can create multiple instances like if i said type router ospf2 
the router is going to show you like two process IDs. If I am going to create another router OSPF3, so the router process will show you another processes. Can you see this? So it means for router, this is a different program. This is a different program and this is a different program. So if I activate OSPF, suppose I have a loop back here for testing. Okay. So I have one interface and I'm going to activate the OSPF on this network 1.1.1.0, 0, 0, 0, 0, area 0. So whenever I give this, okay, so now OSPF process will show you something more. It started showing you hello process also because I have activated the OSPF on one interface because I made a loopback and I activated the OSPF on it. So we have made a loopback and we have put OSPF on it. So our hello packet is also going to go. Because I told you router do not send this information. Network command means router is going to activate the OSPF on the correct interfaces. Okay. So this is the basic I am showing you all because these are very important. Okay. So maybe some concepts are missing right now, but slowly, gradually you will be able going to learn a lot of OSPF. Okay. We are going to spend a lot of time on OSPF. Okay. So guys, uh, there is some one, uh, like we are going to discuss also a few more things. Okay. So I have started my labs here. Okay, so yeah, so you can understand uh, this topology, or uh, we can have multi API also. Just hold on. Okay, so this is better one. Okay, so you can see this is area zero and this is area one. So before we should understand the area concept, okay. So this is very basic thing. Maybe you already know this, but still it is better to learn. So whenever we, I'm going to, whenever we are going to configure this router and we are going to put this interface in area zero. So you should not put this in different area. So router port facing each other should be in same area. Okay. So you can see if I'm putting this side area zero, so this should be also area zero. If I'm putting this one, another router here, if this is also area zero. So this side also will be area zero. If I'm going to put this router, <clears throat> maybe in area one, so this interface side will be area one also. So if I have one, another area, so this side also be area one, this is also area one. We can't put this in area two because there is no area zero between area one and two. So we should always have area zero between then only we can connect with area Dif so different areas cannot communicate with each other. They should only communicate with the area zero. So when the area zero is in the mid, so when these routers, I'm going to put in area two, this side also area two, then you will be able to communicate from this router to this because it is going via area zero. So you can see area zero is in the mid. Right. It is like a transit area. Matlab ye beach mein aara hai, to ye communication hoga. So understand this is the scenario. Okay. And another thing, let's take one more scena basic scenario. So if you have a network like this, okay. So all these three routers are in area zero. Okay. All these three routers are in area zero, area zero. So you will put all the network commands in area zero. 
okay so let's call this area 0 okay so this is area 0 so when we have routers maybe the, we have different routers they are also connected with each other okay so they all are in area 1 so you will add all them into area 1 so maybe you have few more routers so they are in area 2 so you will put all the network commands in area 2 okay but if you want to connect area 1 devices with area 2 you have to have one connection with this router okay and this router connection with any of these routers but now you have two options ab aapke paas do option hai okay either you can put this in area 0 okay you can put this in area 0 so in this case when we put this side and this side area 0 so this router will become my area border router okay because this router which is what who is abr abr stand for area border router area border router which will be going to participate in multiple areas okay so you can see this is area 1 this is 1 here we have 0 okay so this is abr and now in this case i am not going to add them in 0 i am going to put this in area 2 this is also 2 so in this case this router become my abr so the router which participates in different areas multi area with area 0 that is known as area border router so if you i am going to add this in area 1 and this one so who will be my abr so this router will be my abr in this case okay so the router which participates in multi area that is area border router okay but there are multiple options to connect to these areas so aapke paas option bahut hai but aapko karna kaise ye matter karta hai okay so you can see here this is a topol so this is a topology i do have so now we can do this lab in multiple ways okay so the first way is uh, like you can add this side area to this side also area two okay so we can add this side area one like uh, this side of interface in area one and this side also area one so when we do like this so delhi and hyderabad so we are going to add these interfaces in area zero yeah so if i'm going to add them into area zero so this router will become area border router okay so that is the concept so if i am going to add this in area 0 this side also area 0 so there will be no abr because all this side is in area 0 till here but if this area is area 2 so th in this case this will be abr okay so let's uh, understand few more thing ospf uh, uh, design so let's understand few more images okay so let me know guys if you know this okay so this one time let's see so this okay the image resolution is not good i think i hope it is visible okay if it is not i will tell you okay the image resolution is not good but still you can see this area is area 0 okay so this side area 1 this is area 2 so who is my abr but the problem is this is area 0 this is area 1 this is area 2 so this is not possible in ospf there is a concept of virtual link which we will understand on later stage but here you can see we can't connect right now without uh, this virtual link and all so let's do this virtual link later on but understand the basic ospf yeah so this image is better so now you can see this is like a corporate design okay so area 120 okay maybe this is your delhi network this is your mumbai this uh, delhi mumbai kolkata dubai singapore us so all these locations are connected with the data center and because all the locations are connected with the data center and you can place your data center into area zero 
मतलब जहां पर सारी चीजें कनेक्ट हो रही है ना ओके सो दैट यू कैन पुट दैट इन एरिया जीरो बिकॉज एरिया जीरो इज ऑल्सो नोन एज बैकबोन ओके तो बैकबोन इज लाइक ए सेंट्रलाइज लोकेशन वेयर यू कैन कनेक्ट ऑल योर लोकेशन टूगेदर ओके तो यू कैन सी वी हैव मल्टीपल ए बी आर लाइक दिस राउटर तो वॉट सो राउटर यू पुट इन डिफरेंट एरिया दैट राउटर्स विल बी कॉल्ड एरिया बॉर्डर राउटर्स ओके सो इन ओ एस पी एफ देर इज ए एस बी आर ऑल्सो ओके सो वी हैव ए बी आर एंड ए एस बी आर ओके इफ यू सी दिस इमेज तो यू कैन सी हेयर तो दिस राउटर दिस राउटर इज एरिया वन दिस साइड एरिया वन दिस साइड ऑल्सो वन दिस साइड जीरो दिस इज जीरो दिस इज जीरो दिस इज जीरो दिस इज टू दिस इज टू ओके ऑपोजिट साइड विल बी सेम तो यू कैन सी इन दिस केस द राउटर इज पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन जीरो एंड वन दिस विल बी एरिया बॉर्डर राउटर तो दिस एरिया बॉर्डर राउटर दिस इज जीरो दिस इज टू दिस साइड दिस इज एरिया बॉर्डर राउटर बट हेयर वी हैव कॉन्फिगर्ड ओ एस पी एफ बट ऑन अनदर साइड मे बी यू हैव डिफॉल्ट रूट ओके मे बी यू हैव अ डिफॉल्ट रूट मे बी यू आर रनिंग सम डिफरेंट प्रोटोकॉल तो वेन एवर यू रन एनी प्रोटोकॉल विद ओ एस पी एफ दैट इज कॉल्ड ए एस बी आर तो ए एस बी आर स्टैंड फॉर ऑटोनोमस सिस्टम बाउंड्री राउटर ओके सो ऑटोनोमस सिस्टम बाउंड्री राउटर वेन यू आर राउटर पार्टिसिपेट इन ओ एस पी एफ विद एनी डिफरेंट प्रोटोकॉल ओ एस पी एफ विद डिफरेंट प्रोटोकॉल इज लाइक इज नोन एज ए एस बी आर तो दीज आर द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ओके सो आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस वन मोर थिंग ओके इन अ मोर एलेबोरेटिव वे बिकॉज वी डिस्कस्ड हाउ मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ मैसेजेस वी सेंड एन ऑल राइट तो लेट मी शो यू इन मोर डिटेल वॉट इज गोइंग इन साइड द राउटर्स this is like next level of ospf now so now you can see one image with some okay so there are two routers okay so whenever you say ospf in one side you send hello okay the another side also say hello and it also confirm i heard 10.1.1.6 okay so then this router 10.1.1.6 will send a database description and in this like uh, you can see 10114 is sending a lot of lsa so you can see 10111 1012 1013 1014 44 5 so these are called router lsa which we are sending in the database description can you see this 10111 10112 10113 <laughs> so the router is updating the information with another router with some sequence number ओके सो दिस इज अ सीक्वेंस नंबर वेन एवर एनी नेटवर्क गेट्स अपडेट तो जब भी कोई टेन वन 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 के लिए नया अपडेट आएगा वेन एवर यू गेट एनी न्यू अपडेट फॉर दिस टेन वन 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 दिस विल इंक्रीज बाय वन ओके सपोज यू हैव अ राउटर एयर तो वेन एवर यू गेट एनी अपडेट फॉर टेन वन 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 ओके तो सपोज द लिंक इज अपडेटेड ओके सो द राउटर विल सेंड द सीक्वेंस नंबर वन Suppose you change the subnet mask or the link is down. So whenever any changes happen on this network, so the router is going to send the new sequence number. So ये एक-एक number बढ़ता रहता है, okay? This number will keep increasing by one whenever there is a change. Okay? Suppose for ten one one one, okay? We have a network here ten one one. So we sent this to ten one one six. with the sequence number it start from this number 8000000001 so this will be my first update so if i do any changes on this router or any network so the router is going to send me the new number 800002 okay and router is going to check the sequence number and now it this is old so router will accept this and update in the table it will become 2 so whenever you do any changes it will keep increasing 4 5 7 10 50 like this okay and it is going to compare the router is going to only accept the router is going to only accept this update when the sequence number is not same so if you have less sequence number agar idhar char hai suppose you have 4 and here you have 3 
so for router this is a new update it will update but if you are getting the same sequence number router will not accept this lsa okay so you can see we are getting a sequence number and we are saying to this router please compare your database and the sequence number also so this is the new thing i am telling you right now so jab hum pehle discuss kar rahe the so we were discussing only the networks but now i am telling you with the networks it is also comparing the sequence number it is also checking the link ids so whatever link ids link information we have okay so this router is also going to so you can see sequence number updated by x plus 1 so whatever sequence number you got it is going to add one more sequence number so whenever any new update comes तो जब भी कोई नया अपडेट आता है तो सीक्वेंस नंबर एक नंबर से बढ़ जाता है तो वेन एवर एनी न्यू अपडेट कम्स द सीक्वेंस नंबर विल इंक्रीज बाय वन ओके तो द होल प्रोसेस गोज लाइक दिस ओके सो व्हेन वी हैव सिमिलर तो यू कैन सी सो व्हेन वी डू नॉट हैव व्हेन वी डू नॉट हैव द इंफॉर्मेशन द राउटर इज गोइंग टू सेंड मी द लिंक स्टेट रिक्वेस्ट फॉर टेन वन वन टेन वन टू टेन वन थ्री टेन वन फोर so whatever routes we do not have and then the router is sending you the correct information with the updated sequence number and you are going to update the information this is how it works so this is all about ospf okay and uh, so as this is just a beginning i want you to revise okay what i recommend guys if you want to do good in ospf and all so definitely those who have not joined they can start uh, with this ospf uh, bgp mpls batch okay so okay this is just about the course now so like uh, we started this is a module which we are covering in rc okay so eagrp topic we have already covered okay but maybe if you do not want to cover eagrp you can start with ospf okay so if you take admission kind of so you can start with ospf now okay we will after ospf we will learn bgp and after bgp we are going to learn about the mpls thing okay like this so this is the whole so yes uh, guys uh, do you have any question you can ask me one by one atul sir i am krishna sir yeah krishna Sir, recently I attended interview. Sir, interviewer asked me, there are mm -hmm. three routers, sir. Mm -hmm. Router one, router two, and router three. Ah. Uh -huh. And uh, for router one, one host is connected. Mm -hmm. Router three is one host is connected. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and uh, host address is one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot three dot two. Hmm. And same uh, that uh, host uh, another host also same address sir. And yeah. he asked me whether it will be ping or not, sir. Yes, you will do NAT here. If you do NAT here, the router is going to convert into the this router IP, right? Yeah, at the no? WAN port, right? WAN. Yeah, WAN port one. because you will do NAT so, here, and this IP will convert into maybe one dot one dot one. and this ip may be convert in 2.2 so the yes they will ping each other but this computer this computer will not talk to each other okay means you can't put private ip means they will not ping basically because when you ping from this computer it will ping his own ip it will not go further are you getting yeah okay see your private computer ip, IP is 192 168 3.2 so the interviewer asked you to have the uh, means it is asking you that we should we can have this or it is asking you to ping from this to this yeah yeah he asked we can ping from host one to host two no we can ping or not he asked no. that no so no maybe no. maybe duplication will be there right i think that will not obviously if you ping just tell me guys if you ping your own ip so computer will always reply even you break this cable still router is going to show you the ping is coming from 3.2 right ping. so whenever you ping your own ip so obviously you are going to response 
you will get a respond back from your computer only mm -hmm. so, so maybe maybe he asked you in this way can we have this lan network and this lan network krishna yeah 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 just he maybe asked he asked you can we have this three network and three network this side if yes that is possible because we will have nat in on this side maybe and uh, but if it is asking you to ping so it will not ping he asked to me whether it is ping or not and whether they can communicate or not if, if we can communicate how we can communicate yes no we can't with the same ip we can't okay okay and i have doubt in icmp sir can you tell me the concept of icmp sir ping and sure, tell me ask me which icmp question and i know the basics of tra trace route and ping sir mm -hmm. uh, but in the depth i don't know sir the error codes is there right in icmp so basically just understand the basic one mm. so whenever you ping from computer a to computer b okay so whenever you ping computer a to computer b so the ping the message which is going to computer b that is called echo messages and the type there is a type code which is called type 0 okay whenever we send a ping that message is called echo which is or known as type 0 and when the computer b replies you that is called echo reply and the type code is guys eight. let me tell type code is 8 8 yeah So what else you want to know in ICMP? Sir, so, but I did I don't know that the remaining concept. What what is five four and actually what is ICMP? Exactly I don't know. But uh, what so it's I... a protocol. It's a yeah. protocol and there is a code IDs. Like whenever there is a message, like uh, you can read this. Let me check. Yeah. So you can check on the Juniper website. there is a good uh, document so you can see icmp type and code ids so whenever we get reply this is like echo reply okay so uh, i did one mistake guys to send echo message it is 8 okay this is 8 and echo reply is 0 okay so you can see echo reply is 0 and echo message is 8 and whenever we get any destination host unreachable that icmp type is 3 can you see this so yeah. when we get any time exceeded number that is like 11 like 11 is the type code okay so these are whenever you do trace route whenever you do trace route the type code 30 will help you to go further okay so when these are a destination unreachable icmp type okay so you can see under this type 3 so you can see destination unreachable what is the icmp type yes can you see this what is the type 3 under a type 3 there are more messages like under a type 3 there are four few more messages like type 3 but destination unreachable code is zero then the net is unreachable so when the host is unreachable the device is not reachable the type code is 1 when the protocol is not reachable the type code is 2 can you see that when the port is not reachable means maybe you are uh, checking any port number specifically so that is type uh, type code 3 but the error unreachable code is 3 see we can't remember all this okay just if you learn some basics like echo reply echo okay if you learn about uh, trace route that is enough to crack interview Yeah, yes, sir. He asked only source punch. He asked, and a query mm -hmm. question, a query play uh, error codes. He asked, just that's it, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you, Atul. Okay, okay. Sir, Atul, sir, why? Yes. Uh, OS, in a router ID concept, is there in only OSP routing protocol? We are using other protocols, right? BGP, RIP, all this. Yeah, so in EAGRP concept. router ID do not matter because it works on FDAD concept. Remaining, what about remaining protocols like BGP, RAP, sir? There is no yeah, router. Yeah, BGP has ID. router ID, but they do not send router ID in their uh, like uh, in the in their parameters. Okay, so when we send a hello packet in OSPF, 
I will show you those packet details. So when we send a hello in the hello message, we send our router ID. Okay. Yeah, like my router ID is one, 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 and the router will also, so, be, uh, so I told you when we send hello to each other, then only we become neighbors, right? Yes. Sir. So, but when yes. we are sending hello from both sides with same router ID, they will not become neighbors. But in the case of a rip, there is no hello concept, right? And in the case of EIGRP, we never send our router ID in the hello packet. Okay. So one interview question guys, what is the difference between distance vector and link state? Okay. Anyone can explain me this yeah, distance yes, vector. I mean, shall I explain? Yeah. Tell me. yeah distance, tell me. Vector, distance vector means direction. The number mm -hmm. of options based upon handover packet that is distance vector. Link state means link means port. State means a state of the port. And that is uh, link means ports, uh, port portal. State means advertise what uh, what state whether it is on state or off state of the port. Mm -hmm. It can stand the advertisement or not. So basically distance vector and link state, they are completely different. So if you ask me why, so the best answer is like distance vector routers, they are mm -hmm. completely dependent on their neighbor. Okay. If the router A wants to go to the router, maybe X. Okay. So router will go from by asking each router, like router A will ask router B. Router B will ask router C, router C will go to D. Like this is how the communication is happening in the distance vector. So means the information, like I'm going to depend on the neighbor, dependent on the neighbors. Are you wow. getting now? So this concept is also known as routing by rumor. So many people will ask you in the, this is also like hash three or four interview question. What is routing by rumor? So this same thing is called routing by rumor. So when you are completely dependent on your neighbors to reach the destination is known as routing by rumor. And that is in the distance vector. And when we talk about link state, so when we want to go to computer, uh, sorry, router A to router X, so we will have the complete information and we will have the complete information in the database table. So it's like a Google map guys. Like if you want to go from one point to another point and if you have many path, so the best path will be preferred. Yes or no. Right. Okay. So the link state knows multiple path route because link state knows the full picture of the topology, full picture of the database. So it means we will have the complete information from source to destination, how I'm going to reach the destination because link state runs SPF algorithm. As I told you SPF and whenever you run SPF, it is working like a SPF tree. Okay. Both Logan, so there is a concept of SPF tree calculation. So if you check what is SPF tree calculation, the router is going to, so it's like this. So whenever you run any, whenever you configure router, maybe router one is connected to like this. Okay. Like this is your scenario. Okay. So you activated OSPF on this router. So router will make a tree. Okay. So you can see router will make a tree. Like I am the root. I am the main router. So these are two routers are my branches. Okay. And further, I have one more router further. I have one more router. The router is going to build a SPF tree. So when your OSPF has a SPF tree, it knows how to go and it is going to put the best path in the routing table. We will have a database and on the base of database router is going to make one SPF tree. He is going to make himself as a root. And he is going to see, okay, this is the tree. I'm a tree like, okay. And that best when it forms the SPF tree, the best path will be moving to the routing table. So uh, remember that example, when I was giving you 1000 routers, like if we have 1000 routers database, so SPF algorithm is go going to take a lot of time. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So that is the concept we had areas. Like uh, when I told you, right, we have areas. 
so that if you have very big database table you will take a lot of time to run spf algorithm and the tree will be very big also right so if you check any router in ospf so so you you can see if we are checking spf if this router is running spf the router will imagine itself as a root and they all the routers are its branches can you see this yes yes sir okay and the best path it is going to check best path which is my best path so router is going to check okay so this path may be my best path and router is going to check the best path with the one thing which is called cost in ospf have you heard about cost earlier yes sir to yes sir yes, 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 yes. yes so if you have high bandwidth link the cost is high or less less if you have 1 gb link the cost will be different if you have 100 mb link so cost will be different right different. yes sir the formula is 10 to power the 8 and divided by bandwidth this is the ospf formula okay if you Actually, convert sir, this it, like it depends upon the vendor also Actually, sir. sir yeah yeah, yeah we are talking we are learning cisco right now right okay so we are talking about cisco here okay so when we are going to calculate okay maybe when we will see 1 gb we will write in kb okay 1000 1000 okay and uh, we are going to get maybe 10 cost for 1 gb and we are going to get 100 cost for 100 mb maybe okay you can calculate this ospf areas okay so the first question everyone knows okay there is a ospf area and then we need to connect all the ospf areas with this area 0 these routers are in my ospf area 0 and these router may be in area 5 area 6 area 7 okay so if you want to connect area 5 to area 6 then it is mandatory to have area 0 and another term you may have heard is that all areas should connect to zero one interface can belong to only one area suppose this router this router has one interface one cable or interface port whatever you want to say so this interface is going towards this router so i can add this interface in only one area i can't add one interface in different areas so as you all know ospf is a very big protocol like you can have unlimited hops means you can add as many routers you want to aap unlimited router bhi laga sakte ho isme so to understand why we have areas let's consider all the routers are in one area okay so why we have areas so consider all these routers are in one area when the ospf network increases or area grows in size when area grows what will happen the network links will grow right you will have lot of network links your number of routers will increase obviously agar aapka network bada ho raha hai to usme router aur uske link bhi bad rahe hain so if you increase the area obviously the routers the links are increasing correct there are n number of reason why link flaps maybe ethernet cable is uh, not correct or maybe fiber cable have problem flap has many reasons okay so if link flaps do you know what will happen so in short the first thing will happen is whenever anything change we are going to do the again spt what we discuss spanning tree tree calculation again and due to this what will happen the link state database will increase obviously let me write here the link state database size will increase link state database lsdb means if you have many number of routers many number of links then lsdb table will also increase and becomes unmanageable correct because it will be too big to manage and when the link state database increases there is another problem that consumes more memory and if it is consuming more memory what will happen there is a delay in spf computation and then it is going to be what we call lsa flooding consider this if you do not understand what lsa is consider whenever anything happens wrong routers are going to send update to all the neighbors and what will happen all their respective neighbors they are going to send update to all their neighbors 
their neighbors will send update to all their neighbors and what will happen in short while like you will have a big lsa flooding in your network so this will cause more cpu resources spf will have issues the tree will take time and then your network becomes unmanageable so there are could be n number of problems you will have okay so if we have areas like few routers are in this area okay so when we have areas what will happen if there is a flap or anything happens in one area it will only be in your area we will not send lsa flooding or there will be no lsa flooding whenever it happens okay we can have area zero in between also area zero is also known as what it is called backbone okay and let's talk about the network so this is area zero and you have many routers let's take consider four routers i'll put these routers on the border okay and uh, you have few routers here and this is connected to this router and this is called uh, like area 5 and uh, you may have a few routers here this is another area and let's connect this also this is area 7 so obviously this network will work from area 5 to 7 because between this area 0 is coming but these routers are called internal routers so internal routers it's member of one area member of one area and these routers which are you can see this link and this link both links are in area 0 so this is called backbone backbone router but these links you can see this is 0 this is 5 so this is called abr area border router which is member of multiple areas and this router is also in 0 and 7 so this is also abr and all these routers are internal routers okay so there is a special router in ospf like if you try to connect suppose in both the routers i am running eigrp Okay so now you can see this router is having eigrp on this interface and on these interface you have ospf here ospf here also ospf ospf so even if it is a single interface in different routing protocol this is what we call asbr so any router which is member of multiple routing protocols so that is called asbr autonomous system boundary router so if you are new to this concept about asbr it's very simple if you run any protocol like if you run rip here so which router will be asbr this router because it is also having ospf in this direction so this router will not become asbr because it is only running rip it's not mandatory that you should have asbr in area 0 any router in ospf can become asbr except a stub okay interview for ospf protocol okay so let's start with shehan was yes, yes sir hi hi sir how are you i am good i am good so let's start so just tell me about yourself and then we will continue with our technical discussion of ospf okay sir so my name is mohammad shanawas basically i belong to uh, merit but currently currently i am living in noida mm -hmm. uh, i have been working in easy policy for last two years and uh, as a system engineer and uh, i have done uh, three year uh, diploma in computer science and engineering and uh, currently i am doing btech from uh, gs university okay is and it correspond yes yeah, sir Okay, okay. So nowadays we can do B Tech also correspondence. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so you have two years of experience, and uh, you are expertise in what sector till now? Means in two years, what you have learned so, so far? Yeah, I have. I have. Uh, as I am working uh, in the networking field, as uh, and I am working as a system engineer in Easy Policy. Mm -hmm. So my work work experiences. Uh, 
uh, more than uh, uh, desktop support. Earlier, I was working as a desktop support, but now I'm working as a network engineer in this company. Okay, okay, okay. Shenwaz, let's start with the OSPF discussion. So, tell me about uh, like uh, why we use OSPF. OSPF. Yeah. Sir, so why OSPF. we use OSPF? What is the full form, port number, multicast address? So just to give basic idea, and then we will go into detail also. Okay, sir. OSPF is a open source path first protocol, and uh, this uh, uses the it uses the uh, uh, best road in a routing, mm -hmm. and uh, it has a uh, two multicast addresses that mm -hmm. one is two two four dot zero dot zero dot five. Mm -hmm. And the second is two to four dot zero dot zero dot six, and OSPF has a areas concept. Mm -hmm. Like uh, it has multiple areas to connect uh, with the uh, backbone area. It has a backbone area, and all the areas to okay, must okay. be connected just to. Just okay. So OSPF uh, <coughs> works on which algorithm? Uh, OSPF work on Dijkstra algorithm. Dijkstra algorithm, and it yes, is also sir. known as. Dijkstra algorithm and it also known as SPF so algorithm. SPF, SPF, shortest path first algorithm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it uses two multicast addresses, right? Yes, sir. So why it uses two multicast address? Can you please explain me? Yes, sir. There is a two multicast address. One is twenty four dot zero dot zero dot five. That is use for all router that is uh, for uh, global routing we can say that mm -hmm. and uh, when we use <clears throat> when we done dr bdr election mm -hmm. then we use 24.0.0.6 because designated router only understand the multi card address 0.6 okay so let's make a uh, diagram and can you please explain me in this yes sir. just tell me what i'll do how many router okay. should i take and which like how I will connect and then please explain DRVDR to me. Tell me okay, what sir. should I do now? Uh, should, you should, uh, you can uh, take a switch mm -hmm. when we create a broadcast network. Mm -hmm. So we, we create a switch and we connect two or three routers, three or four routers to. Uh, okay, let's switch. suppose this is R1. Yeah. This is R2. This is R3. Yes. And this is R4. Yes. And uh, this is this. Uh, Let me give the IP also, okay? One dot one dot one, one dot one dot two, okay. One dot one dot one dot three, one dot one dot one dot four. Okay. Now yeah. please explain DRBDR. Yeah, DRBDR. When we create a broadcast network, mm -hmm. so we need we 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 do the DRBDR election. So why we do DRBDR election? Because uh, uh, if we have a uh, more than two routers in a same network mm -hmm. so we use uh, we use broadcast network mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, for the for stopping the packet flooding yes correct so we use dr bdr which uh, packet concept. flooding uh, lsa packet lsa flooding lsa flooding very yeah. good this is the answer exactly if nobody knows why we use dr bdr this is the answer to stop LSA flooding, yes, sir. In a broadcast network, we use DRBDR election. Okay. Yes, sir. Now tell me who, which router will become my DR? The highest IP of the router will become the DR. That is 1.1.4. This will be a DR. Okay. So this device will be my DR router. DR router. So who will become my BDR? BDR will become the second last IP, highest IP address. That is 1.1.3. That will be become a BDR backup designated router. Okay, so why we have BDR in our network? Uh, if we if our DV, DR network will, router will down, then uh, in in the absence of DR, the BDR will become the DR router. Okay, and, and the mm -hmm. and who will uh, become BDR then? The BDR will become uh, R two one dot one dot two will be become the R BDR. Okay, so suppose this is down, so this will become DR. BR. And this will become BDR. BDR. Suppose this device comes back. So which position it will take then? Uh, it will be. It will. Rem it will take uh, DR other. Yes. Very and, good. Yeah. And this device is already in DR other. It, this is this is already DR other. So what DR routers do with each other? Means they share the information with each other, or 
they just say hello to each other they just say hello to each other they will not share the information only dr and bdr will share the information mm -hmm. they will okay. understand the packet Okay, so let's take an example. If R1 has a LAN network, okay. okay, and already it is advertised in my routing table, and if this LAN network goes down, so R1 will send an update, right? That my yes, network sir. is down. Yeah. So which multicast address it will use to inform? Yeah, it will use the multicast address 24.0.6 to DR. Okay, so means the device will have a destination IP 224.0.0.6, yeah. and it will send to the switch. And switch will send a broadcast, or it will only send to DR. It will send the broadcast, but the B BDR and DR other will discard the packet because uh, the multicast address twenty four dot zero dot six will understand only DR. Okay, but BDR BDR also discard the packet, or just it will accept and it will not reply. BDR also discard the packet because DR is exist no, there. No, no, wrong. BDR accept the packet, but it will not send a reply because he says DR already in my network. I will not reply. DR will reply. Only okay. DR other will reject the packet. Okay. Okay. So DR so can understand the uh, DR and BDR 26. both can understand two two four zero zero six. But DR replies. Now, okay, leave it now. BDR uh, just uh, always remember BDR also accept the packet, but it will not reply. Okay. Okay. Now yes, tell me if DR got the message. Now DR have DR will update to all other routers, right? Yes, sir. So which multicast address it will use now? It will use the uh twenty four dot zero dot zero dot five because this route this multicast address is for the all the router or the, all the routers in the network. Mm hmm. Very good. Okay. Mm hmm. Suppose if I want to make R1 as a DR, so what I will do? We have to increase the priority of R1 router. Okay, so by default, what priority all router have? All pri all routers have one priority by default. Okay, so one, 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 one. So if yeah. I'll increase priority to my, uh, suppose 100. Yeah. Okay, so this, so will this device DR. will become my? DR. Okay, let's change the scenario now. So this device will become DR. Okay. Yes, sir. So who will become my BDR now? The second type is the the, sec, the uh, earlier DR. Earlier? Earlier BDR. And just see, it's a new topology. Okay. okay. So I have set a priority one hundred. Now who will become BDR? One dot one dot four will be the become the D, BDR. Yes. Okay. So. I want this router will never participate in DR BDR election. I want R4 will never participate in DR BDR election. What I will do? We have to decrease the uh, uh, priority of this. Uh... What I will make it? Recall your memory, bro. I just remember that. Santosh, don't. Uh, we have to decrease this uh, interface uh, uh, router priority. Mm, yes, we will decrease, uh, but by default is one. So by default is one. So we will decrease it to zero. Are you sure or not? Yeah, I'm sure because uh, if, if the priority is if the priority will be zero, so he will not participate in any. Uh, okay, network. so if it is zero, it is not participate in election, right? Yeah. So it will stuck in which state? It will start in uh, hello state. Hello? Uh, not state means what it will become? DR, BDR or DR other? Okay, it will be become DR other. Hmm. It will always remain DR other. Okay, so if I will make all priority zero in my network, so what will happen? If all my routers have a priority of zero, so okay. any router will become DR or BDR? The same scenario will be repeated. Might be R four will be become the DR. Priority is no, a... just now you said if we make priority zero, it will not become DR, right? Yes. It will become DR other. So if all routers become DR other, what will happen? So if all routers are DR other, 
just re recall the things like two routers which are dr other right if two mm -hmm. routers are dr other they will only send hello to each other yes so they will all become neighbors but they will never become adjacent to each other adjacent. yes sir so it means they will not share information with each other they your will topology will be stuck okay your routes will not be exchanged with each other if lan network is advertised from here and lan network is advertised from here the lan networks will not be shared to each other because hell dr other never share information with each other they only share information with dr and bdrs okay okay now yes sir clear yes sir clear overall it's good but in few things uh, you need to go into very deep i'll revise this topic again yeah yeah but overall it's good not we can't say it's bad it's more than average okay okay because even people we have taken interviews of many students they even don't know the multicast address difference and many guys don't know about the dr bdr process also so okay. overall it is more than average right okay sir okay next yogesh thank you sir okay. ha sir सर सर नेटवर्क का इशू है डिस्क के बीच में होता है तीन बार हुआ था कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं ना नो 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 प्रॉब्लम ओके तो एसपीएफ पैकेट्स आई वांट टू लिसन फ्रॉम यू सो हाउ मेनी ओएसपीएफ पैकेट्स वी हैव एंड व्हाट आर देयर वर्क हेलो यस यस योगेश टेल मी हाउ गुड इवनिंग सर या गुड इवनिंग सो जस्ट स्टार्ट नो नीड टू डू इंट्रोडक्शन जस्ट स्टार्ट विद ओएसपीएफ पैकेट्स देयर आर फाइव टाइप्स ऑफ ओएसपीएफ पैकेट्स हेलो पैकेट्स डेटाबेस डिस्क्रिप्शन पैकेट लिंक स्टेट रिक्वेस्ट पैकेट लिंक स्टेट अपडेट पैकेट एंड लिंक स्टेट एक्नोलेजमेंट पैकेट ओके इन सो कैन यू प्लीज एक्सप्लेन मी हाउ ऑल फाइव पैकेट्स वर्क ओके सो टेल मी हाउ आई यू विल एक्सप्लेन हेलो पैकेट टू डिस्कवर नेबर Hello packet is used to discover neighbor. Yes. Okay, to discover neighbor. Database packet summary of uh, network. Summary of database. Summary, summary of, of database. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Yes, sir. Request for uh, network. Link state request for network. Request for networks. ओके एंड लिंक स्टेट सेंड इंफॉर्मेशन लिंक स्टेट यू मीन लिंक स्टेट इंफॉर्मेशन लिंक स्टेट एल एस यू फुल फॉर्म अपडेट लिंक स्टेट अपडेट टू लिंक स्टेट इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट अपडेट फॉर न्यू इंफॉर्मेशन लिंक स्टेट यस सर Mm-hmm. An acknowledgement. Mm-hmm. Receipt of network. Receipt of packets. Okay. So can you please Receipt explain me, like, if I have two routers, okay? So how these all packets will yes. work? Can you please explain me like that? I don't want these full form or definitions. I want you to explain between two routers. This is R one. This is R two. So explain. All five packets. Hello, packets oh. means discover the neighbor. Okay. To try R1, to discover the neighbor. R one will send a hello to R two. Okay, now then mm -hmm. if R one is sending hello, so R two what R two will do? He will also send or not? Yes, he will also send hello packets. Okay, not then packets. R1 one packet. To... Hello and R two will also send hello. Okay, now then R one send to database. Means summary of network or summary of database. What summary? Suppose R one R one have ten R one is ten network. Suppose okay. R one yes, have ten networks and R two have around five networks. Prefixes. So DBD sends. Then R1, what R DBD will send to R two? DBD send all five all uh, database to R two or remaining to R two. Not. DBD, you said summary of database, right? DBD doesn't send the full database. Yes, sir, yes, it will sir. only send the summary of how many networks? Uh, 
This is the reason we are sending because when we send DVD, it compares yes, the yes, database. Sir. It compares the database that you have those 10 networks in your database or not. If you don't have, you send LSR. Okay. So now I am going to send LSR for 10 yes, remaining sir. prefixes. And this device also send LSR for how many networks? Five networks. Then, yes, sir. Then what will happen? Then they update to each other, right? Yes, sir. Have not studied properly. LS you to each other. Okay, take my five networks, take my ten networks, and once all the database is synchronized, they mm -hmm. also send acknowledgement to each other. This is how all five packets work. Okay, Virinder, please okay, come. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Virinder, can you please explain me this OSP packets again? Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Explain. Hello, packet DVD packet. Mm -hmm. uh, LSR, LSU, mm -hmm. and in acknowledge. Mm -hmm. What is the hello timer of OSPF? 10 seconds. 10 seconds? Okay. Okay. So R1, R2 is sending hello to each other. They become what? Neighbors? Neighbor. Okay. Yes. So R1 will send DVD or R2 or both will send DVD to each other? Both. Both the devices or, will send DVD. This router is saying or, I have 10 networks and this device will say I have 5 networks, right? right. So R1 will send hello and R2 hmm. will send hello. Now yes, please. Sir, R1, R1 said hello hmm. and R2 also send hello for create and maintain the system. Mm -hmm. uh, create and maintain the neighbor. Mm -hmm. uh, then router 1 and 2 both are sent DVD packet uh, of uh, ne uh, network summary packet. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, then sir, LSR. Then our router one and router two both are sent a LSR packet, a request packet mm -hmm. for a full network. Then router one and two both uh, both send uh, LSU update, uh, the link state update um, to packet for uh, for full network. Mm -hmm. Then sir, router one and router two both are acknowledgement uh, for complete the uh, packet, receive the packet, total mm -hmm. packet. Okay, so can you please explain me states with yes, hello packets? Any, uh, Just hold on, two routers, okay? Uh, yes, sir. I want you to please explain packets with states, packets and states. Okay, yes, so once we send hello, so the router will be in which state? In it state. Init, init state. state okay first is init state when yes, we when the routers are in its state when they initialize the hello packet uh, hello packet is uh, only one side router says hello packet and then it's init packet okay so if both sides hello then the state then will be two way packet two way okay so very two -way good packet. 
when we send dbd it's sir x start x start okay when the router send dbd packet uh, mm-hmm. is to start exchanging the dbd packet mm-hmm. that's called uh, x start packet when okay. dbd packet exchanging are complete then it's uh, change packet okay yes means if you are sending dbd you are in the process of sending dbds then it is x start when dbd completes then you are into with state exchange change okay and when we are sending lsr when we are sending lsu all these packets comes into which state full state loading state loading state the loading state yeah. when router 1 and uh, under router 2 is lsr and lsu packet sending it's called uh, loading state okay and last what we have when it's complete then it's called full state okay so can you please explain me like what is the difference between neighborship and adjacency okay. okay anyone in the class yes anyone in the class what is the difference between neighborship and adjacency so when two routers exchange the hello packets with mm-hmm. each other they mm-hmm. have to form neighborship and when they uh, when there is a full uh, and it is in the uh, yeah full state then they form adjacency yes so means when th- both routers are sending hello to each other they are they in form which, yeah they are neighbors here we call yes, as sir. neighbors when they are in full yes, state sir. means all the database is synchronized then yes, this is sir. adjacency Yes, sir. then data uh, database uh, network all the same yeah, this yeah. is the same data both of the yes, yes. table okay. yeah thank you sir dr bdr ban jata hai andar dr bdr is in which state here we are doing dr bdr na here when we are sending dbd to each other or here we in two way we have dr bdr election in which dr bdr election yahan hai okay in two way mein. okay because when we send yes. hello to each other then only we compare the router ids priorities everything uh, sir yes okay pritam yeah. yes sir okay so let's make a scenario okay if two routers are connected together with a ethernet cable so in this scenario we will have dr bdr election or not yes sir then ospf is configured yeah definitely so yes sir suppose this device is 1.1.1 and this is 1.1.2 and we are using ethernet cable ethernet technology okay any fiber cable or crossover cable yes. okay so which router will become dr and which router will become bdr <coughs> sir uh, first we check pri- pri- priority if, uh, if it's default then uh, it, it will select a uh, router id sir it will be 1.1.1.2 yeah so this router yes, will yeah. be dr and this yes. device will be bdr bdr right correct yes, so if i have one another <laughs> link here yes, if sir. my this link is 2.1.1.1 and this side is 2.1.1.2 so yes, here we will have dr bdr election or not yes sir yes yes okay so who will become dr and who will become bdr uh, here 2.1.2 Mm-hmm. will be the dr and okay. other one is bdr okay so means this device will be bdr for two links yes sir so when we ask these questions so people exactly what they think they think that in one scenario we will have only one dr no in every lan segment or even one prefixes you have you will have dr bdr election like in mm-hmm. this scenario you have dr bdr different and then in this scenario we have dr bdr different yes sir clear Yes. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's go into the areas now. Okay. Suppose this is my area zero. All my routers are connected. First, yes. tell me why we have areas. Okay. Just ma- let me make a scenario. So this is area zero. Yes, sir. This is area one. Yes. And this is area and five, and suppose. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so this link is going into which area? This link is area zero link. Okay. This link is area zero. Yes, sir. 
Okay, so this is area zero link, yes, and sir. this all links are five area. Okay, area five okay. links. Yes. Okay. So now tell me which router will become my ABR. This router, all the interfaces are zero. Here yes. this router has a five, five, and zero. So which yes. router will become ABR? Sir, area five router. This. Okay. So this it device is, is ABR. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Now in another scenario, we have. Here zero zero, but this area is in one. This is one, and all the links are in one. Okay. Yes, sir. So now in this scenario, who will become my ABR? A area zero router. Which one have this both? device is ABR. Yes, sir. Zero so, and one. Okay. So means what is ABR? The one router which have link in a one link in zero area and other in and other. Okay. So any router. Yes, Which yes, participate sir. in any area? Suppose this router is participate in area one, area five, area three. No, sir. One When... link must be in zero. Yes. So yes, suppose sir. if my one link is zero, now this becomes yes, ABR. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, very good. So if we have one area, one link in area zero, that router becomes the ABR. Right? Yes, sir. So now if we talk about uh, like if I am sending a LAN prefix. Right, I am sending one ninety two one sixty eight network from here. Okay, yes, so it is traveling from area zero and it is coming to area one. So yes, in area one routing table, what we will see in the routing table? O or O I A? O I A. So where where in area one sir? Yeah, in area this one ninety two yes. network. If I'll yes, check sir. in my routing table, if of area one router, yes, so sir. it will appear as O route root or O I A root. The OIA. OIA because that is coming from different area. A different area, yes. OSPF inter area and this O will come when, when same net when we check in same area. Yes. Then suppose network. if you check in this router, yes, this sir. this LAN network will appear as O root. Zero. O root, sorry. Yes. Sir. Okay. Clear. Yes, sir. And why we have O areas in OSPF? So. LSA flooding, sorry, LSA flooding. Who link state advertisement to stop LSA flooding? Yes, sir. To stop LSA flooding. To stop LSA flooding and to manage yes, manage the OSPF central yes. from the centralized location. You can say that, but the yes, best sir. thing is to stop LSA flooding. So yes, both sir. the questions, why we have DR BDR, the answer is to stop LSA flooding. Why we have areas in OSPF network to stop yes. LSA flooding. Yes. This is the answer everyone ask, and what people says, sir, we have areas so that uh, uh, we will divide our network. ऐसे लोग मतलब जवाब देते हैं इंटरव्यू में तो टेक्निकली ये जवाब हैं जो सुनना चाहते हैं सारे जो लोग बताते ही नहीं हैं क्योंकि पढ़ा ही नहीं जाते कहीं पे राइट रीजन ये थे ओके क्लियर है ये ओके प्रीतम ये सर ओके कम ब्रो हेलो हाँ क्लियर हाँ प्रीतम यू आर इन द एल एस ए क्लास राइट ये सर Okay, so how many LSAs we have covered in, in right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so LSAs I want to know. So tell me which type of LSAs we have. Router okay. LSA, network LSA, summary LSA. Okay, router LSA, network, network LSA, network LSA. <laughs> summary LSA, external. Okay, so router LSA. Suppose this is area yeah. five. Okay. So this area five. So tell me, this router will have how many LSAs in the database table? This have two router LSA, network LSA. Router LSA. Yeah. How many router LSA we will have in the database table of R? So R one database have how many LSAs? Four. First we have four routers. Yeah. So we so will have four. Yes, so we will have four router LSA, right? Yes, because all four routers are participating in which area? Area five. So if all the area, all the routers are participating in my area, and if I am checking in my area router, I will see four router LSA. And if you will check area zero database table, how many LSA you will see in this table? Six. Yes, because all my routers are. Participating in zero, so we will have six router LSA here, right? 
in area one how many we will have four four check again just see this router is also coming in area one so how many you will have now five yes so you will have you will have five router ls okay clear now yeah. okay so let's come back here and clean the scenario here okay suppose in this segment this device is dr this is bdr this is uh, dr this is bdr this is dr this is bdr and this is dr and this is for all segments right yes or no one becomes dr another side becomes bdr correct yes or no yes. so tell yes, me sir. in area 5 how many network lsa we will see ye so router dr hai utne yeah this router yes, is dr yes, one sir. this router is dr two this is not dr no so this is three so we will have how many lss three network lss okay yes yes so like this if we have dr bdr so same it will count the dr how many routers are becoming dr and that will be my network lsa and what it all comes in summary lsa all my external routes suppose if you are checking in this router or maybe in this router so all your prefixes of all your lan networks everything comes into which area summary lsa in which table summary lsa so all your prefixes which are coming from different areas are reside in this summary lsa hello clear yeah. yes yes ospf is very good protocol so you have to revise it again okay so many of the students have not covered properly but i recommend you guys to please start reading the book for ospf okay but till now i think abhi kya ccna batch ke ho aap aur ccna mein itna knowledge hai agar aapko to aap market mein jo log ghum rahe hain unse bahut acche ho don't worry trust me jinhone ccna kiya hai bahar se unko ye cheeze nahi aati honge wo bhi seekh rahe honge bahut sari cheeze just you need to revise it okay and if someone will take your interview definitely you guys are, you will clear ospf interview okay yes sir hmm. so let's understand first about there are two types of protocols so one is known as so one protocol is category is known as igp and the another type of category is known as egp so in igp so this is known as interior gateway protocol and egp stand for egp stand for exterior gateway protocol okay so before learning bgp uh, you should understand the category of routing protocols okay so these are the categories one we have interior gateway protocols and one we have exterior gateway protocol or so this is a category they are not protocols so under igp i am sure you understood uh, like rip eigrp or some part of ospf earlier and there is one more protocol which is called isis intermediate system to intermediate system okay so all they are interior gateway protocols means if any company have 100 of branches like delhi mumbai okay dubai or maybe new york amsterdam so all these locations are connected like this is all same company branches but they are going to run igp protocols inside this location doesn't matter guys delhi and mumbai between delhi and mumbai like the distance is too far right but still you can connect those locations with igp so if i give you the zoom view of this like if suppose one this is delhi branch this is mumbai so you are going to connect these two branches delhi and mumbai with the help of isp so isp is going to provide you layer one connectivity which is called the physical medium so this is what we call physical connections or uh, they can be virtual also okay but mostly delhi to mumbai isp will not give you one physical connection agar aap delhi se mumbai connect kar rahe ho to physical cable lagana tough hai right so between delhi and mumbai isp is going to help you because isp is already there in delhi 
an isp already in mumbai and between isp delhi office and mumbai office we have a lot big fiber cables core high core fiber cables so isp is going to do like uh, isp is going to connect to a delhi office with mumbai with some technology which is called mpls and this is a uh, vpls there are many technologies but you can understand with the help of this technology mpls bgp mpls okay so isp is going to connect delhi and mumbai and you will feel like you are connected to each other okay so in short igp so when you want to send your lan routes local area connection to the mumbai network you are going to use any of these protocols like rip eigrp ospf or iss okay so between the company even the distance is too far away like delhi mumbai or delhi dubai whatever location if it is your branch if you are taking help from isp to connect multiple branch offices then you connect your offices with igp yeah so i'll repeat again if you want to connect agar aapke 10 branch hai suppose you have 10 branches 15 branches 50 100 n number of branch offices in in india or outside india so you will connect your location routes you will send the delhi routes to mumbai or mumbai routes to dubai dubai routes to different location all with the help of all with the help of interior gateway protocols तो कंपनी का नेटवर्क जो होता है उसके अंदर आप आईजीपी चलाएंगे ओके सो ऑल कंपनीज हैव ए नंबर व्हिच इज कॉल्ड ए एस नंबर ऑल कंपनीज हैव टू बाय ए स्पेशल नंबर टू रन बीजीपी ओके सो ईजीपी एक्सटीरियर गेटवे प्रोटोकॉल हैज ओनली वन प्रोटोकॉल इन द वर्ल्ड व्हिच इज बीजीपी सो बीजीपी इज द ओनली प्रोटोकॉल इन एक्सटीरियर गेटवे प्रोटोकॉल सो इट मीन्स if this is your office suppose uh, this is apple okay and you want to connect with the isp in india maybe this is uh, tata so they have many big big series of routers so this is like isp which is like tata so tata will have a different as number maybe as 5000 and apple will have a different as number like 4748 so can you see this 4748 is a as number and tata has a as number suppose 5000 so now these are two different as number can be connected only with one protocol which is bgp so it means igp runs inside the as number inside the company or inside the as number okay inside the as number which protocol we will run rip eigrp ospf isis these four protocol runs but bgp runs most of the times it is it can be used inside but mostly bgp is used to connect a different as number connect different as numbers so in simple words you can say that different companies connect together with the help of bgp and it is also known as it is also known as internet routing protocol because the whole internet is working on this protocol which is bgp bgp stand for by the way border gateway protocol border gateway protocol very simple concept i am sure you have understood in ccna also so which protocol is used to connect uh, let me ask you one question uh, what do you think like tata which is isp1 is connected to suppose uh, isp2 maybe like airtel how they will be going to connect they will be connected with the bgp okay even just now i explain kiya company ke andar ospf chalega company jab bahar किसी से भी कनेक्ट करेगी तो बीजेपी चलाएगी ओके सो वी रन दीज प्रोटोकॉल्स इनसाइड द कंपनी फॉर इंटरनल कनेक्टिविटी सपोज यू वांट टू कनेक्ट योर मल्टीपल ब्रांच ऑफिसेस देन यू नीड आईजीपी बट व्हेन यू कनेक्ट डिफरेंट कंपनीज लाइक आईएसपीज ओके सो यू कनेक्ट विद बीजेपी ओके
so guys when we connect with isp okay whenever we connect with the isp which is internet service provider okay so we take internet connection with the two ways so one you have already understood in ccna that is default routing okay like you take internet connection from isp which is with the help of default routing you just point a default route remember ip route 0.0.0.0 with the again 000 and then you point to the next stop or you can also give your interface so this is how you point a default route suppose this is your company edge router which is towards lan network where you have multiple systems servers okay so router is going to connect with isp okay so when you have one single isp so you can point a default route so when you have two isp you can still point a default route but you can change the ad values like you can point a default route uh, to this isp with ad value 1 point the another default route with the ad value 2 so if one isp goes down okay when one isp goes down you can forward all your traffic to the isp2 okay this is very simple lab try to do it so just point a default route to this isp with ad value 1 and try to point the default route to another isp with ad value 2 and just uh, shut down this interface and automatically you will see the default route is pointing to the isp2 so this can be achieved with the default route but another way to get the internet connection from isp is a bgp okay we can take internet connection with the help of bgp also hsrp is a technology which we use in the lan network not on the wan connections mostly okay so why we run bgp okay and we need to understand the types of isp connectivity okay so we take internet connection from isp by two ways one is default routing one with the bgp but when you use bgp you get a lot of benefits okay so that i'll talk about later on but uh, you can just let me give you overview what benefits we will get we can control the traffic we can control the traffic like which routes you want to send outside or which routes you want to receive so you can control the traffic incoming traffic also and even you can control the outgoing traffic but with the default route so there are limitations we cannot actually control the traffic okay we cannot control the traffic according to the company requirements so this is why many companies very in uh, medium or big companies they use bgp because they want to control the traffic okay the second point in bgp why we need bgp so when you have internal servers suppose uh, this is your website server you have email server you have multiple servers and you want to send these public ips or you want to you want these servers so that anyone from internet can access this server so agar aap chahte hain ki ye internet wale servers bahar duniya se bhi access ho jaye if you want these servers can be accessed by outsiders so they can only come to my lan network they can only access the server when i am going to assign the public ips okay so it can be done with the help of nat but when you are a big company like it can be done by bgp also so we can advertise our public ips so we can say advertise public ips okay so you cannot advertise your private ip you cannot advertise your private ip you can only advertise your public ip with the help of bgp just imagine suppose this is a facebook website or a facebook company so when they have a lot of servers okay so they are going to forward those details like all their server details to the router and these routers will share the details with the big other isps okay so we need to advertise our internal public ips to the outside world so they the users outside users outside can access the websites 
when we have those information in the BGP. Okay. So, if you have this root route, suppose this is a 17 network, and when we advertise this 17 network to the outside world, ISP will have these routes in their routers, then only the outside users can access these servers. So, when we have these public IPs, we will be able to तभी बाहर के लोग यूजर्स हैं वो एक्सेस कर सकते हैं सो व्हेन वी आर गोइंग टू पुट दिस रूट्स दिस रूट्स इन द बीजीपी देन ओनली द आउटसाइड यूजर्स आउटसाइड यूजर्स विल बी एबल टू एक्सेस दिस फ्रॉम इंटरनेट सो इन शॉर्ट राइट नाउ यू आर एबल टू वॉच दिस YouTube सेशन और द Zoom सेशन बिकॉज़ ऑल द इंटरनेट रूट्स ऑल द इंटरनेट रूट्स ऑफ आवर होम कनेक्शंस आर advertised by ISP okay suppose this is my connection this is your connection this is all other students connection okay so they have different different ISP or maybe they have a similar ISP okay so let's suppose uh, they three ISPs we all are using three ISPs so they are sharing their routes with each other with the help of BGP right now we are able to access YouTube, Google, Facebook, everything because the ISP routers having our connectivity, all the ISPs in the world have BGP in their routers. BGP is a internet routing protocol. No one in the world, like no ISP in the world will be actually going to give you internet connection without BGP. So when you are getting internet connection, it means you, you do not have to run BGP. So you do BGP because most of the times you are taking home connections. But when it comes for a big companies like Apple, Samsung or Nokia or any big companies like Coca-Cola, Pepsi. So they have a lot of branch offices in the world. They have big, big servers, right? So how they will share their server information with outside world with the help of bgp so bgp has a lot of benefit benefits so i just given you overview so why we use bgp is this clear everyone so bgp ke do fayde hain ek aap traffic ko control kar sakte ho incoming or outgoing ko you can control that traffic either it is incoming or outgoing and you can also advertise your public ip advertise public ip means if you have publics, if you want servers to be accessed by users outside the world, then you need to advertise these servers in BGP. So right now, guys, uh, there are types of uh, BGP or types of ISP connectivity. So you need to understand the first type of connection is called a single home connection. Single home. What is single home? Home means ISP. So when you are a company, but when you have one internet connection with one ISP, internet service provider, so this type of connection is called a single home because you have only one ISP, ISP one, maybe Tata, Airtel or anyone. So what is a dual home? So dual home, there, there is another type of connectivity, which is called dual home connection. So when you have one ISP, but you have multiple connections like this or uh, there is another way like you have two routers in your office and you have isp one isp okay so which is pointing to one isp or maybe you have uh, both the routers are from same isp so when you have this type of connectivity or if you you have one router also that's also fine but uh, Kahin bhi ja hai connection, it, you have only one ISP. Just hold on. Yeah. So when you have one ISP, even if you are connecting two routers of ISP, still that connection is called dual home. So this is single home because you have one ISP. This is dual home because you have two connections with ISP. So what do you think? Do you use a uh, do companies use this type of connectivity? Yeah, most of the companies, like those who are very small or those have a, like normal requirement, they are using 
but most of the companies are using this method which is called multi home so mostly jitni bhi companies hain most of the companies are using this mode which is called multi home so what is multi home when you have one router or maybe you have two router but you have two isps like isp1 and when you have another isp isp2 like it can be any one like suppose this is at&t and this is like maybe uh like reliance okay so when you have two isps so that type of connectivity is called multi home because the homes are multi so you can see home means isp kind of so multi home means you have two isp connections when you are using home connections or the normal broadband type of connectivity then we do not need bgp we can use default route also so the single when uh, in the single home in the dual home bgp is not recommended so yahan par bgp recommended nahi hai in these two solutions in these two solutions bgp is not required recommended because you will not be going to get a lot of benefits because you have only one isp so the multi home if you have two isp connection bgp is recommended because you can control the traffic you can send all your traffic from this side you can receive all traffic from this isp so this can be possible when you have bgp and when you have two isps but when you have only a single isp you cannot play with bgp to aap bgp ke sath zyada kuch nahi kar paoge agar ek single isp hai so most of the bgp uses uh, will be when you have multiple isps okay so the third uh, fourth way to the fourth type of connectivity which is called dual multi home which is going to be little costly because we have dual connection what is dual multi home when you have two two connections with the isps okay this can be known as dual multi home single home means single isp one connection dual home means one, two connections but single isp multi home means two isp single connections dual multi home dual connections with the dual isps see companies like i'll be sharing one diagram with you all so just hold on so basically what happens like most of the companies right now in the market like uh, uh, like when we talk about the real production networks so generally we have two routers one is like gateway one gateway two okay so these two locations are connected with multiple other locations suppose uh, all these connectivity are going to one particular location maybe this is your data center okay so this is all going to a data center okay from data center maybe you have internet connectivity okay so this type of connection is not internet connection this type of connection is your mpls link or this this is a private wan service what is mpls basically it's a technology which is used by isps to give connectivity or connect multiple branch offices with one to other location suppose this is delhi this is mumbai so you have data center in maybe in chennai so delhi to chennai and chennai to mumbai all these these links can actually given by isp but they are not internet links they are private connection there is no internet here so internet we are already paying here this is our internet connection which is going to data center but the connectivity from data center to my gateways so they are called my private connections or there are many technologies like mpls l2 vpn vpls okay so there are many technologies used by isp to give connectivity to isp to customers so isp bahut sari technologies use karta hai jaise ki ek mpls to ye branch offices ko jodti hai ek dusri location ke sath but this is a different this is not internet suppose if this connection goes down the internet will not work there is no internet now 
because the delhi branch offices are using internet from data center to internet but this link is not a internet link if this link goes down your internet link connectivity goes down but still you have a connectivity with the data center you can able to access from this device to your data center maybe you have some servers here but if internet link goes down the, your your branch branch offices will go down okay so the requirement uh, so why we need bgp as i told you like uh, when you have a connectivity with the multiple isps okay you can manipulate your traffic there are a lot of benefits in bgp which we will see okay we'll see okay so when we are going to connect a isp so what will be the scenario let me share that also with you so company ka design kaisa hota so and how we are going to understand okay so as i told you you have two gateways gateway 1 gateway 2 uh, maybe you have multi layer switches okay and uh, all these multi layer are connected like this you can bundle these links also with ether channel and below this you have all your lan switches okay so this is a normal design and these switches also have connectivity with another multi layer also for better fail over if one side link goes down so this is the connectivity and multiple systems are connected with these like this is your ground floor switch this is your first floor switch okay like this so maybe this is your second floor where we have uh, the server room okay so you have different rooms meeting rooms so all these are in different different vlans also suppose you have created vlans vlan 10 vlan 30 40 50 whatever so this is a multi layer switch where you are going to connect your vlans with the help of uh, switch virtual interfaces which is svi okay so between all four devices you can run any protocol like eigrp or you can run ospf okay so these vlan routes suppose vlan 10 vlan 20 vlan 30 all these routes will be on this device which is l3 switch so this l3 switch will share these routes with the gateway 1 with the help of eigrp ospf and the similar way this side also we are going to share the routes with the agrp uspf so this is all my lan network okay so i'm sure this is what you have done in ccn also so now the gateway gateway 1 and gateway 2 is connected with isps i am talking about the internet connections now to abhi main internet ki baat kar raha hu yahan pe mpls ki baat nahi kar raha hu so so you have taken a internet connection from atnt and you have taken a connection on gateway to with another isp maybe tata okay so these both are both locations are connected with internet and on internet you have different servers like google facebook okay so like this so this is the scenario guys this is how you access internet but when we run bgp so we are going to run bgp here between gateway 1 and atnt and on gateway 2 and tata here we are also going to run bgp okay to run bgp in this company we need one number which is called just we discussed as number okay we have to buy a number which is called as number to hame ek as number lena hoga so we do not need two as number on both the gateway 1 and gateway 2 we are going to use one single number okay so as number so let me go to one website i'll be going to this website which is called apnic okay asia pacific network information center okay so if you go here you can see i want as number so you can see when you click on get ip okay so this is a asia pacific network information center we buy ips as number from here so when i click on get ip 
so you can see help guide for asn request you can see here guys as request so when i click on this as say number request so you can see the name email id we need to follow this and we have to request isp please assign me an as number so that doesn't get for free obviously you need to be a member of apnic and means you need to be you need to buy public ips to aapko public ip khareedne honge so this is the process so you can see what is the cost of apnic and uh, you can check so you need to apply so you can see 24 subnet mask the minimum number of public ips so why we need public ips i told you when you have public server suppose this whole office is with the public servers to yahan pe sare public server hai this side it, it's all of all for public so these are public servers and you want all other users to access these servers like google facebook is doing the same thing so they are they are they have public ips and those public ips they are sharing in bgp तो गूगल फेसबुक जैसी कंपनीज के पास पब्लिक आईपीस के पूल हैं, ओके और वो बीजेपी इसीलिए चला रहे हैं ताकि वो रूट्स को हम बीजेपी में भेज सकें ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू गेट दीज पब्लिक आईपीस फ्रॉम आईएसपी, ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू अप्लाई सो द मिनिमम आईपीस यू विल गोइंग टू बाय तो सबसे कम आई जो आप बाय कर सकते हो द मिनिमम नंबर ऑफ आई यू हैव टू बाय टू दिस इज एनुअल फी इलेवन ऑस्ट्रेलियन डॉलर okay and there is a sign up fee also okay so this is uh, like you will be going to get 256 address in ipv4 but if you use ipv6 you will get a lot of ips you will get millions billions ips if you take ipv6 but in if you take ipv4 you will only get 256 ips okay so there is a separate fee if you need slash 23 ipv4 block then the cost will increase and they are also giving you one as number can you see this guys ye dekho yahan par ek aapko as number bhi mil raha right so you are getting one as number complimentary with the 256 address you cannot buy just as number because we run bgp when we have a lot of ips we want to advertise those ip so now let's come to our lab or the design topology so you can see now if i have public pool and these all my public ips and we bought one ip like 201.1.1.0/24 so we bought this from apnic okay so this is a minimum you have to buy slash 24 so we already have a connectivity with the at&t and tata so maybe both have given me one public ip okay so the other side ip is like 150.1.2 so this side we have another public ip yeah so we are running which protocol bgp so when we are going to run bgp in this router we are going to say router bgp and sub we got a app, uh, as number suppose 7200 suppose we got this as number so the as is in the range of 1 to 65535 okay so normally the public as is bit from 1 to 64511 to ye range hoti hai okay so this is public range and 64512 to 65535 okay you can check it out uh, to for more clarity this is private as this is public so if you want to connect bgp with at&t and tata you need public as but if you if you want to run bgp inside your company you can use this number this is called private as we'll discuss later on but right now focus on public as number so which public as number we got 7200 so we will go in router gateway 1 we are going to say router bgp 7200 and which network we have to share to the public which ips we have given to the servers to ye ip humne server ko dal di we have given these ips to public servers 
so this block this block we want all users to access via internet so we are going to say network 201.1.1.0 with subnet mask okay that's it guys that's it okay and then this router is going to forward this network to the AT&T AT&T will forward that route to internet and this is how all internet start working I'll show you the proper BGP configuration this is just an idea why we need BGP hi Hans how are you you have any doubt no uh, I had a question in like a while ago before you got here so so you already passed it but I had a question but you already passed it I was just I just wanted to ask about when you said uh you you have the servers and mm -hmm. then we have the data center and then we have the internet coming in from the ISP if mm -hmm. we have like a, a a bandwidth like 100 megabytes and we want to use the IPF test to test it do we how do we test from the from the data center or from the because we have servers in the data center do we test from that servers in the data center so you want to check the, the speed side, where do we test Right. Yeah. So you want to yeah, check to the speed to from, okay. For example, for example, if you purchase 100 megabytes mm -hmm. from the ISP, right, and mm -hmm. then you need to do the IP test to test to test that you actually have 100 megabytes. Mm -hmm. You you determine that from the servers that they are in the data center, or where do you kind of? So in short, that? in short, you want to check the speed between data center servers and your office, right? Yes, and your office. Yeah. yeah. So there is a tool which we used. This is called iPerf. Yeah. Yeah. This is used. So you can put iPerf in any of the server. This is uh you can install in Linux or in the Windows machine also. We have tested this in Windows machines. So you have to uh -huh. put this iPerf in the data center. Okay. And the same iPerf you can test on any location. Suppose you are testing for uh maybe US, New York between new york and the amsterdam if you want to check the speed because this is your private link this is not internet link so then you can use this tool which is widely used all over the world for so this is a tool which is used by all network or network specialists so iperf is used so we can check actually speed it works both on tcp udp so it will actually give you the proper detail what speed the link is giving you the how much bandwidth so it is used for measure bandwidth uh you can also check the mtu size so all these features are available this is a open source tool also okay okay yeah so if you do not have uh, suppose you want to test from one location but you do not have server you want to just check your link speed then you can use this public ipe of servers also so there are many server details you can see so you just, just you need to check okay so you need to uh put the ipe of i'll make a tutorial if i'll get it time so you can see this is the command ipe of then the server then ip and it will give you the detail okay yeah just have a look on the commands yeah you can see iperf hyphen c the server name where you want to test and then you can just put the details like uh, on which port you are testing and all so it will give you the upload and download speed so we can yes we can use in intranet also if you do not have internet you want to test it in between delhi and mumbai isps so where we use this basically so isp has given you this is internet link but uh, when we talk about delhi and mumbai so between delhi and mumbai suppose you have paid for 100 mbps connection this is not internet you cannot check speed test and all so you can place iperf in delhi you can place the iperf in mumbai and you can do the iperf testing and you can send the screenshot to isp i am getting only 50 mbps but you are charging me for 100 mbps this is yeah. Yeah, so we can do this with iperf. I worked, uh, I used iperf in Apple. I used iperf in Juniper Networks. So 
so majorly two companies in the teams we use iperf widely okay guys clear yeah it's a different question but still it's a good learning okay so let's uh, do a small lab guys okay so when you log in into the server with your username and password which you got from the team okay once you log in in the website so you will see some bgp labs here okay so you can see there is a bgp default there are some other bgp labs also so bgp bgp so there are multiple labs okay so i'll be using this uh, bgp uh, is there any ebgp yeah so let's do a very basic bgp lab okay so you can see we have two as number okay so you can call this this is a delhi branch and this will be like isp i will not call hyderabad so it's better we will call this isp okay so we'll be calling this isp okay so so we will create a loop back here for testing suppose you have a loop back okay this is my public pool this is the public pool which we got from i apnic okay so these are the public ips we will do also bigger labs just uh, to for the basic understanding we are doing this so this is public ip okay and we want to share this ip to isp okay so this is the basic agenda of this lab to configure basic bgp so we can use any public ip suppose 152 16 yeah so we will use slash 30 which will be better yeah so let's do it so turn on the devices arun gateway 1 and gateway 2 on the same location ye jo maine example diya tha gateway 1 gateway 2 are on the same location not on different different location we will be going to do those labs also but just uh, understand the basic bgp first does private connection carry the internet traffic yes okay so enable so let's configure host name delhi okay so this is my gateway one like this is my isp okay so you can see let me go and go to fa00 i'll assign ip 15216.12.1 okay so i given this is like you can give a description also this is isp or this is my internet link okay and this is like 100 mbps so i have given the description also so this is a internet link 100 mbps i have just given ip address so i'll be creating a loop back which is uh, you can consider these are my public pool or this is my server ips so i'll be assigning any ip for testing okay so this is my server ips so right now you can see we have two ips so one interface fa00 i have uh, given this command show interface description so you can see fa00 is a link up up which is my wan interface which is internet link 100 mbps and this connection is my lan interface or for my internal servers okay so after that i'll be going to configure isp host name isp interface fa00 ip address 152.16.12.2 if you want to create here loopback also you can create 
but uh, this is uh, just we are doing some testing so you can ignore that also so now what we are doing we we are going to you can see the as number we have given in delhi this is my company as which is as1 and the isp as number is 2 okay every company needs as number if they want to connect with bgp okay so i'll be going to configure router bgp and there is a as number between 1 to 6535 so this is a 2 byte as now we have 4 byte as also i'll discuss this these things in later on but we have 4 byte as number also now which is very big as series because 65000 is very less because there are a lot of companies in the world so this is why now we have 4 byte as this is 2 byte as 2 byte means One byte is equal to eight bits. So two to the power of sixteen is two byte AS. का मतलब क्या होता है? So two byte means sixteen bits. So two to the power of sixteen is sixty five thousand five hundred thirty six. So this is the AS number we have. Okay. So where uh, the zero is reserved, zero to six five three five. So this is all. So we have four byte AS, which is two to the power of thirty two, which is a very big number. Like four two nine four something. This is a very big number. Okay. So, but we are discussing here this uh, router BGP. You can give any number. So router BGP, and then you can give any number like router BGP one. So once you create BGP, when you turn on the BGP, so do you know that BGP works on TCP protocol, which is 179. तो BGP जो होता है BGP is a layer seven protocol. It is known as layer seven protocol, and it uses a TCP, which is layer four protocol for reliable connection. BGP uses TCP for reliable connectivity. Okay, so BGP is layer seven, but it uses TCP, which is layer four. Okay, don't get confused. So BGP is a layer seven application layer protocol. Okay, so when I turn on the BGP, okay, so as we BGP on, करते हैं, so there is a command called show TCP brief all. So you can see show TCP brief all. uh it's not uh, showing me just hold on show processes so when i turn on the bgp guys main ek command dikhata hu aapko yaar it's taking too much time okay let's leave it Yeah. So show process CPU include BGP. So you can see when I go to config T and when I press router BGP one. So router has started four process in the BGP in the router. Can you see this show process CPU? It's like to check the task manager of a router. Show process CPU. And when I type include BGP, so the BGP four process started here. BGP router, BGP input output, BGP scanner, BGP event. Okay, so BGP is started on the router. Okay, we'll be going to see what are the BGP packets, BGP states, those things also we will learn. Okay, so the whole BGP is going to take almost uh, eight, not eight, yeah, eight sessions around, yeah, more eight to ten classes. means one month completely to bgp and one week is enough for l3 vpn which is like from now still it will take little time so router bgp one and we are going to say neighbor so bgp do not work on multicast okay we cannot bgp is a unicast protocol we have to give neighbor manually it is not automatically discovered 
so in ospf in eagrp in ospf in eagrp so normally you have seen that neighbors are automatically discovered but in bgp the neighbors are manually configured to hame manual banane padte hain yahan automatically dhoond liye jate hain because ospf eagrp uses one protocol which is hello protocol but in bgp there is no concept of hellos there is a message called open message we will discuss but again this is not a multicast hello works on multicast address remember 224005 and 6 and this works 224010 but bgp works on the unicast 1 to 1 so neighbor what is the neighbor ip 15216 12.2 Two and the remote AS. What is the AS number of remote side ISP AS two? Okay, so let me go to ISP three now. ISP sorry. Okay, so I'll be going to router BGP two. Okay, so when you are running one BGP, you cannot run another BGP. So you can see when I type router BGP four, it is giving me alert or warning. BGP is already running. The AS number is two. You cannot run multiple BG BGPs on a router. So there is some way which is called VRF and all. These are little advanced things. But right now, on a normal router, you cannot run multiple BGPs. Okay. Virtually, we can run multiple BGPs. But yes, as of now, you can understand BGP. You can run on one time. OSPF, EAGRP, you can run multiple times. Okay, so when I enter router BGP two, so I will give neighbor one fifty two sixteen twelve dot one, and the remote AS is one. So now the TCP connection is going to establish. So you can see neighbor. So the neighbor will only come up, guys. Neighbor, ah, tabi ap aayega jab samne wala device ping hoga. So if you are not able to ping the other side, they will not form neighborship. So let me check if I am able to ping. Yes, I am able to ping. So definitely the neighborship come up, and here you go, the neighborship came up. So remember this rule. Even you have multiple routers, or maybe a lot many devices between ISP and you, or maybe some multiplexer, some ISP devices. Still, you can make BGP connectivity. BGP do not require to be directly connected. So, जैसे OSPF, OSPF, EAGRP needs direct connection. So BGP do not need direct connection to establish the connectivity. Okay, so you can see, guys, show IP BGP summary. So this is the command to check the neighbors, and you can see one fifty two twelve dot two is my neighbor. How I come to know this is my neighbor now? Because whenever you see a state with any number here, so जब भी आप कोई state के नीचे कोई number देखते हैं, suppose you are getting zero, one, two, three like this. So it means the neighborship is अप तो नेबरशिप हमारी अप आ चुकी है तो दिस एंड द नेबरशिप केम जस्ट वन मिनट बैक सो द नेबर इज ऑन द एस नंबर टू सो दिस इज कॉल्ड बीजीपी नेबर टेबल तो इसको हम क्या बोलते हैं दिस इज कॉल्ड बीजीपी नेबर टेबल ओके यू कैन नोट डाउन ऑल्सो लिस्ट ऑल द बीजीपी नेबर्स विल बी डिस्प्लेड हेयर Okay, you can run show IP BGP, and there is another command to check the neighbor show IP BGP neighbors. So this command gives you little more detail. Show IP BGP neighbors. So you see the BGP neighbor is twelve dot two remote AS is two, which is external link because we are running e BGP. So right now what we have configured, this is called e BGP. So there are two types of BGP. One is आई बी जी पी एंड वन इज ई बी जी पी सो एक्सटर्नल बी जी पी एक्सटर्नल बॉर्डर गेट वे प्रोटोकॉल वेन वी कनेक्ट डिफरेंट ए एस 
so this is called ebgp okay and there is internal bgp which is used within the same as so where we use this ibgp mostly when you have two branch office you have also connected with another isp so with isp and your company router you will always use ebgp here also ebgp but when you are going to connect to your office with other office you can run ibgp here but uh, you must be having a question why don't we run ospf and all yes we can run here ospf also we can run here eagrp also we can run rip between mumbai and delhi but if you run ibgp you can have a control on this whole network if you do not run ibgp here this is interview question okay focus here so yahan pe ibgp chalana kyun zaruri hai why we run ibgp here why we run EB, ibgp here why we are not running ospf eagrp because to control the full network in bgp we need to run ibgp between internal locations then only we can control the bgp successfully if we do not run ibgp between mumbai and delhi you cannot control the bgp you cannot so this is a interview question which is asked by many companies okay so let me tell you that uh, question also so when you have isp like two isp this is your delhi branch this is your mumbai branch so you connected with isp1 this is isp2 i am sure most of you got the connectivity like this so they are connected each other okay so how you will do this like you will forward all traffic to this way outgoing all your company traffic will go from this side and all your incoming traffic will come from this side okay so this is called bgp route manipulation isko kya bolte hain isko bolte hain bgp route manipulation or bgp manipulation you can say so tell me this is only possible this is only possible when you are going to make this connection i b g p is this clear everyone now i am see right now you are on level 1 class okay so right now you cannot be expert just hold on for some time and after few classes i'll be going to show you the configurations also okay but just uh, suppose you have an interview maybe in 2 3 days still you will be giving to answer yes we run ibgp okay so can we configure ospf or eagrp with ibgp yes we can do that okay suppose you have multi layer switches here okay suppose i have shown you the diagram right multiple links so we can run bgp between this router and this router we do not have to run bgp on the multi layer switches so if you able to ping from this interface to this interface agar aap is router ke is is interface se idhar ping kar pa rahe hain if you are able to ping from this ip to this ip you can run bgp internally also you do not have to run bgp on the multi layer switches okay i'll show you ठीक है तो बीजेपी इंटरनल में चलाना जरूरी नहीं है बट अगर आपको राउट मैन्यूपुलेशन करना है तो आपको चलाना जरूरी है और सारे डिवाइसेस पे चलाने की जरूरत नहीं है सिर्फ आप पिंग कर अगर पर कर पा रहे हैं तो आप उन सारे डिवाइसेस पे ओएसपीएफ चला दें और राउटर टू राउटर के बीच में बीजेपी चला सकते हैं ओके so i'll be doing those labs also okay ye puri lab karne wale hum so the whole production network lab also we'll be going to do do that also the complete lab yes arun any question no sir you have cleared my doubt thank you sir okay yaar aaj to saron ke doubt clear ho ja rahe hain <laughs> main क्वेश्चन नहीं ले क्या या निखिल हेलो अतुल सर यस यस हाय निखिल एक्चुअली आई आई हैव अ डाउट ओके लाइक बेसिकली आई एम वर्किंग एज अ नेटवर्क फील्ड इंजीनियर 
so mm-hmm. uh, at my place like uh, we have uh, in our in my company we have a setup so mm-hmm. uh, uh, like uh, can you explain me th- that setup because uh, I-, i have been asking my seniors but like they they have so what to- kind of setup uh, basically we have a two uh, asr 9000 series routers mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so we have uh, so, uh, on asr 1 uh, 9000 series one router uh, we have two isps that is uh tata and airtel okay and mm-hmm. on another we have reliance okay mm-hmm. so uh, uh, like in uh, downstream okay mm-hmm. we have connected two satellite switches of cisco mm-hmm. and uh, we have uh, divided those uh, links into total to 201 201 links okay so mm-hmm. it is distributed to uh, many districts in maharashtra as well as we have uh, 10g core links to uh, you know with hyderabad goa and like we have that setup mm-hmm. yeah so like uh, i i tried to understand but like i failed so i thought i so what is have... your question see you have this type of connectivity you have a asr series router which is uh, like more powerful devices which yeah. is running ios xr so you have two isp connection on this router and you have one connection on this so down there you have cisco catalyst switches like this right yeah exactly exactly yeah so now tell me what exactly you are asking so like we have divided those uh, links to uh, total 201 to uh, 201 links like 201 links and we mm-hmm. have distributed to uh, many districts as well as institutes so here there are 200 plus branch offices like yeah. right yeah yeah exactly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we have configured a uh, ospf to them like yeah correct ospf because you are sharing those routes to the big routers okay now so like uh, is it possible like uh, like taking a uh, uh, like a uh, big a uh, big amount of uh, links and like we can distribute uh, like uh, like uh, it is possible see, like uh, it's possible see the public pool i have given my information this is public pool right so all the branch offices you can assign one one ip single ips also so all the branch office like this subnet dot one ip you have given to delhi mumbai chennai kolkata all ips you have 256 ips right yeah exactly just understand suppose you have 200 branches you have given all single ips to all the branch offices right yeah exactly so now these are all my public ips so so these public ips i am going to share to the outside world so that all all the users will be able to access these devices if you want that connectivity because might be the calls are terminating so we need public ips on the devices where we want to access from outside yeah okay uh, okay i got it but the thing mm-hmm. is like uh, we uh, this connectivity is only for internet like uh, and uh, any other uh, any other connections uh, can't enter to this network just because like uh, it's a really a government institutes like we have so basically very- might be so this is a private network only yeah okay. private network yeah so you do not need public ip if you are using private ips okay so private ip so these are not internet links in this case so they are your private connections which is connected to maybe different locations of your head office or government offices so there is no internet avail internet here so this is all government connectivity this is your internal ips okay so maybe you have some internal branch offices here also here also here also so isps are only helping you to connect one office with another office with the help of private wan which is mpls yeah okay that uh, that means we are uh, we all uh, we all states are connected to delhi right and the delhi has a main connectivity like the internet service is no that, no uh, I- isp is connected so but you are connected with M- with the mpls link this is not internet links okay 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 this okay. is maybe you have some internet link and you have given permission to few of the departments to access the internet from here but these offices are going for private connections okay yeah okay yeah thank you so much sir yeah, yeah welcome 
ओके सो गाइज सी डेली एंड मुंबई नेबरशिप केम अप सो लेट्स गो बैक टू द टॉपिक शो आई पी बीजेपी समरी सो द नेबर्स आर अप ओके सो वेन वी गेट द बीजेपी कनेक्टिविटी ओके सो हेयर आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट आर इंटरनल कनेक्टिविटी सो वी गॉट द इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी एंड वॉट आई एस पी विल डू डू यू नो आई एस पी विल डू वन थिंग लाइक अंडर राउटर बीजेपी टू इट विल गिव वन मोर कमांड डिफॉल्ट इंफॉर्मेशन ओरिजिनेट दिस विल बी डन ऑन द आई एस पी एंड तो ये किधर की साइड होगा डिफॉल्ट इंफॉर्मेशन ओरिजिनेट दिस विल बी डन ऑन द आई एस पी एंड टू प्रोवाइड यू द इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी ओके सो वेन यू चेक ऑन द डेली राउटर यू विल सी ए डिफॉल्ट रूट वेरी सुन जस्ट होल्ड ऑन I think we need to add a neighbor uh, 152.16.12.1 12.1 default originate. Yeah, this is the command. Neighbor 150 uh, 152 neighbor IP and then default originate, and then you will see a default route, and we will be able to access the whole internet. So you can see the AD value in BGP. In Cisco devices is twenty. So this is the eBGP connectivity, and the AD value of eBGP is twenty. Okay, when we are going to run eBGP, the AD value of eBGP will be two hundred. Okay. So eBGP is a different AS. This is AS one. This is AS two. So we have eBGP twenty AD value for eBGP. The AD value will be two hundred. ठीक है तो हमारे यहाँ internet route आ गया. we got the internet connectivity okay so if you create a loop back here for testing suppose i create a loop back okay this is just for testing guys like suppose this is my internet route okay so i got a internet connection in the isp obviously isp already have google ip so consider isp has google ip and when isp gives you default connection so you can test ping 88888 so you see you got the internet connection to aapko internet connectivity mil gaya hai because isp has given you a default route and you can forward all your traffic and you can ping from delhi office to isp so i'll be going to give you the configuration don't worry i i'll be going to create nodes don't you worry okay तो अभी देखो हमने क्या करा है सो राइट नाउ जस्ट वी क्रिएटेड ए लूप बैक एट 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 सो जस्ट टू शो यू दिस इज माई इंटरनेट लिंक एंड वेन आई हैव गिवन द कमांड नेबर द नेबर आई पी विद डिफॉल्ट ऑरिजिनेट सो दिस राउटर हैज गिवन मी ए डिफॉल्ट रूट इन बी जी पी विच इज शो आई पी राउट ओके एंड यू सी आई गॉट अ डिफॉल्ट रूट सो दिस इज हाउ सो वट टाइप ऑफ कनेक्टिविटी इज दिस दिस इज सिंगल होम और मल्टी होम टेल मी गाइस ये कनेक्टिविटी सिंगल होम है या मल्टी होम है दिस इज अ सिंगल होम और मल्टी होम ये सो दिस इज अ सिंगल होम राइट नाउ दिस इज नॉट रिकमेंडेड टू रन बीजेपी बट दिस इज अ वेरी बेसिक लैब ओके सो दिस इज वाई आई एम शोइंग यू बट इन रियल प्रोडक्शन नेटवर्क वेन वी हैव टू आई एस पी देन ओनली वी रन बीजेपी इन मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस ओके सो वी गॉट अ डिफॉल्ट रूट and we will be going to access the internet but how i will be sharing my internet my routes to over the internet to ye jo mera loop back hai humne banaya so this is my internal servers ips so they are this is public ip which we bought from appnic and we want to share these ips with isp and isp will share these information to the outside world Okay, so how how I am going to achieve this? So very simple thing. We will go to router BGP, and then I'll be pointing a network command. Okay, and then I'll be going to give the mask. That's it, guys. And this route will be added into the BGP database table. So the command to check database table is show IP BGP. So you can see in the BGP table. this is called bgp database so you see a default route i am getting from the isp okay i'll share these details later on so right now you can see 201110 is 
I have shared it in this router. Okay. And uh, the next stop is 000. Whenever you see a next stop 000, it means this is the only router where we have originated. So, this router ke through humne bheja hai. So, this is the originated router. This is why the next stop is showing 0000. So, whenever you see a next stop 0000, it means this network advertised by you. Okay, the above 1000, the next stop is coming from ISP. This is the route which is coming from ISP. Okay, and it is coming from which AS number? It is coming from AS number 2. So, this I means this is a IGP origin code that uh, uh, like you can say this is a internal BGP routes. Okay, so uh, there is some uh, other things also like uh, question mark for incomplete. So, these origin codes will discuss. Okay, this is a metric 0. Okay, which is by default. All the settings are by default. Okay, but just see this route we have advertised. And whenever you see a star value and the greater than symbol, it means this is valid path and this is the best path. We have only one path. This is why we see the star and best both. Abhi hamare paas ek hi rasta hai. Isi wajah se dono ko hume star or best dikh rahe. Right now we have only one path. This is why we see valid and star. Okay, very. And the same route. And the same route is sent to ISP. And when ISP check the internet table, it is now reflecting 20110, which is coming from the Delhi client. This is like any company. So maybe networking's office and this route is coming from the networking's office. 20110 is the public IP. So whenever, whenever any traffic Whenever any traffic coming from internet for these 201 IPs, maybe we have 201 servers here. Okay, so all these ISPs will share or share their in outgoing traffic to this ISP and ISP will point that traffic to the client Delhi. And Delhi already have these servers and this is how all internet works. This is how all the companies like Facebook, Google, every company in the world have given the network commands and all the entries are visible in the BGP tables. Okay, so we are going to check the BGP looking glass. So what is this BGP looking class? Right now, just understand if I am a company. Okay, so I have advertised my, I have advertised my 201 IPs to the internet. So you can see this is ISP. We got the connection, but you have to check all the ISPs or different, different parts of the world that whatever network we have shared to this ISP. So this ISP has transferred that connection to other ISP or not. So what we check is that the public IP ka pool is given to this ISP and what this ISP has forwarded to ISP ko wo route forward kiya hai, nahi kiya. So this can be checked with the BGP looking glass on the internet. Every ISP have looking glass means customers can come to this website and they can check the BGP looking glass. So you can see Airtel Bharti. Okay. So if you check a BGP look Airtel looking glass. BGP looking glass. So let me check for any other ISP. Okay, so the, you can see, guys, this is a website from Tata Communication. Even it is not secure, but still you can run the commands. So let me check what is my IP or uh, let's check the IP. Uh, okay, so which company IP you want to see? Okay, let me show you the IP address of apple.com. So this is the IP 17 IP. Okay, so I'm going to check this IP 
in the Tata communication router. This is so from where we have to check. You can see Tata has a lot of connectivity. They have big, big looking glasses. So Tata has given the permission to every user. You cannot modify anything. So they are routers for public use. हम अपने routes को internet पे देख सकते हैं. Suppose you want to check the routes in India. So you can see there are some locations like Chennai, Kolkata, Mumbai. So these are from Tata Communications. I'll be going to check from Chennai. So which IP you want to check? I want to check the Apple IP. Okay, and I'll be going to click the I am not a robot. Let me click submit. Okay, so you can see automatically this is a Juniper router because whenever you run the TERS command, okay, this is on Juniper router. So this is a Juniper router. Where uh, this router from Chennai is giving me the information. Seventeen, this network slash twenty one is coming from this AS number seven one four. Okay, you can see seven one four. This is the AS number. I told you right. This seven one four is a AS number. Okay, and all these IPs, all these IPs are coming from this IP one. So one eighty. 87, 36, 83. So this is a different next stop. This is a different next stop. So Tata is getting Apple information from multiple links. You can see one, two, three, four, and these three ISPs are similar. So multiple connections, multiple links we are getting. We are getting multiple connections. Okay, so you can see I am checking from the Chennai Juniper router show route. Protocol BGP one seven brief like we use brief command right show IP interface brief so brief is similar to TERS in Juniper okay so if you don't know okay so we will go to now another ISP so maybe tell me your favorite ISP I know many of you will say Reliance I'm not sure uh, that. Uh, Yeah, so let's check Sprint. Okay, Sprint uh, is one of the global ISP from US. Okay, so you can see, so you can check from any other location. So this is mostly in USA. I'll be going to check from the Vancouver or Toronto, Canada. I'll be going to check the BGP route. So which IP I want to see? I want to see this IP, the same IP we checked there. Seventeen. This is Apple IP. so their website on this ip okay when i open the apple.com so this website on this ip i just ping this ip okay so when i enter the target ip okay so i have to give the network so right now you can see some bgp looking glass do not share information with the ip but in tata it is giving me the subnet here so i can share copy this subnet and i'll check the complete subnet here so you can see it is taking time network not in available in the toronto servers maybe this ip so maybe this apple has shared this ip with only some regions okay because uh, you have seen that apple has india website they have different different cities or something so maybe they have done something so but if you check the full block if you check 17 the complete block of slash 8 okay so let me check if 17 network is showing something or maybe let me change the router kai bar kya hota hai ye router b connectivity lose kar jata hai bgp and all ki you can check in different regions yeah so you can see entry 170008 okay so this uh, so how many paths we are getting how many paths we are getting you can see paths 20 available and which path is the best which is slash 16 तो हमें 20 रास्ते मिल रहे हैं और जो सोलवा पाथ है द सिक्सटीन पाथ इज द बेस्ट पाथ सो यू कैन सी पाथ टू पाथ थ्री सो द राउटर इज गेटिंग ए लॉट ऑफ पाथ 
and you see a lot of paths the 16th number this is the best okay so why this is best because maybe it is coming from 2as directly coming from apple okay you can see 714 which is apple as number okay so other other paths if you check maybe uh, bgp is a very vast protocol we need to understand what it is checking sometimes it checks local preference sometimes it checks the metric okay so there are a lot of things here okay but right now yeah you can see it is also mentioned here internal best ओके विल सी दिस ओके सो अभी के लिए ये वाला रास्ता बेस्ट आ रहा है हमें बिकॉज ऑफ मे बी शॉर्टर आई पी सो देर इज ए बीजीपी पाथ सिलेक्शन बीजीपी पाथ सिलेक्शन ओके सो सो दीज थिंग्स विल बी चेक्ड इन द राउटर विच इज बीजीपी हैज मेनी स्टेप्स You can see वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट ओके तो बीजेपी के ना कुछ दस से बारह स्टेप होते हैं ओके बीजेपी हैज दिस इज कॉल्ड बीजेपी पाथ सिलेक्शन एल्गोरिथम सो बीजेपी फर्स्ट इट विल चेक वेट इट विल चेक लोकल प्रेफरेंस देन इट विल चेक सेल्फ ऑरिजिनेटेड आई पीज देन इट विल चेक ए एस पाथ ओरिजिन एम ईडी सो वील अंडरस्टैंड दीज थिंग्स ऑल्सो इन प्रैक्टिकल ऑल्सो ओके वी विल सी दीज थिंग्स so right now i uh, like i'm sure that you got an idea like how we connect from delhi to isp okay and we will be going to share all these networks with the network command show ip bgp and you see the routes are here okay any questions guys uh, yeah murthy tell me any doubt hello yeah murthy uh see suppose we have uh, one telstra isp okay mm -hmm. from the data center end and we have one internet router and connected to l3 switch mm -hmm. okay and uh, so this is the data center and we have like uh, branch offices like branch 1 2 3 4 5 mm -hmm. okay and they have their uh, telstra internet services okay yeah. and in between this uh, i uh, data center and branch officers will be on the same as or different as so your branch office and the data center ha uh, data center so if the location is same suppose you are in india right oh. so you do not require because the public pools you are using here okay so this cannot be used here because this side you may be buying from apnic okay and this side suppose this is in usa you are going to buy from arin america registry information number uh -huh. so when the public ips are different then you need different as numbers okay yeah i'll be showing you one thing more okay there is a website as lookup hurricane electric there are many website but uh, this will be the better one okay just hold on there is one more command as look up yeah this is a website mx toolbox okay you can enter any company name suppose i want to check apple so what was the number we were uh, able to see here that as number is 714 in the routers right so just make sure you can uh, just look up as look up so when i enter apple it will be going to share the all as number taken care by apple okay so this is uh, as kahan gaya Okay, let me enter seven one four. 
okay so it is not giving me the information let me go to another website so that is uh, hurricane electric bgp kind of yaar pehle bahut acche se ho jata tha yeah so you can see i entered as714 and it is giving me this information this is apple and how many routes we are getting prefixes originated apple have shared almost 1300 subnets and apple neighbors are bharti airtel airtel is directly connected with apple verizon verizon telstra level 3 tata communication all these big isps like apple is using all these isps dikh raha and how many prefixes like uh, within past few years they have advertised a lot of prefixes what is prefix so this one type slash value is called prefix ek subnet ko prefix bolte hain all the ips starting from 17 belongs to apple Yes, Umesh uh, Shankar, any doubt? Yes, sir. वो जो scenario discuss करना था उसके बारे में सर. चलो देखते हैं. अभी देखो इधर chart भी दिख रहा है. So it is just giving you overview how all the AS714 is connected. Can you see this, guys? That AS714, this is Apple office which is connected to AS9498. Okay, which may be another ISP which is Airtel. Can you see this? so they have direct neighborship with these companies router can you see this all hello everyone so this is not one router maybe you have multiple router bgp will always show you that this is one as so bgp treat one company as a as number even if you have multiple routers ho sakta hai ek router ka link airtel par ja raha hai so one link is going to airtel tata and all but bgp is going to treat this organization as one as number okay so you can check here this is i am checking for uh, bharti airtel okay you can check all the prefixes so all these subnets are in the table of uh, these routers right you can see akamai technologies uh, tata bharti all these are the peers means ye neighbors hain kiske airtel ke if you check the as714 again you go to prefixes so this is again you can see apple slash eight slash nine they have done subnetting and all these ips are in usa you can see so when you scroll down all these ip because apple is from usa all ips even they are using in india still they will show this is a us company okay but apple do not have only one single as they might have different different isp or be as number ho sakte hain but the normally they have one as which is 714 but if you check tata okay so you can see tata is a widely used ISP all over the world and Tata has a lot of AS numbers. Tata ISP from India nine two three eight. Tata Communication in Canada is using eight two nine seven. Tata USA six four five three. Tata Institute of Fundamental Research has a different AS. Internet, which is uh, internet services related, this is other AS. Communication, they have a lot of groups, right? Tata is one of the biggest ISP all over the world. Tata Sky, they have different AS number because they are running it. These are Tata organizations as a different entity. So Colt has a direct tie up with Tata also in USA. Colt is one of the ISP, and they have uh, some similar services uh, in USA in collaboration with Tata. So maybe. so you can see a lot of many isps guys like as numbers and if you research one if you go to check one tata isp you can see 
uh, how many so this is a vsnl this tata communications like earlier it was a vsnl bsnl ka bhai okay so that is from tata basically and you can check all the prefixes it is connected with all other internet service providers yes any doubts as 55410 you can check here in this website as 55410 yeah it's uh, from vodafone this is the as number of vodafone india yeah okay so basically bgp is a as by as protocol okay it is known as bgp is a as by as protocol means all the different different isps are connected okay all the different different isps are connected so this is called as by as protocol okay so you can see many companies here so this is another as this is another as this is another as inside these you will run interior gateway protocols but outside they will be going to connect with the bgp okay so let me share the basic lab okay so bgp has three tables guys the first one is neighbor table which the command was show ip bgp summary the second table is database table where you will see all the networks what you advertise with the network command jo bhi network command se daloge all are going to appear in the database table with the network command the command is show ip bgp all the best routes are going into which table guys routing table and you know the command right i do not want to write even show ip route okay so guys what are the next topics what we are going to discuss okay i'll be giving you uh, just an overview so that you can watch pre recorded videos also so we are going to understand ebgp multi hop we are going to learn bgp uh, there is a e, uh, in ibgp there is a rule which is called a split horizon rule okay we are going to understand about bgp peer group okay so bgp neighborship with loop back okay so this is level 2 bgp uh, yes parth what questions do you have yeah, hello sir yeah, yeah parth uh, sir uh, i have a doubt for that uh, we have a multiple distributor okay and we plan for the osv so it is possible to we configure the eas uh, ebgp for this internal communication no 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 ebgp like you can use it but it is not recommended because okay. when you will have a proper connectivity with bgp it will create issues no no we don't have any isp with bgp only for there is a isp is a static ip but internal communication uh, which one is topology is best ospf or ebgp ospf always ebgp is not meant to run on internal network okay so internal network which one protocol is best for the means uh, communication so for both communicator there is no see even rip is best sometimes it depends on the company requirement but ospf is widely used okay well yeah. uh, ospf otherwise any other protocol for the communication inter see ospf is scalable okay okay so ospf is better but uh, isis is also better when if you are isp you use isis if you are enterprise customer you use ospf okay if you have all cisco router cigrp is best anybody tell me why eagrp considered best aajo aajo interview samjho isko yeah tell me why eagrp is best over ospf not ad value yaar ye thodi padhata tumhe 
Yes, Arun, tell me. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, because the convergence is fast in yes. the IGRP. Why convergence is fast? Because they have a uh, all uh, top on uh, uh, all uh, uh, all uh, uh, end to end visibility in the form of a database table. No, yar. Because it already calculated the backup path in the Back. topology table. Yes, sir. Sorry. Why the convergence time is better? Because the backup link is already in my topology table, and from topology to routing table, it will just take fraction of seconds. But when it comes to OSPF, suppose this is your route. Okay, suppose uh, you have another path. Okay, you are going to the same destination. So this is our primary path. Okay, because of the better cost. So you are going from this side. Maybe the cost is uh, twenty. But if you go from this side, the cost is forty. So tell me which will be primary path? Twenty one, twenty. Sorry. Hana, this path will be better. But if this link goes down, the router will calculate. Right, router will run SPF algorithm and it will calculate this path. Right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right. So OSPF is like we can uh, implement few things in OSPF. But AGRP do this automatically, okay? So AGRP calculate the backup path with the algorithm, dual algorithm, diffuse update algorithm. So this is why it does not take too much time. This is why this is high convergence. But in OSPF, it takes a little time, okay? Calculating SPF algorithm and then it will select the path. Then it will reflect in the table. It will take little time, right? So. That's the answer. Okay, so remember this faster convergence. Okay, but why faster? You should also understand faster. Easily, eh? Because backup path is first in topology table. Me, it is in JRP. Okay, remember that feasibility condition and all, right? Any other questions, guys? Anji, किसी का कोई doubt है तो पूछ सकते हैं यार. Any doubts? Hello, sir. क्या हुआ शंकर? Screen share कर सकता हूँ क्या? हाँ हाँ करो करो. Uma uh, Shankar uh, wants uh, to show his network, and we are not. There are both are confusion. Thay, sir. Ha, pucho, pucho, yaar. Tumari confusion. Ha, 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 confusion. आप देख पा रहे हैं क्या हां 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 ये इन रोटर 1 से नीचे जो है हमारा ये सारा लैन का है इससे ऊपर हम डिस्कस कर रहे हैं ये चेन्नई और आईडीसी दिल्ली जो है तो हमारा ये लिंक है जो कि एमआईएस जो इंटरनल प्राइवेट हमारा जो ट्रैफिक है उसके लिए है और ये जो है हमारा इंटरनेट पाथ के लिए हम्म तो आपने बोला था सर बीजीपी जो यूज होता है हमारे कंपनी में ऑलरेडी दो हैं जो कि एयरटेल और टाटा है एसपी तो यहां पर हमने कहीं नहीं देखा कि कहीं भी एक भी कमांड चला हो बीजेपी का हर जगह ये जीआरपी ही चल रहा है बिकॉज़ जो चेन्नई आईडीसी है ना तुम्हारा वो क्या चीज है चेन्नई आईडीसी एंड दिल्ली आईडीसी इट्स योर ऑफिस योर ब्रांच हां सर ये हमारा अपना है जहां पर डेटा सेंटर है हां तो वहां पे होगा वो सारा तो हमारा यू आर शेयरिंग ऑल योर ट्रैफिक टू डेटा सेंटर हां सर तो जो हमारा इंटरनेट का ट्रैफिक है वो दिल्ली आईडीसी के थ्रू जाएगा और जो हमारा प्राइवेट नेटवर्क जाएगा ट्रैफिक वो चेन्नई आईडीसी के थ्रू यस करेक्ट करेक्ट बट इन चेन्नई आईडीसी एंड दिल्ली आईडीसी दे हैव लाइक यू विल हैव अ बिग डेटा सेंटर एंड देयर यू हैव इंटरनेट कनेक्शंस सो दिस इज व्हाई राउटर टू इज शेयरिंग ऑल द कनेक्टिविटी इन दिल्ली यू हैव इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी एंड व्हाट इज दिस एमआईएस एमआईएस इज इंटरनल ट्रैफिक ओके इंटरनल सो सो माइट बी व्हाट यू गाइस हैव डन सो इन चेन्नई डेटा सेंटर so you have one data center in chennai which is connected to delhi also okay consider this so chennai is connected to delhi all your internet traffic for this branch this is a server room kind of so all this this router uh, all lan network whatever uh, locations you have like uh, the production core and all which is lower end all traffic going from router 2 right now okay? uh, router 2 no yeah, yeah. Uh... Yeah, for internet 
for internet connectivity all the traffic going to router 2 yes sir yes sir okay whenever whenever you open google.com in your computer or in your laptop all traffic going from router 2 but yes. whenever you open any internal traffic it is going from chennai idc yes sir to okay. isme main sir janna cha raha tha ki yahan par hamara eigrp hi run हाँ आपने बोला था जहाँ पर भी दो या दो से अधिक लिंक होगा वहाँ बीजेपी रन करेगा नहीं 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 वो जरूरी नहीं है ना बिकॉज आप ऊपर इंटरनेट नहीं जोड़ रहे हो आप अपनी ब्रांच को जोड़ रहे हो ना मैंने क्या बताया था बीजेपी यू विल यूज वेन यू हैव एक्सटर्नल कनेक्टिविटी सो डेली आईडीसी चेन्नई आई डी सी योर कंपनी नेटवर्क नहीं और दिल्ली आईटीसी तो मेरा अपना नेटवर्क है लेकिन इसके yes. बाद जो हमारा इंटरनेट पर जा देयर देयर यू हैव बीजेपी फॉर श्योर यू कैन चेक डेली आईडीसी राउटर्स एंड देन यू विल सी द बीजेपी कॉन्फ़िगरेशंस देयर और यहाँ पर भी जो ये जो है हमारा इंटरनेट ये जो लिंक है यहाँ ये भी हमने आई से लिया हुआ है तो यहाँ ये इसका मतलब बीजेपी चल रहा होगा ये इंटरनेट लिंक नहीं होगा आई एम श्योर दिस इज एम काइंड ऑफ लिंक विच इज जस्ट गिवन बाय आई ISP ने दिया ये डायरेक्ट एयरटेल से तो नहीं आ रहा ना लिंक आपको ये डेली आईडी से आ रहा है आ, नहीं सर ये जो लिंक है यहाँ पर जो ऑटर की तरफ ये इंटरफेस पर हाँ हाँ ये आपको डेली डायरेक्ट आई दे रहा है दे तो आई रहा है पर मैं क्या कह रहा हूँ ये लिंक टर्मिनेट कहाँ हो रहा है दूसरा एंड कहाँ है इसका डेली आई डी सी सो दिस इज योर प्राइवेट लीज लाइन ओके दिस इज योर प्राइवेट कनेक्शन विच इज कनेक्टिंग योर डेली आई एंड विच लोकेशन इज दिस यहाँ से पहले so firewall is basically so that because you have a partner website देखो उधर साइड ये राइट या सो यू हैव पार्टनर वेबसाइट टू प्रोटेक्ट सम वन विल नॉट अटैक और समवेयर फ्रॉम द पार्टनर जोन सो देर यू हैव फायर वॉल्स यस या सो इसीलिए फायर वॉल लगे बिकॉज दैट इज अ थर्ड पार्टी साइट मे बी यू हैव कनेक्शन विद द पार्टनर्स सो देर दिस इज रीजन यू हैव पॉइंटेड फायर वॉल्स बिटवीन पार्टनर्स BGP is the only protocol which can influence incoming and outgoing traffic in the world. BGP is the only protocol which can manipulate incoming traffic. But all other protocols can only be used for outgoing traffic. Like if you run OSPF, okay, so you can give the cost 10 here and 20 here. So which path OSPF will take? 10 cost path, right? So you can only influence the outgoing traffic if you want that all your incoming traffic will come from this side but you do not have to touch this router without touching this complete internet connectivity we will put bgp configuration here and automatically all your internet like uh, google facebook whatever you want they will understand and they will follow this path this is only achievable in bgp so the attributes for incoming was med and one was as path prepend and for outgoing traffic there are multiple ways like wait you can use local preference so what are these like we, these are the attributes which you use so that you can in, uh, change your incoming and outgoing traffic behavior another thing why we use bgp we use bgp so that we can advertise public ips okay what is public ip now so public ip it doesn't mean only one single ip so this is internet and this is your company okay and this is isp which is connecting you with the internet okay isp is already connected with internet and there are many isps which are connected to internet collaborating with each other this is why the whole network of network is internet means internet is nothing network of networks is called internet so now this is your company suppose uh, you work for hcl or you can take one more example of apple okay apple has many public websites like itunes like you can play music you can watch tv so even you can take example of amazon okay so these all are big customer right so they have their own public ips they all like you are sitting here this is uh, airtel and you guys are sitting here so this is home users because home users are also getting internet okay you can access amazon.com you can access hcl websites apple.com 
so how you access because we have on internet we have big big routers big big uh, devices all isp have big big tables which is called bgp tables this is called internet table and what is internet table internet table is bgp table bgp he internet table bana raha hai bgp is the protocol which is making the internet table amazon is running bgp so that you will get a connection and you will forward your route to the internet and when this route is all over the internet so anyone can access amazon.com so the same way hcl has a public ip so they are going to put bgp okay you will con- configure bgp and we are going to advertise this public ip you will give the network command all the company networks will be going to shared with the internet because all they go into the bgp table which is called internet table if everyone knows where is amazon where is hcl where is apple obviously they are connected so all we are connected with each other because of this bgp why you are using bgp you can also take a default route right aap normal ek router leke default route se internet le lo why you are running bgp because of these two reasons we can change incoming and outgoing traffic and we can use the, for advertise public ip okay so these are free companies so you can say all will have a different number this is called as number like as 100 200 300 okay bgp is also known as as by as protocol means they connect with each other with the as connectivity like all devices they can connect with each other you can have multiple devices also so i'm just showing you that so when we connect between different different as so this is called ebgp external border gateway protocol and when you are running bgp between your all your locations this is what we call ibgp ibgp means internal bgp when two routers have same as number like 100 100 then only you can run ibgp it means if all companies have their own unique as number what is this as number this is called autonomous system so first of all you need to understand what is aina okay so aina is internet assigned number authority okay and under this aina like they have rir aina is a big organization rir means this is known as regional internet registries apnic asia pacific network information center then we have latnic this is for latin america network information center russia okay ripe resuex internet protocol exchange uh, then we have afrnic uh, africa network information center and in america regional internet number something okay like if you want to get the as number or any public ip you will contact directly apnic right because isp give you 5 ips 10 ip 20 ips okay but if you need a block if you need 24 if you need slash 16 if you need slash 8 or maybe a big ipv6 range you will contact the rir if we can go to any apnic website and we will type rir okay so i no so you can see internet assign number authority and I, you can see this image also for your better understanding regional internet registry okay so this is the image okay just to check you belong to which rir apnic they have office in australia because australia is part of apnic also so you can see like what exactly you need you need ips you need uh, as number so what exactly you need so you will say i need ips okay okay so you can see become a member and what are the cost so you can see the fees and all start your application now so you have to log in obviously and then you can go for the further process but if you check the fee so like if you want slash 24 it is going to cost annual membership of australian 1180 dollars around 60 to 70000 for yearly for 256 ips just an average you can just convert this into inr and you will get the details 
okay and this is another sign up fee for also this is one time registration fee so this is the minimum we need to buy we can't buy slash 25 the minimum number you have to buy is 256 so this is the cost of ipv4 in the same price you will be getting ipv6 slash 48 asn means autonomous system number all the bgp devices like uh, if you have any you are on internet you need to buy a as number so you can see this is reserved so 1 to 23 uh, 1455 this is called public as number like anyone can use but you need to pay like if you get the slash 24 from apnic to aap apnic se jab ip loge to aapko ek as number bhi mil jayega okay so you can see help guide for asn request so click on asn request and you see that you need to put your name email id account number and then you can request for the as number if you want to run BGP, like many companies are not ISP. Many companies like Apple, Wipro, okay, HCL, Samsung. So all these companies are not ISP. They are product-based companies and service-based companies, right? They have their own network and they need AS number. They have their own public IP. Like I have shared, like Apple has 17 network. Apple wants to send this to internet table. What they will do? They will take the bgp connectivity in link because when you take internet you get two options you can take a default route and the second option you have bgp but what is the use of bgp you can share this route with the complete internet so you are using this 17 you are using bgp so that you can forward this to all internet routers okay and to run bgp in your office in your company what you need because when you will be going to configure BGP, the BGP command was like a router BGP and the AS number. And the AS number you have to give whatever you will get from uh, APNIC, from RIR. So what is BGP? Uh, BGP stands for Border Gateway Protocol, as you all know. Okay, and it's an inter-domain routing protocol. Uh, it works on algorithm that is called path vector algorithm and that is used for best path selection. Okay, if anybody asks you in interview which BGP uses which algorithm, so you can say that it's a path vector algorithm and that is used for best path selection. Okay, so BGP uses port number 179 for the TCP connection. So what does it mean? Suppose, uh, so these routers are going to create a BGP connection. So they are going to form a TCP connection first. Okay, so they are going to create a TCP connection on port number 179. So TCP connection means the router is going to send first sync packet. Okay, then this router is going to send the sync acknowledgement. And then the first router will send acknowledgement. Okay, so what we call this sync, sync, act, and act. This is called three way handshake. So it, it means Whenever you configure BGP on the routers between your company router or ISP router or maybe between the ISP routers or maybe ISP to any other big company. So whenever there is a BGP connectivity, so in BGP connectivity, we have the TCP connection and TCP connection on 179 port number and BGP do the three-way handshake before creating the neighborship. Okay. So BGP neighbors are explicitly defined. So explicitly defined means there is one router here, router one, and then maybe you have router two, router three, then you have router four. Okay. So you can directly make router one to router four BGP neighbor. So it should not be directly connected. Okay. If it is directly connected or if it is not directly connected, chahe wo saath mein connected hai ya nahi hai, BGP neighbor bana sakto. Still, you are able to make the BGP neighbor if the routers are directly connected to you or they are far away from you. Okay. So that is called BGP neighbors are explicitly defined. Okay. So in BGP routing policies to decide how to advertise network, in throughout this program, we understand how BGP attributes work. Okay. How to configure BGP attributes. Okay. So this is the BGP graph look like. Okay, this is how the internet is working. Every company has AS number. 
and this as number stand for autonomous autonomous system number okay autonomous system number so from 1 to 6 4 5 double 1 they are public as numbers and from 6 5 5 1 2 2 6 5 5 3 5 they are private as number so if you want to run inside bgp inside your company then you can use these private as numbers okay but you are running a, a bgp globally suppose your company is this and you are running bgp with airtel so this as number is a public as between the range of 1 2 6 4 5 1 1 so the if anybody ask you the as number so as number stand for autonomous system number okay so this is basically a this as number we need to buy from aina internet sign number authority and depend on your continent suppose you are from asia so you are going to uh, uh, buy from apnic okay asia pacific network information center i think in the previous classes i have discussed that okay so once we got the as number public as number we are eligible to run bgp protocol okay to how hum bgp protocol chala sakte hain nahi to hum nahi chala sakte okay just hold on okay 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 so that's clear uh, so let's go talk about further more okay so what is different with bgp okay what is different with bgp so neighbors are i told you neighbors are explicitly configured and may not be in a common subnet like igp so if you run ospf okay so so there are two routers okay so they can become ospf neighbor they can become eagrp neighbor they can also become bgp neighbor okay but if you in this topology because all routers are direct both the routers are directly connected so this topology mein dono directly connected hai to ospf bana lo eagrp bana lo ya bgp bana lo right you can configure any of the protocol between two routers but in this case if you have router 1 and router 2 and then router 3 and if i ask you to make the neighborship directly from router 1 to router 3 then what you will do so in this case we can only run one protocol that is called bgp border gateway protocol okay border gateway protocol okay so neighbor may not be directly connected to each other right and uh, neighbors network commands has a different purpose in bgp so it is not like the normal igp okay so in bgp the network command means that you are actually forwarding some internet uh, some public information to the entire world okay so bgp can be configured within the as and between the as number okay that is called ibgp and ebgp what does it mean uh, let me create a page huh. okay so if you have like uh, connection like this is your company router okay and this is maybe isp atl okay so when you are running bgp you have one as number suppose 700 and uh, airtel has maybe another as number maybe 703 uh, okay so in this case you are going to run ebgp so this type of when you connect two different as number so that that type of bgp neighborship is called ebgp external border gateway protocol external bgp okay and when we you configure like uh, inside airtel so inside airtel maybe there are four or 400 whatever number of routers you have in inside airtel if all routers are in as 703 703 703 so all these routers have same as number so same as number you are going to run ibgp that is internal border gateway protocol internal bgp border gateway protocol so simple as jab do different as mein aap baat kar rahe ho, when you are connecting two routers in different as okay so that is called different as means ebgp okay and same as number when you have same as number that is called ibgp and the ebgp has a ad value that ad value is 20 in cisco okay and 200 for ibgp okay 
So different vendors have different AD values. Like in Juniper, you have a different AS, uh, different AD value that is called route preference. Okay, but in Cisco, the EBGP has AD value 20 and IBGP has AD value 200. Okay. Okay, so now we understand how BGP form connection or how BGP uh, goes into the states okay so we are understanding bgp states right now okay so first of all uh, like uh, the first you connect two routers okay when you configure bgp suppose you configured bgp here also here also okay so when you configure bgp the first state is idle state okay both the routers will be in idle state Okay, and after that, because in idle state, they start listening for the TCP connection. Because I told you, in BGP, BGP create TCP connection. After that, it will form BGP neighbor. Guys, my screen is visible. Uh, Anil, please uh, disconnect and connect again. Okay, I think uh, you are not able to see. ठीक है सो सबसे पहले हम क्या करेंगे सबसे पहले हमें ये सारी स्टेट्स को याद कर लेना है ओके लेट्स लर्न ऑल फाइव स्टेट्स आइडल कनेक्ट ओपन सेंट ओपन कंफर्म एस्टैब्लिश एंड एक्टिव सिक्स स्टेट्स ओके आइडल ओके देन वी हैव कनेक्ट ओके देन वी हैव ओपन सेंट ओके ओपन इज अ मैसेज सो व्हेन वी सेंड ओपन मैसेज ओपन सेंट एंड व्हेन वी कंफर्म द पैरामीटर्स दैट इज कॉल्ड ओपन कंफर्म Okay, and then in the last we have established state. So during all this process, if you see, okay, so during this process, idle, connect, open, sent, open, confirm, establish. If you get any error, agar aapko koi bhi error aata, if you get any error, you go to active state and active again go back to idle state. Okay, so during the, it, it's like a uh, game, right? So if you uh, play any type of game, like maybe uh temple run or maybe subway surfers okay so whenever you got uh, killed by someone in temple run or maybe in subway you have to start the game directly from the beginning right the same way when the bgp is uh, forming a neighborship if you get any problem in any of the state you will again go back to the idle state means again you will go start again from the idle state okay so idle mein kya ho hai? in idle state you listen to the tcp connection and when you in connect state then you try to create the tcp establishment and when you create the tcp establishment the router send a open message okay it has some parameters and from other side okay so you will get a keep alive message okay that all the parameters are okay then you go to the open confirm and then you go to the established state okay so let me show you here what exactly happened okay so there are two routers let's call okay router one router two so first we are in which state idle okay because we are listening for tcp connection okay so when the router starts sending sync packet okay like sync packet or sync acknowledgement okay so we are trying to form what we call so we are trying to form the tcp connection in establishment okay so when we are trying to form the tcp connection so we are in which state connect timer so during the connect state we try to form the tcp connection establishment okay so once we complete the three way handshake okay then what will happen we will go to this state again that is called open sent because once you form three way handshake when the TCP connection got established, okay, once we establish the TCP connection, then the router is going to send from if in this direction we will send open message. Okay, so we will send open message inside open message. We will confirm the AS number. There are few parameters which we will discuss. Okay, like if uh, the router has AS number 500, okay, this AS number is 700. So whatever you have entered in the neighbor command, okay, so, so uh, related to version or maybe AS number, okay, 
So some basic parameters will be sent in the open message. Okay. Then router two will read the open message. Router two ke paas ye message jayega. Router two isse confirm karega. Router two will check version, AS number, okay, neighbor IP address. Mostly or a basic parameters of BGP. So when all multi, uh, open message parameters are verified by router two, then router two is going to send a message that is called keep alive. That yes, all the parameters are okay, and this router now will go from open sent because when we send open message, we come in with state open sent, and when we receive the keep alive from another direction, because keep alive keep alive is just a confirmation that you got all the parameters correct, and that you say open confirm. Okay, now you are in open confirm and. Once you have keep alive, you go into the open confirm stage. Okay. And after open confirm from both the side, because now this router will also send you open message. And from this side, you will also send keep alive. Okay. When both the sides keep alive are exchanged, when both the sides are in open confirm, both the sides you can see from this direction also, we got the keep alive. From this direction also, we got the keep alive. And then when we got the keep alive from both the sides, we make the BGP neighborship establishment and that's called BGP establish state. Okay. Samaj aya? Thik hai? Toh pehle idle mein hum. Idle mein kuch nahi kar rahe. Vele bethe hai. Thik hai? Samaj lo. So we are in idle state. We are doing nothing. We are just trying to listen for the TCP connection. And when we are trying to uh, start the three-way handshake, Okay, in during this three-way handshake, we are in which state? We are in connect state. Okay, connect state. And after we complete the TCP connection establishment, so once we form the TCP connection establishment, the router send which message? Open message, like version number, AS number, neighbor, IB. And the router too is going to confirm all the parameters. And when we confirm all the parameters, we will send a keep alive message. Okay, yes, we got all the parameters. Everything is fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so once we got the keep alive message, we send a keep alive message that yes, everything is working. And then you got into open confirm. Because when we send open message, we are in open send. And when we get the keep alive from another side, we get into open confirm. And the same thing will happen in this direction also. Okay, you will send open message from this side. You will send keep alive from this side. And you will be in the open confirm state. And from both the sides, when we get keep alive messages, we are in the established state, establishment state. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so let's see the diagram or topology, what we call this flow chart. Okay, so you can see here what we are into idle state. We listen for the TCP connection. Then we go to the connect state. In the connect state, we do the TCP establishment. And after establishment, when we send open message, we are in open send state. And when we receive keep alive from another side, we are in open confirm state. And when we receive keep alive from both the sides, we are in established state. Okay. And during this journey, if you get any problem, okay, during this journey, if you get any problem, like maybe uh, like AS number. So let's check in more detail. So abhi humne idle state pada. So idle state mein kya pada tha humne? What we understood in the idle state. Okay. So again, like take an example, router one, router two. Okay. So device is in idle state until you configure a BGP on it. Okay. So we configure BGP, then it will refuse all BGP connection. Means maybe routers are not forming BGP. They are not sending they are not forming TCP connection. Okay. So you can read this line after you configure BGP on it. So when I configure BGP here router on router one and on router two, Jesse may BGP ha configure karta hu. Once I configure BGP, my router is start doing the TCP connection with the BGP configured neighbor and start listening the TCP connection. Right. So when we configure BGP here, okay. So once we configure BGP and when the router start doing the TCP connection, 
द राउटर विल जम्प फ्रॉम आइडल टू कनेक्ट स्टेट मतलब कनेक्ट स्टेट का मतलब ये है कि मैं अब थ्री वे हैंडशेक बनाने जा रहा हूं ओके इन द कनेक्ट स्टेट आई एम गोइंग टू फॉर्म द थ्री वे हैंडशेक एंड इफ एनी एर अकर्स इफ एनी एर अकर्स इफ आई सेंड ए सिंक पैकेट एंड सपोज राउटर टू इज नॉट एक्सेप्टिंग दिस सिंक पैकेट बिकॉज मे बी ए सी एल इज कॉन्फिगर्ड मे बी बीजेपी नॉट कॉन्फिगर्ड ऑन राउटर टू बिकॉज वेन यू कॉन्फिगर बीजेपी बोथ साइड तो जब आप बीजेपी दोनों साइड कॉन्फिगर करोगे तभी वो पोर्ट नंबर वन सेवेंटी नाइन को सुनेगा ओके वेन यू कॉन्फिगर बीजेपी ऑन बोथ द साइड देन ओनली द पोर्ट नंबर वन सेवेंटी नाइन विल बी ओपन बट इफ यू डू नॉट कॉन्फिगर बीजेपी ऑन राउटर टू देन राउटर टू इज नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस सिंक पैकेट ओके so if you are uh, if in your company if acl is configured and if 179 port is blocked okay so in this case the router will stuck in idle state or connect state if as number is configured wrong router 2 is in as number 700 this router is in 500 and if if you configure a wrong ip or wrong as number in the router 1 because if you remember in uh, bgp we give neighbor command right like neighbor neighbor ip then you give the remote as number 700 so in the remote as number if you have configured wrong as then also the router will stuck in idle state if you configure wrong ip address then also router will stuck in the idle state so they these are the three reasons when router stuck in in the in the idle state okay yeah any any doubt guys till now okay so after that we have connect state i as i told you in idle after that in connect state what we will do here three way handshake with the peer okay and after the successful tcp connection establishment with the peer device send a open message to a peer right so when we confirm when we got the three way handshake once we complete the three way handshake in tcp connection after that router is going to send a open message to the peer and when we send open message we will jump in with state open send okay open send se pehle kahan the hum connect state mein the okay and before connect we were in idle state so in idle like uh, bgp is not configured in connect we will do three way handshake and when we send open message we will be in the open send okay if any error occurs during this like if tcp port number is not active as number is wrongly configured and the peer the same reasons what we have seen in the idle state to jo teen reason humne pehle jaane the again the same three reasons tcp port number is not open as number is wrongly configured peer address is wrongly configured so if you get any of the reason you will go to the active state so what what is the topology here so you can see when you send open message and during this open message if router create a problem the router will go in the active state okay and again after active it will go back again to the idle state okay and sometimes router when you join the companies most of the times you will see bgp is in active state okay so active you feel like active is good but not be in bgp active is bad समझ रहे हो बीजेपी एक्टिव का मतलब है खराब है ओके इन ई एजी आर पी ऑल्सो एक्टिव इज नॉट गुड दैट्स वाई वी कॉल ना स्टक इन एक्टिव एस आई ए स्टेट है ना तो इन ई एजी आर पी एंड इन बीजेपी एक्टिव मीन्स नॉट गुड ओके तो बीजेपी कनेक्शन स्टेट इन एक्टिव स्टेट बिकॉज इफ राउटर इज नॉट एबल टू फॉर्म द टीसीपी कनेक्शन ओके इफ द राउटर इज ट्राई टू री स्टार्ट द टीसीपी कनेक्शन बिकॉज when the router fail the tcp connection okay it will again retry again and again again and again okay there is a timer in bgp that is called connect retry timer okay so if router stuck and if router is not able to form the three way handshake after 60 seconds i think uh, i'll confirm this after 60 second there is a retry time out okay 60 plus uh, uh, i think 60 is a keep a live timer and after uh, 60 plus 60 like router is a go, again go and try to connect uh, the tcp connection again and again that's why sometimes you see in the production network sometimes bgp is flapping in active 
or idle okay sometimes it stuck in active or in idle so it is keep flapping and most of the flap reasons in the company yeah we know this thing 180 okay so connect retry timer is guys 180 not 60 after three minutes okay if router is not forming three-way handshake okay so router will again retry to do the three-way handshake again after 180 second okay both acha google karto tum log thank you we know then okay so tcp port number 179 wrong bgp configuration and network issue you can see when the link is flapping when the fiber cable is not appropriately con uh, working if fiber is a damaged cable or something in that also you get a network connectivity issue and you most of the time you are going to flap in the active or idle state okay okay open sent me kya pada humne? what we learned in open sent that it is a message okay we send open message to my peer with peer means i have already formed a tcp connection so when the we form the tcp connection after that we send an open message okay and uh, what we send in the open message guys in open message we send version number as number neighbor statement okay if everything is okay if router one you send open message if router two confirm all the details okay that i am okay everything is okay so when everything is okay router is going to send me back which message keep alive and when we receive the keep alive we will jump from open sent to open confirm okay we will jump to open confirm state else send a notification message okay notification uh, there is a message in bgb called notification when you get any error that is called notification in the open confirm state the router is listening for a keep alive message from another side okay if keep alive message received before any timer expire so means both the sides when we exchange the keep alive messages okay when we receive in abhishek i'm busy somewhere okay keep alive messages when we receive both the sides keep alive messages we will be in the established state and again if any timer expire or if router is not able to form uh, the bgp neighbor it will again go back to the idle state means kabhi bhi problem aa hai during this bgp process if you get any problem you will again go back to the idle state so in the established statement like you have the full bgp neighborship between two routers and tell me when we form bgp neighbor what is the second step when we form the bgp connection the router is going to send which packet update packet in update packet maybe router one has a lot of information so all information will go in the update message means update message will only go when we have the full bgp neighborship yes in ospf also when we become neighbor then only we forward lsa right which lsa lsa any good any lsa right so if still any error happens during the bgp connection the router will again send a notification message and jump back to the idle state okay so now there are four types of messages already you already understand few of them you already know what is open message okay oh in open message like a router confirm few things like version okay as number okay it also has a neighbor ip address neighbor address so in the open message basic parameters are there okay so once tcp connection is established router is going to build a table which is called bgp table okay and all bgp messages are unicast remember bgp never do multicast and broadcast bgp ke sare messages all the bgp messages will be unicast over the tcp connection yes yes bilal okay so tcp is responsible for retransmission if during the problem if uh, router is not getting open message what will happen bgp will again retransmit the packet fragmentation means divide the packet into different different small small parts and always remember uh, in bgp uh, is working on tcp so it also send acknowledgement during when we send sync sync hack or acknowledgement okay so our four messages and this is the first message we have open in open message you can see we have version number 
we have as number we have hold down timer which is 180 second okay bgp identifier that's the router id and there are some optional parameters okay when you configure bgp uh, like uh, in more detail you will come to know what are all these parameters are so open message is always sent after the tcp connection establishment right ye to pata hai sabhi ko open message is sent after tcp connection establishment true good okay so any questions any question in open message all good sir ye teeno jis tarah ye chh connect ho raha hai fir open sent ho raha last mein agar hame error kis tarah pa identify hua ki ye error is is state ke liye is is state pe wo notification mein aata hai so in notification you can see here there is a error code and there is a error sub code suppose as number is wrong so it has a sub code okay so in the notification it's a big uh, uh, what we call a uh, uh, lot of uh, there are first three major codes and then after that there are sub error code means 100 plus errors are there in bgp so suppose as number is wrong peer address is wrong so whenever you get any problem the router send a notification to the router one that i'm not going to form neighborship because of this reason maybe my as number is wrong maybe you have peer address wrong maybe tcp port is not open all these problems will be informed by another router to me with the notification matlab koi bhi problem aa raha hai bgp mein to notification message se bataya ja raha hai ki kya problem aa raha hai okay so you folk so first open message you remember when we send open two routers they form tcp connection after that we send open okay. and when we send open message in the open message we check all these parameters version as number hold down timer bgp identifier optional parameters okay and when we send open message to this router 2 the router 2 is also going to send me a keep alive message so what is keep alive message keep alive message is just a confirmation like acknowledgement packet hota na jaise like we have acknowledgement packet it is same like acknowledgement packet if router accept the parameter of its peer then it send a keep alive message so keep alive is message is a like a blank message it does not have too much information it is just a confirmation okay and also during when you start a uh, bgp neighborship then we send keep alive messages and suppose your routers are working fine everything is going well even after every 60 second because router ko kaise pata chalega bhai mera bgp sahi chal raha you have already con you configured bgp how routers are going to keep asking each other if everything is fine or not because after every 60 second they are going to send keep a live message okay to each other is that every everything is fine everything is fine so after every 60 second router send a keep alive messages to each other it's like a hello packet just in ospf eagrp we got to know now hello packet but hello packet also discover neighbors hello the main work of hello packet is to discover the neighbors and to always check if my neighbor is connected to me or not true hello packet hi hota tha hai na so in the bgp there is no concept of hello okay and the neighbors are not automatically discovered we configure in bgp we configure bgp manually right we configure bgp neighbors manually hai na so to confirm just if bgp is working fine or not they are going to send keep alive messages after 60 second to each other okay and when we confirmed the bgp when everything is working fine with router 1 router 2 bgp is configured properly okay then what we will be sending here router 1 is going to send his information router 2 is also going to send his information okay so suppose we have in router 1 we have a network 50.1.1.0/24 so this network will be updated by router 1 to router 2 in which packet in the update packet so all these prefixes we call them prefixes or subnet right yes in ye routes jo hum bol dete hain routes subnets prefixes so in bgp we call them subnet route prefix 
and in bjp we call this little uh, uh like a different word that is called nlri nlri network layer reachability information okay matlab aapko apne subnet ko bjp mein usko nlri bola ja raha hai okay whenever we send a subnet route or prefix because it has three synonym names okay you can say nlri is also the same name of a subnet so whenever we say update packet is sending what nlri nlri means subnets okay so we are sending subnets from router 1 to router 2 and router 2 is going to add that information in which table bgp table okay so whenever you add any route whenever you add any information that also goes in the update packet okay you can see nlri here okay and whenever you want to remove any information suppose this network is down and router 1 is sending in uh, update packet to router 2 to, to remove this information so whenever you send update packet to remove information so you can see there is a withdrawn routes can you see that withdrawn routes matlab jab bhi hame network se entry remove karni hai suppose router 1 network is down now router 1 is sending update packet to router 2 can you please remove my routes with the withdrawn routes okay so this is total path attribute length this is because bgp is a path vector algorithm there are a lot of things in bgp like weight local preference okay as path number lot of information is there and that information goes into this field path attributes so whenever you set, uh, set up a bgp with some extra features like local preference as number okay weight we will discuss all these attributes okay that information or that all information will go in the path attributes okay unfeasible route length so this is the length of the packet okay so this is the notification message so whenever something happen wrong in bgp you send this message notification okay inside notification there are a lot of information in the uh, bgp packets okay so suppose uh, Sir, the update packet will be sent after the BGP establishment state, na? No? Which packet? Uh, update packet. Update. Mm -hmm. Aha, update packet after it, uh, we become BGP neighbor. Sir, Can we edit the increase or decrease the timer also? Sixty second. Um, uh, I have never heard. We can change because there are. you pro if you want to make the bgp more faster yes, yes we, can some, uh, we can change it ha no no we so, do not change timers. normally we yeah. use some another protocols like bfd and all yes, yes. okay so uh, we ha uh, to bgp timers we normally do not change okay so we change uh, we add another protocol which is like b uh, what we call bfd by for by directional forwarding detection to make the routing protocol more faster okay so for example for example that we are advertising our routes which are already advertised on the internet so we should get one error code via the notification so but the connection that bgp connection wo jo break hoga wo kaun se state mein hoga bgp neighbor dekho jab bhi wo break ho raha hai wo depend kar raha hai ki kahan break ho raha hai so mostly in real production networks hardly there is a configuration issue right बिकॉज कॉन्फिग्रेशन तो पहले से ही करा हुआ है आप लोगों ने जो ऑलरेडी कॉन्फिगर्ड बीजेपी सो मोस्ट ऑफ द एर कम्स मे बी बिकॉज मे बी योर कंपनी फायर वॉल इज ब्लॉकिंग टीसीपी पोर्ट नंबर वन सेवेंटी नाइन मे बी दिस इज द इशू और अनदर इशू यू मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम फेस इज बिकॉज ऑफ फाइबर फ्लैप बिकॉज आई एस पी फाइबर केबल इज नॉट मेंटेन्ड प्रॉपरली एंड वेन वेन एवर देर इज अ फ्लैप यू आर गोइंग टू गेट द बीजेपी प्रॉब्लम okay and because of this like you are going to move your bgp connectivity to another side because in you have multiple connections in bgp na yes yes 
ओके आई वॉज शोइंग यू सम बीजेपी एर कोड जस्ट होल्ड ऑन बीजेपी एर कोड तो देर आर लॉर्ड ऑफ एर कोड गाइज ओके तो इसकी कोई लिमिट ही नहीं है बहुत ज्यादा यार <laughs> हाँ बहुत ज्यादा है ये याद ही नहीं होते सर इफ फॉर एग्जाम्पल माई बीजेपी कनेक्शन इज ऑलरेडी वर्किंग ऑल माई रूट आर फाइन एवरीथिंग इज गुड बट देन वेन आई एम अगेन एडवर्टाइजिंग वन मोर राउट विच इज रॉन्ग मतलब गलती से कुछ मिस टाइप हो गया फॉर एग्जाम्पल तो क्या पूरा कनेक्शन टूटेगा या वही जब गलत है तो पूरा ही टूटेगा ना भाई मतलब पूरा मतलब उस नेबर के साथ टूटेगा नॉट ऑल बीजेपी नेबर्स ओनली नेबर यू कॉन्फिगर्ड रॉन्ग ना दैट बीजेपी विल क्रिएट इम्पैक्ट no for example that neighbor some routes are okay like the the route mein koi mistakes nahi hai but ek route maine jo abhi naya jo dal raha hu wo kuch error ho gaya ha route mein koi error kaise ho sakta hai tushar kuch there there has been some problem in the route where like ha if a route is uh, if a route has a problem then router is going to update send a update message by saying withdraw the route remember okay to wo route hat jayega ha ha okay Okay, so you can see, guys. This is the error codes. I'll share this link with you. Okay, so in BGP, like we have six type of error codes. First of all, okay. So error कहाँ पर है? Okay, so message header error. Okay, can you see the error code value one? Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. So in BGP, because when we learn the BGP here. You can see we have error code here. Inside error codes, you have sub error codes, right? The same way, if you go to this section, you can see message header error. Okay, then we have open message error. Then we have update message error. Then we have hold timer expired. Then we have SPSM, which is called finite state machine error. Then we have another type of CS error. Okay, so now in the first message error. ओके okay, जो पहला एरर कोड वन है एरर कोड कितने हैं छह हैं एरर कोड वन एरर कोड टू एरर कोड थ्री एरर कोड फोर एरर कोड फाइव एरर कोड सिक्स एंड इन द फर्स्ट एरर कोड वन यू हैव थ्री सब एरर कोड्स लाइक फर्स्ट इफ कनेक्शन नॉट सिंकोनाइज ओके मे बी टीसीपी कनेक्शन और मे बी एनी काइंड ऑफ इश्यू ओके एंड इन द मैसेज एडर जो बीजेपी का मैसेज हेडर होता है ना तो इफ यू गेट एड मोस्ट ऑफ द एर यू विल सी इन द सेकेंड कैटेगरी विच इज एर कोड टू Read here. If you have unsupported version number in BGP, it will not form BGP. If you have bad peer AS number, if you have neighbor AS number is wrong, then the code is two by two. है ना? Two is the major code and sub code is also two. ठीक है? And when there is a BGP identifier wrong or maybe if a authentication failure, so when the code is, you should not say five only. You will say two by five. So major code, जो है उसको आपने देखना है. Okay, this open message error because whenever there is a error in the open messages, so the open message will send a bad PRS number. That is two by two. When there is a authentication failure, then two by five. Okay, when there is a hold down timer unaccept uh, unacceptable or uh, both the sides if hold down two timer by is six. Changed. Yeah. बहुत जल्दी से रट्टा मार लिया तुम ओके देन वी हैव अपडेट मैसेज एर इफ यू गेट एनी प्रॉब्लम इन द अपडेट पैकेट ओके तो मे बी बिकॉज ऑफ मिसिंग वेल नोन एट्रीब्यूट देन मे बी थ्री बाय थ्री ओके ए एस इन नेटवर्क फील्ड एज ए एर दैट थ्री बाय टेन तो बेसिकली मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम लाइक इफ एनी बडी आस्क यू बिकॉज दिस इज द ओनली क्वेश्चन विल बी आस्ड इन जूनिपर नेटवर्क ओके न even i have not heard about uh, like cisco is going to ask this this is why i am telling you this hardly anyone in you can see any bgp class over on the internet hardly anybody is discussing error codes because i know this this could be when you go for uh, interviews in juniper networks and all if your basics are very strong if you go to up to fourth level fourth round or fifth round of bgp or mpls or ospf so maybe at that time they will ask you okay do you know about bgp error codes so you can say there are three major codes okay message header codes then you have uh, uh, what we call open message packet error. error codes and then you have uh, what we call uh, update, update packet error codes ye teen yaad rakh lena error code 1 error code 2 error code 3 okay see 
even in this tcb book the fourth fifth sixth uh, codes are not mentioned because that you just understand it's a hold down timer finite state error see that's it just you remember three four error code that's it pura nahi ratta marna aapko sirf do teen pata ho na okay if you know what is wrong pras so you can give an example in the interview sir uh, see whenever we configure as number wrong it is going to send a bgp major code 2 and the sub major minor code is sub code is 2 so 2 and 2 will inform the other router that there is a wrong bgp neighborship okay bgp wrong pras to ye jo dikh rahe hai na teen char ye jo category dikh rahi hai aapko bad pras okay or authentication failure okay or maybe unsupported version so just these three four error codes are enough because whenever you are able to when you are going to troubleshoot bgp in the real world right so when you are going to understand what packet what error codes are inside the bgp packets then you are be able to understand okay 2 by 2 is as number wrong hai hai na so it it will help you in troubleshooting basically this is why they ask yes for cisco and juniper the error code maybe it is going to different only correct bgp is a open standard protocol mrutanjay डिफॉल्ट मेट्रिक ऑफ द राउटिंग प्रोटोकॉल लाइक Sir, I have a doubt. Can I ask? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, uh, if BGP is established and during the connectivity, there there is a connectivity error and BGP uh, breaks. Uh, during that time, this error codes will be sent in a up uh, like update message, right? Or in any other? No, 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 no. Box. Notification, na. Notification is a different notification. Message. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So sorry. I I mean. if there is a number then mm-hmm. that means bgp is healthy so uh, so that number is randomly generated or is there a formula behind it no 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 it is a number how many routes the router is sending that is the prefix value okay 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 so you okay. are talking about when you type this na show ip bgp summary right 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 absolutely so whenever you see this command okay let's understand so see so what do you understand by this uh, image guys if all the routes are showing active it means bgp is not established right correct yes okay and whenever yeah. you see this number yeah okay yeah so whenever you see this number okay so this is number of prefixes how many routes we are receiving from that neighbor Okay, so when it is showing you twenty nine, so it means how many routes you are receiving from that neighbor twenty nine. Okay, so this is also very important whenever yeah. you BGP is getting flap. Okay, suppose you have two connections, Airtel and Vodafone, or Airtel and Tata. Okay, if Airtel is uh, like uh, flapping, your BGP link is, or internet link is flapping. So you can see this. Okay, that how much time before the link got up? Can you see that how long the session has been up? Yes. So whenever there is a flap, you need to send the screenshot of uh, screenshot of this BGP or like uh, whatever flap 
to the ASP to log the tickets also that yeah BGP is flapping please check from your end what is the issue yes yes okay so on the same mm-hmm. note sir uh, mm-hmm. suppose uh, sometime isp do have a tendency of resetting bgp so mm-hmm. uh, from active state to a stable state that is a mm-hmm. number state uh, how much duration should we ex- expect like from active to a prefix state what will be the duration so there is no specific duration i would say okay normally bgp come up in uh, like 3 30, minutes 3 huh? minutes 3 minutes 180 second no 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 she is asking like from idle to connect to establish right. in how much time bgp yes. create a neighborship 180 right. second is a connect retry time out means if your tcp connection got fail bgp right. is retrying to connect again that is 3 minutes okay yes, yes. so normally there is no such timer okay there is no such timer but normally when you configure like uh, when we configured in our labs okay i mm-hmm. hope you have seen it is taking little time like 20 30 second delay hai na to okay. so, uh, but i can't say the exact time or nobody can tell you the exact time because it depends how router what is the speed of the link because the more fast you link more faster link you have the routers mm-hmm. are going to make a t- three way handshake more faster it okay. depends on the speed of internet connection it depends on the devices okay but normally it is not very slow and also it is not very fast like eagrp right. okay so if you compare with eagrp definitely it takes little more time than eagrp okay but mm-hmm. yes ospf and bgp form neighborship on normally on the same speed because okay. both build a database tables all right yeah. thank you okay so last time we configured a lab password we can create in bgp yeah yeah password. authentication authentication yes, yes we can create oh. sir uh, adul sir uh, you mentioned that the speed uh, it did it's very right so mm-hmm. it should like bandwidth what what is a uh... no no it see bgp is a control plane protocol right it form bgp what we call uh, like bgp is used to form the neighborship there is no such time okay because bgp has to go through a very complex stage which is called uh, bgp finite state machine uh, if you remember idle active connect open sent open confirm okay it has to go from all the levels right so there is no specific time mentioned in bgp books or a bgp research papers that yes bgp will be active in 30 second or 40 second so there are timers of bgp like keep alive message it takes 60 second okay bgp three way handshake also remember uh, have you heard about uh, what is the sync packet timer tcp mein padha koi sync packet timer hota okay whenever you start bgp okay routers are going to form the three way handshake there is no such timer of three way handshake it on- automatically form the uh, what we call three way handshake so uh, according to me you can't say like it will take 10 second to come up or 15 te- seconds to come up normally because bgp has to go through a various uh, stages like idle connect open sent open confirm if you want to make bgp more faster that you can configure with bgp with the bfd okay bfd ko aap laga sakte ho agar aapko bgp bahut fast karna hai okay if you want okay so we got to know bgp so i think lab karte hain ek okay so let's start doing a lab of bgp okay so this is the lab we have okay so last time we configured a, a basic uh, bgp between delhi and airtel okay so let me open the lab delhi this is my lan network mumbai i can't find my configurations no worries oh jaldi so this is slightly different lab from the last lab In the last okay. lab we, we were not having the cross cross lines in between 
अच्छा ये नहीं था यस सर अच्छा जस्ट होल्ड ऑन सो दैट शुड बी इन द राउटिंग इट इज अ लैब 25 इन राउटिंग फोल्डर ओके यस सर ये लैब था यस सर आर यू श्योर यस सर ओके दिस इज द सेम लैब आई थिंक मुझे तो बस कॉन्फिग नहीं मिल रहा है यार फिर भी हेलो ओके सो दिस इज द लैब वी गॉट इट राउटर फाइव राउटर थ्री राउटर फाइव तक हो गए हैं वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव ओके इंटरनेट ओके लेट मी नो इफ माय स्क्रीन इज विजिबल यस सर ओके दिख रहा है सभी को कॉन्फ़िग यस सर ओके तो आई विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम राउटर टू देन वी हैव अ राउटर फोर देन वी हैव अ राउटर वन व्हिच इज एयरटेल देन वी हैव राउटर फाइव व्हिच इज वोडाफोन एस नंबर थ्री and there is a lan router here on router 3 okay so last time what we configured <coughs> so we configured basic ip addressing uh, i think yes sir ospf so i have the configuration i can send if you want ek se main dekh raha hu kahan hai maine tumhare notes mein dali thi na shayad या भूल गया था जस्ट टू डाउन नहीं डाला था सर चलो फिर अब आज दोबारा पढ़ लो ओके सो आई विल गो टू दिस बेसिक टेक्स्ट वो है ना अगर बेसिक आईटी आईपी एड्रेसिंग है तो ये री कौन सी है दिस इज ओएसपीएफ आई थिंक वी गॉट इट यस यस सर ये है ना यस सर so this is a router 2 config we have 192 one uh, router 2 fa00 192.1.1.2 on router 2 fa00 and on router 2 fa01 we will be giving air 23.2 okay and then we will give air ospf because between router 2 router 3 router 4 we will run ospf because all router 2 router 3 router 4 ye jo teeno router hain all three routers belong to my ospf network so i will also create a loop back here 10.2.2.2 i will also add this in ospf network i will set the router id to 10.10.2.2 okay so this is the basic config so let me copy from router 2 okay bgp i will configure again because i want you to learn again so just is, is there any confusion in this base config guys आईपी एड्रेस देना और ओएसपीएफ चलाना है एफ जीरो वन पे ऑल गुड यस सर ओके सो आई जस्ट कॉपी पेस्टेड इन द राउटर टू राउटर टू कॉन्फिग इज डन ओके सो लेट्स गो टू अनदर राउटर व्हिच इज राउटर फोर राउटर फोर आल्सो आई विल कॉन्फिगर बेसिक ओएसपीएफ i will not add any configuration of bgp okay so bgp we will configure later on so let's go to router 4 and copy paste this basic config
ओके राउटर फोर डन राउटर थ्री ओके सो देर इज एयरटेल राउटर एयर ओके तो एयरटेल राउटर इज एक्चुअली हैज टू बीजेपी नेबर्स ओके दैट आई विल कॉन्फिगर अगेन सो बट आई विल कॉपी पेस्ट द बेसिक आई पी एड्रेसेज ओके ओके सो दिस इज वी हैव राउटर वन राउटर वन कॉपी राउटर वन एयरटेल कॉन्फिग बेसिक आई पी एड्रेस इज ओके एंड देन वी हैव वोडाफोन राउटर बेसिक आई पी एड्रेसिंग विल नॉट वी विल नॉट कॉन्फिगर बीजेपी okay so done so there is a router here which i'm calling this this is internet router or maybe a tata router okay so again we will give basic ip addresses here okay so we got the tata router also okay and also like we will create some loopbacks here for testing and all okay maybe uh, because i am considering this router as my internet router so what we can do here we can create uh, like one or two loopbacks for testing maybe let's create one interface loopback 0 okay ip address 8.8.8 ओके एंड लेट्स क्रिएट अनदर लूप बैक फॉर टेस्टिंग आईपी एड्रेस नाइन 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 ओके सो आई हैव जस्ट डन द बेसिक आईपी एड्रेसेस एंड माय टास्क फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वांट टू टेस्ट इफ आई कैन पिंग फ्रॉम राउटर टू टू राउटर फोर ओके तो मेरा पहला टास्क है कि मैं राउटर टू से राउटर फोर पिंग करके देख रहा हूँ ओके सो वट आई डू एयर आई विल चेक बिकॉज ओ एस पी इज कॉन्फिगर्ड so you can see i'm getting uh, 1044 root also and if i can ping 1044 which is loop back of router 4 it means my reachability is there from router 2 to router 4 right router 2 se router 4 tak ka network hamara chal raha hai okay Be because in router 2 router 3 router 4 i'm running ospf area 0 and i can ping from router 2 to router 4 so my company network is fine okay and in router 3 because in router 3 we will be having a data center route okay so what we will do here in router 3 we will create a loop back here okay maybe uh, interface loop back 0 so i'll consider this is my data center route okay like 200.1.1.1 okay and i am going to add this in ospf okay so first of all you need to understand bgp hum kyu chala rahe hain why we are running bgp because this is my data center route and i want to forward to the entire world right i want to forward this data center information to airtel airtel to also vodafone vodafone to internet so that people on internet can access my company data center yes yeah to yahan pe jo baithe hain ye jitne bhi samjh lo yahan pe there is a public here so public users can access my router 3 behind behind router 3 there is a data center to make a data center network what i did here i created a loop back and i added that network in the ospf is that clear everyone okay great so now if you go to router 
तो प्लीज चेक इफ राउटर टू हैज द डेटा सेंटर रूट और नॉट शो आई पी राउट टू हंड्रेड डॉट वन डॉट वन डॉट जीरो तो यू कैन सी वी हैव द रूट इन द विच टेबल इन द राउटिंग टेबल वी हैव दिस एंट्री फ्रॉम द ओ एस पी एफ राइट शो आई पी राउट टू हंड्रेड से पता चल जाता है ओके बिकॉज इन प्रोडक्शन नेटवर्क में बी हैव बिग बिग राउटिंग टेबल्स एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सी वन पर्टिकुलर राउट यू कॉन्ट सी द फुल बीजेपी टेबल और फुल राउटिंग टेबल यू कैन जस्ट टाइप शो आई पी राउट एंड द राउट प्रीफिक्स नेम और सबनेट तो ऐसे आप देख सकते हो कि एंट्री है या नहीं है ठीक है सो वी हैव द एंट्री इन ओ एस पी एफ एंड आई कैन पिंग दैट नेटवर्क टू हंड्रेड डॉट वन डॉट वन डॉट वन सो येस वी कैन पिंग फ्रॉम राउटर टू टू राउटर फोर सो नाउ वाई वी आर रनिंग बीजेपी बिकॉज आई एम गोइंग टू फॉरवर्ड दिस बीजेपी इन्फॉर्मेशन आई एम गोइंग टू फॉरवर्ड दिस बीजेपी इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम दिस डेटा सेंटर टू दिस राउटर दिस इज माई राउटर वन and this router will also send information to router 4 now router 2 send information to airtel right and airtel will forward information to the entire world which is internet and if airtel connection goes down so you are also forwarding from the backup link vodafone because if airtel goes down still your data center information will be access by internet right samajh aa raha hai do jagah se hum kyun forward karenge we will forward from both the directions because in case if one isp goes down still the internet users are able to ping your data center network okay so now uh, okay yeah okay so now what we are going to do we are going to add this ospf network in the bgp so what i'll do i'll go to router 2 i'll go to bgp because in bgp as number we got as number 2 and this as number you have to buy from aina and there is a range 1 to 65535 so i will say my as number is 2 and my neighbors are neighbor so what is the neighbor ip airtel ip is 192.1.1.1 remote as of airtel is 1 so you will say remote as is 1 okay that's it very simple configuration okay so neighbor 192.1.1.1 remote as 1 okay so now we will go to router 4 because that is my second router which is connected to vodafone so i'll go to router bgp in router 4 also i'm running as number 2 because router 2 and router 4 both are my company router right sir yeah so we will use uh, private or public as here nahi nahi public yaar एयरटेल okay. वोडाफोन के साथ पब्लिक में जोड़ोगे ना वो कोई चाचे ताऊ थोड़ी है हमारे तो नेबर वन नाइनटी टू टू डॉट वन डॉट फाइव तो दिस इज द आईपी एड्रेस ऑफ वोडाफोन रिमोट ए एस रिमोट ए एस ऑफ वोडाफोन इज थ्री ओके क्लियर एवरी वन सो वी कॉन्फिगर्ड राउटर टू एंड राउटर फोर विद एयरटेल एंड वोडाफोन तो नाउ to make you understand about isp network what i did here i created airtel router here i'll create bgp here also router bgp 1 so one of my client neighbor address 192.1.1.2 remote as remote as of that client is 2 2 hai bhai airtel ab as 1 mein hai aur aapka client jo company hai wo as number 2 mein hai client is in as 2 airtel is in as 1 so you will always say remote as2 okay and this airtel is also connected to this router which is tata router and also i'm going to form neighborship with tata neighbor 20168 what is the ip of neighbor guys 33.2 internet router i have to check the ip of this router so the ip address is 33.2 okay 33.2 so i'll go back to the router 1 थर्टी थ्री डॉट टू रिमोट ए एस ऑफ टाटा वॉज ए एस नंबर फोर ओके सो फ्रॉम बोथ द साइड वी हैव गिवन द नेबर कमांड एंड ऑल्सो रिमेंबर दीज टू नेटवर्क दिस वन नाइनटी टू वन डॉट वन डॉट जीरो एंड दिस टू हंड्रेड नेटवर्क बिलोंग टू इंटरनेट राइट दे आर पब्लिक आई पीस सो नाउ इट्स यूर कॉल दैट यू वॉन्ट टू एडवर्टाइज बोथ नेटवर्क फ्रॉम एयरटेल or you will advertise this network from airtel and this 200 network from internet right so what i am trying to say whatever networks you have which are public okay so what you will do 
you will say network command whatever networks you have like 192.1.1.0 mask 255 255 255 0 so it means i have added this network in the bgp table so whenever you add a network command in the bgp that all information goes in which table bgp database table and you can check with the show ip bgp so whenever you see a root with the star and greater than symbol it means this is the best root of bgp because it is valid and best star and greater than symbol means valid and best and whenever you see next stop 000 it means this is your this is oh, your network. advertised network ye aap hi ne network command mein dala hai okay whenever you see next stop 000 it means that is your network and you can see there is a wait also 32768 which we'll discuss or there is a path here i and that i means that this is given inside the network command do not get confused this is igp interior gateway protocol no whenever you put a network command in bgp it is considered as i and i means igp means network command clear everyone jab bhi aap network command doge to yahan bgp mein i show hoga okay so we added in the atl and now this network tell me you want me to add in atl router or you want me to add in tata router that's your choice tata okay so let's go to tata network yeah. internet router okay and both these networks belong to tata so you will go to router bgp as number 4 neighbor uh, who is my neighbor atl 200.168.33.1 remote as 1 1 okay and also i am going to advertise my network 200.168.33.0 mask okay and we have another network which is 43.0 right and also there is one neighbor which is going towards vodafone router which is 43.1 maybe right 43.5 nahi nahi one hoga five to idhar wali side tha na dekh lete hain so let's check here in vodafone what ip we have given here okay enable show ip interface brief so okay we have given 20168.43.5 okay so we have given neighbor 20168.43.5 remote as of vodafone is 3 3 right so we configured this okay so now vodafone router is remaining Vodafone router also say config T router BGP AS number three right neighbor is one ninety two dot two dot one dot four four remote AS two and neighbor uh, which is Tata router two hundred one sixty eight forty three dot two right yes sir remote AS four four इसका इंटरनेट वाले का भाई एक एक ही रहता है ना फाइव तो है ही नहीं पूरे नेटवर्क में फ्रॉम दिस साइड आल्सो यू विल से दिस इज एस फोर फ्रॉम दिस साइड आल्सो यू विल से इट्स ए एस फोर ना नहीं नेबर राउटर फोर का राउटर फाइव वोडाफोन आएगा ना फाइव आएगा फोर्टी थ्री डॉट फाइव इज हिज ओन आई पी वोडाफोन एस नंबर एस नंबर इज फोर ब्रो फॉर इंटरनेट टू आएगा ना सर क्यों आएगा टू इंटरनेट राउटर फोर में है ना ब्रो ये वाले में टू आएगा कर रहे हो ना तो ऊपर वाला तो ये वाला तो टू में ही डाला है मैंने ये देखो वन नाइनटी टू डॉट वन डॉट फोर रिमोट एस टू ओके सॉरी सॉरी ओके एंड टू हंड्रेड वन सिक्सटी एट दिस इज एडेड इन एस नंबर फोर ओके तो नाउ एवरीथिंग इज वर्किंग फाइन नो नाउ यू कैन गो टू राउटर टू and see if how many routes we are receiving from bgp show ip bgp so you can see we are getting internet routes right because 20168.33 network 20168.43 network even this 192 network i am getting in the bgp table okay so this network is also directly connected to me yes or no router 2 on fh00 you have a public ip na for 192 yes 192 network is on your wan connection right so that network is already directly connected to you right so if you check show 
आईपी राउट कनेक्टेड तो यू कैन सी 192 नेटवर्क मेरे पास ऑलरेडी डायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड में है ऑलरेडी आई हैव दिस नेटवर्क एज अ डायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड आईपीएस तो दैट्स व्हाई व्हेन एवर यू आर रिसीविंग द सेम राउट इन बीजेपी ओके सो बिकॉज यू आर रिसीविंग द सेम रूट व्हाट यू ऑलरेडी हैव एज अ डायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड तो टेल मी डायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड इज बेटर और बीजेपी रूट इज बेटर डायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड डायरेक्टली यस बिकॉज इन डायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड द एडी वैल्यू जीरो एंड ई बीजेपी एक्सटर्नल बॉर्डर गेटवे हैज अ एडी वैल्यू 20 so when you already have the directly connected network 192 and the same route you are receiving from airtel so now it is saying it is a rib failure so r stand for this r can you see this r means rib failure so this is not a problem this is just informing you as a router is informing you router is saying that this network already belong to you already belong to you because you are directly connected so that's okay okay it's not a problem it is just telling you that the this same route you are receiving in the directly connected the same route you already have in the routing table and the same route you are receiving in the bgp but router is going to add which route bgp or directly connected BGP. so this is a route i am receiving because directly connected has a lower ad value so it is showing me the route with the c not with b b stand for bgp right ये जो 192 का नेटवर्क है आपको ओ कहा से दिख रहा है सी से या बी से इट इज शोइंग मी सी या बिकॉज इट्स डायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड दैट्स व्हाई आई कैन सी डायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड बट इफ इट वुड गिव मी इफ आई डू नॉट हैव द डायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड देन इट विल डिस्प्ले मी एज अ बी बी मीन्स बीजेपी लाइक यू आर रिसीविंग सी टेल मी टू हंड्रेड आपके पास है डू यू हैव अ टू हंड्रेड वन नेटवर्क No, no. I'm asking, do you have this network as a directly connected? No, no, no. That's why it is showing you B, because we are receiving from BGP and the AD value is twenty. Twenty. Okay. So now we are receiving BGP routes. So it means the entire world is Apple uh, gi giving network commands, and due to this, we got like millions of route, like BGP total routes. If you see in twenty twenty. और 2023 तो कोई देगा नहीं अभी 2022 देखते हैं ओके सो बाय दिस इज द रिपोर्ट ऑफ 2021 मे बी ओके तो दिस इज द एपनिक वेबसाइट एशिया पैसेफिक नेटवर्क इंफॉर्मेशन सेंटर ओके दिस इज बीजेपी इन 2021 एंड इफ यू सी द रूट्स आई थिंक देयर वेबसाइट इज नॉट डिस हाँ ये रहा दिख रहा है तो दिस इज द चार्ट ऑफ बीजेपी आई पी वी सिक्स आई एम चेकिंग फॉर आई पी वर्जन फोर सो ऑन जैन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू दे हैड ऑलमोस्ट नाइन लैख रूट दिस इज फॉर एशिया ना एशिया में नो 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 दिस इज द ओवरऑल बीजेपी टेबल देर ओवरऑल हाँ हाँ पूरे बीजेपी का ब्लॉग है ना ये ये बीजेपी एशिया थोड़ी लिखा है इस पे एपने नहीं नहीं आपने कैन इज अर्गेनाइजेशन इट इज अपलोडिंग टेलिंग यू अबाउट बीजेपी नॉट एशिया बीजेपी तो दिस इज द इमेज यू गैस कैन सी ओके द टोटल राउट्स लाइक इट्स इंक्रीजिंग राइट कैन यू सी दैट इन 94 वी हैड लेस देन लाइक वेरी स्मॉल 97 ये मतलब लाइक टिल जैन जीरो जीरो ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन यू कैन सी द रूट आर गोइंग अप टू लाइक मोर देन टेन लैक्स ओके वन मिलियन रूट अप्रॉक्स ओके सो दिस इज द हाउ द नंबर इज इंक्रीजिंग डे बाय डे नाइन क्या हाँ हाँ बीजेपी बहुत पुराना है भाई ओके नाइनटी सेवन जब से इंटरनेट है तब से बीजेपी है ना और यू कैन से इंटरनेट इज देयर बिकॉज ऑफ बीजेपी ओके बट व्हाट वी आर डूइंग लाइक यू कैन सी प्रीफिक्स जैन 18 में हमारे पास बीजेपी में अंदर सात लाख रूट थे वी गॉट अराउंड सिक्स नाइन नाइन जीरो 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 इन जैन 19 सो कैन यू सी एवरी ईयर इट इज इंक्रीजिंग आई एम श्योर बाय दिस इज जैन 23 वी गॉट मोर देन टेन लैक्स नाउ बिकॉज द नंबर ऑफ एप्लीकेशन द नंबर ऑफ यूजर्स आर इंक्रीजिंग डे बाय डे सो यू कैन सी ईयर ऑन अयर Seven to eight percent BGP entries are getting increased. Okay, root prefixes. What is root prefixes? Like the parent root. Suppose there is a root here. 
ओके सपोज देर इज अ रूट एयर सेवनटीन डॉट जीरो 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 तो दिस इज वन रूट ऑफ ए एप्पल राइट यस तो दिस इज वन नेटवर्क बट एप्पल इज नॉट सेंडिंग मी दिस सेवनटीन डायरेक्टली मे बी दे आर सेंडिंग सेवनटीन डॉट जीरो डॉट वन डॉट जीरो स्लैश ट्वेंटी फोर मे बी ऑन अनदर लोकेशन दे आर सेंडिंग मी टू जीरो मतलब सबनेट कर करके ना मीन्स दे आर सेंडिंग लाइक नॉट द पेरेंट रूट दे आर सेंडिंग द सब रूट ऑफ दैट नेटवर्क एंड दैट्स वाई द टोटल काउंट इज मोर देन नाइन लैक्स बट इफ यू सी द रूट प्रिफिक्स मीन्स द पेरेंट रूट that is around 4 lakh 20000 okay so you can see addresses and slash 8 ke jo dikh rahe addresses span slash 8 around 183 as number kitne how many as number we are getting 72000 people have registered for as number now you must be thinking total as number is 65000 Mm-hmm. and you are saying the as number is 72000 how ab se soch raha tha main ha koi nahi tumhari soch jahan khatam hai wahan hum batayenge tumhe so as number we got now earlier it was 16 bit now we got 32 bit also okay so we have 32 bit as number nowadays where it start from <coughs> ha ye ra Okay, so earlier the AS number was 16 bit. To the power of 16 is 65,536, है right? ना? So now if you see to the power of 32 is this 442 uh, like 4C or something. It's a big number. Ah, uh, ah, uh, 442 million IPs almost more than that. Okay, so now we got 32 bit AS number. So now this is the range, guys. दिख रहा है मतलब जीरो से लेके फ्रॉम जीरो टू फोर टू नाइन फोर दे दिस रेंज इज रिजर्व फॉर प्राइवेट यूज एंड दिस इज द पब्लिक रेंज ऑफ थर्टी टू बीट एस नंबर दिख दिख रहा है ये वाली रेंज तो दे हैव रिजर्व दिस सिक्सटी फाइव फाइव थर्टी टू टू वन थ्री वन एंड नाउ पब्लिकली लाइक इफ यू इफ यू बाय ए एस नंबर यू आर गोइंग टू गेट अ नंबर इन दिस रेंज लाइक डेढ़ लाख नंबर मिल गया सपोज Okay, or more than that. Okay, you got one lakh fifty thousand something, or maybe you got a number like four lakh something. So these are AS number, and they are called thirty-two bit AS number, and they are compatible with the sixteen bit AS number also. Okay, clear. So whenever you, mm-hmm. uh, please complete, sir. So I'm saying there are two type of AS number. Okay, like in BGP. Okay, one is normal one to sixty five thousand five hundred thirty five, and there is a new AS, and that you are going to see in the latest series. Okay, so if I uh, add a new router, let I am just adding just to show you. Okay, so these these are normal series router like thirty seven hundred and all, but if you configure this router which is uh, working on the latest iOS virtual uh, operating system, it will show me. the 32 bit as number because see you can see the version 15.9 and cisco added 32 bit as cisco 32 bit as support and they supported after i think uh, a range maybe some of the operating system they support to so, sabhi purane routers ko upgrade karna padta hai ya nahi nahi as number to mil gaya na it's a permanent number you bought it for yourself Your company AS number bar bar change nahi hota na you registered but <coughs> now companies are increasing day by day already sixty five thousand sixty thousand AS numbers are vanished so that's why we got thirty two bit AS number so now if you register or if you work for a new company maybe you see some AS number with a big range like three uh, lakh so you will say router BGP three lakh got it. Hmm. Like IPv4 and IPv6, ah, kind of. Exhausted. <laughs> But it's a still it's a decimal number, not hexadecimal, na? Yeah. Thirty-two bit. So, सभी को सभी को नए एस नंबर मिल गए हैं या कुछ लोग पुराने? नहीं नहीं सब को पुराने के पुराने हैं जो नई कंपनीज आ रही हैं उनको नए मिल रहे हैं. Okay, thank you. 
ओके लाइक इफ यू गो टू दिस वेबसाइट ना आई टोल्ड यू लाइक वॉट वॉज द वेबसाइट अर्लियर बीजेपी हरी केन लुकिंग ग्लास समथिंग राइट या आई थिंक दिस वन बीजेपी अल्ट्रा टूल्स की एक वेबसाइट अल्ट्रा टूल्स या सो इफ यू सी हेयर सपोज इफ आई से फॉर रिलायंस जियो पता नहीं दिखेगा नहीं दिखेगा ओके रिलायंस जियो इन्फोकॉम सिंगापुर सिंगापुर पहुंचे भाई तुम यहीं बैठे हो ओके सो लुक फॉर एनी कंपनी विच इज न्यू सो यू विल सी ए एस नंबर लाइक बिगर ए एस नंबर अरे सिक्योरिटी ब्रीच नहीं है वेब सपोर्टर्स डाल दो नहीं सिक्योरिटी ब्रीच क्यों ए एस नंबर ही तो दिखा रहा है देखो ये देखो ए एस नंबर दिख रहा है टाटा का बड़ा है ना वन थ्री फोर फाइव फोर जीरो दिस इज थर्टी टू बीट एस नंबर दे रजिस्टर रिसेंटली रजिस्टर्ड फॉर दिस मे बी बिकॉज the command for new as mm-hmm. numbers will be same yeah yeah same BGP. you can see here enable config t router bgp now it is asking you you want oh. to configure now it support 32 bit so if you give normal as number 2 it will still be considered as 32 bit okay so means the pura range hi change ho gaya na naye routers mein in the new series of router router support latest uh, bgp up to 4294 even there is a dotted notation also means uh, uh, i will not confuse you but yes you can give a as number like this also like 0005 okay i think uh, we have to no 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 not like that you have to say like uh, 1.0 so what is 1.0 now one nahi na so this is uh, 65535 के बाद जो नंबर है सिक्सटी फाइव थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड थर्टी सिक्स इज कॉल्ड वन डॉट जीरो पी प्रोटोकॉल ओके सो इट विल शो मी सिक्सटी फाइव थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड थर्टी सिक्स ओके इफ यू से टू डॉट जीरो इफ यू से राउटर बीजीपी तो फर्स्ट यू हैव टू रिमूव दिस ना नो मतलब थोड़ा सिंपल रखने के लिए वन डॉट जीरो बट एक्चुअली इट्स ओके इफ यू से राउटर बीजीपी फाइव डॉट जीरो तो इट मीन सिक्सटी फाइव थाउजेंड पहले जीरो डॉट जीरो डॉट सिक्सटी फाइव थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड थर्टी फाइव सेम लाइक वन डॉट जीरो टू वन डॉट सिक्सटी फाइव थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड थर्टी फाइव देन टू डॉट जीरो टू टू डॉट सिक्सटी फाइव थाउजेंड सिक्सटी फाइव ठीक है तो जैसी मैं फाइव डॉट जीरो करूं बट एक्चुअली फाइव डॉट जीरो दिस फाइव डॉट जीरो इज योर थ्री लैख ट्वेंटी सेवन सिक्स एटी क्लियर क्लियर एवरी वन हम्म ओके सो वी कॉन्फिगर्ड बीजेपी हेयर एज आई टोल्ड यू लाइक वी हैव लेटेस्ट आई वर्जन ऑल्सो so coming back to the lab now we are able to see the routes everything is working fine okay so what i want that this data center route will go to my internet router so how it will go because your company routers are two router 2 and router 4 and you will see that this network which is 201.1.0 that i am receiving this in my table or not if you are receiving this network then only we so you are receiving from ospf तो नो वरीज इवन इफ यू आर रिसीविंग दिस फ्रॉम ओएसपीएफ चाहे वो ओएसपीएफ से आपको आ रहा है ओके स्टिल यू आर ए गो टू बीजेपी एंड यू आर एबल टू फॉरवर्ड दिस विद द बीजेपी कमांड इवन दिस इज नॉट यू आर डायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड बट इट्स पार्ट ऑफ योर लैंड नेटवर्क इट इज कमिंग बाय ओएसपीएफ राकेश पाटिल ओके सो यू गिव नेटवर्क टू हंड्रेड डॉट वन डॉट जीरो ओके सो वी पुट द नेटवर्क कमांड and 200 uh, something okay so we put the network command from router 2 and the same thing we will go to router 4 and say show ip interface brief 
okay so let's see we are getting the root or not to ip route ospf in this direction yes we are getting 200 from router 4 also you will go to bgp and you will add the same command okay so now i have added this network what do you think this network has reached to the internet router or not kya lagta hai pahunch gaya hoga yes sir okay let's see what is the command to check your bgp route show so ip so are we getting the route no no we will right thoda slow hai na bgp so whenever you add a route in the bgp so you can give this command clear ip bgp star soft okay just to update the routing table because it will take little time okay still i am not getting the root so i have to check my this router first which is atel on sir sir in tata we are not getting 192.2.1.0 abhi ruk pehle pehle ye step is yaar ye wala root bhai router 3 pe tha na jo to wo command dal li thi na koi to ruko ruko a pehle let's check on atel ha wo bhi gadbad hai देखो, we are also not receiving here. It means because in router three, so if you remember in router two, we added subnet mask what slash peer to peer twenty four. हाँ, slash twenty four slash twenty four. Good, good catch, good catch. Okay, so this is slash twenty four. But in your routing table, what network you are receiving slash thirty two. Thirty two. Slash thirty two. It means because we created this as a loopback in OSPF. Okay, in OSPF, your loopback is always considered slash thirty two. So, आपको loopback पे जाना है. You have to go to your loopback interface loopback, and you have to say IP OSPF point network two. point two point eight because this command will make your loopback as a exact slash twenty four because you created loopback with twenty four. But it is going as slash thirty two because that's a problem of OSPF loopback code thirty two ही मानता है, okay Satish? Okay, so slash thirty loopback are always considered thirty two in OSPF. That's why I have given network point to point, and now you have given the exact BGP command. Now the router is going to forward the BGP route. Now let's see. Ah, uh, we got the BGP route in Airtel. Yes, sir. Okay, now let's check Tata router, internet router. Are we receiving the route in the Tata router? Yes. yes. So are we receiving this route from two sides? Hmm. So can you see this 200 is showing me that I am receiving from two sides and which is best, the upper one or the uh, below one? Which is best? Which route is better? Upper which has the... Better. Upper below one, below one, below. below one, because below it has one. the greater than symbol. Direct best route. Uh -huh. Konsa best in dono me se? Second, three, two, three, two, three, two, point five. Yeah, second is the below best. One, Why it is best? It's a valid and best route. Yeah, it, it is, is valid. Directly connected. No, 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 no. Both are connected. Oh, sorry, it's sorry. not like that. Because yeah. maybe forty three dot five. Uh, like we have to check okay we have to check because sometimes we configured bgp we configured bgp on this router maybe earlier than this router okay we need to check that okay so we need to understand that bgp so we can run this command show ip bgp 200.1.1.0 and now if you see both are valid both are igp means both are from network command there is some value which is called local preference, which is also tie. Both are external routes, but still this is best because of highest router ID. Which IP address is the highest? 33.1 or 43.5? 43. Okay, so what we are huh, so we will be going to learn in BGP. Okay, so we'll be learning this uh, thing, what we call. BGP के अंदर ना मैं attributes पढ़ेंगे तब पता चलेगा आपको ये ओके तो BGP attributes कहाँ गए या yeah, tell me about BGP attributes okay so these are some attributes okay you need to 
So next week we are going to learn the attributes. Okay, every attribute. So you can see here there is a table. Okay, that we will check first weight, then we will check local preference, then local originated ID. Okay, and uh, then you can see here router ID lowest. We consider lower IP, but here we got higher IP. So uh, I'm sure because we configured BGP in this router, router always check lower IP, not higher IP. So according to me, according to BGP selection, this should be my best, but it is giving me this best, which we will learn how to make this route as a best. Okay. So now if you are going to ping from this router, do you think we will be able to ping? Yeah. यहां मैं अगर इस इंटरनेट राउटर से डेटा सेंटर आईपी को पिंग करूं इफ आई गो टू दिस राउटर आई ट्राई टू पिंग 200 111 आई एम एबल टू पिंग और नॉट नो बिकॉज़ दिस आईपी इज इन माय व्हिच नेटवर्क लैन नेटवर्क व्हिच इज बिहाइंड माय लैन नेटवर्क एंड सो दिस 23.0 एंड दिस 34.0 बिकॉज़ व्हेन यू पिंग दिस नेटवर्क द पैकेट विल गो इन व्हिच डायरेक्शन योर पैकेट विल गो टू एटल then ATL will forward to router 2, right? And then router 2 will forward to router 3. But this 192, so do you think internet router will forward packet to your LAN network 192? So do you have 192 network in the internet table? No. No. So it will not go because your transit path, jo rasta beach mein aara, usko bolte hai, transit path, the path which comes between that contains the private IPs. Okay, so basically whenever you have a private network, so whenever you have a private network to convert that private network into public network, we have to do few things that is called net netting. Yes. So yes. basically we need to convert this 23.0 and 34.0 in the WAN connection. Okay. To make, because I'm giving you the proper lab from zero to, uh, hero. zero. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we'll go to router two and we will select the access list Sir? access list one so dono lan network hai na jo hamare 23.0 okay wildcard mask and also there is a network 34.0 both of the networks i am going to do nat okay and so you will say ip uh, nat inside source list IP NAT inside source list uh, one, one. one interface one. FA zero by zero overload right and then you say FA zero one is your IP NAT inside yes FA zero one is IP NAT inside and FA zero zero is outside outside IP NAT outside okay so the same thing you will do on router four because in case if router two is not doing NAT who will be responsible to do NAT uh, yeah, so access list one permit both the networks 23.0 wildcard mask. Okay, then you have 34.0. Okay, and then IP NAT inside source list one interface FA01 overload. Interface FA00 is IP NAT. In, in outside. In, in. FA00 is inside, bro. Inside, right. And 01 is outside. So, we have good chance that now internet router will ping this IP. Let's see. I think, sir, we should do net. Sir, we this have one. not given the default route. Yeah. So, we do not have a default route. Okay. And, uh, but in this direction, we do not need a default route. Because 200 network. So what we will do here, trace route 200, 1.1.1 .1 and always add a numeric keyword. Okay. It, else it will take a lot of time. So you can see my packet is going till Vodafone router. Can you see that? Router 4 tak ja na? Yes, sir. Yeah. So my packet is going till 192.2.1.4, which is router 4. After that, it is not going. So let me check here, show IP route 200.1.0. So I have a question. Mm. 
I want my data center routes to advertise to internet. So I will ping from data centers to internet router. Why? Where is the ping? What is it? Sir, uh, I will ping from data center to internet. Mm-hmm. Why mm-hmm. we are doing reverse? Like we are pinging from internet to the data center. That's okay. You can ping from data center also. No? But in this direction, what we will happen? Okay, the problem what we are facing actually, this is a problem of a default route only. So I was showing you that we will be able to go to this direction. हम यहाँ पहुँच चुके हैं. We got the root here, we got the ping, but this router is not sending packet back to me. Hmm, I am able to go to router three. Even I can test you right now. So when you ping, मैं तुम्हें जो चीज दिखाता हूँ देखा करो तुम. तुम logic लगाने लग गो पहले. ये देखो. If you go to router three and say here uh, like debug IP ICMP to track the ping packet, we will run debug IP ICMP. And if we try to stop this trace route somehow, okay, with the control shift to fix something. So if you try to ping two hundred dot one dot one dot one, okay. So I'm just showing you on router three. I'm running debug. So are we getting the ICMP packet? Yes or no? Are you? Are you? Are you? मतलब यहां तक पैकेट पहुंच रहा है इसका मतलब यही है दैट मीन इट मीन आई एम रिसीविंग द पैकेट ऑन राउटर थ्री बट यू कैन सी पोर्ट अनरीचेबल सेंट टू फोर्टी थ्री डॉट टू बेसिकली यू डू नॉट हैव द इन्फॉर्मेशन टू गो बैक टू द इंटरनेट राउटर डू यू हैव इंटरनेट आई पी इज लाइक एट डॉट एट डॉट एट डू यू हैव एट 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 नेटवर्क इन राउटर थ्री नो इट मीन्स In this router, we hmm. need to have a reverse route, which is called default route. Yes, nice. Okay, so there are two ways to add a default route right now in my network. When, like, you can create one manual default route, or you are running OSPF, right? You are running OSPF, yes or no? Yes. So from this OSPF, you can yes. go to this router OSPF one and say default originate, default information originate mm-hmm. always. What? Always, always, always. लगाना क्यों जरूरी है? Right now, always keyword is very important here because in router two we do not have a default route. In router two, so do you have default route in router two? No, no. So if you want default route, you will ask ISP. Hey ISP, can you give me a default route? So Atel will go to his BGP table. Okay, like this router BGP AS number one and say neighbor one ninety two one dot one dot one dot two default, default originate. Mm-hmm. So this is how Airtel is giving you a default route with the help of BGP and Vodafone also is going to give you router BGP three neighbor one ninety two dot kya tha two dot one dot four फाइव तो खुद की आईपी नहीं है इसकी फोर है ना इस साइड की नाउ वी गॉट अ डिफॉल्ट रूट इन आर टूर लेट सी वी गॉट द डिफॉल्ट रूट यस वी गॉट द नाउ यू डू नॉट नीड ऑलवेज की वर्ड बिकॉज नाउ यू हैव अ डिफॉल्ट रूट तो इन ओ एस पी एफ यू डू नॉट हैव टू से डिफॉल्ट इंफॉर्मेशन ऑरिजिनेट ऑलवेज ऑलवेज का मतलब है चाहे रूट हो ये ना हो तो भी डिफॉल्ट रूट पैदा करेगा ओके तो इफ आई डू नॉट एड ऑलवेज की वर्ड इट विल सेंड अ डिफॉल्ट रूट टू राउटर थ्री एंड रिमेंबर विच विच पाथ यू वांट टू मेक प्राइमरी यू वांट ऑल योर ट्रैफिक टू गो वाय एयरटेल और यू वांट ऑल ट्रैफिक टू गो वाय वोडाफोन विच पाथ यू वॉन्ट टू गिव प्रायोरिटी एयरटेल एयरटेल ओके इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गिव प्रायोरिटी टू एयरटेल तो जस्ट से हेयर डिफॉल्ट इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑरिजिनेट ओके एंड इन द राउटर फोर यू कैन एड समेट्रिक ओके लाइक राउटर ओ एस पी एफ वन डिफॉल्ट ओरिजिनेट इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑरिजिनेट मेट्रिक सो बाय डिफॉल्ट वॉट मेट्रिक वी गेट इन वी कैन चेक इन राउटर थ्री तो हाउ मच मेट्रिक ट्वेंटी बाई जीरो तो बाय डिफॉल्ट वी आर नॉट वी आर गेटिंग वन मेट्रिक Okay, that metric is uh, when we you redistribute, right? So here from this ATL we are getting which metric? How much cost we are getting here? One. So if you make if you want to make this primary, let's keep it one. यहाँ हम one ही रखते हैं और इधर की मैं बढ़ा देता हूँ. If we make this five, 
टेल मी विच कॉस्ट विल बी प्रेफर्ड वन और फाइव वन हाँ सो वी कैन से हेयर डिफॉल्ट इन्फॉर्मेशन ओरिजिनेट मेट्रिक फाइव ओके so it means if you go to router 3 it will only show me one default route which is going towards atel but when the atel is down when atel will be down in future okay suppose if my fa00 is down fa00 is going towards atel so if i shut down the fa00 interface just to show you so automatically what will happen traffic will move to vodafone automatically can you see a vodafone route now with the metric 5 yes right clear now what is the use of two default route hmm. one with metric 1 one with metric 5 hai yeah, na so we will make the network up again by saying fa00 no shut down can we do load load balancing yeah we can do ha kar so. sakte hain yaar i think failover you need to understand load balancing like if you have multiple vlans like vlan 10 20 you can forward from atel If you have VLAN 30, 40, you can forward from Vodafone, right? You can do in such a way. Okay, so everything is working fine. Okay, now if we test uh, this from internet to Vodafone IP, yeah, we got the reachability, guys. We are able to go to the data center. <laughs> so, sir, what we have done? So we uh, we just get our route from Airtel uh, mm-hmm. to R2, then. we uh, we provide a, a route default route to r3 from r2 right hmm hmm so, okay maine kya kiya na dekho do teen dekho ek cheez ko karne ke 10 tarike hai yahan pe okay one like uh, first thing what i did here like i like created a default route from airtel and i forward to router 2 and then i create because i got a default route in bgp right Yes. So now I can forward this default route in OSPF because in my internal network I am running OSPF. So in many many of the labs you will see BGP ko OSPF me like you can redistribute also BGP routes in OSPF. That is another way, but it's not required. I will just send a default information originate from this side, and from this side I will say default information originate, but with with the metric five because I want to make this path as a backup. so how my traffic is going right now my traffic is going like this okay and coming via like this okay so you can trace route also go you go to the internet route and do the same thing now trace route and now you can see i'm going from vodafone but i'm coming back from 34.3 okay or maybe i'm coming back from the same direction 34. Dot, okay idhar se aa raha hai na 34 kidhar hai ha idhar se aa raha hai Okay, I'm coming back from the Vodafone side only <coughs> because I'm testing from Tata. But if you test from router three, and if you say uh, trace route eight 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 eight, okay, I want to go to trace uh, this Google dot com whatever numeric. Okay, so you can see I'm going from Airtel, right? Whoa, okay. Sir, we will do uh, ping uh, source uh, 201. Ha, wo bhi kar If you want to test from the uh, IP, 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 source loopback. Okay, so basically I am trying to go to Google dot com by ping eight 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 eight. Okay. Unreachable receiving from one ninety two dot one dot one. I think Airtel is no okay. So Airtel is not forwarding your route to internet because eight 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 network I have not advertised right. अभी क्या हुआ ping क्यों नहीं हुआ मैं बताता हूँ तुम्हें देखो देखते ही पता चल जाता है यहाँ पे कहीं पर okay why it is not pinging because when I ping eight 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 this packet is going to Airtel but Airtel is not forwarding packet to eight 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 Because Airtel does not have any route to 888. ठीक है यहाँ से तो वो default है. Okay, we have a default. Hmm. That's why we forwarding to router two. And in router two, we have a default route. We are forwarding to Airtel. But Airtel does not have a default route. So it will check his routing table and see where is 888. And here he say network not in table. Because we created 888 loopback in Tata, right? But I, I have not advertised in BGP. so what you can do to fix this problem router bgp4 network 8.0.0 mask right it's slash okay 
So when you put a network command, now Airtel knows the network. Yes, Airtel ko pata lag gaya network. Airtel knows about 888 network. Now we will be able to go to 888. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. See, it is more uh, better labs than only BGP because it is helping you to understand that it is also helping you how to actually connect to the entire network, how to forward your packet from BGP to OSPF and how your data center networks are reachable from the internet. Okay. So it's a good lab and trust me, I have not trained any extra thing today in this lab. This is the same thing we discussed last time, but now you got to know in a more polished way because we discussed about a little theory today. How many packets we have in uh, in OS uh, BGP? Six. six Four. Six. Packets. Those are the states, right? Six, yeah, six. packets I'm asking. Op oh. Yes. Open, keep alive, update, and notification. Oh. And how many states we have? Six. Idle. Six. Idle. Idle. Correct. Active. One state. Connect. Connect. Last one. Uh, Sir, because you are doing failover for internet. So if you are doing failover for internet, obviously you need two default routes or two ISPs also. Uh, sir, I am curious to ask one thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Like uh, we are uh, running this command default route information originate when we have a default route, right? Mm -hmm. But sir, how BGP is providing us default route, even it doesn't have a uh, that uh, default route. Because this is the way like BGP routers can provide a BGP default route. OSPF can, even OSPF can generate a default route without a default route when you add a always keyword. Okay, okay, okay. So BGP mein jururi nahi hai ki uske paas hona chahiye tabhi wo karta hai. When you give this command in BGP, Okay, that BGP neighbor, ki neighbor ko default route de do. Okay, this command na, where I, uh, I was. Sir, but uh, how OSPF will know that uh, I have to forward the default route to BGP? Because you are giving the command na, default information originate in OSPF. No, sir, that always command default information. Always ka matlab hi hai ki bhi de na hi de na. It will make the router ASBR and send LSA 5 as a default route. So when you give default information originate, na, the router becomes your ASBR router. You, whenever you give a default, yes, you can see, go to router 2 and see here, show IP protocols. Okay. So you can see my router become what? ASBR. ASBR. Whenever you give a default information originate command, indirectly at the back end, you can say the router is redistributing the route to the uh, further routers. That's why. It is showing you default root in OSPF with OE2 symbol, not just O star. It is showing you O star E2 and E2 is a LSA 5. Yes, sir. But sir, uh, but uh, I don't have a default root now. So if I giving the command always command, how the OSPF will know that? Okay, this is the Bhai, uska feature. Wo feature hai, Bilal. Oh, wo sure. feature hai uska ki wo aap default root generate. BGP mein mein to hai nahi, to bhi generate ho raha na? Yes, sir. Haan, to BGP mein to by default behavior, you can create a default route even if you do not have a default route. Sure, but sure. in OSPF, you can create a default route when you have a default route. But if you want to create a default route without a default route, you then have to add a always, always keyword. Command. Simple. Sure. Understood, sir. Hello. Yeah. Sir, Anil here. Yeah, Anil. Sir, can, for this scenario, can we do uh, 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 traffic control like incoming or outgoing? Wo karenge na, jab aapko main attributes na, okay. Once we okay. learn attributes, mm -hmm. then only we, you can play with the traffic. If you don't okay. know, suppose if I right now I can forward all the traffic to Airtel or Vodafone. If you want, I can do right away. Okay, okay. just yahan pe jana hai, and you will say router BGP. Okay, like uh, what AS number two and say here BGP default local preference may be 500. Okay. What will happen automatically by just giving this command 
automatically ev- all my traffic will be shifted to router 4 so okay. ip bgp so you can see local preference uh, actually i have to so if you want proper uh, communication na if you want proper uh, incoming outgoing traffic manipulation then you have mm-hmm. to make bgp neighbor between router 2 and router 4 also okay okay so we'll go mm-hmm. step by step i am sure okay. that whatever we have learned so far you guys are okay will we'll, right you just need to revise that right sir yeah tell me sir actually i didn't get that nat section sir could you kindly explain that section once again okay nat is just because i was sending this twin because whenever we forwarding packet the private networks are coming in between right so if you want yes, end to end reachability because the path 23 is also in this path so i'm just doing nat so that my private networks whenever you ping from router 3 by default router 3 picks the ip from fa00 right so whenever you ping from router 3 tell me jab bhi yahan se main ping karunga whenever i ping for 888 so what ip address router 3 is going to forward so my source will be 192.168.23.3 ah so whenever you yes. going with the private source do you think isps are going to no entertain you no no that's why i did an add where i converted 23 and 34 with the acl i added acl first right so i created access list then you can see here two acls and then i gave this command ip nat wala na then i added this command that ip nat inside source list 1 mic off guys Okay, so I said IP net inside source list one, and convert this list one, which is access list one, na. Convert this list into interface FA zero zero, which is my WAN port, and overload keyword is for multiple IPs, like for dynamic net. Okay, which is PAT also port address translation, and you go to this FA zero zero, you say IP net outside, and FA zero one will be IP net inside. So now router three will be able to go to eight 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 because when you ping. 8888 automatically your router is converting you see the translation table okay show ip net translations why it is not showing me okay maybe if i say okay maybe we are going from this side it should show me the net table Okay, so you can see here. I don't know why I can't see the NAT statistics. I think sir, you should ping from internet. To okay, to router two. No, I am wrong. We are on router two. Pe NAT is na, so we have to see. Okay, so you can see one ninety two one dot two is converted into twenty three dot three. Can you see that? One ninety two one sixty twenty three dot three is converted into your WAN IP, which is one ninety two one dot one dot two. Yeah. So I have one question. Uh, let's say, sir, uh, data center is my company, and R one and R two are my two ISPs. Mm. So, and the internet is the tier one ISP. So, if I know the uh, IP of tier one ISP, can I ping from my company? From where? From my company, from the data center. Because mm-hmm. in this lab, we are able to ping. Uh, suppose mm-hmm. this internet is a Tier one ISP and Airtel and Vodafone are tier two mm-hmm. or maybe tier three. See, when you put a network command and if you if your routers have full reachability, you can ping from any part of the world. Oh, wow! Because it's a BGP, na. When you added network command, it means it's gone in the BGP tables of internet. Okay. बाप ने यहाँ से इसको Airtel और Vodafone को देना अब पूरी दुनिया में जा चुका है वो data center का route आपका. तभी तो BGP चलाती है ना companies yes, कि मेरी information सब जगह चली जाए. Sure. Thank you, sir. Okay, so guys, uh, so see you sir, next time. Thank you, sir. One last question. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, Sayed. Uh, uh, sir, uh, as you mentioned, uh, we prefer the primary route uh, via Airtel. So already we this clearly mentioned as it is go through the Airtel. 
but mm-hmm. if you are going giving that uh, local preference to secondary means uh, via vodafone so mm-hmm. which path it will select right now it will not work this local preference command will not work because to make the communication properly because router 2 router 4 they need to agree on some statement right if i say local preference is higher then router 2 has to understand his language right and then they will only understand each other when router 2 router 4 will become ibgp neighbor okay so that i was just showing you that these are some commands which we will learn okay but till the time you do not learn attributes we will not be able to manipulate the traffic right away but till this lab you guys have to be perfect in basic bgp configurations so that you understand okay the packet is why we are running bgp because with this lab you got to know how actually bgp implemented in industry yes or no yes yeah okay suppose if i am asking the basic bgp interview okay suppose i am from hcl i am taking your interview okay so who will tell me okay bgp uh, give me basic okay or uh, tell me about bgp who will tell me consider this is interview going on who will talk about bgp just for one or two minutes or let's call 25 seconds yeah imran bgp is a border gateway protocol it's work on uh, tcp number 90 179 179 mm. and uh, it's uh, it's a total of six uh, six type of uh, packet for the flow network state states 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 Okay, I have already said this multiple times. At least try to learn some basic concepts. Okay, because you all know BGP is a border gateway protocol. BGP works on TCP port number 179. BGP is also known as path vector algorithm. It works on path vector algorithm, right? So BGP uh, is an open standard protocol. BGP creates three-way handshake before making a neighborship, right? And when it comes to BGP, the entire world is on internet because of BGP. BGP yes. To run BGP, we need a AS number, and that AS number we have to buy from an internet assigned number authority. I right. And I once we got the AS number, okay, we can advertise our public IPs to the internet. Now you are directly telling the interviewer that what is the use of BGP. We are using BGP so that we can advertise our public IPs. And also we can play with the traffic from which route we want to forward the traffic and from which route we want to enter the traffic or incoming traffic, right? After that, you guys can say BGP has six states. Okay. Like uh, what we call that in it. Is it in it? No, idle. 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 Connect. It's idle. Connect. Connect. Open send. Open confirm. Establish. And after that, uh, like once when you know the states it guys idle uh, yeah so when you know the states okay maybe the uh, the interviewer will stop you there only okay just okay okay fine fine now tell me what is open message it's a message uh, yeah. to the if you want to know the as number and the version of bgp running we send no, no, the no. Mm-hmm. Sir, actually, when the connection is established, then it will send an open message. To confirm the parameters. Yes. parameters. Right. Ah. Yes, so somebody. open message is equal to confirm the parameters from another neighbor. If parameters are matched, then router send which message? Open send. Keep alive. Open. Keep alive. Keep alive. Keep alive. When keep parameters alive. are matched, keep alive jata hai. Tumhye to rat rat ke padhana padega mujhe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got the keep alive. Okay, fine. Okay, so which which message is used by BGP to report errors? Notification. 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 
notification right notification. and how bgp identify errors because there are a lot of errors in bgp how bgp identify errors such codes not the help of error codes error code it's an effective or idle do you know any error code in bgp uh one three yeah. types of error code message message, message. message. header yeah. open message error open message, error, open message. Open. There are three major error codes. One is message header codes. Another is open header, open, open header, and third is update error. Update. Right? Update error. Update. So whenever we get any problem, the major code is always two in the case of open parameters problem. Right? I've already added as a TCP/IP link in your notes. Please check that and try to just uh, speak something when somebody asks you errors and all. Okay? Okay. Okay. this is an overview class of sd van if you guys have any doubt you guys can ask so uh, so the total hours uh, for this course is around 30 to 35 okay so i'll put it 30 the maximum we can go up to 35 also okay we are going to learn sd van for 30 to 35 hours this is already very much high. Normally, people are delivering for 15 hours, 20 hours. But I am giving uh, the most out of it. Okay. Additionally, you guys will be getting the lab access up to 50 hours. But no issues like if you complete your 50 hours, we are going to give you additionally 10 hours also. No, not an issue. But yes, uh, lab thing, if you actually learn everything, uh, even 20 hours lab is already enough for you but still i recommend you all to do everything at least two to three times this is why we are giving around 50 to 60 hours of lab access okay this lab access is included in the batch okay you do not have to pay for the lab extra if you enroll for sd1 batch okay and uh, guys uh, see whenever any complex things comes okay i'm going to deliver the same thing in hindi also because most of you are more comfortable and you understand see i'm not going to skip anything in english okay i'm just going to add few pointers in hindi also so that you can understand it in a better way as of now i'm not speaking hindi too much because i am not teaching you some advanced skills these this is plain english i hope everyone can understand but don't worry the guys who understand only English. I'm not skipping anything. Don't think that if I'm speaking in Hindi for a few lines. Okay, so in short, if my batch is of two hours, okay, almost uh, like 110 hours or maybe 110 minutes, I'm going to speak English. But for few, 80, 90% is English, but 5 to 10%, uh, these guys who understand Hindi, they can ask in Hindi as well. Okay. So, because I want to take this batch so that everyone can understand. As you all know, those who are not from India, so we, English is not our first language, but still, we, somehow we are managing. So, you guys can also manage 5 to 10%. Okay. Everyone, any questions? So, the notes uh, is here. You will be getting these notes, PPTs and all, everything from us so i was saying that you can have uh, this v manage v bond v smart so you can deploy in your physical server and you can also deploy in azure and aws yes kartika you can ask put down in the chat or you want me to unmute okay and the the major uh see guys i i i don't uh say that i'm teaching you in depth sd van or something like that i do not want to take that credit there are many guys who are delivering also but i just want to say that whatever sd van you are going to learn here it will be the most easiest way to learn sd van most easy this is i can assure you okay because if you keep digging the things and if you don't understand then there is no point of learning there are many maybe thousands of sources from where you can learn sd van but the main point is that Will you able to understand or not? Right? So, but yes, I can assure you that you will be able to understand. Now you at least, if 
after this session you know what is like why we are deploying this sd wan because what are the problems we were facing remember that all my traffic is going from one locations then the latency will be the problem and we need to pay for too many private links then now we have sd wan connectivity we do not have to pay for the whole mpls links we can connect all our locations with internet and all my remote locations can access internet directly also okay and additionally i told you that all my devices can be managed from we manage we do not have to deploy different different devices like all the controller this we manages like my controller so these are the topics we are going to learn guys sd wan solution overview sd wan components so sd wan deployment that you are going to understand about templates okay what are feature templates how to attach the devices to templates this is what i am talking about that these pre defined templates like uh, uh, what basic configurations you want to set up how many routes or how many protocols you want to configure so we can create a templates and we can attach all our locations devices with the templates okay so sd wan policies how to create policies so how to create or how to configure we smart devices okay we are going to understand the forwarding and quality of service overview so some topics are maybe going up on the head right but it's just uh, the things uh, we are going to learn in sd wan okay so also we are going to understand about the data plane control plane deployments additionally there is a protocol overlay management protocol we are going to see so overlay management protocol is basically to share the routes from v edge to another v edge like if i want to share routes from v edge to v edge so by using this v smart we are going to share the routes from one location to another location so this is with the protocol of omp overlay management protocol okay currently there are many solutions of sd wan in industry like uh, in cisco uh, this solution what we are going to learn this is called cisco viptela viptela was a company which is acquired by cisco a uh, few years back now we call this product what we are going to learn cisco viptela there are many other solutions like uh, velo cloud from vmware okay there is another sd wan 40 gate devices and you can uh, do nsc7 nsc7 is a certification where you can have your sd wan connectivity with 40 gate firewalls also it's a separate module and there is another company which is like silver peak which is also in trend nowadays silver peak okay and uh, and there is a company versa networks so in, i am just going to tell you guys that we are going to have all all sd wan in networking very soon all of the courses mostly and those who join definitely like if they are joining cisco viptela definitely you will be definitely going to get minimum to minimum minimum this is i am talking about maybe you will get more minimum 20% discount if you join any sd wan and if you try to join any other sd wan modules okay you will be any how minimum you will be getting this much okay because our plan is uh, to run the combo batches also but obviously we started with viptela uh, we are vmware partner now so we are going to start the velo cloud also fortigate also we have we are going to start this so these things are in pipeline but these three are almost finalized the top three cisco viptela velo cloud and fortigate okay so sd wan is basically see everyone knows that everything is moving to cloud 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 everywhere you have heard this and yes our networks is also going to cloud where we are going to put v manage the last ppt slide i have mentioned that we manage and all these things can be deployed under aws or azure okay so that is cloud hosted so you can have all your branch offices connect all your branch offices and 
all these branch offices can be configured directly from the AWS. Yes. Okay, so these are the topics. So we are going to learn uh, these things. So this is the overview I was discussing about. So you can see in the right section that we have control plane, data plane and management plane, right? So control plane means we are going to control all our network devices from this device. This is uh, this device, which is we manage is like a controller. Okay, V edges is like uh, that we are going to configure from the V manages. So the simple way like this is that topology of traditional network that if you have a router, so you can see this diagram. So if you have a router. Yeah, so you can see all my configuration from CLI, GUI, all this comes in management plane. When we run our OSP protocol, when we check our static routes, routing table, neighbor table, links to database table, that is all control plane. But when we actually forward the traffic, this is what we call data plane. Take So router ke andar hamare teen portion hote management plane, control plane, data plane. Management plane is responsible for all CLI, GUI, telnet, SSH, these operations. Control plane is taking care of all OSPF and all routing protocols, your routing table. And data plane is actually carrying your traffic. So that whenever you send any file, it is going via data plane. Whenever any OSPF packet is going, it is going via control plane. Whenever any telnet traffic is going, it is going via management plane. Clear everyone? Three planes, management plane, control plane, data plane. Okay, so why these technologies are getting popular? Because of network function virtualization and network function. So it means we will be having a virtual router Right, because everything is uh, like when we say that mostly things are getting deployed in cloud. So we need virtual routers and this V edge, it's not a physical device only. There are uh, physical devices of V edges also, but you can actually deploy V edge as a virtual device also. Like V edges can be deployed under my AWS. Just think guys that when you want to connect all your branch office, then you do not actually need a device. It means, uh, I'm just giving you an idea, okay? So just suppose that all my V manage this device. So this V manage, okay, V manage, we have deployed in AWS. Okay, we have V smarts. V smart is for routing policies to configure all the routing part. Okay, so this is under my one AWS region. Okay, we manage, we smart, everything is under one AWS region. What is region? Region means one location. Like you have AWS Mumbai, you have deployed under we manage, we smart, few we bond also. So we bond is for authentication. Remember, this is for routing policies and all. This we bond is for authentication that users are actually uh, my information is authenticate or not. This is for security. And we manage is a complete manager. Okay, now this is in my one AWS. So now we have few servers. Okay, maybe in USA. Okay, and in USA AWS, in AWS USA, so we have these three servers, right? Why we have three servers in USA? Because mostly our traffic is in USA. So this is why we have AWS servers in USA maybe. Okay, so these servers, you need to just connect a V edge over here. Okay, and you can register this V edge with the AWS Mumbai location also. Okay, so you can have one another AWS, maybe in um, Canada. Okay. And they, there you have also servers or uh, maybe some applications are running like your mobile application development. Everything is under this location under Canada. Okay. And you are also registering this location with this AWS we manage. Sorry, my pen is a little going over. Right. And now if you have own premises, now you have a daily location. 
so you uh, actually get a physical v edge device okay so here you need a virtual virtual v edges you need you do not have to take physical because you are deploying under aws so aws will definitely not allow the physical devices so you will deploy the virtual v edges here okay virtual v edges and this physical device v edge you can have in your delhi location you can connect to your switches you can connect all your lan network create vlans and all and forward all your information with this and you all connectivity you can have with internet also or you can use your private mpls connection or any 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 type of 4g 5g connection also okay maybe your location is in some outskirts right maybe the internet connectivity the lease line is not there you have a small office somewhere okay uh, then maybe like uh, you guys this company network is for some oil gas plant and you know that oil ga gas plants are not in mid of the cities they are outskirts so you can connect your those locations also with 5g 4g connectivity and you can register with under v manage okay so this is what we are going ahead and uh, definitely we need to learn and update the resume and sd van is the top uh, for network engineers sd van is the most promising technology you should have in your resume because this is actually going ahead right now if you learn this you can actually have a very good job you can uh, join any top level company also because mostly they are moving like uh, big companies like apple or microsoft there are many companies who have their own cloud and they are also moving their network operations into the cloud okay so now you it's not just the v edges so there are asa firewalls virtual asa firewalls there are wan optimizers there are virtual wireless lan controllers also okay there are many things are virtualized virtualized means that we are running services under virtual machines so this was the problem that you had a poor user experience complex to operate difficult to, to secure there are many challenges whenever new technology comes we always discuss bad things about the old technologies but yes it was not that bad but still the new thing sd wan is the next future okay so why because we are separating our management plane we are separating our control plane and we will focus on data delivery okay we have redundancy management you can have v manage in your office you have v manage as a backup in cloud also zero touch provisioning you can configure your one location within hardly 10 15 minutes you do not have to wait for 5 5 10 10 days to set up a one location you just get 4g 5g sim put it in one device and you can actually enable your one branch office within hardly 10 to 15 minutes right so sd wan so cisco v edges which we were talking about they are going to have omp so we are going to discuss these things obviously right and then we are going to understand about the pnp plug and play portal okay we are going to understand about the orchestration plane control plane data plane and we are going to discuss further also like what are the models we have which devices we need to buy for sd wan and uh, the complete solution you are going to deploy under this lab which i have shown you that we are going to configure all our branches so once you complete this design definitely you will be well versed in sd wan technology okay and all the sessions are getting recorded so and i am also going to give you one offer uh, for this obviously uh, that if you join this sd wan batch you can take one more sd wan batch in next 6 months because in next 6 months we will have more 3 4 4 batches if you join this you can repeat one sd wan 
for complementary but again you need to save your lab hours around 50 to 60 hours okay so lab access will be getting complete 60 hours almost because if you try to deploy this same lab okay if you try to deploy the lab in your environment you need minimum minimum to minimum 64 gb plus ram if you have 64 gb laptop uh, then definitely you can uh, keep doing the lab more but i don't recommend because uh, we have this solution and even if you are not able to do in 60 hours you can contact team uh, we can give you few more hours or maybe you can take uh, uh, only lab also by paying some out okay so i hope this session is informative for you all okay so if you have any doubts you guys can ask me i am going to unmute you all hi everyone hello 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 uh, hello sir yes i uh, so which type controller we will use in this sdn which v manager cisco okay 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 so is it sir uh, uh, i'm asking like that like odl or hp that which one we will use for practical for practical see this is uh, my lab right so see there are two options to do the lab either we can go for some cisco d clouds and all so rest uh, we have a portal where you need to log in here right so you can see here right yes sir yes so you need to log in you will be getting a username password for this lab and once you'll be going towards this lab you can open this lab and within few seconds the lab will be ready and you need to turn on the devices okay. right and you need to click the device step by step everything we are going to learn don't worry this complete v manager device takes 16 gb laptop a uh, ram okay i am just telling you guys those who are thinking to configure the lab in your laptop this one single device is taking 16 gb ram but we recommend to give 24 gb ram now you got the point sd wan is highly highly cpu intensive Okay. Uh, so one more thing i want to sir ask you uh, mm -hmm. if you don't mind uh, in this uh, uh, in sd sd uh, mm -hmm. we need to learn python 2 sir is it no 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 so the model we are going to learn that so is some e portion is some portion uh, we, i think uh, if you go for the command label there is a mm -hmm. python label uh, configuration some see if you check the ensdwi okay that we are going to learn this is 30415 so just hold on. Yeah, Cisco 3045. Yeah, so you can see. So if you check the content of this review exam topics. Okay, so you can see it is almost how to deploy, how to configure, how to run the policies. So this is all about e in ENSDWI. So there are further advanced modules of SD WAN right now. So we are going to learn ENSDWI, this module. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it has basic describe. You can see describe. So I'll explain what is REST API. But network automation thing is not here right now. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Any other question, guys? Hello. Uh, hello, sir. Yes, yes, Karthik. Uh, sir, uh, then uh, eventually we have to deploy one one SD WAN devices instead of router. We have to once we have to connect. Yeah, SD WAN devices like V edges are also like routers, but they are like these are known as V edges. Oh, they are not called as SD WAN devices. <laughs> Obviously, you can say SD WAN <laughs> devices like router is also known as network device, na? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. No, no, sir. See, uh, and my point of view that uh, we'll replace to route uh, once we replace the router we, we can put this device and we can uh, connect to our branch yeah yeah so we edge is basically you can see v edge 2000 can you see that so v yes, edge yes. 2000 it's a physical device it's like a router just the name they have changed to v edge 2000 okay. so we do not have to buy the v edges only you can have 
एस डी वैन मॉड्यूल इन आई एस आर फोर थाउजेंड सीरीज ऑल्सो यू कैन डिप्लॉय सम एस डी वैन यू कैन सी देर इज आई एस राउटर्स नॉर्मल राउटर्स बट विद एस डी वैन फीचर सेट देर आर फ्यू डिवाइस विच कम्स विद एस डी वैन फीचर सो यू कैन डिप्लॉय दीज ऑल्सो एज ए वी एज ऑल्सो आप इनको भी वी एज की तरह ट्रीट कर सकते हो ये वाले जो राउटर है वन थाउजेंड सीरीज वन वन फोर जीरो फोर थाउजेंड ओके and these are lte devices i was discussing the 4g lte and all so these are those devices you can have uh, uh, this comes with the uh, viptela operating system and these comes with the normal cisco operating system these isr series integrated service routers and there are big routers like asr series also aggregation services routers and uh, in this also you can manage these devices so in short in short if you have these devices whatever you are seeing on my screen you can actually manage from v manager okay any other question so i actually have a silly question yeah yeah rohit please go ahead the v edge is actually for routing right mm -hmm. and v smart is also for routing so what's the difference between them See, V edge is actually controlling. You can see this diagram, right? So V edge mm -hmm. basically a consider it's a router only, okay? And it okay. is going to execute your data plane. Means all your traffic is going to transfer with V edges. So the routes are going to be transferred via V edges. Or... Yeah, V edges will transfer routes with each other because V edges are your locations. and all yeah. your locations are going to share routes with v smart okay okay so you can see uh, implement control plane policies such as service chaining multi topology multi hop so in short all your all your branch offices are going to operate with v smart controllers so v controllers are like brain right obviously so these okay. brains can actually configure you can connect a soho to campus campus to branch branch to data center but without v smart and v manage you can't configure v edges with each other mm -hmm. but we have v manage for the same reason right uh, we, we use that for v manage v manage device is for overall function it is not for routing policies properly okay so, yeah got it thank you yeah v manage is actually taking care of templates you can create templates it's like complete gui thing okay okay got it yeah thank you yeah so you can see it is a single pane of glass and multi tenant with web scale policies and templates troubleshoot the main thing you can troubleshoot your network it's like monitor your network software upgrades of your company graphical user interface right and programming if you want to automate anything it can be done with v manage but not with v smart oh, okay got it like yeah. we can use netmeco and all those stuff yes yes manage. correct 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 all your python uh, libraries <laughs> right yeah yes yeah, sarbjit uh, actually i have a question what is the basic configuration uh, for sd wan and uh, our existing uh, configuration see basic configuration is nothing just uh, see this is a device it is almost no, I, i i want to know that what is the basic difference between sd wan configuration and existing uh, configuration in terms if, of if if, mm -hmm. if any device uh, support both sd wan and existing uh, configuration mm -hmm. okay so okay. what Uh, is there any difference between that or commands are more or less same mostly commands are same they just have a different uh, feature set okay like if you want to provide security so in... so, so so if if uh, uh, my device is supporting sd wan so mm -hmm. we have to purchase license uh, to run sd wan yes yes uh, correct correct okay. you need to buy the sd wan feature set okay yeah uh, got it uh, and uh, if you're talking about v manager uh, mm -hmm. so we have also uh, server type uh, uh, or we can say that uh, it is a gui uh, uh, gui based uh, yeah uh, v manage is like a 
virtual uh, we manage this device either you can buy a real hardware which is available right mm. so mm. you can go and buy the cisco if you check cisco viptela devices or something right mm. there are many solutions from cisco you can directly just let me show you okay please explore oh, this na, jaise nms mein hame uh, view hota hai yes yes, yes, yes. That, that is ha theek hai samajh gaya yeah, yeah okay okay see you guys okay thank you everyone okay so thank you for joining this session so koi bhi network device hota hai whenever we talk about these network devices like either it's a router or a switch or either a wireless device so they can be configured with two methods but you know only one method which is cli but there is some another method which is called api like cli stand for command line interface api stand for application programming interface so we can access the devices from application programming interface but many devices do not support apis suppose a router guys which is connected to another router with with a fast ethernet interface the similar way like when we talk about the software because they are virtual to jo software hote hain softwares do not have the physical connectivity they have virtual connectivity which is called api so api is used among all software to make compatible this software with this software okay so what is sdn so we can actually control all our network from controllers so sdn is not a actually technology it's just a general word okay this is just a general word the technologies are sd wan sd access okay cisco meraki wireless solution cisco aci or apic so there are many many softwares many companies uh, like uh, velo cloud which is uh, from vmware like automation is not about future automation is already going on main aapko ek cheez aur batata hu so right now like if we talk about delhi mumbai chennai kolkata right now we have all connectivity like this maybe we are connected with the internet and all but tell me if you want to configure delhi mumbai chennai kolkata devices so do you have to go to all the routers or you can control from one location obviously you can do telnet ssh but still you have to log in with their ip addresses manually differently so inside these devices you have two planes one is called control plane all your routing protocols all your routing entries everything it's related to your control plane this is done by data plane when you send a traffic from computer a to computer b okay so when that router is forwarding this traffic and that is data plane and there is one third plane in the device which is called a management plane like accessing the device is called management plane okay so this is all our current traditional network what if i tell you that we will put devices with the latest methods okay nowadays like v edge or kind of these devices so they are programmable devices all these are programmable devices so there is a main controller this is called controller and we are going to manage all these devices from this controller okay so it means we need a software we need a software to control the hardware is called software defined networking okay this term is called sdn controller we manage kind of a device is a controller it's like a software okay which is installed in servers okay all these locations which are like delhi mumbai branches ye jitni bhi locations thi hamari okay all these locations are connected with this controller like these are like maybe our routers maybe our uh, switches maybe some firewalls because most of the advanced de- uh, network devices they support controller nowadays okay so these kind of connections between controller and network devices are called south bound api the above device is a controller which is a software 
and these devices have software installed in their devices also so tell me how two softwares interact with each other with the help of api understand now api there is a top layer also where we are going to manage the software with some kind of a python we are going to manage the software maybe with some language called java okay but still java is not that popular python ansible okay so these are some network automation languages okay so this link between the controller and this applications which are like python ansible and all tools this is called northbound api 